identity. Hello there, gang. This is your pal, Dan McCullough. Say, I know a lot of fellas and girls who are all hepped up about how keen Kellogg's Pep tastes at breakfast. They say it's a super terrific dish, or a super duper, or just plain super. But no matter how you say it, it all comes down to the fact that if you're hep to pep, you're hep to some super delicious eating. Why, just one glimpse at those crispy whole wheat flakes will tell you that. They're tender and delicate and toasted golden brown. And flavor? Why, Kellogg's Pep is called the Sunshine Cereal. It's loaded with sunny golden toasted flavor that sure tickles your taste. Every spoonful calls for more. Fact is, gang, Kellogg's Pep is really on the sunbeam. Makes breakfast so terrific, you'll want to eat hearty. You don't want to leave one single flake in your bowl. And that's the right angle, gang, especially nowadays when the cereal grains, like the whole wheat and pep, are being sent to fellows and girls overseas. So get hep to pep, gang. When Mom brings Kellogg's pep home from the grocers, don't waste it. If you pour your own pep, pour it carefully and polish off every bit you pour out. Pass the word along to the rest of your family, too. Just remember, eat all your pep. Don't waste it. And now, the adventures of Superman. Following his spectacular victory over the wrecks of Bolomar, Superman and his guise of the mild-mannered reporter Clark Kent returned to the Daily Planet, where he received a startling surprise. In his office, he found a square-set, square-faced man with a heavy mustache waiting for him, a black derby hat and a rolled umbrella across his knees. As Kent entered, the stranger arose. Stretching out his hand, he inquired, Kent? Yes? Mr. Clark Kent? That's right. Uh, who are you? I'm happy to make your acquaintance, Superman. What? What? I said I'm happy to make your acquaintance, Superman. I've come a long way for the pleasure of meeting you. But now, now, I... my dear chap, no need to be alarmed. Your secret's quite safe with me, for the time being, at least. Oh, wait a minute. There must be some mistake. No, no, sir. No mistake at all. But you... You, you called me Superman. Come, come, you're not denying it, are you? I don't quite understand this. Just who are you? My card, sir. Thank you. Mr. Herbert Calkins, St. John's Wood, London, Southwest. Exactly. And now, sir... Wait a minute, you're... Yes? Why, uh... uh... Go on. Mm Mm-hmm. You were about to read the printing under the inked-out line in the corner. Oh, how could I do that? Whatever was printed there is hidden by a heavy line of ink. Oh, you think fast, Mr. Kent. What do you mean? I mean that as Superman, you have X-ray vision. You can easily see what's covered by the ink. Oh, well, no hard feelings. I should have known you'd be clever enough to escape that little trap. Look here, Mr. Hawkins. This little joke has gone far enough. I don't know what you're here for, but I'm really quite busy, so if you'll state your business... Uh, Why, may I suggest we talk over dinner? What? I happen to know quite an excellent cafe near here. The food's capital, and there's no beastly hubbub. We can talk undisturbed. Thank you, but can't we talk right here? I don't want to seem rude, but I'm really quite busy. I promise that you'll find what I have to say more interesting and far more important than any routine matters here. Hmm? Mr. Kent? All right. 
All right, I'll have dinner with you, Mr. Calkins. <laughs> I thought you would. Shall we go? Capital dinner, eh? What? Yes, yes, very good. Cigar with your coffee? No, thanks. I never smoke. No drink? No, I never drink either. Neither does Superman. <laughs> does that make me Superman? That and quite a few other things. Oh? I presume you still insist that you were unable to read the inked-out line on my card? Do we have to go into that again? It would save a good deal of time if you admitted your identity to me at once. But since you won't, I'll tell you. Quite unnecessarily, I'm sure, that the inked-out line read, Scotland Yard. Sc Oh, yes, of course. You're the famous Scotland Yard detective, the fellow they call the, 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 the super sleuth over there. Oh, I was with Scotland Yard for 30 years. Of course. Until the day the war ended. Then I decided my country could spare me and I could devote all my time to you, Mr. Kent. To me? Yes. You see, I was becoming quite bored. Most cases, difficult as they appeared at first, were rather easily solved. Some of them took more time and patience than others. That's all. But in the end, they all came out alike because practically all criminals, clever as they think themselves, make one little mistake. For me, it became merely a process of ferreting out that little mistake. Then, getting my man. I see, but... Yeah, I'm but coming to that. Well, what does it all have to do with me? I'm not a criminal. I'm coming to it. As I say, I became bored at Scotland Yard. I wanted a mystery that would really test my mettle. Well... Now I found it. <laughs> From what you said before, I gather this this mystery has something to do with me. It has everything to do with you, sir. You see, I decided long ago that Superman must have a double identity. Oh? My research, and very careful research it was, sir, led me to the inescapable conclusion that Superman and Clark Kent are one and the same person. <laughs> me, Superman. <laughs> Oh, you're very flattering, Mr. Corgan. Not at all. You see, my research showed that the Metropolis Daily Planet alone had some contact, official or unofficial, with Superman. Well, couldn't that be coincidence? Yes, it could be coincidence. But I was convinced it wasn't. And that made sense, too, you know. Superman devotes his great powers to the cause of tolerance and justice. Where could he be in a better position to discover where he was needed than on a great newspaper? But I still don't see how that... Quiet, might... old chap. There's somebody coming over where? here. Oh, oh, the waiter. Just as well be careful. More coffee, gentlemen. Mm, I'll have a little. Yes, sir. You, sir? No, no, none for me, thanks. Well, thank you, my man. That'll be all. Very well. Now, Mr. Kent... To continue. I really don't think it's necessary, Mr. Corkins. You mean you're willing to admit you're Superman? Nothing of the sort. Frankly, the whole thing is too... Well, it, it's too outlandish to waste more time on. But look here I've now. I've got to get back to the office. We're putting out an extra edition on the Bolomar affair. So if you'll excuse me, Mr. Corkins... wait, please. I'll... I notice your story on that little affair scooped the whole world. Well, I, I was just lucky, I guess. Oh, don't be so modest. Isn't it because you were right on the scene as Superman? Now, look, Mr. Hawkins, I'm Come not... Come now, gonna... Mr. Kent. I told you I had the goods on you, as you American chaps say. If you'll come up to my hotel suite, I'll show you enlarged, detailed photographs of yourself and Superman. Really? Yes. I'll show you plaster models made from those photographs, showing your identical measurements between the eyes. The identical lines of the nose and ears and mouth. Right. I'll show you a cast of Superman's footprint. The only one in existence. I'd like to see that stuff, Mr. Calkins. I'm sure I'd find it very interesting. Believe me, you would. And amusing. But some other time, perhaps. Hmm? Right now, I have work to do. Take my word for it. You're wasting your time. Forget it. I've never wasted my time before, Mr. Kent. I'm so certain I'm right that I came all the way over here from England to prove it. Oh, and how do you propose to do that? I've arranged a little test for you. A test? <laughs> you mean you want me to jump off the insurance building observation tower, for instance, to see if I bounce? Oh, no. Nothing like that. This is a very simple test. Won't take more than a few seconds. And it'll prove without doubt that you are, or are not, Superman. What say? 
Are you game? Well, look, as I told you before, Mr. Calkins, I consider this a waste of time. And since I'm very busy, I'm afraid I must... Repeat... I knew I was right. What? I must be, since you're afraid to make the test. Oh, I'm not afraid at all, but I don't it think... It appears that you are, Mr. Kent. And that satisfies me. I told you that if you cooperated with me, I would respect your secret as long as possible. But I'm but not... But since you refuse, I consider myself at liberty to publish a report of my findings in book form. Book? A leading British publisher who has a large branch here in Metropolis is very eager to publish my book. No, wait a no, minute. You, you, you can't do that. Uh, you then can't. submit to my little test. Now, look, I haven't time, and besides... The... I assure you it'll take only a few seconds. And since you say you must get back to your office, we can make the test there. Oh, but it's too silly. It, it, it... Now, look here, old chap. I'll make a bargain with you. A bargain? Yes. Submit to my little test. If you're not Superman, as you would have me believe... You have nothing to fear. But if you are Superman, well, I'll agree not to publish my book for at least five years. How does that strike you? I... What is the test? I can't tell you until we're ready to make it. And you want to make this test in my office? Righto. Well, what do you say? Uh, all right, Mr. Calkins. I agree. Come to my office. <laughs> Square bulldog face beaming, the famous Scotland Yard detective accompanies a deeply worried Clark Kent from the restaurant. What is the test he has prepared for Kent? We'll know in a moment when we return for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. Well, here we go, gang, off to a nifty start. Monday's the day we give out with a brand new pet dish of the week. And take it from me, this one's an SDD, a super delish dish for breakfast. It's called a pep double scoop, and it goes like this. You pour your portion of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, in your bowl, uh, scoop out a hollow on each side, and fill in with juicy red raspberries. Add milk and sugar, and then let yourselves go. Honest, this pep double scoop is a regular scooper duper. Tomorrow at breakfast, you'll say, is this good, wasn't it? <laughs> That's how fast you'll make it disappear. Just wait till you see what those crisp flakes of Kellogg's Pep do for the ripe red raspberries. A combination that's really slick and then some. And it's always that way with Pep, no matter how you serve it. Pep's sunshine flavor and golden toasted goodness are just naturally terrific. Bet you can't help eating every last bit in your bowl. And a good thing that is, especially nowadays, when we're sending the cereal grains to fellows and girls across the seas. Keep that in mind, gang, when Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocer's. Handle the package carefully if you pour your own pep and eat up every bit you pour out. Remember, eat all your pep. Don't waste it. Clark Kent and Herbert Calkins, famous Scotland Yard detective, have returned to the Daily Planet, where the staff is working overtime to publish a special edition. Following Kent into his office, Calkins closes the door carefully, then produces a small cylindrical tube and a tiny glass vial from his pocket. Now, Mr. Kent, the test which will determine whether you are or are not Superman. Here. What's this? This little cylinder contains a sterilized needle. A needle? What are you going to do with... I want to prick your finger with this needle. What? If I can puncture your skin and draw blood, it'll prove that you are not Superman. Because Superman is known to have impenetrable skin. Oh, but if I cannot puncture your skin, then I'll prove what I'm sure is true. That you are... Superman. Great Scott. Come, Mr. Kent. Hold out your hand. But wait, I... I... Your hand, please, Mr. Kent. His mind racing desperately like a squirrel on a treadmill, Clark Kent hesitates, seeking some way out of this trap. For as he well knows, his skin cannot be punctured. How can Kent escape revealing the truth of his double identity to the astute master detective from Scotland Yard? Is his carefully guarded secret about to be revealed at last... Tomorrow's episode will keep you on the edges of your chairs, gang, as Superman matches wits with the cleverest opponent he has ever faced. So be sure to tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pet. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. You know, gang, famous names make history. And Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals, has made history with good breakfast eating for a long time. For example, Kellogg shredded wheat. So crisp, so toasty, so delicious. Tender plump biscuits, 15 of them to a package. That's 15 biscuits crammed with their own natural nut sweet flavor and made just the right size to fit the bowl. And remember, this is whole wheat. 
so it's good for you, too. Ask Mom for Kellogg Shredded Wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Clark Kent, otherwise known as Superman, is on the spot, for Herbert Calkins insists on making a test that cannot help but reveal the reporter's real identity. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, when you buzz into breakfast tomorrow morning, treat yourself to a pep double scoop. You know, that's this week's pep dish of the week. And it's double everything you say for delicious. Here's the pitch. Just pour your regular serving of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, into your dish as usual. Scoop out a hollow on each side and scoop in some juicy red raspberries. Add milk and sugar and you've got it. A pep double scoop. And believe you me, you've got a scooper duper. You'll dig into those ripe red raspberries right along with tender, crisp flakes of Kellogg's Pep that are loaded with full wheat sunshine flavor. And with every spoonful, you'll say, Brother, give me another. That's how slick Pep always tastes. Why, Pep's golden toasted flavor just naturally sends you and sends your spoon right back for more and more till it hits bottom in your bowl. Which is the right idea, especially now that we're sending the cereal grains to fellows and girls across the seas to help give them good nourishment. Remember that when Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers, make sure there's no waste at your house. And remember to pour it carefully if you pour your own Pep, because this is a particularly important time to eat all your Pep. Don't waste it. And now, the adventures of Superman. After many years of study and research, Herbert Calkins, Scotland Yard's most famous detective, was convinced that he had solved one of the world's greatest secrets, Superman's double identity. To secure final proof, Calkins came to the United States where he visited Clark Kent at the Metropolis Daily Planet and flatly stated that he, Kent, was Superman. Startled, Kent attempted to laugh the famous sleuth out of his theory, but was unsuccessful, and finally had to agree to submit to a test. As we continue now in Kent's office, the square-set, square-faced detective has produced a small cylinder in which, he explains, is a sterilized needle. Listen. Hold out your hand, please, Mr. Kent. What for? Superman has impenetrable skin. Oh? If I can puncture your fingertip with this needle and draw blood, it'll prove conclusively that you are not he. But I... If I can't puncture your skin, it'll prove that I'm right and that you are Superman. Now then, please, hold out your hand, old chap. But... Wait a minute. Your hand, please. No, I, I, I can't do it. Very well, then. Your refusal to make the test releases me from my promise. Now I shall go ahead and publish my book, revealing your double identity to the whole world. Just a minute, Mr. Corkins. You don't understand. You see, I... Well, some people can't stand the sight of blood, you know. Not, not even a tiny drop of it. And I... Uh, do you expect me to believe you can't? Well, I hate to admit it, but quite a few folks around here will tell you that I'm... Not very brave. In fact, one of my best friends calls me a molly couple. Uh, you're putting on a good show, but there's no use. Oh, there you are, Clark. Lois, what a break. Listen, the chief wants to see you at once. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were busy. Oh, no, no. That's, that's all right, Lois. matter of fact, you're just the person I want to see. Uh, Miss Lane, allow me to present Mr. Herbert Calkins, late of Scotland Yard. I'm delighted, Miss Lane. How do you... D Did you say Herbert Calkins? The famous detective? That's right. Well, uh, Look, Lois, I know you'll be glad to talk with Mr. Calkins a moment while I see what the chief wants. Uh, now, look here. There's nothing I'd like better. I followed all of your cases, Mr. Calkins. And there's one in particular that I'd love to ask you about. The case of the London witch doctor. Good. You, you two have a nice chat. I'll be right back. Now, into Lois's office. Should be a pin on her desk somewhere. Oh, yes, here's one. Now a match. Gee. Oh, good. Here's one. What a spot I'm in. This Calkins is a smart potato, and he's got me cornered. With a little luck, I might be able to fool him. Yeah, I guess the flames made this pen sterile. 
Now for a quick visit to Mr. White's office. Now, look, Ken, about this Baltimore story... Whatever you want, Chief, consider it done. Now, let's shake on it, huh? huh? I want to shake your hand to seal the bargain. What is this? Well, let go of my hand, Ken. Oh. What in thunder's oh. come over you? Ouch! What the... Well, what's the matter, Chief? You cut my finger. What? Stabbed it or something. Uh, look, what kind of a gag is this? See, there is a drop of blood on your little finger. I guess I must have a rough edge on one of my fingernails. Here, wait a minute. I'll... I'll... Oh, let go. No, let no, go. no. Hold steady. I'll just brush it off. There we are. You better get some antiseptic on it right away. Oh, nonsense, nonsense. Can't even see the scratch. Well, just the same. Will I wouldn't you take stop any... acting like an idiot? I said you can't even see the scratch. Now listen, Kent. I want to look. I'll complete... be back in just a moment, Chief. I've got to get rid of a visitor. Well, hurry up, hurry up. I will. Oh, uh, thanks very much. Thanks for what? For your uh, uh, contribution. <laughs> Clark is a bit of a sissy. Oh, thanks for the send-off, Horace. Oh, I, I... Well, I don't care, Clark. Mr. Clark says that he wants to make a blood test on you for some reason, and you seem afraid to submit to it. Oh, I, I... I don't happen to like the sight of blood. You know that. There, you see, Mr. Corkins. Yes, I see, Miss Lane. Mr. Kent seems to have fooled you as he fooled so many other people. Fooled me? Well, well, what do you mean? That question, my dear, will be answered in an important book I intend to publish very shortly. Uh, a book? Precisely. Now, wait. I, I've oh. changed my mind. What's that? I've decided to go through with a test. Really? Why, what a big, brave man. Mm, I say. What made you change your mind, old man? Never mind. I'm ready, Mr. Corkins. Very well. We'll soon find out. Hold out your hand, Mr. Kemp. Uh, well, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll stick the needle in my finger myself. But why? Well, you might... Stick it in too deep. I... Oh, now, really. Of all the sissies... You keep out of this, Lois. Look, Clark. Well, Mr. Corkins? Here's the needle. But no tricks, my lad. I'm watching you. Well, all right. Here goes. <laughs> Quickly cupping his hand, Clark Kent pretends to puncture the skin of his little fingertip, where he had previously deposited a tiny drop of Perry White's blood. Then, still acting the frightened mouse, he cries out in pain. Oh! Oh! There you are, Mr. Corkins. Blood. I can't look at it. Mm. Will you stop being such a baby, Clark? Are you satisfied, Mr. Corkins? Hurry, will you hurry? I don't want to faint. Just a moment, old chap. Now what? I'll just take this stuff up in the eye, eye dropper there. Like this. Put it in this bottle. There we are. Yeah. Can I look now? Honestly, just wait until I tell the chief and Jimmy about this. Oh, please don't tell them, Lois. Well, what about it, Mr. Corkins? Are you satisfied now? He should be thoroughly satisfied that you're as brave as a, a mouse. Look, Lois, I... I will admit this is a bit of a stumper, Mr. Kent. But I'm not saying yes, and I'm not saying no. Yet. There remains something I must do first. Goodbye, Miss Lane. Goodbye, Mr. Corkins. But well, what about... I'll be in touch with you later, Mr. Kent. <laughs> Hello, Lois Lane speaking. Are you there, Miss Lane? This is Herbert Corkin. Oh, yes, Mr. Corkin. <laughs> Wasn't that the silliest scene in Clark Kent's office just now? Well, I wouldn't call it silly. I've just examined the specimen of blood under my microscope. Don't tell me. Let me guess. It came from a mouth. Oh, no, it's human, all right. I can't believe it. But I'd like to talk to you about it, as well as about something else I believe you'll find most interesting. Really? What is it? I prefer not to discuss it over the telephone, if you don't mind. Could you possibly get away from your office and meet me at the Somerset Restaurant? I can and I will. This sounds intriguing. When? Shall we say in, uh, in 15 minutes? Right, Mr. Corkins. I'll be at the Somerset Restaurant in 15 minutes. Replacing the telephone, Lois Lane quickly powders her nose, puts on her hat and hurries from the Daily Planet to meet Herbert Corkins. What does the famous Scotland Yard detective have to tell her? We'll know in a moment when we return for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, breakfast sure does give your appetite the old come on when there's a bowl of Kellogg's Pep at your place at the table. Pep looks so sunny and, and so crisp and golden you want to pull up a chair and pitch right in. 
And Pep, the sunshine cereal, tastes just as good as it looks, believe me. Pep's sunshine flavor is so smooth and rich, why, why it kind of tickles your taste. And the delicate crispness of each tender flake of Kellogg's Pep is so terrific, each spoonful teases for more. Yes, sir, Pep is a surefire hit when it comes to brightening up breakfast. Helps start you off in the right mood for a good day. You see, when there's Kellogg's Pep for breakfast, you're getting solid whole wheat nourishment plus. So it's a slick trick to polish off every single toasted crisp flake in your bowl. And, say, here's another angle. Nowadays, the cereal grains, like the whole wheat and Kellogg's Pep, are being sent to fellows and girls overseas. So it's not a good idea to waste cereal. Keep on the beam when Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers. Don't waste it. If you pour your own Pep, pour it carefully and eat up every bit you pour out. And say, kind of keep an eye on your younger brothers and sisters, too. That's a cinch, isn't it? Just be sure to eat all your pep. Don't waste it. Seated at a table with Herbert Calkins in the Somerset restaurant, Lois Lane's eyes have been widening more and more as she listens to what the famous English detective has been telling her. What? Superman? Oh, I can't believe it, Mr. Calkins. If you'll forgive my saying so, Miss Lane, I've never been wrong yet. I've worked for years on this case, and I've collected mountains of incontrovertible evidence, photographs, the only footprint of Superman's in existence. I know you told me, but... But, Clark, I just can't believe it. Superman is... is so... Think, Miss Lane, now, think. Certainly a bright young lady like yourself must have suspected a connection between Kent and Superman at one time or another. But it's impossible, Mr. Calkins. Superman isn't afraid of anything, while Clark... As anyone can see, is well, he's afraid of his own shadow. Nonsense. He's very clever. He uh, he puts on an act, as you Americans say. An act? Certainly. The more unlike Superman you think him, the less likely you are to suspect his real identity, you see? Yes, I see what you mean, but... Oh, wait a minute. You're wrong. Superman has impenetrable skin. If Clark were he, he wouldn't have been able to puncture his finger. I don't believe he did. Well, how can that be when you saw him? I saw him appear to prick his finger, and I saw the drop of blood. I'm convinced, however, that he tricked me. Why, how could he? I don't know how, but I'm certain he tricked me in one way or another. However, I mean to make sure by Jove. Well, how? Goodness gracious, I'm all excited, Mr. Gawkins. I've evolved another test, which our friend, clever as he is, won't be able to get out of. It'll prove, definitely, whether he is or is not Superman. But in this, I'll need your help, Miss Lane. Me? Yes. Will you help me? Oh, will I? And how? Why, Why? if what you say is true, it'll be the biggest story of the year, uh, of the century. And what a laugh I'll have on Clark. You tell me your plan, Mr. Corkin. Righto. With your cooperation, I can't fail. And by tomorrow night, Superman will be revealed as Clark Kent. Now, this is what I wish you to do. Carefully, Herbert Calkins completely outlines to Lois Lane his plan to prove conclusively that Superman and Clark Kent are one and the same person. What is the ace detective's plan? And will it succeed? Tomorrow's episode brings another battle of wits between Scotland Yard's greatest sleuth, the man who has never been wrong, and Superman, who battles to guard the secret he holds more dearly than his life. Be sure to tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. You know, gang, you never forget a famous name. Like Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Kellogg brightens up breakfast with Kellogg shredded wheat. Fifteen, fifteen crisp tender biscuits in every package. There's loads of natural nut sweet flavor in toasty Kellogg shredded wheat. Loads of fine nutrition, too. It's whole wheat. And these plump, delicious biscuits are just the right size made to fit the bowl. Try them soon. Ask mother for Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman.
This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Herbert Calkins has a new experiment to try on Clark Kent. And unbeknown to the Man of Steel, he has enlisted the aid of none other than the girl reporter, Lois Lane. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. You know what happens to fellows and girls who take time to eat a solid sort of breakfast the kind experts recommend? Well, watch them tick off every vacation day in the snappy mood that makes for a good time. And gang, you know what's the nifty appetite tickler that looks so good you want to eat hearty come breakfast time? Why, it's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Yes, sir, those golden toasted flakes of sun-ripened whole wheat sure do give your appetite the old one, too. And when you really dig in, Kellogg's Pep tastes just as slick as it looks. Smooth sunshine flavor, tender crispness, mighty terrific eating. One look at Pep's golden goodness, one taste of that knockout full wheat flavor, and you're all set to polish off every last spoonful in your bowl. And nothing could be smarter nowadays when it's not a good idea to waste cereal, because the cereal grains have been picked out to give that swell grain nourishment to fellows and girls overseas. So latch on to Kellogg's Pep, gang. When Mom brings Pep home from the grocers, make sure it's not wasted. Handle with care is the idea if you pour your own cereal and eat up every bit you pour out. Tip off the rest of your family, too. Just remember, eat all your pep. Don't waste it. And now, the adventures of Superman. Convinced after long and arduous research that Clark Kent is Superman, Herbert Calkins, one of Scotland Yard's most famous detectives, now retired, has come to America to prove it. Kent, shocked by the detective's bold accusation, narrowly escapes the first trap set for him by Calkins. But the English sleuth then enlisted the aid of Lois Lane in arranging another trap, which he confidently said would prove definitely that Superman and Kent were one and the same person. As we continue the next morning, Lois is in her office at the Daily Planet, reporting to Calkins by telephone. Listen. It's all set, Mr. Calkins. I stopped at the Metropole. Please don't mention names over the telephone, Miss Lane. Oh, well, I stopped at the, uh, you know what, on my way to the office, and I had a long talk with Mr., uh, you know whom. It's in the bag. I beg your pardon? I, I mean, he said he'd cooperate with us. Oh, 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 I say that's capital. And by this evening, then, we shall have conclusive proof to confirm my claims. And I'll have the scope of the century. I still can't make myself believe it, but... Uh-oh, here he comes now. I'll have to hang up. Right, all right. We'll meet at five, then. Check. And thank you very much for calling, uh, Mrs. Papopoulos. Uh, oh, good morning, Clark. Good morning, Lois. Uh, morning. Who's Mrs. Papopoulos? Mrs. Who? Mrs. Papopoulos had a very masculine voice. Really? Yes. And uh, how would you know that, Clark? How? Oh, why... Well, you I, came into uh, the office when I was hanging up. You couldn't possibly have heard Mrs. Uh, Papopoulos. Well... Uh, or has your association with Superman given you uh, super hearing? What do you mean by that? Who, me? Oh, I don't mean anything. Or do I? You're acting very strangely this morning, Lois. I was just going to say the same thing about you, Clark. You seem so jittery. Is anything wrong? Wrong? Yes, wrong. No, no of course not. Oh. Everything's fine. Look, uh, uh, Mr. Calkins didn't happen to call up for me, did he? How would I know? Why don't you ask the switchboard operator? I did. did she you? said no. But I thought since you met Mr. Calkins yesterday, he might have left a message with you. Oh, I don't seem to remember any. You don't? Mm-mm. All right, thanks. I'll see you later, Lois. Would you like to leave a message in case Mr. Calkins does call while you're out? No, no thanks. I expect to be in my office all day. Mm-hmm. Mm. He does seem worried. Can it be that Mr. Calkins is right? That Clark is Superman? I can hardly wait until this evening to find out. <laughs> Yeah. Have you seen Miss Lane this morning? Well, yes, Jim. Why? Well, did she seem kind of, well, goofy to you? Goofy? Yeah, wacky, giddy. I think the hate's got her. What makes you say that? Well, she's been making the dopiest remarks all morning. About you. About me? Uh-huh. Well, like just before, when I asked her if she'd seen you, she said, 
Oh, maybe he's up at the North Pole, cooling off. Oh, she was probably just kidding, Jim. Oh, maybe, but before you got in this morning, a typewriter went on the blink. I called up the repair people for her, and uh-huh. they said they couldn't get another machine down for a couple of hours because the truck had already gone out. You know what she said to me then? Oh, what? She said, too bad Clark isn't here. He could bring me that typewriter in two seconds. What? That's what she said. And I said, who do you think Mr. Kent is, Superman? Uh-huh. What did she say then? Well, she just gave out with a silly little laugh. I tell you, the heat's got her, Mr. Kent. Yes, or Mr. Corkins. Mr. Who? Uh, a, a mutual friend. They, they must have had a talk about me. And I don't like this, Jim. You don't like what? Our British friend is dangerous enough alone. Too dangerous. Now with Lois to help him. Help who? What British friend? What are you talking about? I think a brief leave of absence is indicated. Hey, has the heat got you too? Could be, Jim. The heat's on me plenty. I hate to run away, but... I'll see you later, Jim. Mr. Corkin? Yes? This is Lois Lane. Listen, I've got bad news for you. Clark Kent is going away. Really? I see. Where's he going? I don't know, but he just talked Mr. White into giving him a vacation. He said he needed a rest. Oh, you can't let him go, Miss Lane. How can I stop him? Find the way. You're a bright young woman. Well, that's an easy thing to say, but I don't know... There must be a way by Joe. Something about the newspaper, perhaps a story. Oh, wait a minute. I just thought of something that should work. I've got to rush before he gets away. I'll call you back later. Bye. Chief? Yes. I'm sorry, Ken, but I'll have to ask you to put off your vacation for a couple of days. Why? What's wrong? Well, Lois just got a tip on a big story in Willow Falls. Has to rush right up there. She'll be gone in a day or two. What? Vacations have a shorthanded right now, so I can't have you both out of the office at the same time. Hey, you understand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, of course. Uh, tell me, Chief, who, who gave her this tip? Mm, some friend of hers who lives up there, she said. It's funny, it's first I hear of Lois having friends in Willow Falls. So what? Do you know everything, Kent? Well, no, but it's just that this looks fishy to me. What does? Lois' sudden trip to Willow Falls. After the thing she said to Jim this morning. Now, what's Jim got to do with it? Uh, oh, nothing, nothing. But I've got a hunch that Calkins has. And now it's Calkins. And who's he? Yes, I may be wrong. This could be on the level. Will you please tell me what in thunder you're talking about? What? Oh, oh, sorry. It's nothing, Chief. Nothing. I guess I'm just a little upset about delaying my vacation. But I'll stand by till Lois gets back, of course. Oh, fine. Oh, by the way, Tony Sloan brought in a copy of the agreement the city made with the traction company. Hmm. I want you to pick it up and deposit it in our safety vault tonight on your way home. The what? what? Oh, oh, yeah, yes, the vault. Sure, sure, okay, Chief. Say, hey, you're not yourself, Kent. I guess you do need a vacation. I'll tell you what, you go home early. I'll go to the vault spot. No, no, I can't. I've got an appointment with our publisher. Oh, don't, don't, don't worry about it, Chief. It's all right. I'll, I'll go to the vaults. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Worried as to what Herbert Calkins and Lois Lane may be up to, Kent returns to his desk. Meanwhile, Lois and Herbert Calkins are in the Metropolis Safety Vault Company's underground vaults, speaking to the husky, uniformed guard. Now, you know exactly what you're to do, my man. Sure, you've told me fair a hundred times, Mr. Calkins. So how could I be forgetting? Very good. Now then, here's a hundred dollars, lad. Oh, thank you, sir. And there'll be another hundred later if the job's done properly. It'll be done to perfection, sir. Uh, look, it's quarter after five. It's almost time, Mr. Corkin. Right, oh. Come away then, Miss Lane. We'll be in the guard room at the end of the hall there, Murphy. Come to us as soon as it's done. That I will, sir. Now, Miss Lane, in a short time you'll see Clark Kent reveal himself as Superman. <laughs> Eagerly, Lois Lane accompanies Herbert Calkins to the guard's room at the end of the line of vaults. What is the ex-Scotland Yard's detective's plan to reveal Clark Kent's identity as Superman? We'll know in a moment when we return for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. Now I'll flash you the latest rave in the breakfast department. It's this week's pep dish of the week. A pep double scoop. And confidentially, it's something you wouldn't want to miss for anything. On account of, it's terrific. Sure, just listen to how to make it. Uh, you pour your serving of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, into your bowl. Scoop out a little hollow on each side and fill in with juicy red raspberries. Add milk and sugar and pitch right into your Pep double scoop. And will your spoon scoop up some smooth eating? Mm-mm. What those crisp, delicate flakes of Pep do for the red, ripe raspberries is something strictly special. 
And that's because Pep always comes through with its catchy golden sunshine flavor. So good, it always leaves you surprised you've finished all there was in your bowl so soon. And you know, eating your dish clean is the smart thing to do these days. You don't want to waste one single bit of cereal because whole wheat is one of the cereal grains picked out to go to fellas and girls around the world. So get hep to pep. When mom brings Kellogg's pep home from the grocers, make sure it's not wasted. Handle with care is the idea. If you pour your own cereal, pour it carefully and polish off every bit you pour out. Just remember, eat all your pep. Don't waste it. Unaware that he is walking into a trap, Clark Kent has arrived at the Metropolis Safety Vault Company, carrying a briefcase containing important Daily Planet documents. Escorted by Mike Murphy, the guard, he is now approaching the planet vault, the huge round steel door of which stands open. I don't think if we have any help to carry in that briefcase, will you now, Mr. Kent? <laughs> Hardly, Murphy. I'll just leave it And you'll be staying in there with it. Mr. Carter's Miss Lane. What happened, Murphy? He's in there. He, he is? is? Yes. Sure, and I caught him neat as a fox in a trap. I you did? We just walked into the vault and bingo. I slammed the door, turned the dials, and there he'll stay until morning when the time clock opens the vault. Until dawn. Until morning. Why, he'll smother to death. Don't worry, Miss Lane. Here, Murphy. But, Mr. Cox. Here's the other hundred, I promised you. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, no one else will be coming into the vaults tonight, will they? No, sir. I'll be closing up right now. I'll see you later. Very good. But, Mr. Calkins, Murphy said the vault can't be opened until morning. Clark will smother. You, po- you promised me he wouldn't be in any danger. He won't be. The vault will be opened in two hours by the emergency squad. Oh. Unless Superman opens it before then. You mean if, if Clark is Superman? Exactly. If he gets out of that vault before we let him out, we'll know he's Superman. Since no other human being can break through six feet of solid steel. Heavens, No. But suppose he doesn't choose to break out. Then we won't know any more than we do now. Oh, yes, we will. No normal man, strong as he is, can retain consciousness in that airtight vault longer than two hours. Oh? So if Kent is still in the vault when it's open but is not overcome, we'll know he's Superman. Suppose he pretends to be overcome. I'd arrange for a doctor to be here to make sure. Either way, Miss Lane, we win. At the end of two hours, we'll know for certain whether Kent is or is not Superman. And I'm wagering he is. This is one trap, says Scotland Yard's ace detective, that Superman cannot escape. Is he right? Is the long-cherished and carefully guarded secret of Superman's double identity to be revealed at last? It certainly seems that way, despite Superman's own wits and great powers. Can you see any way for him to escape? Revealing his identity. Be sure to listen tomorrow to find out what happens. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, here's a winner in your list of famous names. It's Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Kellogg, as in Kellogg's shredded wheat. What a treat for breakfast. Plump, tender biscuits of whole wheat, toasted just right. Full of natural nut sweet flavor, too. And are they crisp? And here's what else you get in Kellogg's shredded wheat. Grand whole wheat nutrition. Biscuits made to fit the bowl. And 15, 15 biscuits in every package. Tell Mom you'd like Kellogg's shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P-Pep. Kellogg's Pep.
Pep, the Sunshine Serial presents... The Adventures of Superman. <laughs> Today, a new trap has been set for the Man of Steel. One that Herbert Calkins assures Lois Lane will prove beyond all doubt that Clark Kent is Superman. <laughs> Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, you may know what's good in the eats department, but don't call yourself a really experienced judge of good breakfast eats until you try this week's pep dish of the week. Pep double scoop. Because it beats everything. Here's the idea. You just pour your portion of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, into your bowl. Scoop out a hollow on each side, and then fill in each hollow with juicy red raspberries. Pour on milk and sugar, and you've got your pep double scoop. As terrific a dish as you've ever tasted. How those crisp, tender flakes of pep make whoopy with a fruit. That's pep's golden sunshine flavor coming through, as it does every time. Always a knockout. Always so super delicious that you spoon up your pep on the double. Till before you half know it, your spoon comes up all empty. Well, you've eaten every flake. Well, that's just as it should be, especially nowadays when the cereal grains are being sent to give their swell grain nourishment to fellows and girls overseas. So when mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers, see that there's no waste at your house. If you pour your own Pep, pour it carefully and polish off every bit you pour out. And say, kind of keep watch on your younger brothers and sisters, too. Get the right habit, gang. Eat all your Pep. Don't waste it. Now, the adventures of Superman. Convinced after much research that Clark Kent and Superman are one and the same person, Herbert Calkins, Scotland Yard's ace detective, has come to the United States to prove it. When Kent narrowly escaped from one trap, Calkins took Lois Lane into his confidence and, with her aid, set another trap. Early that evening, when Kent came to the Metropolis Safety Vault Company with some important documents from the Daily Planet, the guard waited until he stepped into one of the underground chambers of steel and concrete then swung the great door closed, locking Kent inside the vault. As we continue now, Hawkins and Lois are in a restaurant across the street from the dark vault building. Listen. Kent is very clever, Miss Lane, but this is one trap from which he can't escape without revealing his true identity. You sound very confident, Mr. Hawkins. Uh, and I am, by Jove. The door and walls of the vault are solid steel, three feet thick. Now, the only person in the world who can break out is Superman, so... If Kent isn't there when the vault is open, we'll know the truth. Wait a minute. I just thought of something. If Clark isn't Superman... Yes? Well, he is a bit of a sissy, Mr. Calkin. Really? Oh, yes. He'll get panicky locked up in there without any air. I just know he will. And if, if anything happens to Clark, I'll, oh, I'll never forgive myself. Oh, now, really, Miss Lane, you mustn't take on so. Kent's fooled you very neatly, you know. What do you mean? Well, his leading you to believe that he was timid and a weakling was deliberate. But why? So you would never suspect his real identity, of course. Oh. Well, that could be, I suppose, but I'm still not sure that Clark is Superman. Well, now, let me see. In one hour and 55 minutes, I will have solved the greatest mystery of our time. The secret of Superman's double identity. <laughs> Herbert Calkins and Lois Lane prematurely congratulate themselves. Clark Kent, locked in the underground steel vault across the street, had, by means of his X-ray vision, seen them in conversation with the vault guard earlier and guessed the truth. Now he wrecks his brain desperately for a way out of his predicament. This is the worst spot I've ever been in. If I break out of here, it'll prove I'm Superman. And if I wait to be let out and show no ill effects, it'll also prove I'm Superman. What do I do? Wait a minute, I've got an idea. That time clock set inside the vault door. It's set to open the door in two hours. And if I rip the steel back a little, just enough to reach the clock. Like this. And then set the clock in two hours like this. Door should open. Good, it's open. Now to have a look outside. Uh, let's see now. The burglar alarm wires along the bottom of the door. A touch will set the alarm off, and who can prove a mouse didn't do it? Now. There. That does it. Now to get back into the vault. Set the time clock back two hours again. There. 
And now bend this steel plate back over the clock. Like that. Now, all I have to do is wait for the emergency squad. <laughs> You're a smart potato, Mr. Calkins. A very smart potato. But I think I've outsmarted you once again. It's 20 minutes past six, Miss Lane. In just one hour and 40 minutes, we'll expose Clark Kent as Superman. Oh, I can hardly wait. What a story that will be. And when I think of the years that Clark's been fooling me... Wait a minute. What are those sirens? Oh, just the bobbies going somewhere or an ambulance. Yes, I suppose... <gasps> Look, Mr. Calkins. What? What's Look through the window. Police cars. And that red truck stopped right in front of the wall building. Look what it says on it. Bank Protective Association, emergency squad. By Jove, Miss Lane, something's apparently happened in the vaults. Come on. Easy now, mister. Oh. Everything's okay. Oh. Just take another whip of these spirits of ammonia and you'll feel fine. <coughs> the vault, I, I was locked in. Sure, but just for a few minutes, you're okay now. I couldn't breathe. Clark, are you all right? What was the terrible thing happened? I got lost. I know. Are you all right now? I don't know. I... He'll be okay in a few minutes. I gotta go Better. check this alarm. How do you feel, Clark? Better now. But my heart's pounding and there's a ringing in my ears. I think we'd better get a doctor, Mr. Clark. Nonsense. He doesn't need a doctor. He's just putting on an act, as you Americans say. Oh. He is not. You can see how he's fighting for breath. Rubbish. He's pulling your leg, Miss Lane. Yes, of mine too, by Joe. What do you mean? I mean he's tricked me again. How he did it, I don't know, but he did right enough. That's ridiculous. How do you feel now, Clark? Oh, I feel terrible. I'm sure you do. That was a frightful experience. I thought I was going to smother him. Oh, yes, oh of come now, Jeb. That's pure other rock. Now, you look here, Mr. Calkins. You've caused enough trouble. I was a fool to listen to you, and I don't intend to listen to you anymore. What's this all about? He's fooled you once more, Miss Lane, but he hasn't fooled me. I'm still convinced he's Superman, and I'll prove it too by Joe. What? Very soon. Cheerio, both of you. Goodbye. Me, Superman? Did I hear him correctly, Lois? Yes, can you imagine it? He almost convinced me of it, too. What? He did? Yes, but never mind that now. You've got to get home and go to bed. Yeah. You think you can get up and walk out to a taxi? I think so. Oh, good. Here, clean on the cart. Okay. I'll help you outside. Thanks. Here's your house, Clark. Can you manage alone now? I think so, Lois. I feel much better now. I'm so glad, Clark. I feel like a heel for ever letting Calkins talk me into thinking you were Superman. How did he ever sell you that idea? I'll never know. Look, I, I guess you've had all you can stand of Superman tonight. You go to bed and I'll cover the story alone. Huh? What story? What story? Why, the World Peace Federation rally at the Metropolis Stadium tonight, of course. Oh. Superman promised to appear and make a speech. Don't tell me you forgot Thanks about God, it. God, I did forget. I've been so involved in this business with Calkins, the rally slipped my mind entirely. Thanks for reminding me. Oh, I said you can forget about it. Oh, but I can't. I. You what? I, I've i got to be there. This is a big story. You know how important the World Peace Rally is. Well, the chief will never forgive now, me if don't I don't... you worry about a thing. I'll cover the story for you, and I'll square you with the chief. You go to bed. Well, I... Well, all right, Lois. Good night and thanks. Good night, Clark. And thank you for not being angry with me. Oh, forget it. Is that a lucky break? Lois, reminding me I promised to address the World Peace Federation rally tonight as Superman. I'm so worried about that bulldog caucus, I forgot all about it. Well, I'll just go up to my apartment a moment, and I'll shoot over to the stadium. What? Great Scott! You again! Entering the small lobby of his apartment building, Clark Kent suddenly stops short, his body going rigid. Whom has he seen? We'll know in a moment when we return for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, gang, when you hitch up your chair to the breakfast table in the morning, does your appetite sit up and take notice? Do you really want to eat the hearty sort of meal that helps start your day off right? Well, if it's a bowl of sunny, golden toasted Kellogg's Pep you're hitching up to, most likely you can hardly wait to get started. Pep is called the sunshine cereal, you know. It's loaded with smooth, full wheat sunshine flavor that practically sparkles on your tongue. 
crisp, too, and tender and delicate, a royal sort of breakfast dish. Yes, sir, Kellogg's Pep certainly stacks up when it comes to really keen eating. When it comes to nutrition, too, because Pep gives you good whole wheat nourishment plus. So you're in solid if you polish off every single toasted crisp flake in your bowl. And say, here's another angle. Nowadays, the cereal grains, like the whole wheat and Kellogg's Pep, are being sent to fellows and girls overseas. So it's not right to waste cereal. When Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers, take special pains to make sure there's no waste at your house. If you pour your own Pep, pour it carefully and eat up every bit you pour out. Kind of keep an eye on your younger brothers and sisters, too. That's a cinch, isn't it? Just be sure to eat all your pep. Don't waste it. Startled as he entered the small lobby of his apartment building, Clark Kent suddenly stopped short, frozen rigidly in his tracks. For a moment, he stares, speechless. Then he gasps. You again. Yes. Surprise, Superman. Now, wait a minute. Oh, uh, Mr. Kent, if you prefer. What are you doing here, Mr. Hawkins? Uh, uh, surely you can guess. If it has anything to do with your notion that I have a double identity... It has, it has indeed. I I told you I was convinced that you're Superman, and I'm I... going to prove it before I return to Europe, by Jove. Now, look here, by Jove. I'm a patient man, but I... So I'm am not... I, so am I, old chap. In 30 years at Scotland Yard, I never failed to bring in my man. Great. Uh, that takes quite a heap of patience, you know. Yes, all right. So you're patient. You're clever. You're a wonderful detective. Thank you, sir. But thanks. you're also, if you'll forgive my frankness, a confounded bore. So now, if you don't mind, we'll say good night. I have things to do. Yes, I know. At the Metropolis Stadium. At... What about the stadium? Oh, come, come, old chap. We both know that you, as Superman, promised to address the World Peace Federation rally tonight. Oh, we do. And we both know that you won't disappoint the thousands of people who'll be there expressly to see you. Isn't that so? Now, wait a minute. I'm oh, not... Now, hear me out. I intend to spend the evening with you. Oh. You do? Yes, indeed I do. And let me warn you, old chap, I'm a most difficult man to lose. I'm going to be most interested in seeing how you can be at my side as Clark Kent and on the stage of the Metropolis Stadium as Superman at the same time. Well, Clark Kent, how can you hope to solve this dilemma? If you fail to appear at the Metropolis Stadium, Herbert Calkins will know you are Superman. But how can you appear on the stage as scheduled and, and at the same time be with Calkins in your identity as Kent? Once more, the famous Scotland Yard detective has laid a clever trap for the Man of Steel. How can Superman escape that trap without revealing the heretofore carefully guarded secret of his double identity? Tomorrow's episode will have you sitting on the edge of your chairs, so don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, I know you know loads of famous names, so you're sure to know Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. But do you know that swell breakfast treat, Kellogg Shredded Wheat? It's delicious. You see, Kellogg picks out finest whole wheat, toasts it to natural nut sweet goodness. Kellogg packs 15, 15 tender plump biscuits in every package. And Kellogg sees to it that you get the grand nutrition of whole wheat in biscuits made to fit the bowl. Ask Mom to get you some Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, the Man of Steel has walked safely out of a clever trap set by Herbert Calkins 
only to find himself hopelessly caught in another. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, here's a breakfast dish with the honey of a batting average when it comes to giving the pitch to your morning appetite. It's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. So golden, so sunny, so terrific, you practically can't resist it. How those tender flakes of sun-ripened whole wheat do score when you hitch up your chair to the breakfast table. And how that smooth sunshine flavor does give your appetite the old come on. Each crispy spoonful calls for another and another. Yes, sir, when you want a slick treat for breakfast, call on Kellogg's Pep. Pep is full of solid, full wheat flavor. Pep is golden toasted and sunny. Pep is called the sunshine cereal, and it's good for you, too. So keep on the sunbeam, gang. Polish off that breakfast bowl of Kellogg's Pep clean as a whistle, because this is no time to waste cereal. You see, the cereal grains, like the whole wheat and pep, have been picked out to give that swell grain nourishment to fellows and girls around the world. Remember that when Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers. Don't waste it. If you pour your own cereal, take time to pour it carefully, and kind of keep watch on your younger brothers and sisters, too. That's so easy to do and so important nowadays. Remember, eat all your pep. Don't waste it. Now, the adventures of Superman. As you remember, Clark Kent is engaged in a desperate duel of wits with Herbert Calkins, famous Scotland Yard detective, who is convinced that Kent is Superman and is determined to prove it. So far, Kent has managed to escape by the skin of his teeth from three traps set by Calkins. But now he faces still another one. Returning to his apartment building in the early evening, Kent found his square-set, square-faced nemesis, Herbert Calkins, holding his derby hat and rolled umbrella, waiting for him in the lobby. In response to Kent's question, Calkins said he was aware that Superman had promised to address a huge rally of the World Peace Federation at the Metropolis Stadium that night. And he added, I intend to spend the evening with you, Mr. Kent. Oh, you do? Yes. What? I'm going to be most interested in seeing how you can be at my side as Clark Kent. And on the stage of the Metropolis Stadium as Superman at the same time. As we continue now, Kent, followed by the Scotland Yard sleuth, has gone up to his apartment. There, he says sternly. Now, look here, Mr. Calkins. You're becoming a nuisance, or have I told you that before? Oh, you have, but in my 30 years at Scotland Yard, during which time I've never failed to, to bring, bring in your man, man. You want to put that on a phonograph record. Look, have you ever been picked up by the seat of your pants and deposited elsewhere? <laughs> I have. But on infrequent occasions. No. Look here, old man. You'd really be much wiser to cooperate with me, you know. Cooperate? What do you mean? Simply stop beating around the bush and admit the truth. That you're Superman. You're out of your mind if you expect me to admit I'm Superman. Why, of all the crazy, ridiculous ideas, that takes the cake. Then you deny it. Oh, it's too silly even to be discussed. But you don't deny it. I tell you, it's too silly to be discussed. I see. Well, it's uh, seven minutes to eight. Superman promised to address the World Peace Federation at 8.30. Don't you think we'd better get started? I don't think I'll go to the stadium tonight. But you promised. And Superman has never broken his word. I promised to cover the rally for my paper, but I'm rather tired thanks to your shenanigans, so... Superman tired? Miss Lane agreed to cover the story for me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll say good night. Very well. Good night, old chap. I'll see you to the door. Oh, don't bother. I, I, I'm i staying here. What? Yes, I intend to stay until 10 o'clock when the rally will be over. But Why don't mind you... me, don't mind me. I have my pipe. And I see you've got an excellent library. I'll You just toddle off to bed. Now, look here. Oh, I save your breath, old boy. And by the way, don't plan to lock your bedroom door and make your getaway through the window. I expect to look in on you every now and then, you know. And really, no crook can pick a lock better than I can. The good old British bulldog, eh? <laughs> Call me what you like. In 30 years of Scotland Yard, I've never been wrong. All right, all right, all right, all right, my friend. Since the only way I can lose your charming company is to convince you I'm not Superman, I accept your challenge. You what? You and I will attend the rally at the stadium tonight. When you see Superman on the stage while I'm at your side in the audience, you'll admit you're wrong, won't you? Why? Not even you can be in two places at the same time, but you're bluffing, I'm sure. You don't dare go to the stadium with me. Oh, no? Well, just give me ten minutes to take a shower and change my clothes and I'll be with you. Oh, no, 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 you don't. You can't give me the slip so easily, by Joe. You're such a suspicious chap. What good would it do me to give you the slip for ten minutes? The rally doesn't begin for forty minutes. Ah, that's right enough. And this apartment's on the sixth floor and there's no fire escape outside. So you can't give me the slip unless you are Superman. Right. 
Now that you've got that all figured out, will you excuse me for ten minutes while I take a shower? Ah, just five minutes of eight. I'll give you until five minutes past. Well, thank you so much. But no tricks, mind you. If you're not out of here in exactly ten minutes, I'm cutting in. Fair enough, Sherlock. Now, out of these clothes. I'd have to work fast if I'm going to pull the wool over Cockin's eyes. If ever there was a job for Superman, this is it. There we are, all set. First, I'll run the water in the shower. He'll be listening for it. There we are. Now to lock the bedroom door very quietly. And brace this chair under the knob. Like that. And it'll keep my bulldog friend out a few extra minutes in case I'm delayed. Now, if only Batman is at home. Look to this window a little more. Quietly. Out. Up and away! <laughs> Leaping into the night sky, Superman rockets across the parts of a handsome house where Bruce Wayne, who is really the famous Batman, lives with Robin, his young companion. Fortunately, Wayne, the only person to whom Superman has confided his double identity, is at home. And swiftly, the Man of Steel tells his story. Oh, I'm sunk, Batman, unless you help me. Me? How can I help you? Well, we're about the same size, and we've both got deep voices. Yeah? Besides, public address system microphones distort voices a little. I doubt that anyone will suspect your voice isn't mine. Oh, I get it, Superman. You want me to double for you tonight while you're in the audience with Corkin. Right. Here, I've uh, brought you one of my costumes, as well as a lifelike rubber mask that a French artist made of my face. Will you do it? Well, yes, of course. Good I... boy. I knew I could depend on you. You better climb into this costume at once and get to the stadium. Superman is due there at 8.30. Now, do your stuff, Batman. I'm counting on you. I'll do my best. Thanks. Mind if I leave by your window? Oh, help yourself. Good luck. Same to you. Out and away! Back home in ten minutes flat. There. I say there, old chap. Time's up. Okay. A second too soon. Now back in the clock, Kent. I say, Superman! Yes, yes, I'm here. Got this tie. Would stick at this moment. Let me in. One second, will you? There, that does it. Now my glasses. So. Okay, Mr. Calkins, I'll be right with you. Oh, so you are here. And who do you think was talking to you? Ah, took you a long time to open the door. Well, showers are so relaxing. I often forget the time. Uh, do you also forget to turn the blooming shower off when you leave it? Oh, I did forget, didn't I? Glad you reminded me. Uh, uh, just a minute, old chap. I'll turn it off. Oh, thanks, but I couldn't think of bothering you. Wait, wait, I said. Here, let me pass. No use both. I'm getting wet. I don't care about getting wet. I want to see... This damp bath towel? You wanted to see if I'd really taken a shower, eh? Ah. Uh. Stopping wet. <laughs> you must have knocked it under the shower just now. Why, Sherlock, you get more suspicious by the moment. You're a clever bloke, Ken. But I'm still certain that you're Superman. And I'm going to prove it at the stadium right now. Oh? Are you ready to go? Or have you changed your mind? I'm ready. Then come along. His square face more like a bulldog's than ever. Herbert Calkins takes Clark Kent's arm and walks with him from the apartment. Will Kent and Batman's ruse fool the gimlet-eyed detective? We'll know more in a moment when we return for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. Most anyone who's tried it knows Kellogg's Pep sure is the berries. But just wait till you try a Pep double scoop. That's this week's Pep dish of the week. You'll not only say it's the berries, but you can say that again because it teams up Pep, the sunshine cereal, and juicy red raspberries. Here's how. You pour your serving of pep into your bowl and scoop out a hollow on each side and scoop in the raspberries. Add milk and sugar and you're all set with your pep double scoop. As keen a breakfast bowl as ever bowled you over. Because those crisp tender flakes of Kellogg's pep always come through with their smacking good golden toasted flavor. So catchy, so sunny tasting that you feel like smiling right back at every luscious spoonful. Pep is called the sunshine cereal, you know. Yes, it's right on the sunbeam. Keeps your spoon busy till your bowl is clean empty, which is always a smart idea because pep is good for you. And nowadays, it's specially smart because the cereal grains have been picked out to give good nourishment to fellows and girls overseas. So, gang, get hep to Kellogg's Pep 
When Mom brings pep home from the grocers, make sure it's not wasted. If you pour your own pep, pour it carefully and eat up every bit you pour out. Pass the word along to the rest of your family, too. Remember, eat all your pep. Don't waste it. Clark Kent and Detective Herbert Calkins have just arrived in Metropolis Stadium, where thousands of people are gathered for a rally of the World Peace Federation. As Kent and Calkins find seats in the crowded grandstand, Batman, wearing the blue costume and red cape of Superman and the lifelike rubber mask of his face, speaks into a microphone on the illuminated stage below. The way to preserve peace is to establish mutual trust and understanding among all the nations of the world. And to let nothing disrupt that peace and understanding. <laughs> Well, Mr. Calkins, what do you say now? Do you admit you were mistaken? Uh, the chap down there on the stage looks like Superman right enough. But I'm not saying yes, and I'm not saying no. Yes. For heaven's sake, what does it take to convince you? I repeat, let nothing change your mind. Lend all your support to the World Peace Federation. It is truly the only way to secure the blessings of peace for yourself and your children. <laughs> Well, Mr. Calkins, satisfied now? No, not by a long sight, I'm not. Why? What do you mean? I mean there's something rotten in Denmark, Mr. Kent. I've a notion I know what it is. I don't understand. You'll understand right enough. Fake! Fake! That bloke isn't Superman! Wait, Mr. Calkins, stop! Ah, uh, he's no more Superman than I am. Look, if he says he is, tell him to fly and prove it. Look, if you don't sit down, Calkins... Make huh? him prove he's Superman. Ask him to prove it by flying around the stadium. Now what will I do? His world seeming to tumble down about his ears, Clark Kent sits helplessly by as Herbert Corkin whips the vast crowd to suspicion with his shouting at Batman to prove he is Superman by flying. But Batman, of course, cannot fly. Superman's carefully guarded secret of his double identity hangs by the thinnest of threads. In greater danger of exposure than ever before. What will the Man of Steel do? What can he do? You'll find out on Monday in one of the most thrilling, surprising episodes you've ever heard. So don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pet. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is the copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pet, the sunshine cereal. Hey, gang, when you line up all the famous names you know, you'll find Kellogg mighty near the top. That's Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. And here are some of the good things Kellogg packs into each plump, tender biscuit of Kellogg shredded wheat. Flavor, natural nut sweet flavor, toasted just right. Nutrition, fine whole wheat nourishment. And for economy, Kellogg packs 15. 15 biscuits in every package. They're made to fit the bowl. Try them soon. You'll like Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Herbert Hawkins has turned the tables on Clark Kent as the great crowd in the Metropolis Stadium calls upon Superman to fly, unaware that they are addressing not the Man of Steel, but his famous friend, Batman. Hello there, gang. This is your pal, Dan McCullough. Say, here's a fact you can chalk up for sure. It takes a solid sort of breakfast to start your day in high to help send you off full of vim and vigor. 
That's why Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, heads the list of breakfast favorites with so many fellows and girls. Because Pep looks so golden and good, it almost coaxes you to eat it. Yes, sir, those cri- tender crisp flakes of whole wheat sure do give your appetite the old come on. And when you pitch in, when you get your first taste of that smooth flavor, see if it isn't Kellogg's Pep for you from then on. Every spoonful is so crisp, so keen, so full of flavor. Why, before you know it, you've polished off every bit of pep in your bowl. And a good thing that is, especially nowadays when the cereal grains are being sent to give that swell grain nourishment to fellows and girls all over the world. So, gang, this is no time to waste cereal. When Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers, make yourself a committee of one to help guard against waste. If you pour your own pep, pour it carefully and eat up every bit you pour out. Pass the word along to the rest of your family, too. Remember, gang, eat all your pep. Don't waste it. And now, the adventures of Superman. As you remember, a famous Scotland Yard detective named Herbert Calkins has come to the United States to prove that Clark Kent and Superman are one and the same person. After barely escaping from several of the detective's traps, Kent decided that he must take the bull by the horns and convince Calkins that he was not the Man of Steel. Kent then arranged a trick with his friend Batman, and that night he went with Calkins to a huge peace rally in the Metropolis Stadium, where Superman was scheduled to make a personal appearance. As they seated themselves in the crowded grandstand, Batman, wearing a lifelike rubber mask of Superman and the familiar blue costume and red cape, was speaking from the stage below. But Calkins smelled a rat and created a commotion by shouting that the supposed Superman was a fraud. As we continue now, Kent stands in helpless dismay as the great crowd, stirred up by Calkins, roars at Batman to prove he is Superman by taking to the air and flying. Well, Mr. Kent, what have you got to say now? What do you mean, Mr. Calkins? You and that bloke on the stage who's dressed up as Superman put up a trick on me, that's what. What? He's no more Superman than I am. You're out of your mind. Oh, don't give me that guff, my lad. If he's Superman, why doesn't he prove it and fly? I don't know. He Maybe he can't fly. But, that's why. I tell you, he can't because he's not Superman, and you know it. Because you're Superman. Now, look here. I'm not going to... I knew it all the time, and now this is a fool. Wait a minute, wait a minute, let's hear this. No, I've had enough, I've done what... Wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Now look here, Kent, I don't care what what that... Please, Mr. Cole. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to call your attention to the fact that our good friend Superman was kind enough to give up some of his valuable time for an appearance here tonight. Not to present the performance of his prowess, with which we are all familiar, but to speak to us on behalf of world peace. Ah, that's not what I do. However, however, since there are some skeptics among you who insist that he prove his identity, Uh-oh. we may be able to persuade him to demonstrate his ability to fly through the air. God, what is that I mean now? In the meantime, you will be entertained by the music of Hugo Golden and his orchestra. Well, Ken? He calls for desperate measures. I say, Ken, what do you propose to do? Oh, you just wait and see what happens now. I'm afraid this is where you... Ken, sit down. Huh? Sit down before you... Ken, come out! Ah! Oh, For a moment on the edge of his seat, Clark Kent appeared to lose his balance, falling to the row of seats below. Then, gathering momentum, he continued to roll downward from tier to tier in the tightly packed stadium until, reaching the bottom row, he sweeps a large group of men into a harmless but tangled mass of arms and legs. Dexterously, he wriggles swiftly free, and in the ensuing pandemonium, slips under the stage to a small dressing room, where Batman, still wearing the costume and mask of Superman, is nervously trying to figure his way out of the predicament. Okay, I'll take over now, Batman. Oh, Kent, thanks having you come. You can say that again. I almost didn't. Yes, what are you going to do? Go out there, give them an exhibition. As Superman. Yes, but what about Corkin? Don't worry about him. I've arranged it so he thinks he knows exactly where I am. I hope. Holy smokes. You duck backstage and hide there until I've finished and disappeared. A minute later, come out and take your bow and go on with your speech. You get that? Right. Okay. So long and keep your fingers crossed. Leaving Batman in the dressing room, Superman strides swiftly to the stage. Then, without waiting for an announcement, he takes off. Up! Up! And away! Rocketing up into the night sky, Superman flashes in a great circle over the tremendous, awed stadium crowd. 
For a moment, he slows his meteoric speed, circles lazily while he makes sure the tangled mass of arms and legs he created in his spectacular fall is still the center of a shocked group who are trying vainly to untangle it. Then he begins a dazzling exhibition of darts, swirls, and gigantic somersaults. Finally, as a great wall of approval fairly rocks the stadium, he puts on a burst of speed faster than the human eye can follow and practically disappears from sight. A split second later, Superman ducks under the stage from behind. Then, quickly changing once more to his guise and garb of Clark Kent, he rumples his hair and disarranges his clothes. And as the disguised Batman walks on stage to be greeted by a tremendous ovation, Kent slips unnoticed into the tangle of men who are just beginning to become untangled. Oh, head. Get off my head, head please! Get there! Yes, help! Help me up! Hey, give the guy a hand. Yeah, help him up. Don't yeah. worry about him. He's all right, I'm sure. Oh, what happened? Tom, Tom, old man, you know full well what happened. Oh, my head, my arms, my legs, I ache. Oh, uh, oh. still putting on an act. He was act. I don't know what you... Very clever of you, by Joe. Very hey, clever indeed. Hey, what do you mean, Mr. Corkin? Your please! Ah, maybe you are telling the truth. What? Now that Superman has successfully demonstrated that he is Superman, he will continue his address on the subject of world peace. Come on, let's get out of here. I want to go to you. I'm talking a cab on the way back to town. Well, here we are, Mr. Kent. Yeah. Now, before you leave, Mr. Calkins, let me get this straight. You're finally and definitely, once and for all, convinced that I, Clark Kent, am not Superman? Right, oh. Well, yes, by Jove, I must admit it really appears that for the first time in 30 years as a detective, Herbert Calkins was wrong. And I must admit you were hard to convince. My apologies, Mr. Kent. And my hand. No hard feelings, I hope. No, certainly not. Not at all, Mr. Calkins. Thank you, sir. Now, I must say good night and goodbye. I bought the clipper tonight for English. Goodbye. Have a pleasant trip. Thank you, thank you. Well, cheerio, old chap. Should you ever come to London, look me up. You bet I will. Whew. Well, now to meet Batman and tell him the good news. Uh, the newspaper club driver. And when Calkins found me at the bottom of that heap and then saw you as Superman on the stage a minute after my flying exhibition, well, he decided to call it quits. He's really convinced you're not Superman, huh? So he says, Bruce. Oh, that's wonderful, Clark. Biggest scare of your life is now ancient history. I wonder. Oh, what do you mean? Well, somehow I'm not quite sure he is convinced. But I don't know why. Oh, come, Clark. You let this fellow give you the jitters. Oh, he's clever, Bruce. Perhaps the cleverest opponent I ever tangled with. And he hangs on like a bulldog. Well, I won't be able to relax until he's back in England. When's he going back, do you say? He said he was going back tonight. Tonight? Mm-hmm. Said he was flying back on the Clipper. Well, then. Yeah, wait. What time does the Clipper take off? 11 o'clock. Good. Now, look, it's 10.30 now. We'll just have time to buy a big red apple and give it to Mr. Sherlock Holmes at the airport. You said you'd relax when you see him take off for England. I sure will. Well, then let's go. Here's where you watch all your troubles disappear into the sky. <laughs> into the clipper now. See, they're getting ready to take off. Are you sure Corkins isn't in the plane, Clark? I'm positive, Bruce. And that means... Wait, here comes somebody running down the gangplank now. Is it... No, it's just a telegraph messenger. Uh-oh. There goes the plane. Yes, and Corkins isn't on it. I was right, Bruce. Corkins knows we tricked him tonight, but he pretended to be fooled in order to throw me off my guard. Oh, wait, He's Clark. surer than ever now that I'm Superman, and he won't quit until he proves it. Matter of fact, I've got a feeling he's baiting a new trap for me right now. I'm worried, Bruce. Really worried. You have good reason to be worried, Clark. For at this very moment, Herbert Calkins is still working hard on his attempt to reveal your double identity. We'll be back in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode, gang. So stand by. Say, gang, on your mark. We're all set and ready to flash you this week's pep dish of the week. It's a blueberry bullseye. 
And it sure is bang-up breakfast news. Here's how you set your sights for this tasty target. Pour your regular serving of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, into your bowl. Heap a mound of juicy, fresh blueberries smack in the middle. Add cool milk and sugar. And then just make like your dead-eyed dick. Only take your bead on this blueberry bullseye. Is it a dish? Yes, Kellogg's Pep sure does things for those blueberries. That golden sunshine flavor pushes right into the lead when it comes to tickling your taste. Each delicate flake is so crisp and golden and toasty that, well, a dish of Kellogg's Pep is solid in the old groovaroo. And Pep is good for you, too. Sure, gives you whole wheat nourishment plus. You see, Pep is made from whole wheat, one of the cereal grains that have been picked out to send to fellows and girls all over the world. So if you're sharp, you make it a point to eat every last spoonful of Pep in your bowl. Because you wouldn't want to waste cereal, particularly now. So when Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers, make yourself a committee of one to help guard against waste. If you pour your own Pep, pour it carefully and eat up every bit you pour out. Cut the rest of your family in on the idea, too. Remember, eat all your Pep. Don't waste it. Worried by Herbert Calkin's failure to return to England, Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, who was really the famous Batman, have returned to Kent's apartment building. As we join them now in the corridor outside Kent's door, Kent is about to insert his key into the lock when suddenly he stops and grows rigid. Great Scott. What's the matter, Clark? Corkins. He's in there. Where? In my apartment. Bruce, I'm done for. What do you mean? There's something in my apartment that will reveal my true identity beyond any doubt. And Corkins is reaching for it right now. Shot. Bruce Wayne strains his eyes as if trying to see through the door as Clark Kent is doing. What final proof of Kent's double identity is Herbert Calkins about to discover? Only a breath of time remains before Superman can prevent the Scotland Yard detective from revealing his most carefully guarded secret. What will happen? Tomorrow's episode is tense and exciting, fellows and girls. Don't miss it, whatever you do. Be sure to tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, what makes a famous name famous? Well, Kellogg is famous as the greatest name in cereals. And one reason is Kellogg's shredded wheat. Those are the plump, tender biscuits. Made to fit your breakfast bowl. Fifteen. Fifteen of them in every package. Each biscuit toasted just right and full up with natural nut sweet flavor. Mom knows Kellogg's shredded wheat is good for you, too. This is whole wheat. So remember Kellogg, gang. Ask Mom for Kellogg's shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, the triumph of Superman and Batman over Herbert Calkins is short-lived, as the ace of Scotland Yard once again finds proof of Clark Kent's double identity within his easy reach. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, do you know the answer to this one? When does a bullseye give you the glad eye? Well, if you're sharp, you'll answer when it's a blueberry bullseye. That's this week's pep dish of the week, you know, and it sure is a bang-up breakfast treat. Here's how you set up your target. Pour your serving of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, into your bowl as usual. Heap a mound of chilled fresh blueberries dead to center. Add milk and sugar, and then fire away at your blueberry bullseye. And believe me, gang, here's a combination that's mighty fair game. Why, those crisp tender flakes of pep 
play rings around the berries. Pep's just chock full of sunshine flavor and golden toasted goodness. So no matter how you serve it, Pep hits the spot. Makes such a hit with your morning appetite that, well, you want to dig in and finish off every delicious spoonful. That's the right idea, particularly nowadays, you know, because you don't want to waste cereal when we're sending the cereal grains to fellows and girls across the seas. Keep that in mind when Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers. Make it your job to see that it's not wasted. Remember to handle the package carefully if you pour your own Pep and polish off every bit you pour out. And say, kind of keep an eye on your younger brothers and sisters, too. Make sure to eat all your Pep. Don't waste it. And now, the adventures of Superman. After many years of research which convinced him that Clark Kent and Superman were one and the same person... Herbert Calkins, Scotland Yard's most celebrated detective, came to the United States to prove his theory. When Kent managed to escape from several traps without revealing his double identity, Calkins pretended to admit defeat and said he was returning to England by clipper plane that night. But when Kent and his friend Bruce Wayne, who was really the famous Batman, arrived at the airport, they found that the detective was not among the clipper passengers. Uneasy, they went to Kent's apartment. But just as Kent was about to unlock his door, his X-ray vision perceived that Calkins was in his bedroom. As we continue now in the corridor outside the apartment, Kent gasps. Great Scott, I'm sunk, Bruce. What do you mean, Clark? There's something in my apartment that will reveal my double identity beyond any question. And Calkins is reaching for it right now. Oh, great Lucifer. Got to stop him. Oh, what are you rattling the doorknob for? Quiet. Open the door and we'll stop him fast enough. Keep your voice down. Ah, that worked. He's coming out of the bedroom. Now he's stopping to listen. I don't get this. What is... Shh, don't let him hear you. He was just about to press the trick panel release. What trick panel? In my bedroom wall, there's a tiny closet behind it where I keep an extra Superman costume Uh and a letter addressed to Perry White to be opened in the event of my death. It tells all... Wait a minute. I'm back into the bedroom now. Probably decided to whoever tried the door has gone on. What are we waiting for? Open the door and stop him before he finds that secret closet. No, not yet. I've got to think. Are you out of your mind, Clark? If he finds your costume in the letter, he'll know you're a Superman. Yes, I know, but We've I've got... We've got to grab him and heave him out of there before he does find No, him. Bruce, no. You mean you're just going to give up? Oh, of course not. I can't be half as useful to humanity if my double identity is revealed. You know that. Sure, then what are I've we... I've got to convince Calkins once and for all that he's mistaken. Make him believe I'm not Superman. And I think this is my opportunity. Well, how do you figure that? I... Oh, he's found... What? The... No. No, he's trying the panel below the trick one. Clark, don't do that to me. Sorry. Now, look, Bruce, I've got a plan. It's a pretty desperate one, but it just might work if you'll help me. Oh, you know I will. Thanks. There's no time to explain now, but here's what I want you to do. Keep Calkins in the apartment, in the living room, though, for 30 minutes. I'll keep him there. Count on that. Swell. But remember, you've got to do it cleverly. No rough stuff. Well, what if he puts up a fight? Talk him out of it. Tell him... Well, tell him you're a friend from out of town who's spending the night here or something like that. Anything to keep him from being too suspicious. Check. Then what happens? At the end of 30 minutes, get out and leave him there. I get it. What are you going to be doing meanwhile? I... Uh-oh. He's got his hand on the trick panel. Here, here's the key. Quick, get in there and stop him. Right. Remember, keep him out of the bedroom for 30 minutes and then leave. Check. As Bruce Wayne steps into the apartment, Clark Kent swiftly resumes his true identity of Superman, leaps through the open corridor window and sweeps around the building to his own sixth floor bedroom window. Peering in cautiously, he finds the room empty, the door closed. Softly, he raises the window, steps in... From the living room come the indistinguishable voices of Bruce Wayne and Herbert Hawkins. Quickly, making not a sound, Superman moves to a certain panel in the wall, notices it is slightly ajar. He pushes it, and it opens on a noiseless hinge, revealing a tiny closet-like chamber in which lies the familiar red cape and blue costume with a large letter S on the front of it. Under the costume is an envelope, heavily sealed with wax. Superman thrusts the costume and the envelope beneath his cape, then takes a sheet of notepaper and a fountain pen from a drawer of his desk. For a brief moment, he considers, then begins to write. And to my friends, James Olson and Lois Lane of the Metropolis Daily Planet, I... Swiftly, the man of steel covers the page with writing. Then, removing an envelope from the drawer, he addresses it. Carrying paper and envelope, he returns to the secret closet and pushes the panel almost, but not quite shut. From the living room can still be heard the voices of Bruce Wayne and Herbert Hawkins, but now raised as if in argument. Seemingly satisfied that his friend Batman is doing his job well, Superman walks noiselessly across the room to the open window, pauses to glance at the clock on his dresser. It's been here about five minutes. 
That leaves me 25 minutes for the most important job of my life. If only Bruce manages to hold Calkins off. Now, this must be timed perfectly, so... Here goes. Out! And away! Leaping out into the night sky, Superman streaks upward like a rocket. Up, up, up he zooms, up toward the pale moon and the cold, distant stars, bound for only he knows where. Meanwhile, far below in his apartment, Bruce Wayne and Herbert Calkins, the square-set, square-faced Scotland Yard detective, regard each other warily. Well, frankly, Mr. Calkins, when I walked in and saw you in Clark's bedroom, I thought you were a burglar. <laughs> Sorry to have given you a turn, Mr. Wayne. But since I've been in the States, Clark and I have become, well... <laughs> Practically inseparable. Even intimate friends, you might say. Yeah, so it seems. When I saw him at the newspaper club earlier this evening, he didn't say anything about expecting you tonight. He didn't? No. Oh. Of course, he was in an awful hurry to catch that Albany train. In the rush, he may have forgotten to mention it. Uh, Kent went to Albany, you say? Oh, yeah. On a story. Didn't you know? Well, uh, he, uh, he mentioned he might go, come to think of it. But I don't believe he was certain about the trip, you know. Oh, I see. Well, he doesn't expect to be back much before early morning. And since I usually stay here when I'm in Metropolis, especially since it's practically impossible to get a hotel accommodation, Clark just gave me his key and rushed off to the station. Without even bothering to phone me to expect company. <laughs> I say, Ken's a rather strange chap. Eh? What, Mr. Wayne? Oh, not at all. I think he's a grand guy. Oh, of course, Roger. I, I, I was just referring to... Uh... Oh, well, let it pass. Oh, I say it's quite late, and I'm frightfully drowsy. Would you mind awfully if I turned in? Turned in? You mean you're staying here? Quite. I uh, thought I'd take the bedroom, and you take the studio couch in, in here. Uh, well, I... Oh, oh, it's really quite comfortable. I'd offer you the bedroom, but I have a touch of lumbago. I'm not quite as young as I used to be, you know. I see. <laughs> well, I'll be turning in there, old chap. Good night. Oh, uh, just a minute. Yes? Yeah. I, I wonder if you'd mind staying up with me just a little longer, Mr. Calkins. Well... Look, here's a chessboard. We can play chess or checkers if you prefer. What do you say? Well, That's well, fine. I... What'll it be? Chess or checkers? Uh, the checkers takes less well, time. Well, checkers it is. Here they are. Which do you have, red or black? Oh, either one. I'll take red, I... then. We'll play three games. Whoever takes two games is the winner. Okay? Oh, I couldn't possibly remain awake for three games, old top. Oh, we can easily play three games and say... 25 minutes? Oh, come now, old chap. Let's get one game over with quickly before my eyes shut up on me completely. Desperately conscious that he must somehow keep the shrewd detective away from Superman's bedroom for almost 25 minutes, while the Man of Steel is away in his mysterious mission, Bruce Wayne begins a checker game with Herbert Calkins. We'll return in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. <laughs> You know, you can't measure good eating with a yardstick. But for extra good eating at breakfast, Kellogg's Pep certainly measures up. Yes, sir. Pep the Sunshine Cereal sure is on the beam when it comes to making breakfast a mighty slick treat. Has loads of keen, catchy flavor for one thing. A rare flavor that signals go ahead to your appetite every time. Believe me, gang, the spoon that comes up filled with sunny, golden toasted Kellogg's Pep goes right back for more. In Christmas, too, and delicate tenderness... Pep is terrific. Every tender, crisp flake practically melts in your mouth. Why, if you're hep to Kellogg's Pep, you're hep to a smooth dish that keeps you busy until you've eaten up every last bit in your bowl, which is always a good idea because Pep is good for you. But it's especially important nowadays when we're sending the cereal grains to fellows and girls overseas. So, gang, when Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers, make sure it's not wasted. If you pour your own Pep, pour it carefully and polish off every bit you pour out. Pass the word along to the rest of your family, too. Make it your habit to eat all your pets. Don't waste it. Pretending to think deeply and taking a long time between moves, Bruce Wayne, who is actually Batman, is trying to make his checker game with Herbert Calkins last for 25 minutes to fulfill the time limit set by Superman for the execution of his mysterious mission. But after 10 minutes, the detective, feigning sleepiness, has become impatient. I say, Mr. Wayne, you're the slowest... Player I've ever seen. Yes, I am pretty slow, I guess. I I like to think out my moves. Ah, uh, well, if we must finish the game, I'll need a spot of tea by Joe. Oh, that's a good idea. I can go for some tea myself. 
Clark has all the makings here. I'll, I'll boil the water. Uh, if you don't mind, old chap, I'll attend to it. No offense, you know, but you Americans really don't understand how to brew tea properly. I'll, I'll be back directly. <laughs> Wayne, I think you like this tea. Thanks. Hey, it is good. Ah, let's see. Who, whose move was it? Uh, yours, I think. It usually is. Yeah. Let's see, then. Hmm. Tea's really first rate. Thanks. thanks. Your move, old boy. Oh, oh yes. Hmm. What's the... Something wrong, old chap? Suddenly very sleepy, I... Hardly hold my head up. But... Really? I said that's splendid. Now we both can go to bed. No. Oh. Calkins, what did you put in this tea? In the tea? Why, tea, of course, oh boy. Drug me. You're... You're... Ah. <laughs> that takes care of you, my lad. Now to get back to that secret panel in the wall before Kent returns. I've an idea that in there's the something most interesting. Stepping away from the table over which Bruce Wayne sprawls unconscious, Herbert Calkins moves quickly to the closed door of Clark Kent's bedroom and opens it. The 30 minutes which Superman set for the execution of his mysterious mission have not quite expired. Has Superman failed? And is the secret of his double identity about to be revealed at last to the astute and bulldog-like detective? Tomorrow brings the thrilling and amazing climax of our story, fellows and girls. So be sure not to miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. You know, gang, famous names are often family names, like the Kellogg family of cereals. Here's a famous member that makes breakfast mighty swell. It's Kellogg shredded wheat, full ripe whole wheat made into tender plump biscuits that fit your bowl. Toasted just right, too, for crispness and natural nut sweet flavor. As for nutrition, well, Kellogg shredded wheat is made of finest whole wheat. Mom likes that. And the economy of 15. 15 biscuits in every package. Remind Mother to get Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, as we conclude our story of Herbert Calkins, we shall learn whether or not Superman has been able to protect the most important secret of his life, the secret of his double identity. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. You know, old man's son sure is on the beam these summer days. Why, he shows up at breakfast time almost as regular as clockwork. Sheds good old cheer all over the place. And gang, if you want to be on the beam, too, latch on to Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. There's a smooth, golden toasted treat that is a treat. Crisp, delicate flakes of real whole wheat, full to the brim with slick, terrific flavor. It's a keen flavor, a delicious flavor, a come-on flavor that keeps your spoon coming right back for more. Makes you want to dig right in and, and polish the bowl clean as a whistle. And that's the right idea these days, you know. It's mighty important to get the good out of every bit of your breakfast dish of Kellogg's Pep. Because it's good for you. And because it's not smart to waste cereal, particularly nowadays. Because whole wheat is one of the cereal grains picked out to send to fellows and girls all over the world. Think of that, gang, when Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers. Make sure there's no waste at your house. If you pour your own Pep, take time to pour it carefully and eat up every bit you pour out. 
And say, kind of keep an eye on your younger brothers and sisters, too. Just make sure you eat all your pep. Don't waste it. Now, the adventures of Superman. After much exercise, his wits and great powers to prevent Herbert Calkins, famous ex-Scotland Yard detective, from proving a conviction that Clark Kent and Superman are one, Kent grew tired of inventing ruse after ruse. Realizing that the shrewd, doggedly tenacious Englishman might perhaps accidentally expose him at some time or other, especially when he discovered Calkins about to find a secret closet in his bedroom in which was indisputable evidence of his double identity, Kent decided on a once-and-for-all desperate gamble. Enlisting the aid of Bruce Wayne, who was really the famous Batman, he sent him into the apartment with orders to keep Calkins away from the secret closet. Then, as Superman, he streaked away on a secret mission. In a last-ditch attempt to keep Calkins out of Kent's bedroom... Wayne fast-talked the detective into playing a game of checkers, during which the Englishman brewed and served tea. Suddenly, Wayne's eyes grew heavy. His head drooped. And before losing consciousness, he gasped. Hawkins, the tea. What did you put in this tea? <laughs> Why, tea, of course, old boy. No, you, you drugged me. You, you... Oh, sorry, old man, but I had to do it, you know. Had an idea you were deliberately stalling me, and I must have a look at what's behind the secret panel in that bedroom before Kent returns. Uh, pleasant dreams. While his friend Bruce Wayne has so valiantly but vainly been trying to keep Herbert Calkins occupied, Clark Kent as Superman has been literally streaking around the world, working faster than ever before in his career. Holding a sheet of paper and an envelope in his hand, he went rocketing first to the North Pole. Wow, it's cold. Very cold. Almost too cold even for me. But if my idea works on Calkins, it'll be well worth it. Well, I guess this paper and envelope have been exposed to the sub-sub-zero temperature long enough. Now for a few minutes of the other extreme. Away! This sun over the Sahara Desert is hot enough to broil a steak and practically nothing flat. Sure is doing a job on this paper and envelope, too. Better give them a dose of humidity before they dry to dust. Let's see now. Where can I... Oh, yes. The jungle should do the trick fine. Away! Traveling with the speed of life, Superman, still clutching the all-important sheet of paper and an envelope, plummeted to the heart of the African jungle. After a short pause, he rocketed once again into the skies, headed eastward. Fighting a monsoon off the coast of India, he dove headlong into it, then fighting his way out, headed back toward the California shore and continued eastward toward Metropolis. Meanwhile, back in Kent's apartment, Herbert Calkins is making sure Bruce Wayne is fast asleep. I say, Wayne. Ah, dead to the world, poor chap. Now to continue investigating what's behind that secret panel in Kent's room. I've got an idea there's something most interesting in there. And if it's what I think it may be, I'll have Mr. Clark Kent dead to rights as Superman. Well, here we go. <laughs> Stepping away from the table where Bruce Wayne lies sleeping heavily, Herbert Calkins moves swiftly to the closed door of Kent's bedroom. At almost the same moment, Superman plummets out of the sky and in through his open bedroom window. Uh-oh. Not a moment too soon. This calls for super speed and plenty of it and then some. Moving faster than the human eye can follow, Superman folds the sheet of paper into the envelope. Then, placing it in the tiny closet behind the secret panel, he flings himself out of the open window just as Calkins opens the door. Now to find that blooming secret panel again. Here's the little button that controls it. Press it. So. Ah, it opens. Hello? An envelope. Let's see what's in it. To whom it may concern. I, Clark Kent, being a town, I... A superman hiding on a ledge outside the window watches him. Former Scotland Yard ace detective slowly reads what has been written on the paper. Then, shaking his head, he replaces it in the secret closet, closes the panel, and leaves Kent's apartment. A short time later, Superman, again in his guise as Clark Kent, has succeeded in awakening his drugged friend. Imagine me, Batman, letting that gumshoe slip knockout drops into my tea under my very nose. Oh, relax, Bruce. You couldn't oh. help it. Besides, everything's worked out fine. Well, what do you mean? I think Mr. Calkins is now out of my hair for good, Bruce. Well, what makes you think so? Because of Clark Kent's will, which I made out this evening and placed in the secret closet just in time. A will bequeathing my few possessions to Jim, Lois, and Mr. White, and my library to Superman. To Superman? Right. 
If I were Superman, I would hardly leave my library to myself, would I? No, of course not. And I dated the will 1940. Six years ago. That was long before I ever heard of friend Corkins. Oh, Clark, I thought you were smarter than that. Corkins is a top-notch detective. Well? He could tell from the condition of the ink and paper that the will wasn't made out six years ago. Ah, but it looks as if it were. You see, I exposed it to an aging process. What are you talking about? I exposed the will first to the freezing temperature of the North Pole, the hot and humid air of the African jungles, a monsoon I found off India, and to the dry baking heat of the Sahara Desert. Great Lucifer. All that and back here in time to plan it for Corkins in half an hour? I can move pretty fast when I have to. Oh, you sure can. (laughs) But how about Corkins? Was he fooled? He certainly acted as if he were. I was watching him from outside the window and saw his eyes practically pop out of his head when he read it. Then he examined it for a long time, shaking his head all the while. Finally, he said, Curses by Jove, I was (laughs) for Something like that. (laughs) Then he walked back into the living room, picked up his derby and umbrella, uh, Darby, that is, (laughs) stepped over your unconscious legs. Oh, don't remind me of that. (laughs) And walked out of my apartment and out of my life, I hope. Oh, Clark, I've got to hand it to you. (laughs) Say, if only I could have seen his face when he read that will. He was so (laughs) sure you were a Superman. (laughs) If only he knew how right he is. (laughs) Well, all's well that ends well. Yeah. So, oh, excuse me, Bruce. That's my doorbell. Maybe it's Corkins. Come back to apologize. Oh, right. Yes? Yeah? You Mr. Kent? That's right. Special messenger service. I got this letter for you. Sign here, please. Oh, okay. Thank you. Good night, sir. Good night. Well, I wonder who this is from. <laughs> Maybe from Superman telling you to keep your old library. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> Bruce, yeah? it's from Corkins. It is? Yes, Listen. Uh, dear Mr. Kent, first off, I wish you'd convey my apologies to your friend Mr. Wayne for my rather hasty and unsportsmanlike conduct tonight. <laughs> Not a bad invitation. <laughs> thanks. I might add, however, that the drug is entirely harmless. Uh, thanks for nothing. I must apologize, too, for all the inconvenience I caused you. But in 30 years at Scotland Yard, I have never failed to get my man. And my pride would not permit me to fail on my greatest case. Well, he failed this time. Thank heavens. Listen. Now that my mission has been completed successfully... Successfully? Hey, that's funny. Now that my mission has been completed successfully, I'm returning to England. Believe me, sir, your most respectful and devoted servant, Herbert Archibald Corkin. Clark, what does he mean by saying his mission is successfully completed? I don't know. I can't understand it, Bruce. Apparently that will gag didn't fool him after all. I, I was sure it did. Well, it couldn't have, though. Great Lucifer, what do we do now if he publishes his book proving that you're Superman? No, no, he can't. He mustn't. Come on, Bruce. We've got to find Mr. Corkins and fast. Get into your Batman costume. Again, deeply alarmed, Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne resume their identities of Superman and Batman and dash out to hunt for Corkins. We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, gang, this week's pet dish of the week sure is going great guns. Maybe that's because it's a blueberry bullseye. Yes, sir, the dish of the week is blueberry bullseye. And is it a whiz-bang breakfast treat? Now, here's how you line up this tasty target. Start with your regular serving of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Heap a mound of juicy, fresh blueberries, slap bang in the center. Add cool milk and sugar, and then fire away. Your blueberry bullseye is right in range. And let me just say, those crisp, delicate flakes of Pep teamed up with fresh, juicy berries, are sure lure for your taste. Why, if you've been around from here to there, you've found that Pep always hits the mark with its right slick sunshine flavor. Always tastes so super that, well, you, you can't wait to polish off every last spoonful in your bowl. And you know, these days especially, that's definitely the right angle. Because nowadays, the cereal grains are being sent to give their swell grain nourishment to fellows and girls overseas. Remember, when Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocer's, Make sure there's no waste at your house. If you pour your own pep, pour it carefully and eat up every bit you pour out. Pass the word along to the rest of your family, too. Make it a habit to eat all your pep. Don't waste it. Superman and Batman have trailed Herbert Calkins, the Scotland Yard detective, to his hotel, to the home of the British consul, to a restaurant, to a steamship representative at another hotel. Now, at 8 o'clock in the morning, once more in their guises of Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, have just arrived at a pier on the waterfront where a large steamer is preparing to hoist its anchor. At the foot of the gangplank, his derby hat squarely on his head, his rolled umbrella firmly in his hand, they find Mr. Herbert Calkins. I say it's jolly nice of you chaps to come down to see me off. Oh, never mind that, Mr. Calkins. Tell me what you meant in your letter about your case being successfully completed. Yes, what do you mean by successfully? Oh, so it is. 
everything is completely satisfactory. What? What do you mean? Well, I discovered to my other satisfaction that you are not Superman. Oh, oh. Then you mean that... I mean that that successfully completed my case, by Joe. Oh, oh, right. oh, oh, I see. They're about to raise the bloody jam flag. Cheerio, you chaps. Cheerio. If ever you're in London, you look now. Ah, uh-huh, you bet we will. Cheerio, Bean. Bip, 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 b
secure in the feeling that all his troubles were over when Herbert Calkins, the Scotland Yard detective who came within an inch of revealing his true identity as Superman, returned to England, satisfied that he was wrong. Clark Kent returned to the Daily Planet. There he was excitedly greeted with the startling news that something was happening to Perry White behind the locked door of the editor's office. As we continue now, the usual clatter of the city room is stilled as Kent walks hurriedly toward the worried group of Daily Planet employees gathered in front of White's office. Listen. Well, what's going on? Maybe we ought to knock down the door. Excuse me, Johnny. Let me through, please. Sure. Lois, what's going on here? Clark, I don't know. Sounds like an out-down drag on fight to me. Yes, I'm afraid the chief is in serious trouble. It's okay. Relax, all of you. Relax. You can't You Relax. Did you hear that, Clark? Don't worry. We'll have the door open in a minute. Chief! Chief, it's me. Kent, let me in. That won't get you anywhere, Kent. No, we've been trying that for the past ten minutes. Okay, then we'll do it another way. Look out. Now let me tell you what it is. Hiya, Chief. Why, you hey, broke right, right in. Well, what, well, Kent, what's the meaning of this? Why, have I... Are you all right, Chief? Oh, of course I'm all right. What's the idea of breaking in my door? Don't you know that a closed door means privacy? Well, How yes. dare you we come... We were worried about you. Yeah, we thought you were in trouble. Well, I am. But that's no reason for this convention in front of my door. Now go on. Back to work, all of you. We've still got a paper to get out. Okay, I like hey, you. okay. You Sorry, we bothered you. Come in here. What? Well, you just said... To... I said to come in here. Something pretty serious is happening, and you may as well get in on it right now. Now, one second, Chief. Before we go into that, there's a little matter of this heavy door to your office. Well, what about it? Well, several of the boys tried to force it before, but it wouldn't budge. And then Mr. Kent comes along So and... what? What's so important about that? What's important? Now, if you think that makes him a Superman... For heaven's sake, Lois, didn't we just have enough of that with our friend Herbert Calkins? Well, I was just oh, a little... Oh, drop it, drop it. Forget it. Sure. Stop wasting time. The whole world is practically coming apart in this very office. Well, what do you and want? you stand there gabbing about a broken door. Now, close it, Kent, if it will close, and sit down. Yes, all right. Sure. Now, Chief, what do you mean by the world's come... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't notice this gentleman sitting here. You didn't think the Chief was talking to himself, did you? No, well, Mr. Smith here is a very unobtrusive man, except when he opens his mouth. Miss Lane, Mr. Kent, meet Mr. Homer S. Smith. How do you do? The devil do? himself in a blue serge suit. Why, Chief? I'm delighted to meet you, Miss Lane, and you, Mr. Kent. And I'll thank you to be more careful of your language, Mr. White. I didn't ask you to come here. You asked yourself. Now I'm telling you to get out. Look okay, here, you can't speak to me that way. Oh, I can't, eh? Why, you... Wait a minute, Chief. Chief. Don't you dare lay your hands no. on me. No, I won't. I won't dirty my hands on you, you... You, you snake. But unless you leave my office at once, I, I won't be responsible for what happened. Save your breath, Mr. White. I have no intention of leaving. No, no. Then I'll... Chief, control yourself. Let me go, Kent. Not until you pull yourself together. Let me go, I say. Now, wait a minute. I'm surprised at you, Chief. Why, I've never seen you act this way before. What's this all about, Mr. Smith? Nothing, really. It's simply that I came You'll here You'll be quiet. To... I'll tell them. All right, all right. You can let me go now, Kent. I lost my head for a minute, but I'm all right now. You sure? Of course. Sorry I lost my temper, but nothing like this has ever happened to me before. Like what? That's what I'd like to know. Well, listen. This man, Smith, came in here a few minutes ago saying he'd been sent here by John Grayson, the publisher of the Daily Planet. I was sent here by Mr. Grayson. I don't believe... Now, wait a minute. I showed you his letter. Personally signed by him. I've known John W. Grayson for almost 25 years. He's not only my employer, but one of my closest friends. He wouldn't embarrass me by sending a, a flunky in here to give me orders. To give... What? I don't understand. Exactly. And what orders? This fellow has the nerve, the, the unspeakable gall, to order me to withdraw the planet's support from the World Peace Federation. Why? And not never... only that, he tells me we've got to print an editorial every day on page one, no less, attacking the World Peace Federation. No. What kind of a joke is this? It's no joke, Mr. Kent. We're convinced the World Peace Federation is fundamentally wrong in principle. Listen to him. Wrong? How can anything be wrong when its primary purpose is to, to preserve peace by establishing mutual trust and understanding among all the nations of the world? Why, the Federation is our only hope for world well, peace. Of course it is. That's where we differ, my friends. Mr. Grayson and I, too, incidentally, believe it's impossible for nations of different languages and customs to understand oh, each other. It is not if we put our minds and hearts and to it. And that's what we've got to do, or sure as shooting there'll be another war. And when that comes, with its new type of atomic weapons, it'll be just too bad for all of us. Right, Chief. I don't and... agree. Now, wait just a moment, please. This is a free country, and everyone is entitled to his own opinion, but... Well, Mr. Smith says he's speaking for Mr. Grayson as well as for himself. I am baloney. John Grayson feels the same way about the World Peace Federation as I do. He told me so a hundred times. He even said so at our an annual banquet last month, Chief. And, and when he laid the cornerstone for the Unity House Gymnasium just a couple of weeks ago. That's right. He may have felt that way then. But he's changed his mind since. Rubbish. I don't intend to dispute the matter, Mr. White. You have Mr. Grayson's signed letter giving me full authority to determine editorial policy and all other policies on this newspaper. I know, but... May I see that letter, Chief? It's right here on my desk. Here. Here it is. Let me see it, will you, Clark? Yes, yeah, sure. 
It's on Mr. Grayson's own stationery. Says this will introduce Mr. Homer S. Smith, who will hereafter act as my personal representative with Mm -hmm. full authority to determine all policy, editorial and otherwise, on the Daily Planet. Well, good heavens. Nothing indefinite about that, is there? Is this Grayson's signature, Chief? Yes, but I can't believe he ever wrote it. It can very easily be verified. Have you called Mr. Grayson about this, Chief? Well, I called his office and, and they told me he's not in. I don't understand it. That's strange. More than strange, Lois. It's serious. Chief, you and I are going to find Mr. Grayson, wherever he is, and have a little talk with him. Come on. You say you did appoint Homer Smith as your personal representative on the Daily Planet, Mr. Grayson? That's right, Kent. With full authority to determine all policy? Correct. I I can't believe it. You're kidding. I, I'm sorry. I had to put someone in over your head, Terry, but... Well, I haven't liked the way things have been going on the paper. You never told me that. I, uh... I, I, I know, but... Uh, well, I, I didn't see any reason for talking it over. You're... And you're rather set in your ways, you know. No, I am, eh? And so now Just you... Just a minute, Chief. You stay well, out of this, Kent. Our circulation is at an all-time high, isn't it, John? Why, uh... And we got the international prize for outstanding and impartial reporting of the news for the fifth straight year, didn't we? Well, I I guess we did. You guess we did. You know blame well we did. And you were so tickled about it, you wanted to give me another raise. Only I made you give it to my staff and said. And that was only three months ago. And now, now you've got the nerve to tell me you don't like the way things are going. Well, I... Maybe Mr. Grayson means he doesn't like our editorial policy, Chief. Yes. That's right. That's right, Kent. Now, our editorial policy is the same as it's always been. There's been no change, and you approved it, John. Well, yes, I know I did, but... Well, now, maybe Mr. Smith is right. Maybe Mr. Grayson has changed his mind about our policy. As, for example, our strong support of the World Peace Federation. How about it, Mr. Grayson? Yes, I I have changed my mind about that. What? After you've gone on record a hundred times as being in favor of it as the only means of preserving peace? Well, I can change my mind, can't I? Not about this, you can. Now, wait a minute. You gave me the go-ahead on it, and you can't make me back down now. Oh, is that so? Well, you get this, Perry. I own the majority of stock on the planet and what I say goes. And I say that from here on in, you'll take orders from Homer Smith on all matters of policy. Now, is that clear? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, but I'm too busy to discuss this any longer. Good day, Jack. Come on, Chief. Oh, Please. no, no. Now, you listen to me, John Please, Grayson. Chief. We've been friends for a long time. And if you think you can push me around, you've got another thing coming. I said I don't care to discuss this anymore, Barry. I don't care what you said. Chief, I... Chief, come on, will you? I think I Let's understand. Let's go of my arm, Kent. Let go. I'm going to tell this this turncoat a thing or two. Come on, I said I've got something to tell you. I don't want to hear you. I want will to tell you. Will you come along? You're just wasting your breath. I understand this and you don't. You understand what? Go outside and I'll tell you. That's better. Goodbye, Mr. Grayson. Almost forcibly, Clark Kent leads Perry White from John W. Grayson's library. What is in Kent's mind? We'll return in a moment to find out. So stand by. You know, gang, nobody wants a gloom box at the breakfast table in the morning. So if you want to show up with a cheerful disposition and a sunny smile, get hip to that sunny breakfast cereal, Kellogg's Pet. Why, just one glimpse of those toasted whole wheat flakes, all golden and crisp, and you're bound to be in a good mood. You feel like eating the super sort of breakfast that gives your day a happy start. You see, Kellogg's Pep is called the Sunshine Cereal. It's chock full of sparkling sunshine flavor, a comeback for more flavor that your appetite can really latch on to. And every flake is crisp and and tender and mouth-watering good. Believe me, your first taste of Kellogg's Pep tells you that you're going to get a kick out of every last spoonful in your dish. And that's the way it should be, sure, because it's not good to waste cereal. And nowadays, the cereal grains are being sent to fellows and girls overseas. So keep that in mind when Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers. Don't waste it. If you pour your own Pep, pour it carefully and polish off every bit you pour out. Pass the word along to the rest of your family, too. Always make sure to eat all your Pep. Don't waste it. Outside the great stone house of John W. Grayson, millionaire publisher of the Metropolis Daily Planet, editor Perry White is fuming with rage. Oh, why did you drive me away, Kent? I wanted to give that hypocritical turn called Grayson a piece of my mind. Well, it wouldn't do any good, Chief. He's too scared. Scared? Scared of what? I don't know. But in all my life, I've never seen a man as scared as Grayson. Didn't you notice his eyes and the way his hands and mouth kept twitching? No, but... Oh, you're crazy, Kent. You're crazy. John Grayson was never scared of anything. Well, he's scared now, Chief. Scared half out of his wits. 
And I'm positive the reason for his fear is tied up with what he did today. What do you mean? His change of heart on the World Peace Federation. And his appointing Homer Smith to run the Daily Planet. There's something strange going on, Chief. Something strange and evil. And we've got to find out what it is. You're right, Clark. Something strange and evil is going on. A great secret menace which will try all your great powers. And which may prove too much for even you, Superman, unless you act quickly. What is the secret menace which Clark Kent says has frightened millionaire John Grayson half out of his wits? And what will happen at the Daily Planet? Tomorrow, the secret menace strikes. So don't fail to be with us. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement... The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, think of all the famous names you know, and you'll think of Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Then you'll think of Kellogg Shredded Wheat. Makes breakfast loads of fun. Crisp, tender biscuits of whole wheat, toasted just right, and packed with natural nut-sweet flavor. Just the right size, too. Made to fit the bowl. As for nutrition, well, Mom knows that whole wheat is mighty good for you. And for economy, she likes the 15. 15 biscuits in every package. Try Kellogg Shredded Wheat. You'll like it. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, editor Perry White of the Daily Planet is a worried man, as he finds his publisher, John J. Grayson, strangely adamant in his decision to withdraw support from the World Peace Federation. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, tomorrow morning, if you want to feel happy about the whole idea of a super sort of breakfast, cast your eyes on that bowl of Kellogg's Pep. There's a fetching dish, if ever there was one. Every tender crisp flake is all golden and toasted. Piled up in your bowl, they make a sight that's mighty easy on the eyes, believe me, and so easy to take. Why, Kellogg's Pep is called the sunshine cereal. It's crammed full of sparkling sunshine flavor that gives your appetite the go-ahead every time almost coaxes you to eat. Kellogg's Pep is a winner for nutrition, too. Gives you full whole wheat nourishment, plus your mom will tell you that. So if you're Hep Gang, you'll want to polish off every last spoonful of Pep in your bowl. And say, another angle, nowadays the cereal grains are being sent to give that good grain nourishment to fellows and girls all over the world. So you don't want to waste cereal. When mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers, make it your job to see that there's no waste at your house. Handle the package carefully if you pour your own pep. And eat up every bit you pour out. Pass the word along to the rest of your family, too. Make it a habit to eat all your pep. Don't waste it. And now, the adventures of Superman. When John J. Grayson, millionaire publisher of the Daily Planet, suddenly and without warning appointed a man named Homer Smith to exercise full control over the paper, editor Perry White hit the ceiling. And when Smith's first act was to order White to withdraw the planet's support from the World Peace Federation and to attack it instead, Clark Kent and Lois Lane also hit the ceiling. Kent and White went to see publisher Grayson, who was strangely evasive, but insisted that Smith be obeyed without question. As we continue now, Kent and White are returning to the Daily Planet in a taxi cab. Listen. I've known John Grayson for 25 years, but I never suspected he was a hypocrite uh, and a dirty turncoat. I don't think he is, Chief. What? Didn't you hear him say he's changed his mind about the Federation and wants us to attack it? He didn't tell us to attack it. Homer Smith did. Well, he's Grayson Stooge, isn't he? I'm not so sure about that. What are you talking about, Kent? 
Didn't Grayson just tell us that Smith is his personal representative on the Daily Planet and must be obeyed? Yes, but I don't think it's as simple as that, Chief. I've got a feeling of something fishy behind Grayson's sudden change of heart about the World Peace Federation. Something he's afraid to tell us. Oh, you're letting your imagination run away with you, can't you? No, I'm not. Grayson fears something, and we've got to track down whatever he's afraid of. We don't have to do any such thing. I know what I'm going to do, and what you'll do, too, if you have an ounce of manhood in you. What? Well, I'll tell you. We're coming to the planet. I want you to round up Lois and Jim Olsen and bring them to my office. I'll show Mr. Grayson where he gets off. Now, look. We've been backing the World Peace Federation because we believe it's the only way to avoid war. Right? Right. You bet. Now, John Grayson tells us to kick our beliefs and our conscience out of the window and attack the Federation. Well, I, for one, won't do it. Now, how about you? Oh, no, I I I. Wait a minute. I want to... All right. I'm going to write out my resignation right now. And if you, Kent, Lois, and Jim, have an ounce of self-respect, you'll do the same. I certainly will. Well, so will I. I won't work for a paper that attacks the World Peace Federation. I want to live in a peaceful world. Bravo, Jim. Now, just a minute. You I won't think... any of you have to worry about new jobs. The Daily Blade's been trying to get me over there for years. Well, I'll take you all along with me. I know Tony Sloan will come with us, too, Chief. Yeah, and so will Harry Goldman. A- and Bill Burroughs will. Oh, look, please, listen. Good. Yeah. We'll take all our key people. Let Grayson and his stooge, Homer Smith, try to run the planet without us and see how fast they run it into the ground. It'll serve him right. That's what I say. Come on, Clark, let's sit down and no, write No, 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 wait a minute, please. You're all wrong. That isn't what we want. What's Clark, that, Ken? What do you mean, Clark? Look, the Daily Planet's the top paper in Metropolis and one of the best in the country. That's right. It's a great influence for justice, tolerance, and good Americanism. We've got to keep it that well, way. How can we when Grayson puts a man like Homer Smith in here to run things? We've been backing the Peace Federation for all it's worth. And now, Smith tells us to about face and attack it. That alone will ruin our reputation for honesty. Of course it will. Well, now, maybe we won't have to about face on the Federation. Oh, but we will. You heard what Smith said. Yes, and Grayson backed him up. I don't believe Mr. Grayson is backing Smith because he wants to, but because he has to. Huh? What's that, Clark? No, Kent's got some wild notion that Grayson's scared stiff of something or, or somebody. Oh? I'm sure he is. And that's the reason for the sudden changes around here. Mr. Grayson's always struck me as being a, a, a sincere, progressive American, but now he's afraid of something. If we can find out what it is... Well, you mean you think somebody's got a hold on him, Mr. Kent? Could be, Jim. Oh, poppycock. John Grayson's rich, powerful, and influential. He's not afraid of anything or anybody. I tell you, you're wrong, Chief. Dead wrong. You know, the more I think of it, the more I think Clark might be right. Yeah, me too. You're all crazy, I tell you. Grayson, Look, said... Chief, wait a minute now. You've given a good part of your life to the planet, haven't you? I certainly have. It was only a small paper when I came to work on it as a reporter. And now it's one of the great papers of the country you want to walk out on. It. What do you mean, want to? Do I have to get sentimental and say it breaks my heart to go? The planet's been my life for 20 years. And I, well, I've been pretty proud to see it grow up. That's why you've got to stay, Chief. We've all got to stay and fight. We can't let the planet fall into the hands of men like Homer Smith. I'm with you, Mr. Kent. So am I, Clark. Well, how about it, Chief? Well, I don't know. Hold it. Here comes Smith now. I expect people to knock before they enter my office, Smith. Sorry, White. But since I'm in charge here now, I hardly consider that necessary. Oh, you don't, eh? Quiet, Quiet, Jim. I don't care, White. I made it very clear this morning I wanted the editorial I wrote, the one against the World Peace Federation, on the first page of today's planet. I've just seen the dummy. And the editorial isn't included. You bet it isn't, and it won't be. You realize, White... That you're deliberately disobeying my orders? Put it that way if you like. And also put your head in a bucket and soak it. Oh, Jim. boy. Very well. I accept your resignation, Mr. White. Uh, you what? I said I accept your resignation from the Daily Planet. Take effect at once. Well, that's what you think. I've got a contract. I understand that you have. That it still has ten months to run. But contracts can be paid off, you know. I'll instruct the cashier to draw a check for ten months' salary to your order. Then I'll expect you to leave here for good. Now, wait. Well, you can't do that. If Mr. White goes, so do I. That's quite all right with me, Miss Lane. As a matter of fact, I think it might be an excellent idea of you, Mr. Kent, and you, Olson, left the planet's employ also. As such good friends of Mr. White, you might not be, uh, happy under a different regime. Good day, my friend. Well, fire. There goes your little plan, Kent. Maybe not, Chief. Well, you just heard him. Take it easy now. Wait a minute. We're not licked yet. Where do you keep your contract, Chief? In my safety deposit box at the bank. Why? There's something I just remembered. I want to see that contract to check it over. Come on to the bank with me. Uh, 
Huh? I thought I remembered you telling me about this clause in your contract, Chief. Here, read it. Right where my finger's pointing. Uh, let's see. Good Godfrey, I forgot all about that clause, Kent. It's been ten years since Grayson and I talked contract. We've just renewed automatically every year. I figured you'd forgotten. Oh, Kent, you're wonderful. So, Smith thinks he's got me over a barrel, eh? Let's go on back to the planet. And just watch his face when he gets a load of this. Read that clause in my contract, Smith. Now, you see, it gives me undisputed authority to determine the editorial policy of the Daily Planet until the contract expires. Ten months from now. And I can't be bought off. Uh, 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 does seem to give you that right, doesn't it? No seeming about it, brother. It does. Well, what have you got to say now? Uh, Grayson didn't tell me about this. Well, I am telling you. And I'm adding what I said before. Go soak your head in a bucket. For the next ten months, I'm running the Daily Planet. And that means we're still on the side of the World Peace Federation. You're making a great mistake, White. I'm making a mistake? Yes. I'd really advise you to accept the ten-month salary in advance and resign. We'll save you a lot of trouble. Smith, you've got more brass than a brass monkey, and you're just about as bright. But get this. You can sit around here, if you like, as Mr. Grayson's flunky. But the next time you open your mouth about how I'm running this paper, out you go in your ear. You understand? We'll see about that, White. Good day, Mr. Smith. Good day. <laughs> Me and this contract. I'll show him. He's running the planet, is he? He's still on the side of the World Peace Federation, eh? Let's see about that. Hello? Joe? Yeah, who's this? Homer Smith. Oh, yeah, Mr. Smith. What's cooking? I've got a little job for you. A job? Sure. What, Mr. Smith? Be on the southwest corner of Front and Main in 15 minutes. I'll pick you up in a cab. Front just me, Mr. Smith? Just you, at the moment. But better tell a couple of your boys to stand by. You may need them later. Replacing the phone, Homer Smith adjusts his eyeglasses, smooths his thick, mouse-colored hair, and reaches for his hat. We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, how good a marksman are you? Tell you how you can fix it so you can make a super score. Tomorrow morning at breakfast, train your aim on a blueberry bullseye. That's this week's pep dish of the week. And the tasty kind of target you just can't miss. Here's the idea. You pour into your bowl your regular serving of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Heap a mound of chilled fresh blueberries, smack dab in the center, and finish off with milk and sugar. That's all the doing it takes to set up your blueberry bullseye. And, well, you can take it from there, gang. You'll be hitting this target time after time without any practice at all. Because those crisp, tender flakes of pep will show you the way. That sunny, golden toasted pep flavor is sure lure. It's got come on in every delicious spoonful. Makes you want to polish off every last bit of pep in your bowl. Which is certainly the right idea. Particularly nowadays when the cereal grains are being sent to fellows and girls overseas. Remember that when mom brings Kellogg's pep home from the grocers. Keep a lookout to see that it's not wasted. And pass the word along to the rest of your family, too. If you pour your own pep, pour it carefully and eat up every bit you pour out. Make sure you eat all your pep. Don't waste it. At 7 o'clock that evening, Clark Kent and Lois Lane are growing impatient in the dining room of the Metropolis Hotel. It's 7 o'clock, Clark, and the chief and Jim were due here at 6. Where do you suppose they are? Search me, Lois. Maybe you ought to call the office again. Well, just call the office. Beanie says Mr. White and Jim left an hour ago. Oh, that's funny. The chief told us to be here promptly at 6. He said it was important. I know. He wants to plan an even stronger support for the World Peace Federation. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Jim. Oh, good. I was beginning to get worried. Hi, Jim. Hi. Where's the chief? Isn't he here? Does it look like he is? You went with him to his lawyer's office, didn't you, Jim? Oh, sure, but that was a long time ago. Well, then I went over to the vaults to leave his contract. Well, where, where did he go? Oh, he got in a cab to come here. What? Are you sure? Of course I am. Cheapers. That was over an hour ago. Alarmed, Clark Kent, Lois Lane, and Jimmy Olsen look wildly about the fashionable restaurant, but see no sign of Editor Perry White. What has happened to him? Was Homer Smith's short telephone conversation responsible for the absence of Perry White? 
Who is the mysterious Homer Smith? And what is the terror which Clark Kent says grips John Grayson, millionaire publisher of the Daily Planet? One of the most exciting and dangerous adventures of his entire career faces Clark Kent, gang. So don't miss a single episode of our new story. Tune in Monday, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, here's a famous name that brightens up your breakfast. It's Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Kellogg, as in Kellogg shredded wheat. What a treat. Tender, plump biscuits full up with natural nut-sweet flavor and toasted just right for extra crispness. But that's not all. Kellogg shredded wheat biscuits are just the right size, made to fit the bowl. And there are 15. 15 biscuits in every package, each one full of swell whole wheat nourishment. Ask Mother to get you some Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P E P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. Serious trouble is brewing at the Daily Planet. Trouble that has Clark Kent gravely worried as editor Perry White fails to keep an appointment with his staff. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, did you know Kellogg's Pep is a wizard at magic? Yes, sir. Pep the Sunshine cereal has a magic touch that can transform breakfast into a wizard of a meal and no sleight of hand needed. Because any way you look at it, Pep is a slick trick. Just pour out a serving of those crisp light flakes of whole wheat, top with cool milk and sugar, and get set to enjoy yourself. Pep is tender and crisp all at the same time. Crunchy and delicate as can be. Pep is full of light sunshine flavor. A come-on flavor that keeps your spoon coming right back for more. Yes, sir, Kellogg's Pep sure has the wonderful magic touch that puts breakfast on the beam every time. And Pep boosts your quota of nutrition, too. Gives you solid whole wheat nourishment plus. So you're on the right track if you polish off every tender crisp flake in your bowl. And say, gang, here's another angle. Nowadays, the cereal grains, like the whole wheat and Kellogg's Pep, are being sent to fellows and girls overseas. So it's not a good idea to waste cereal. Eat up every bit that you pour into your dish. That's a cinch, isn't it? Just be sure to eat all your pep. Don't waste it. Now, the adventures of Superman. When John Grayson, millionaire publisher of the Daily Planet, appointed a stranger named Homer Smith to direct the policies of the paper, Smith's first move was to order Editor Perry White to withdraw the planet's support from the World Peace Federation and to attack it instead. Shocked. White, Lois Lane, and Jimmy Olsen wanted to resign, but were persuaded not to by Clark Kent, who said that Grayson was being coerced by some mysterious fear. When a clause was discovered in White's contract, giving him full authority to determine the planet's editorial policy, he gleefully defied Smith. Enraged, Smith made a private phone call, and that evening, White failed to keep an appointment with Kent and Lois. As we continue now in the dining room of the Metropolis Hotel, Jimmy has just joined Kent and Lois. Listen. I just talked to Poker at the chief's house. He hasn't heard from him either. Yeah, and Beanie says he didn't come back to the office after he left me. I called the newspaper club and he isn't there either. But he left word there that he could be reached here. Gosh, where do you suppose he is? And imagine, Jim. He, he might have been in an accident, Clark. Oh, that's not likely, Lois. The police would have notified the office. But something yeah. must have happened to him. He wouldn't just keep us waiting here for an hour and a half and, and not even tell us. I know, I know. Look, Jim, you, you say you saw him get into a cab? Uh-huh, when we left his lawyer's office. Yeah? He sent me over to the vaults to deposit his contract and said he'd meet me here at the hotel. He got the cab in front of the Balsam building? Right. 
What kind of a cab was it? Do you remember? Oh, it was a Packard. One of those privately owned hacks. Oh? You remember what the driver looks like? The driver? Yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, We're wasting time, Clark. I think we ought to get in touch with Inspector Henderson. Just a moment, Lois. Do you remember what the driver looked like, Jim? Yeah, sure. He was a little red-headed guy with a turned-up nose. Oh? I remember because he reminded me of Mickey Rooney. Good boy. All right, you and I'll go over there, Jim, and see Look, if we can... Look, this is no time to play detective, Clark. We've got to get in touch with Inspector Henderson. All right, you do that, Lois. Then call the office again and call Poco. Leave word to call you here if they hear from the chief. But I'm going to headquarters. You are not. It's just possible the chief was delayed and will turn up here, so someone has to stay. Oh, yes. Jim and I are going over to the Balsam building and see if we can find that taxi driver. We'll contact you later. Come on, Jim. <laughs> Don't see the driver, huh, Jim? No. Maybe he quit for the day, Mr. King. Well, that isn't likely. The chief got in his cab around 6 o'clock, and drivers on duty then usually work through the night. Oh. But why do you think the driver will come back to the Balsam building? Because you said his cab was parked waiting for a fare when you saw it. There's a hack sign at the curb there, so chances are this particular driver used this stand. Oh, that's right. I didn't notice the sign. Uh-oh. Cab just pulled in there. Come on, Jim. Where? Oh, yeah. Oh, but that isn't the driver, Mr. I told you, he was a little red-headed guy. I know, but this fellow might know something about it. Oh. Uh, pardon me, buddy. Get him, Mac. Get him. Where do you want to go? Oh, we don't want to go anyplace. We'd just like some information, if you don't mind. Uh, Have you... Can you beat it? Get a third guy in five minutes wanting information. Huh? One guy asked where the subway is. Another one, if I can see his little dog, which is Lois. And a dame asked me how she can go out to visit a ramp and fill in the propolis heights without taking a cab. Very interesting, oh, but I... look, Mac, am I running a hack or an information bureau? That's what I want to know. Oh, oh, I see your point. Oh, well, here. Here, maybe this will pay you for your time in answering a question or two. Oh, well, what do you know? Five bucks. Hey, you're a right Joe, Mac. Fire away. What do you want to know? Ask me anything. We're looking for a cab driver who was parked here a couple of hours ago at just about six o'clock. He drove an independently owned Packard cab. Yeah, he's a little red-headed guy with a turned-up nose. It looks kind of like Mickey Rooney. Uh, I don't know hacky... No hacky that looks like Mickey Rooney. You don't? Yeah. Uh, I don't hardly know any hackies. I just got separated from the Army, see? This is my first day driving a hack. Oh, sure. I see. Did you happen to be parked here around 6 this evening? 6 yeah. o'clock? Mm-hmm. No, no. I was taking a fare over to Marshall Square about that time. <laughs> Wacky old party. Let me tell you about him. I'm sorry, you... but we're in a hurry. Thanks very much, though. For nothing. You're welcome, Max. Come again anytime. Well, that was a washout. What do we do now, Mr. Kent? Keep waiting around to see if our driver shows up? No, I don't think so. And we've been here an hour already. Anyway, I've just thought of a surer way of locating him. Oh, how? I'll show you if necessary after we've talked to Lois. She might have heard from the chief by now. Gosh, I hope so. I'm getting awful worried. All right, come on. There's a drugstore on the corner. I'll call her from there. <laughs> Not yet, Lois. How about you? Not a thing. Uh-oh. I called the office again and Mr. White's house, the newspaper pub, and his lawyer, and every place else I could think of, but it's no soap. Oh. Now, I'm really getting scared, Clark. Here it is almost three hours since he was supposed to meet us, and then... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Take it easy, Lois. Did you call Inspector Henderson? Yes, of course. Right after you and Jim left. Uh-huh. He said he'd do what he can, but he hasn't called back yet. Well, he hasn't had much time. Now, look, Jim and I are going over to headquarters. What for? We're going to check on a hack driver at the public vehicle bureau. Oh. I want you to call John Grayson, our well, publisher, I... and tell him the chief is missing. Yes. Tell him... I did. I've already called him. He's out of town. He is? Yes. Where did he go? Do you know? No. The butler didn't know either, and Mrs. Grayson's out. She won't be back until about 11. That's odd. Grayson didn't say anything about leaving town when the chief and I saw him this morning. So what? Well, nothing, maybe. Maybe? What do you mean? No, I'd rather not talk about it yet. Now, look, Lois, you stay at the hotel, so we... so useless. Well, show him your press card and stay there. If anything turns up, call me at the Public Vehicle Bureau at Police Headquarters. Right. Have you got that? Yes, I have. But, Clark, I'm terribly worried. Well, frankly, so am I. I'll call you later. I never knew there were so many taxi drivers in Metropolis, Mr. Kent. I'll bet I've looked at a thousand photographs. Oh, hardly that many, Jim. I only showed you the ones whose description mentions red hair. Hmm. Now what? Well, we've gone through all the photographs in the police files. Well, we couldn't if we haven't found the driver we're looking for yet. Either you missed him among these photographs. No, I or... didn't. I remember what he looked like. Well, then this is really beginning to look serious, Jim. What do you mean? 
I mean that apparently the man who drove Mr. White from the Balsam building this evening was not a registered hack driver. But he must have been. He had a regular taxi. Not one of the big fleet cabs, but a privately owned one. Well, sure, but... It I... isn't hard to take a limousine and paint taxi and the rate charges on the doors. Huh? Well, no, I, I guess it isn't. Why should anyone want to do that? Because it's an excellent way to avoid leaving a trail, that's why. Once the job is over, the paint is removed from the doors, and the driver, who isn't registered as a hacky, merely disappears. Jeepers. You think somebody waited for Mr. White in a phony cab and and then took him away someplace? That's exactly what I think, Jim. But but who? I'm not sure. And why? Well, I'm not sure of that either, but I've got an idea. Yeah, what is it? Well, I think... Uh-oh, it's past 11 o'clock. I've got to be going. Where? Well, there's no time to explain now. Oh, there you go with that no time to explain stuff again. Please, Jim, don't interrupt me. I want you to promise me something. What's that? I want your word that you'll go straight home in a taxi. A taxi I'll put you in, and that you'll stay home until you come to work tomorrow. But why can't I go with you? Because you can't, and that's that. You're in danger enough as it is. Danger? Me? Yes, you and Lois, too, and I'm not sure who else. That's why I'm making sure Lois doesn't leave the Metropolis Hotel until I call for her. But I don't get it. What danger are we in? Well, if I'm right, and I think I am... You're in great danger from the same people who caused Mr. White's disappearance. What? How about it, Jim? You're holding me up on something very important. Will you promise me to go right home and stay there? Well, if you put it that way... Attaboy. All right, come on. I will find a cab and send you home. And then just keep your fingers crossed that my little hunch will work out. Reluctantly and nervously, too, Jimmy Olsen accompanies Clark Kent from police headquarters. What hunch is Kent about to follow... We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, come and get it, gang. We're all set to give you the steer on this week's pet dish of the week. And is it a rip snorter? It's called Peach Roundup. Yes, sir, Peach Roundup, a brand new dish with brand new fixings for Kellogg's Pet, the sunshine cereal. Now, here's how you rustle it up. Place half a peach in your breakfast bowl. Cover it with your regular serving of pet and top with the other peach half, round side up. Add cream, milk, and sugar, and there's your peach roundup. Just wait till your folks see the high, wide, and handsome dish you've shaped up. Why, there's bound to be a regular stampede. So dig right in pronto and get that terrific peach and pep flavor. Mm-mm. You'll say those crisp, tender flakes of Kellogg's Pep are mighty fine grazing. Why, Pep's smooth, full wheat flavor goes over big every time. Each golden toasted flake has you wanting more of the same till your bowl's clean empty, which is the right idea, particularly nowadays when we're sending the grains to fellows and girls across the seas. So remember to eat every bit of Pep you pour into your dish. Make it a habit to eat all your Pep. Don't waste it. Jimmy Olsen has just returned to his house. Calling out to his mother, who was in her room upstairs, that he will go to bed directly, the young reporter enters the kitchen for a glass of milk. He is opening the refrigerator when the telephone rings. Quickly, he goes into the dining room and answers. Hello? Is this James Olson? Yes, who... Do you by any chance know Mr. Perry White? Do I? I'll say I do. He's my boss and he's... Wait a minute. What about him? He gave me a message for you. He did? For me? For when? Where? Well, as a matter of fact, the message was first for Mr. Clark Kent and then for Miss Lois Lane... And finally, for you. Oh, well, they're out. What about this message? Where did you get it, and what is please, it? Please, please, don't be so impetuous. I've had a great deal of trouble about this message already. I've also lost at least two hours of sleep. Well, then, tell me what it is, will you, please? Well, it isn't something I can tell you. I, I must give it to you. What do you mean? Well, it's in a sealed envelope, and I never open other people's mail. If you wish it, you must come over here for it. Oh, yeah? Come where? To the newspaper club. What? A newspaper club? Exactly. I shall be in the library doing my best to keep awake. But hurry, please. Okay, but... But wait, what's your name? How'd you get... Hello? 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 Doggone it, he hung up. Jeepers, I don't get this. But he said he had a message from Mr. White, and he's at the newspaper club. I know I promised Mr. Kent I'd stay home, but... Ooh, there can't be any danger there. I'd better get over there right away. Despite his promise to Clark Kent not to leave his house, Jimmy Olsen grabs his hat and runs out. What will happen now? Who phones the boy reporter saying he had a message from Perry White? Can it be true? Tomorrow's episode is tense and exciting, fellows and girls, so don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep for excitement. The Adventures of Superman. (laughs) 
Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. <laughs> Say, gang, when you think of famous names, do you think of Kellogg? You know, that's the greatest name in cereals. And Kellogg makes Kellogg shredded wheat, the tender, plump biscuits, made just the right size to fit your breakfast bowl. And are they good? Full to the brim with natural nut-sweet flavor. Good for you, too. They're made of nutritious whole wheat. What's more, Kellogg gives you 15, 15 delicious biscuits in every package of Kellogg shredded wheat. Try them soon. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, grave danger hovers over Jimmy Olsen as he leaves his home against Clark Kent's orders, hopeful of finding some clue to the mysterious disappearance of Editor Perry White. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, don't look now, but are you missing something? Something slick in the breakfast line called a peach roundup? Well, if you are, it's high time you joined the stampede for this week's pep dish of the week. Yes, sir, it's peach roundup for you. Now, uh, let me show you the ropes. You lay half a chilled peach in your breakfast dish, cover it with your regular serving of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, and top with the other peach half, round side up. Say, will you be riding high when you tie up with this swell peach and pep team? Of course, it's Kellogg's Pep that makes this super dish what it is. Pep is crisp. Pep is tender. Why, those toasty flakes are so golden tasting, so all-out smacking, whacking good that, well, before you can say, yippee, you've made away with every last flake in your bowl. Sure. And just see if Pep doesn't make breakfast time, roundup time for the rest of your family, too. See if they don't polish off their dishes of Pep clean as a whistle. That's the hep thing to do, you know. Nobody wants to waste cereal, especially nowadays when the cereal grains are being sent to fellows and girls overseas. So remember, gang, eat all your pep. Don't waste it. Now, the adventures of Superman. When John Grayson, millionaire publisher of the Daily Planet, appointed a man named Homer Smith to act as his personal representative, Smith ordered Editor Perry White to withdraw the planet's support from the World Peace Federation and to attack it instead. But White defied Smith, and that evening, he disappeared. Saying he had a theory he wished to investigate, Clark Kent sent Jimmy Olsen home with strict orders to remain there. But shortly before midnight, the young reporter received a phone call from an unknown man who said he had a message for him from White and instructed him to come to the newspaper club. As we continue now, Jimmy has just left his house. It is a dark, moonless night, and the street is deserted. Jimmy hesitates a moment, remembering Kent's words. You're in great danger, Jim. I want you to promise me not to leave your house until morning. Oh, shucks. Nothing can happen to me at the newspaper club. I'll walk up to the boulevard and flag a cab. Hey, Uh, wait one minute, kid. Huh? Who said that? Me. I said, don't move. Stay where you are. Terrified, his legs suddenly like rubber, Jimmy stands rooted to the sidewalk, unable to move, as a huge, burly figure steps swiftly from the bushes and blooms upon him. The young reporter tries to shout, but his tongue cleaves to the roof of his mouth. Then he recognizes Boris Harchenko, the brawny foreman in the Daily Planet printing room. Boris? Yeah, it's Boris. Oh, boy, did you give me a scare. I, I thought... You... Never mind, you thought... Why you do go out of house when Mr. Kent say you stay inside? Oh, did, did Mr. Kent send you to watch me? Yeah. He say, Boris, I think Jim may be in danger. You go see he don't leave house tonight. Also see nobody go in Jim house tonight. Well, I've got to go to the newspaper club. You can come along if you want to. No, you don't go no place. Oh. 
Mr. Kent, he say, you stay in your house. By golly, you stay in house. Now, look, Boris. Come, Boris, take you inside. No, wait, will you listen? There's somebody waiting for me at the newspaper club. He knows about Mr. White. Uh, what about Mr. White? Well, you know he disappeared, don't you? Yeah, Boris, no. He's very sad. Okay, so I got a phone call just now, and this man, whoever he is, said he's got a message for me from Mr. White. Hey, what kind of message? I don't know. Now, look, Boris, if you're coming along, let go of my arm. I've got to get over to the club, and fast. No, no, Jim. You don't go there. Why? This business is smell very bad to Boris. He smell like phony trick. Uh-uh, I think it's on the level, Boris. You see, I thought it was a trick, too, until he told me to meet him at the newspaper club. But only big shot reporters and editors and correspondents and people like that belong to the club. So nothing can happen to me there. Now, come on. Come with me. We've got to hurry. <laughs> The newspaper club library, Boris, where the man said he'd wait for me. Is nobody here? Huh. That's funny. Like I say before, this is smell bad, Jim. But why should he tell me to come all the way down here if he... Oh, wait, here comes a porter. I'll ask him. Uh, excuse me. I'm Jim Olson of the Daily Planet. Uh, yes, sir, uh, Mr. Olson. I've seen you here with Mr. White and Mr. Kent. Oh, that's right. Well, listen, somebody was supposed to meet me tonight uh, here in the library... Do you recall anyone waiting here? Uh, no, sir. Uh, could you tell me who the gentleman is, Mr. Olson? Well, I don't know. He just called me up to say he had to see me about Mr... Uh, about something important and said he'd wait in the library. I see. I'm sorry, but I don't recall seeing anyone in here during the last hour. Oh, well, gosh. I don't understand this at all. Puzzled and uneasy... Jimmy Olsen and Boris Archenko stand in the library of the newspaper club, uncertain of what to do next. Meanwhile, in John Grayson's fine home in a nearby suburb, Clark Kent is questioning Mrs. Grayson, wife of the Daily Planet publisher. So you don't know where your husband is, Mrs. Grayson? No, I don't, Mr. Kent. He packed a bag and left the house this morning, soon after you and Mr. White had been here. Didn't you ask him where he was going? Well, I... Yes? I... Look, Mrs. Grayson, I'm not merely being curious, you understand. Perry White has disappeared. And, well, it's just possible that Mr. Grayson might be able to help me trace him. I'm terribly shocked about Mr. White. But I really have no idea where my husband is, Mr. Kent. I, well, I, I did ask him where he was going. What did he say? He said he didn't know. What? He said it depended on how certain affairs developed. Well, that's all he would tell me. That's odd. I'm really quite worried, Mr. Kent. My husband never acted this way before. Well, he hasn't been at all like himself lately, either. How do you mean? Well, he's always been so haughty, you know, and good-natured. But lately, he's been so quiet and distraught. Why, he never even smiles anymore. I tried to talk to him about it several times, but he just snapped at me. It sounds as if there's something on his mind, doesn't it? I'm sure there is something worrying him, but he won't admit it. And once or twice... Yes? Well, I... I had the distinct impression... That he was terribly frightened of something. I'm sure he is. And John, why, why, he's never been afraid in his life. I can't understand it. I worry about it. Naturally, but I'm glad you've taken me into your confidence, Mrs. Grayson. Maybe I can help get to the bottom of this mystery. I do hope so. Tell me, do you know a man named Smith? Homer Smith? Well, yes. He's been here several times to see John. I believe he's some sort of business associate. Why do you ask? I'm a bit curious about him. Uh, wh what do you know about Mr. Smith? Oh, very little, really. He had dinner with us once, a month or two ago, and he's dropped in several times since then. Usually in the evening when he and John close themselves in the den to talk business, he... Oh. What is it? Oh, I, I, I know this seems silly, but it just occurred to me that John always seems especially disturbed after one of Mr. Smith's visits. Oh, that's very interesting. Do you happen to know where Mr. Smith lives, Mr. Grayson? Well, let me see. He mentioned it once. Oh, yes, I remember. He lives at the Metropolis Hotel. Metropolis Hotel? I left Lois there. I beg your pardon. Oh, uh, no, nothing, nothing. I, I, I've got to leave now, Mrs. Grayson. Uh, please don't worry about Mr. Grayson. I'm quite sure he's all right. Good night. Leaving the Grayson residence, Clark Kent steps behind a tall hedge and swiftly resumes his true identity of Superman. Then, up, up, and away! <laughs> Leaping high into the night sky, Superman streaks back to the city and to the Metropolis Hotel, where the mysterious Mr. Homer Smith lives, and where Lois Lane is supposedly still waiting for Kent's return. 
Meanwhile, Jimmy Olsen and Boris Archenko, after fruitless questioning of clerks and page boys, have left the newspaper club and entered a taxi which was waiting at the curb. I can't understand why this guy phoned me and said he had a message from Mr. White and then wasn't at the club. It doesn't add up, Boris. No, all I know is both things still smell bad, Jim. Very bad. Where to, Jets? Uh, one, six, two, three, where... What? The driver, he asked where we go. A uh, one, six, two, three, oh, where... Ahead, Boris. What did you say, driver? I said, where do you want to go? One, six, two, three, Western Avenue. Okay. Hey, what for? Boris, Boris, it's him. Him who? This taxi driver. He's the man who phoned me tonight. What? Yes, I'm sure of it. Now that I got a good look at him, I know he's the guy who drove Mr. White from the Balsam building when the chief disappeared. Boy, are we in a spot. His mouth dropping in shift amazement. Boris Archenko looks from the excited Jimmy Olsen to the wiry, red-headed little driver at the wheel of their cab. We'll return in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, if you're hep to Kellogg's Pep, most likely you're hep to eating a slick breakfast. And you're one of those up-and-at-em fellows or girls who tear off for fun every vacation day, all set for big doings. Because Pep sure does give your morning appetite the old one-two. Makes you want to eat plenty. Maybe it's that sunshine flavor, a keen sort of flavor that you can really latch on to. So good it practically begs to be eaten. Maybe it's the tender crispness of Kellogg's Pep, a delicate, crunchy crispness that, well, you practically can't resist. Or maybe it's the way Pep looks in your dish, all light and cool and inviting. But probably it's flavor and crispness and looks that make Pep so terrific. Why, you find each flake of pep has you wanting more of the same so that, well, when you pitch in, you keep right on, and before you know it, you've cleaned up every last flake in your bowl. And that's the right idea, especially nowadays, because the cereal grains are being sent to give that good grain nourishment to fellows and girls overseas. So get hep to pep, gang. Just remember, eat all your pep. Don't waste it. After boarding a taxi cab which was standing in front of the newspaper club, Jimmy Olsen gasped. Then said excitedly to Boris Archenko, the Daily Planet printing room foreman. Boris, the guy who's driving this cab is the one who phoned me tonight. What? Yes, I'm sure of it. What's more, he's the one who drove Mr. White from the Balsam building when the chief disappeared. Huh? You sure, Jim? I'm positive. He's the same little red-headed guy. Uh-huh. What do we do, Boris? You know what it's him. I fix him good. What? Say, what's he turning into this alley for? Leave him to me, Jim. I take care of this fella. You're not taking care of anybody, big boy. Look out for us. He's got a gun. Yes, and it's loaded. So you did remember me as the driver of Mr. White's cab, eh, Olsen? Huh? Well, what do you mean? I heard you just now. That's why I got you down to the newspaper club tonight, so I could pick you up in my cab and find out if you could identify me. Now, wait a minute. I... Well, you recognize me, all right, and that makes it too bad for you, Olsen. And for your big friend here. Step out of the car, please. This is the end of the line for you. <laughs> Trapped in the back of the taxi, Jimmy Olsen and Boris Archenko gaze into a gun muzzle, leveled at them by the red-haired driver. And although they're scarcely one block from a busy street, in this deserted alley, the block might as well be a mile. There's no one to see or to hear what is going on. What will happen? What is behind this mysterious menace, which has thrown a millionaire publisher into deadly fear? has caused the disappearance of editor Perry White and now threatens the lives of Jimmy Olsen and Boris Hutchenko. Tomorrow's episode is a thriller, gang, so don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. You know, gang, famous names make history. And Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals, has made history with good breakfast eating for a long time. For example, Kellogg shredded wheat. So crisp, so toasty, so delicious. Tender, plump biscuits, 
15 of them to a package. That's 15 biscuits crammed with their own natural nut sweet flavor and made just the right size to fit the bowl. And remember, this is whole wheat, so it's good for you, too. Ask Mother for Kellogg Shredded Wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Jimmy Olsen and the giant Daily Planet foreman, Boris Archenko, have walked into a dangerous trap as Superman, unaware of their plight, continues his search for Editor Perry White. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, if you want breakfast to give you a cool start these summer days, latch on to Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. There's a breakfast treat that is a treat. Packed with catchy flavor, a keen, sparkling sort of flavor that perks up your appetite like anything. I'll bet you never ate the likes of anything better. Pep is light and crisp, so tender it practically melts in your mouth. Why, Kellogg's Pep, topped with cool milk and sugar, tastes so terrific, it's worth a big, loud whistle. And then some. Only chances are you won't even have time to whistle because you'll be so busy digging into that bowl of Pep and finishing off every golden flake in your bowl. Mom likes that, you know, because pep is good for you. Sure, gives you solid whole wheat nourishment plus. What's more, it's never a good idea to waste cereal. And nowadays, we're sending the cereal grains to help give good nourishment to fellows and girls all over the world. So latch on to pep, gang. When Mom brings Kellogg's pep home from the grocers, remember to eat all your pep. Don't waste it. Now, the adventures of Superman. When Homer Smith, newly appointed representative of John Grayson, publisher of the Daily Planet, demanded that editor Perry White stop supporting the World Peace Federation and attack it instead, White defied him. Then, a few hours later, the gray-haired editor mysteriously disappeared. Late that night, Jimmy Olsen, sent home by Clark Kent for safety's sake, received a phone call from an unknown man who said he had a message for him from White and asked the young reporter to meet him in the library of the newspaper club. But when Jimmy arrived there with Boris Archenko, the giant Daily Planet printing room foreman, the club library was deserted. Puzzled, Jimmy and Boris left the club and entered a waiting taxi, the driver of which turned out to be the man Jimmy had last seen with Perry White. Overhearing Jimmy's startled explanation to Boris, the driver swerved the cab into an alley and leveled a pistol at his two passengers. Listen. So you did remember me, eh, Olsen? Why, I... That's what I... I wanted to find out. That's why I got you down to the newspaper club tonight. Sure. Oh. You call Jim on telephone tonight, huh? You say you got message from Mr. White, huh? Sure he did, Boris. That's right, big boy. And it's too bad for you that Olsen's got such a good memory. Get out of the cab now, both of you. This is the end of the line. Now, no, wait a minute. Listen, mister. You put away that gun or with bad hands. Please, I... relax. Here comes another car. Don't Maybe... get your hopes up, sonny boy. Those are my pals in that station wagon. What? Your pals? Yes. <laughs> Leo? Yes, you Everything okay? Right, come and get him. Okay, Olsen, and you, big boy, get out of the cab. Good work, Joe. Look, Jim, okay, I boys. take care of these take fellas. You're on the path. Nothing doing. I'm going to... You do like Boris, eh? Say... Nah, you're a tough guy. Come on, me off. Okay. I'm going to beat your tough guy. Well, Boris, it you. Look at that, boy, Boris. Come on, you guys. Pretty soon, big boy. We're going to hurry. We're making too much noise. You're not finished, Boris, in a hurry. Run, Jim, run. Hey, Uh-oh. hey, listen. That sounds like the cops. Slug him, Leo, fast. Let's get out of oh, here. Sorry, stupid. Boris, look out. Oh. Oh. That does it. Boris. Boris. Nice going, Leo. Oh, that takes oh. care of the big guy. Boris. Quick, now grab us and dump them both in the station wagon and then scram. Fast. I'll block the alley with the cab. Okay, Joe. Come on, you guys. On a double. Picking up the unconscious Boris Archenko. Gang lift him into the station wagon, force Jimmy in, and leap up beside him as Joe, the fake taxi driver, swings his cab around to block the narrow alley. Then he leaps from the cab into the station wagon, which roars away and disappears into the night. (laughs) 
Meanwhile, Superman, believing that Jimmy is safe at home, has streaked from the suburban residence of John Grayson, the Planet Publisher, to the Metropolis Hotel, where he had left Lois Lane. Once more in his guise of Clark Kent, he enters the hotel lobby and breathes a sigh of relief as he sees the girl reporter nervously pacing the floor. Thank heaven, you're still here. Why? You told me to wait here, didn't you? Yes, but that isn't the point. Well, I was skip a... it. Did you find out anything about Mr. White? No, but you Neither see... have I. Just talked to Inspector Henderson, and he hasn't found out anything either. Look, wait a minute. Oh, Clark, what are we going to do? I'm Look, so worried I could just die. Take it easy, Take it easy, Take it easy. Do you realize that it's 1 o'clock in the morning, and the chief has been missing since late yesterday afternoon? I know, but we've got to keep cool and use our heads. I've got a theory about the chief's disappearance. Well, isn't that peachy? This is no time for theories. We've got to find him. Will you pull yourself together? I want you to have a cool head when we speak to Mr. Smith. Mr. Who? Homer Smith, our publisher's uh, representative. Oh, that's too... He lives right here in this hotel. That's why I was so worried about you. Worried about me? Yes. I don't get it. And listen, will you? My hunch is that Mr. Homer Smith knows a good deal about the chief's disappearance. What? He may even have had something to do with it. Now, look, Claude, just because you dislike the man, there's no reason... Will you listen? Of being a... Smith ordered all of us on the Daily Planet to attack the World Peace Federation, didn't he? He certainly did, but we stopped his clock when Mr. White showed him that clause in his contract giving Mr. White the right to determine our editorial policy. Yes, and Smith didn't like that one little bit. Then he can lump it. He doesn't have to lump it if the chief disappears from the scene. Without Editor White's presence, no one can challenge his right to do what he wants on the planet. Now do you see what I'm driving at? Yes, but... Clark, you're out of your mind. I'm not. Do you think Mr. Grayson would make anyone his personal representative who was a... a, a criminal? Well, of course not. Not if he had a choice. But Grayson couldn't help making Smith his personal representative. What do you mean? I told you, Grayson is obviously living in mortal fear of something. Or someone. And I think that someone is Smith. Now, wait. I saw that fear in Grayson yesterday. And when I spoke to his wife tonight, she confirmed it. She said it started when Homer Smith began coming to their house a couple of months ago. But why? What's the connection between Smith and Grayson? Well, my hunch is that Smith has something on Grayson. And he's using it to get control of the Daily Planet so that he can fight the World Peace Federation. You're only guessing, Paul. Well, sure, I'm only guessing. But I think it's a good guess. For my money, the unassuming Mr. Smith is a resourceful and dangerous character. I believe he had something to do with Mr. White's disappearance. And unless we get the goods on him in a hurry, you and Jim, especially Jim, are in danger. Me? Jim? Why? Because Jim saw the driver of the taxi in which the chief was last seen. He could identify that driver. The logical assumption is that he told you and me about it. Good heavens, if you are right, Clark, but Jim, he might... Well, you know how impetuous he is. Uh, don't worry about Jim tonight. Oh. <sighs> He gave me his word he'd stay at home. And I posted Boris Archenko at his house to stand guard. Oh, well, that makes me feel a little better. But the chief, what are we... We're make... going to find the chief. Come on. Where are we going? We're going to call on Homer Smith. We'll get his room number from a desk clerk. Come on, this way. Never mind. Don't waste time knocking, Lois. Smith isn't in his room. How do you know? He hasn't had time to answer yet. I know, but he's not there, I tell you. You can see through the door, I suppose, like Superman. Yes. Oh, stop it, Clark. This is no time for jokes. Dear, why doesn't he answer? Because he isn't there, I said. But it's after one o'clock in the morning. So what? Everybody seems to be missing tonight. The chief, John Grayson, now Homer Smith. Grayson, too? Oh, yes, I forgot to tell you. He packed a bag and left his house without telling anyone where he was going. He did? Uh-huh. My hunch is that he, Smith, and the chief are all together someplace, which means bad news for the chief. Will you stop saying these terrible things? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was thinking out loud. Frankly, I'm worried, too. Plenty worried. Come on. Where to now? To police headquarters. There's something Inspector Henderson has to do, and fast. <laughs> Smith and John Grayson, Ken? So do I. No, I'm not, Inspector. Now, listen. Uh, yeah. uh, don't go into your song and dance again. But I don't... Know. I'll have Smith investigate it if it'll make you feel any better. Well, it will, but we can't wait for that. You've got to trace Smith and John Grayson tonight, right away. I'm certain that trail will lead to Perry White. Now, look, Kent. I've got the whole department hunting for Mr. White. We can't split up and start looking for everybody else under the sun just because you sell yourself a cockeyed idea. But it the isn't a cockeyed idea. I think it is. I know it is. Look, Grayson wouldn't sell out to anybody wanting to undermine the World Peace Federation. No, but... I know, Grayson. He's too big, too intelligent to do that. That's what but... I've been telling Clark. Will you please both listen to me? I tell you, Grayson hasn't changed his convictions. He's scared half out of his wits. I believe it's Homer Smith. He's scared of him. Not... That goes for me, too. Well, of all Stay the it, stubborn... It's my phone. All right. Anderson speaking. Oh, yes, Healy. You did? Where? Are you sure? Uh-huh. How about the driver? Oh, he did, huh? 
Okay, I'll be right out. Stay there. Well, folks, maybe we've got a lead at last. What do you mean, Inspector? A lead to Mr. White? Yeah. One of our patrol cars pulled into an alley behind the newspaper club to break up a fight. The newspaper club? Uh -huh. The and... men got away, but they left a Packard cab. What? One of those driver-owned jobs. Hey, wait a minute. That was the kind of car Mr. White disappeared in. Yes. Right, Kent. Healy thinks it's the same car. Come on, we've got to get over there. Follow me. Followed by Clark Kent and Lois Lane, Inspector Henderson leads the way from his office to his car. Will they pick up the trail of Jimmy Olsen and Boris Alchenko? We'll know in a moment when we return for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, gang, this week's pep dish of the week is sure riding high. Maybe that's because it's peach roundup. Yes, sir, that's what it's called. And let me say, you'll be sitting mighty pretty when you hit the breakfast trail with this slick dish. Now, here's the idea. You place half a peach in your dish. Cover it with your regular serving of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, and top with the other peach half, round side up. Add cool milk and sugar, and there's your peach roundup, one of the dozens of ways Kellogg's Pep can give breakfast a boost. These crisp, tender flakes of Pep set the pace. Pep up the peaches like anything. Yes, Pep just naturally does something for fruit, and does a mighty smooth job of rustling up your appetite, too. Because Pep is crisp and crunchy and tender toasted coaxes you on and on with its keen, sunny flavor till your bowl is polished off clean, which is always the right idea, and particularly right nowadays when we're sending the cereal grains to fellas and girls all over the world. Think of that when Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers. Eat every bit of Pep you pour into your dish. Remember, eat all your Pep. Don't waste it. As Clark Kent, Inspector Henderson, and Lois Lane hurried to the alley from which Jimmy Olsen and Boris Archenko had been taken in the station wagon... Jimmy and Boris, their arms and legs bound, are lying on the floor of a basement hideout a mile or two away. Half a dozen men playing cards at a nearby table pause in their play as one of their number, a hard-faced man named Leo, talks on the telephone. Now listen, Joe. That kind of job costs more money. I think he's talking about us, Boris. Hey, shut up, you. Stop monkey with them ropes. It won't do you no good. Shut up, Nick. Okay. Yeah. Go on, Joe. Five hundred extra? Well, I guess that'll be okay. Sure, sure, we'll take care of him right away. Okay. Yeah, yeah, relax. Check. So long. What'd he say, Leo? He says we rub out these two guys, but quick. What? Boris, did you hear that? Holy smokes, that's... Uh... Come on, let's get the jab over with and blow. Let me have your gun, Nick. Yeah. Okay, Olsen. And you too, big boy. Get set for the big sleep. <laughs> Eyes wide with terror, his heart pounding, Jimmy Olsen watches the man called Nick take a revolver from a shoulder holster and hand it to Leo. Fearfully, his panic-stricken mind rejects the remote possibility of being saved now, even by Superman. Is there a chance? How can Superman pick up the trail of Jim and Boris in the scant seconds remaining before the cold-blooded gunman begins to perform his ordered job? It seems hopeless. But is it? Don't fail to listen to tomorrow's tense and exciting episode which tells the story, fellows and girls. Be sure to tune in tomorrow, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines... And is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. You know, gang, you never forget a famous name like Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Kellogg brightens up breakfast with Kellogg's shredded wheat. Fifteen, fifteen crisp tender biscuits in every package. There's loads of natural nut sweet flavor in toasty Kellogg shredded wheat. Loads of fine nutrition, too. It's whole wheat. And these plump, delicious biscuits are just the right size, made to fit the bowl. Try them soon. Ask Mom for Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. 
Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, the strange disappearance of editor Perry White has involved Jimmy Olsen and Boris Hartchenko in what is now a fight for their very lives. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, a house for blazing a new breakfast trail tomorrow morning with a peach roundup, a brand new super dish. It's this week's pet dish of the week, and it sure makes your appetite do nip-ups. Here's how you turn the trick. Place half a peach in your bowl... Cover it with your regular serving of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, and top with the other peach half, round side up. Add cool milk and sugar, and you've got your peach round up. And you'll sure be riding high when you rope in that slick peach and pep combination. When you dig down through the fruit to those crisp, tender flakes of Kellogg's Pep, are you in clover? Why, pep is always a treat. Comes through with smacking good toasty flavor every time. So sunny tasting, it makes you want to flash a grin right back at every luscious spoonful till your dish is clean, empty of every last flake. And you know, these days especially, that's definitely the right angle. Because nowadays, you see, the cereal grains are being sent to give their swell nourishment to fellows and girls overseas. So remember, eat up every bit of pep you pour into your dish. The right idea is eat all your pep. Don't waste it. <laughs> Now, the adventures of Superman. A deep mystery involving all our friends on the Daily Planet came to life when publisher John J. Grayson appointed Homer Smith, a nasty, smug little man, to function as his personal representative on the paper. Bad feeling came to a head immediately when Smith ordered editor Perry White to reverse the planet's policy and to launch a vicious campaign against the World Peace Federation. Backed up by Clark Kent, Lois Lane, and Jim Olsen, the editor refused... And a few hours later, he disappeared after Jim saw him get into a cab. That night, Jim, accompanied by Boris Archenko, giant foreman of the Planet Composing Room, was attacked and captured by the driver of the same cab that had spirited White away. As we continue now, Jim and Boris, bound hand and foot, are lying on the floor of a basement hideout, guarded by a group of tough-looking men. The leader of the gang, a man named Leo, approaches his prisoners, and as gun in hand, he makes ready to carry out his orders to destroy them... There is a knock at the door. What the... See who's at the door, Nick. The rest of you guys over against the wall. Uh, this may be trouble for you, no? Shut up. Nobody make a sound now. Okay, Nick, ask who it is. Maybe oh, it's I the did. police, Boris. Or yeah. Mr. Ken. Oh. Uh, yeah. How do they know where we are? There was a loose boy in the station yeah. wagon. Who's I spread ink from my phone and ran through it. I... Who's hey, waiting, Chuck? what are you doing? Be quiet. He says he's alone. Okay, let him in. Then lock the door again. Okay. For Pete's sake, Keep Boris, what are you doing? Shh. Almost I got ropes off. Hurry up. Close that door again. Oh, holy smokes. What are you trying to do? Don't you know that? Ah. Oh, now I show you. Careful, Boris. I want to finish this. No, thing. Boris is going to finish. Look out for you, the big guy. Look out for like a man gone berserk, the giant Boris first smashes Leo to the floor with a chair, and the gunman's shots go wildly into the walls. Then, as the other men in the room leap toward him, Boris seizes one of them, hurls him at the others, and sends them all sprawling to their knees. Then, catching up the bound Jimmy, Boris leaps with him through an open door into a tiny bedroom and slams the door. <laughs> In one minute, Jim, I untie Lock you. Lock the door first. <laughs> no key. I push this dresser against the door. It's like this. That holds them out for a couple minutes. Boris, you're terrific. What do we do now? First, I get the ropes off you, Jim. Then we go out. We go out where, Boris? Through a window. Okay, ropes off. Wait, through what window? Through... Ivan Ivanovich is no window. Oh, oh! The door's coming off the hinges. Look. And they got guns. This not look so good, Jim. You're not kidding. If only the police and their radio car had seen the ink trail, I left. But I guess they didn't know they'd have been here by now. How oh, they see ink on street at night? Cheapers! Oh, I never thought of that. They couldn't see it. Oh. 
look for us. The door's off the hinges now. Wait, they'll take over the dresser in a minute. We're through. Straining desperately, Jimmy Olsen and Boris Archenko, continuing their futile effort to hold the dresser and unhinged door in the path of the seven gunmen, feel themselves slowly forced back into the tiny windowless room, which has become a death trap. Meanwhile, Clark Kent and Inspector Henderson, having dropped Lois Lane at her apartment, are in the alley behind the newspaper club where Sergeant Healy shows them a large limousine with the word taxi painted on the doors. Take a look, Inspector. Huh? Mr. Kent? There's no taxi meter in this car. No cab registration card? No hacky card. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a phony cab, all right. And it answers the description of the one Mr. White was abducted in yesterday. That's what I thought as soon as I saw it. What's the story here, Healy? Well, Radio Car 18 was cruising on Main Street when they heard a big fight in the alley. Uh-huh. They turned in and the mugs heard him coming. One of them swung this phony cab around and blocked the alley. Uh-huh. And they all scrammed off the other end of the first street in the station wagon. Did they get the license number of the station wagon? Nah, they couldn't see on the big jalopy. Did they get a look at any of the men, Healy? Not clear. All they know, one of them was a big guy with a voice like a lion. Had an accent, they said. A big guy with an accent? Uh-huh. He was yelling at somebody named Jim or Jim. Great Scott, that must have been Boris and Jim. Huh? Was that, Kent? I'm afraid Jim Olsen and Boris Archenko are in trouble, Inspector. Jim Olsen? Who's Boris Archenko? Boris is the Daily Planet printing room foreman. I told him to watch Jim Olsen's house tonight. I knew Jim was in danger because he saw the driver of this phony taxi, the one who abducted Perry White yesterday. Oh, but, uh... Hey, wait, where are you going, Kent? Just looking around. Jim may have dropped a... Uh-oh. Here, look at this. What is it, Kent? Ink stains. Green ink. Ink? Oh, the blazers. Can you see ink in this? Got a flashlight, Healy? Yeah, sure. Yeah, but, Ken, I don't see how you can here, see it. Uh, well, I, I just caught a trick gleam of light or something. What do you want, this light, Ken? Right here at my feet, Healy. Yeah. There. See? Why, George, it is green ink. Sure is. All right, now move your light further down in the same direction, Healy. Mm-hmm. No, 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 this way. Uh, this way. Uh, Follow me. I guess. That's right. Come on, come on. Keep on. Mm-hmm. Come on. There, look. More green ink stains. What's it mean? It means that Jim Olsen was here and that he was smart enough to leave a trail for us to follow. How'd you figure that out, Kent? I know Jim always uses green ink in his fountain pen. I'm sure Jim and Boris were here, It so... adds up to me, Inspector. Oh, great Jupiter. Ink stains on a dirty pavement and at night? It'd be mighty hard to follow. We'll manage it. Healy, tell the boys in the prowl car to follow these tracks and we'll follow them. Yes, sir, but how? Well, one of them will have to ride the bumper with a flashlight and direct the driver. I get it. Hey, Kamarski, Jenny. Uh, the inspector's got a real job for you. Well, I'll see you later, Inspector. Hey, wait, aren't you going with us? No, I, I'd only be, only be in the oh, way. Oh, nonsense. Besides, I want to check up on Lois. All right, Inspector. Coming. Okay. Suit yourself, Kent. Following that ink trail is a job for Superman. Into this doorway and off with these clothes. My hunch is that Jim and Boris need me now. All right. There we are. All set. Now, up, up, and away! Once more taking to the skyways, Superman streaks away to follow the faint trail of ink left by Jimmy Olsen. Will it lead all the way to the hideout? Will the Man of Steel arrive in time? We'll return in a moment to find out. So stand by. When I say that Kellogg's Pep is as terrific a breakfast dish as you'd ever want to taste, I mean it's terrific. Why, who could ask for more tender crispness, more sunny flavor? Pep is called the sunshine cereal, you know. It's chock full of keen, catchy flavor, cool and crisp and light. Keeps your spoon going right back for more. Yes, sir, Kellogg's Pep sure is on the bean when it comes to snappy eating. Looks good in your bowl, all delicate and golden. And does it taste good? Why, Pep is so super delicious that... Well, it's practically irresistible. And pep is good for you. Sure, your mom knows that. Gives you solid whole wheat nourishment and more. To sum it all up, gang, Kellogg's Pep is a grand cool treat any and every day come breakfast time. You can hardly wait to pitch in and and finish off every toasted spoonful in your bowl. And that's the thing to do, you know, because, you see, the cereal grains have been picked out to help give good nourishment to fellows and girls overseas. Remember that when mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocer's. Polish off every bit of pep you pour into your dish. Always make sure to eat all your pep. Don't waste it. As Superman is following the faint trail of ink left by Jimmy Olsen, the cub reporter and Boris Archenko are facing death in the tiny windowless bedroom of the gang's basement hideout. Seven tough men led by the man named Leo 
have finally succeeded in crashing through the door and overturning the dresser which had been blocking it. Now Leo stands in the doorway, gun in hand, facing Jimmy and the giant Boris. I told you once you couldn't get away, so now you're going to get it. No, wait. The big palooka crowned me with that chair, so he gets it first. So long, big boy. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. I'll take that. Oh, I'll take that. Take me with that, boy. I'll take that gun, I said, and you take this. Superman, Boris, look at Superman. Ah, it's my friend Superman. Me and him will take this fellas. Hi, boy, Boris. Now, what'll I do with you? I know, just wrap your two heads together like this. Guaranteed to keep you out of it. Party all over, Superman. You all right, Jim? Yeah, thanks to you, Superman. If you'd showed up just one second later, though, it would have been too bad. A sure thing. Uh, No more fighting these fellas. Hey, look this one, Leo. Look, he tried to stand up. Keep Uh, that wild man away from me. Let him alone, Boris. I want him to talk. All right, tough guy, talk. Where's Perry White? I never heard of no Perry White. Don't lie. I ain't lying on it. Uh... We just worked for Joe Barton. Who's Joe Barton? Well, he's the guy who drove away with Mr. White in that phony cab yesterday. Well, he's the one I want. Where is he? All right, you talk and talk fast. Where's Joe Barton? In the Miller Hotel on Morton Street. But don't tell him I tipped you off. He'll kill me. Maybe the state will save him that job. Hey, listen. Sirens. Good. Must be Inspector Henderson following your green ink trail, Jim. That was pretty clever of you. Hey, Jimmy, smart boy, Superman. Oh, cut it out. Boris, you turn these chaps over to Henderson while Jim and I hop across town to the Miller Hotel and pick up Joe Barton, okay? Okay. Ready, Jim? Am I? And how? Well, let's go. <laughs> Leaving Boris to turn the gunman over to Inspector Henderson, Superman catches up Jimmy and streaks away to the Morton Hotel. Will they find Joe Barton? Will he lead them to Perry White? Where is the gray-haired editor? And is Superman correct in believing that a gigantic plot against the World Peace Federation is in progress? Tomorrow's episode is packed with excitement, thrills, and mystery, gang. So don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement... The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, here's a winner in your list of famous names. It's Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Kellogg, as in Kellogg shredded wheat. What a treat for breakfast. Plump, tender biscuits of whole wheat, toasted just right. Full of natural nut sweet flavor, too. And are they crisp? And here's what else you get in Kellogg shredded wheat. Grand whole wheat nutrition. Biscuits made to fit the bowl. And 15 biscuits in every package. Tell mom you'd like Kellogg's shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, with Jimmy Olsen and Boris Archenko saved from certain death at the hands of their mysterious assailants, 
Superman renews his search for Perry White and the taxi driver last seen with the missing editor. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. You know, in sports, they usually say that if a fellow's a good starter, he's a fast finisher, too. And believe me, gang, that applies to you. Why, if you give your day a breezy start with an A-double-one breakfast, then you're pretty likely to be breezing ahead at the end of the day. So get hep to Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. There's a breakfast dish that practically coaxes you to eat. Looks terrific in the first place, all golden and, and light and crisp. And Pep tastes just as good as it looks. What flavor? Keen, light sunshine flavor. Delicious come-on flavor. A toasted full wheat flavor that your appetite can really latch on to. Yes, sir, Kellogg's Pep sure is on the beam when it comes to tickling your taste. Every tender spoonful has the old stuff that keeps you coming right back for more until almost before you know it, you've polished your bowl clean as a whistle. And that's the right idea, too. Nobody wants to waste one flake of Kellogg's Pep, especially nowadays when the cereal grains are being sent to fellows and girls overseas. So make it a habit to eat all your Pep. Don't waste it. Now, the adventures of Superman. When John Grayson, publisher of the Daily Planet, who was known to be an enthusiastic backer of the World Peace Federation, suddenly appointed a personal representative named Homer Smith, who ordered editor Perry White to attack the Peace Federation and the planet, White indignantly refused. And that afternoon, he mysteriously disappeared. Cub reporter Jim Olson, who saw the car in which White had been carried away, was captured by gunmen and about to be shot when Superman rescued him. Frightened, gunmen revealed that they had been hired by a man named Joe Barton, who lived at the Miller Hotel. And as we continue now, Superman, accompanied by Jimmy, has arrived at the dark, dingy hotel. The nearby church clock strikes 3 a.m. as they stand in the dimly lit corridor at the door of Barton's room. Listen. Do we knock on the door, Superman? No use, Jim. We're too late. Oh, well, what do you mean? Get ready for a shock. Come on, the door's unlocked. <gasps> Cleeps, look, on the floor. Yes. Is that Joe Barton? I don't know. I mean, I don't know his name. But it's the driver of the phony taxi cab, the one Mr. White disappeared in yesterday. Are you sure? Oh, I'm positive. Is he... Is he... Yes, he's dead. He was stabbed through the heart. Golly. Our friends apparently decided to play it safe. What do you mean? I told you they weren't taking any chances. Whoever is behind all this is clever and ruthless. He or they won't stop at anything, not even murder. Whoever it is must have a big stake in sabotaging the World Peace Federation. What? The World Peace Federation? Exactly. But but how does that figure in, in all that's happened tonight? I'll tell you. Mr. White disappeared right after he refused to attack the Federation in the Daily Planet, right? Yes, but The attack I... on you and now Barton's death all point to the same source, which I'm convinced is an individual or organization against world peace. Oh, I see what you mean. But, gee whiz, how are going to find Mr. White now? We figured on this, this fellow to tell us where he is. Now, this is a tough break, Jim. But we'll find Mr. White another way, and before we're through, we'll track down the people who are willing to commit murder in order to sabotage the World Peace Federation... Come on. As Superman and Jimmy Olsen leave the shabby Miller Hotel, a quite different scene is taking place in a vastly different setting. Some 40 miles from Metropolis on a lushly green wooded island off the coast sprawls a huge mansion of gray stone, looking as if it had been hewn out of the very rock it rests upon to overlook the sullen sea. At the very top of the house in an unbreakable glass-walled turret, which revolves at the touch of a lever, is a circular study from which the view spreads uninterruptedly over the sea, the star-studded sky, and the island estate. And in it sit two men. One, neatly dressed, wearing eyeglasses and looking not unlike an accountant, is Homer Smith, whom we have met before. The other man is of an indeterminate middle age, sharp of face and eye, deeply tanned. His thin legs are encased in beautifully cut riding breeches and boots, and his muscular torso is covered with a heavy maroon silk shirt open at the throat. Only his bloodless lips and long, claw-like hands reveal his savage nature. This man is Rufus Pelly, reputed to be one of the richest men in the world. This man, Joe Barton. You took care of him, Smith? Uh, yes, I did, Mr. Pelly, personally, just as you directed. Good. With him out of the way, Perry White's abduction can possibly be traced to you. You can go ahead with your work. Uh, yes, sir. Now, about Olson. He got away, you know. No. That's impossible. He couldn't. Nevertheless, he did. I got the report on the teletype a half hour ago. You were a fool to let Barton go after him, Smith. First White, then Olson. 
Didn't you realize you'd have every police officer in Metropolis down on your head? But, uh, but, uh, but Olson saw Barton drive away with Mr. White. I, I thought... Ah, you should have put Barton out of the way at once. Then you could forget Olson. It's smart not to commit any more murders than necessary. Yeah. It's a joke coming from you. Don't get insolent, Smith. I, I, I'm sorry, sir. I, I, I didn't mean... <laughs> what a spineless pup you are. Why don't you stand up to me? Of course I'm a murderer. As the greatest producer of arms and munitions in the world, I'm a wholesale murderer. I give millions of stupid men the weapons and shells with which to destroy each other in war. And they pay me well for it. Very well. You're <laughs> <laughs> a strange man, Mr. Petty. I'm a truthful man when I'm in the mood, but we're wasting time. You've got to get back to Metropolis tonight. Now, here... I've written a series of editorials. Take them with you. I want one published on page one of the Daily Planet every day, beginning today, and in big black type. Do you understand? Yeah, yes, sir. World Peace Federation, a menace to the United States. Fought by foreign statesmen to let America into disarming. This is pretty strong stuff, sir. I want them to be strong. The World Peace Federation is the greatest danger my business has ever had to face. If the nations of the world get together in mutual trust and understanding and iron out their difficulties over a conference table instead of in war, I'm out of business. Yes, I realize that. But these editorials, if you don't mind my saying so, sir, are great uh, exaggeration. <laughs> you mean lies, don't you? Well, uh, yeah, Of course I... they're lies. Whopping big lies. The Daily Planet is one of the most respected papers in the country. If the planet says the World Peace Federation is bad medicine, and says it often and strongly enough, a great many people will believe it. And if we can fool enough people, we'll get rid of the blasted Federation. Well, that's true. Of course it's me. true. Now, get started. I want the first editorial in today's planet without fail. Uh, yes, sir. Good night, Smith. I'll be waiting to read the Daily Planet today. <laughs> Clark, come into my office, will you? I've got to talk to you privately. Okay, but if you want to know what I found out about Mr. White, the answer is not a solitary thing. I know. I just spoke to Inspector Henderson. What are we going to do, Clark? Mr. Smith is Henderson going to... gave him a clean bill of health. Gave home a clean bill. Smith. He did. Henderson investigated him, and it seems he's been engaged in some sort of importing business until recently when he tied up with John Grayson. Oh? Took him abroad a great deal. The firm's out of business now, and the record is rather vague, but... Henderson hasn't been able to find a thing against Mr. Homer Smith. Well, I don't know if Mr. Homer Smith had anything to do with the chief's disappearance, I'm but I I'm sure do... he had everything to do with it, and I'll pin it on him eventually. Right now. Right now, you can pin this on him, Clark. Huh? What? Just look at this galley proof of today's noon edition. What's he done now? Well, read that box editorial on page one. World Peace Federation, a menace to the United States. Oh, that's not all. Just keep reading. Clever trap by foreign diplomats to lull U.S. into disarming while they secretly prepare for war. Great Scott, we can't print this rotten lie, Lois. Well, try to stop Mr. Smith from printing it. But we... I just tried, and he told me I could resign any time I pleased. What? Oh, Clark, this is the most awful day I've ever lived through. The chief missing, and now this. But we can't print this filthy lie, Will Lois. Will you stop saying we can't well, print we it? Can. We're going to print it, or Mr. Smith is in two hours when we go to press. And there's apparently nothing that you, nor I, nor anyone else can do to stop him. We'll see about that. Well, if you've got an idea, name it. I'll do anything. There's nothing you can do. The only two persons who can stop this are Perry White and John J. Grayson. Will you stop dreaming? The chief, heaven only knows where he is. I can't even think about him anymore without just going to pieces. I know, And but... you talked to Mr. Grayson yourself, didn't you? Yes. Where did that get you, except to be told that whatever Homer Smith says goes? Yeah, that's right. Grayson is in great fear of Smith, and it's obvious that Smith has something on him. You said that before, too, but so what? Just this. I'm going to find Grayson wherever he is and make him tell me the truth. He's got to now. Not only Mr. White's life is at stake, but the life of the World Peace Federation, the peace of all nations. So now So now got... stop dreaming. You've just named a job that would be a handful even for Superman. Exactly. What? I mean, uh, uh, th th that's your phone, Lois. Yes, I know. Hello? Lois Lane speaking. Who? Oh, yes, he is. Just a minute, please. It's for you, Clark. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> yes? Who? Oh, yes. Mit... What's that? Wait, Scott, when? What Where? Is it? What is it, Clark? Just a moment, please. Yes, I hear you. Yes. Yes. I see. Yes, yes, I... I see. Thank you. Clark! What is it? Wait, I... you're so pale. What's happened? 
Clark. Clark, answer me. Anxiously, Lois Lane shakes Clark Kent's arm, begging him to tell her what has happened. But Kent sits as if turned to stone, his eyes staring into space. What shocking news has he heard? We'll know more in a moment when we return for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, gang, will you go galloping into breakfast when you're heading for a peach roundup? That's this week's pep dish of the week, you know. Yes, sir, a peach roundup just about doubles the excitement of breakfast. And uh, here's how easy it is to make. First, lay half a chilled peach in your breakfast dish, then cover it with your regular serving of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, and top with the other peach half, round side up. Add cool milk and sugar, and there's your peach roundup. And will you be rounding up some terrific eating when you get going on this smooth dish? Right from the start, that sunny golden pep flavor swings into the lead. Believe me, the spoon that comes up filled with Kellogg's Pep goes right back for more of the same. In double quick time, your bowl is polished off clean as a whistle, which is always a good idea because Pep is good for you. Sure, gives you solid whole wheat nourishment plus. And it's particularly important nowadays not to waste cereal because we're sending the cereal grains to help give good nourishment to fellows and girls all over the world. Think of that when Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers. Eat all your Pep. Don't waste it. Shocked by what he has learned from a phone call just received in Lois Lane's office of the Daily Planet, Clark Kent replaces the phone and sits as if turned to stone while Lois shakes his arm, demanding to know what has happened. Don't just sit there, Clark. For heaven's sake, tell me what... One chance in a million. What? The odds are now a million to one against Mr. White and the World Peace Federation. What are you talking about? Who was that phone call from? It was from... Scott, what am I sitting here for? When split seconds count against one chance in a million, I'm delaying. Goodbye, Lois. Wait a minute, Clark. Clark, come back here. Clark, where are you going? Rousing suddenly, Clark can't leap from his chair and rushes headlong from Lois Lane's office. What has happened? Who was that phone call from? And what did Kent learn that made him say the odds against Perry White and the World Peace Federation are now a million to one? Don't miss Monday's thrilling episode when Superman pits all his great powers in a battle against tremendous odds. Be sure to tune in same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, I know that you know loads of famous names, so you're sure to know Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. But do you know that swell breakfast treat, Kellogg shredded wheat? It's delicious. You see, Kellogg picks out finest whole wheat, toasts it to natural nut sweet goodness. Kellogg packs 15, 15 tender plump biscuits in every package. And Kellogg sees to it that you get the grand nutrition of whole wheat in biscuits made to fit the bowl. Ask Mom to get you some Kellogg's shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. As Rufus Pelly plans to make use of the Daily Planet in an effort to wreck the World Peace Federation, Clark Kent has received a mysterious telephone call that has sent him rocketing into the skies as the Man of Steel. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, have you heard about the breakfast dish that's breezing ahead these summer days? It's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Yes, sir, Pep sure is a whiz of a treat. So light and and cool and inviting that, 
well, you can hardly wait to start eating. Right off, that tender crispness gives you the old come on. And the crunchiness of those whole wheat flakes starts sending. And when you do pitch in, mm, mm, what a flavor. A catchy, exciting flavor. A golden toasted flavor. A top-notch, so good flavor that makes your appetite do nip-ups. Believe me, gang, Kellogg's Pep sure is on the beam. It rates super-duper every time when it comes to teasing your taste. Why, Pep's double everything you say for delicious, and you just wouldn't think of stopping until you've polished your bowl of Pep clean as a whistle. Which is always a smart idea, because Pep is good for you. Sure, just ask Mom. She'll tell you that. And nowadays, it's particularly smart because the cereal grains have been picked out to help give good nourishment to fellows and girls overseas. So, gang, remember, eat all your pep. Don't waste it. Now, the adventures of Superman. When Homer Smith, newly appointed representative of John Grayson, publisher of the Daily Planet, ordered editor Perry White to attack the World Peace Federation in the paper, White refused. And that day, he mysteriously disappeared. While Clark Kent and his friends searched frantically for him, the gray-haired editor was in the hands of Rufus Pelly, a fabulously wealthy munitions magnate who was selfishly conspiring to break up the World Peace Federation because, since its aim was to prevent wars, it threatened his business. Convinced that publisher Grayson held the key to the mystery, Kent was about to seek him out when he received a startling phone call. Pale with shock, he hung up and solemnly announced to Lois Lane, This is a blow. Now the odds against finding Mr. White and saving the World Peace Federation are a million to one. Adding only that split seconds counted more than ever now, Kent rushed from Lois's office without pausing to explain. And as Superman, streaks to a small boatyard about 200 miles north of Metropolis. As we continue now, once more in his guise of Clark Kent, he is speaking to a worried boatman in a little bait and tackle shack on the harbor's edge. As outside, a violent storm is raging. Listen. You say Mr. Grayson went out on the water in this storm? Yes, sir. Done all I could to talk him out of it, I did. But he wouldn't listen, the stubborn fool. Oh. Wind was blowing up already and the barometer dropping fast when he put out. Well, listen, did Look he say... Look at that barometer, Mr. Grayson, I said to him. Look how she's dropping. Way it looks and feels to me, we're in for something mighty near a hurricane, I says. But he wouldn't listen to me. Practically is a hurricane. I had all I could do to get through it myself. But tell me, you did he say... what? I, uh, I, I, I said I hope Mr. Grayson can get through it. And now, now no, tell me. No, no, ain't got a chance in that little boat of his. And I already called the Coast Guard, but they can't put out in this blow. Yes, well, look, That's I... why I put that call through to Mr. Grayson's wife in Metropolis. I figured she ought to know. Yes, yes, Mrs. Grayson called me. But listen, please, tell me, did Mr. Grayson say which way he was going? Any place in particular, perhaps some harbor nearby? Uh, what difference did that make, young fellow? Well, plenty. I can't search the whole ocean. You what, young fellow? I... Oh, never mind. Just answer my question, please. Did he say where he was going? You want to know what he said? Well, I'm doing all I can to find out. If you know, please tell me every second counts. Well, I'll tell you all right. Just before he puts out, I says to him... Mr. Grayson, you listen to me. You're a good sailor, but I know these waters and these storms even better than you. Oh, now, look, if I... If you take that little boat of yours out in the ocean today, there's a mighty strong chance you won't be bringing her home. And you know what he says to me then? Oh, good heavens, Sam, if you'll only tell well, me... I'm what... telling you. He looks out over the harbor to where the wind is already boiling the water white over the rip. And he says, uh, like to himself, only I can hear him, he says... I don't care if I don't get back. Wait, Scott, which way did he head, Sam? Which way? Oh, uh, due east and a point or two south. Straight out to sea, past the long rip there. Due east and a point or two south. Yes, sir. Keep running in my head. Oh, he said... Uh, hey, where are you going, young fellow? I'll be seeing you. Wait, you don't want to go out in that storm. Wow. It does feel like a hurricane. That's not going to stop Superman. Nobody around. I can get out of these clothes back of the shack here. So, John Grayson doesn't care if he gets back or not, eh? Well, I know why. But I've got to bring him back. There we are. All set. Now to try to find Grayson. Up! And away! Leaping up from the storm-swept beach, Superman streaks out over the wind-lashed sea into the very teeth of the howling hurricane. Farther out to see the gale is stronger. Fierce winds, sweeping at almost a hundred miles an hour, swirl and lash at the man of steel, buffeting even his powerful body, almost blinding him with teeming rain which stings like needles, so that he has to slow his rocket-like speed 
and gasping for breath, clear his eyes so that he can see the heaving, turning waters below. Onward he fights, and onward, first zigzagging through the path of the wild gale, then swinging and sweeping in wide-ranging circles over the waves, like some great storm-defying eagle, searching, searching, as the howling wind unleashes the full force of its fury. The Superman is fighting one of his greatest battles with the elements. Lois Lane sits in her office in the Daily Planet, hundreds of miles away. Her face is hidden in her arms on the desk. She is sobbing. <laughs> Jimmy Olsen enters. Listen, Miss Lane, I want... Gosh, you're crying. I'm crying? I... No, I'm not, Jimmy. You are, too, but... But you don't cry. I know how you feel, but... Well, Inspector Henderson or somebody might find Mr. White yet, and... <laughs> sure. Of course they will, Jim. I should feel like bawling, too, sometimes, and... Well, I wish they'd hurry up and find him, because... Well, he yowled a lot and popped off all the time, but he didn't really mean it. He was really a swell guy. Don't, and... Jim. He'll be right back here running the Daily Planet and calling us names and not meaning it, and everything will be just the same as it used to be. Only without Mr. Homer Smith, I... Homer hope. Smith! Good heavens, I forgot. You forgot about that no good pasty face. No, 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 the time, the time. I've been so upset I didn't even look at my watch. What time is it? Oh. Four minutes to 11. Why? Why? We go to press at 11 and one hour later at noon. The planet will be on the street with that vicious page one attack against the World Peace Federation. Oh, jeepers, I forgot that too. I was thinking about Mr. White. Now and listen, I... we can't let that filthy, lying editorial be published, Jim. The planet's a big paper. It's respected. Well, many readers will believe that editorial because it's in the planet. They'll be wrongly influenced against the Peace Federation and against unity among nations. Why, if the Federation falls apart... I know. We'll have another war. And the next war with atomic weapons will be just too bad. Exactly. We've just got to stop that editorial. Are you kidding? How are we going to stop it? I don't know. Without but... Mr. White here, Homer Smith is running things. And he says that editorial goes in right spang in the middle of page one, so nobody can miss oh, it. dear. We've got to do something. We must, Yeah, Jim. but what? I even tried to see Mr. Grayson myself this morning. Oh, I know Mr. Ken and Mr. White talked to him, but I'm on the board of directors of the Junior Committee for the World Peace Federation. Did you see talk there? Where? At the Mr. Grayson's. No, I didn't get in. The butler said Mr. Grayson was out of town. Oh, dear, that means that Clark didn't see him either. I thought when he got that phone call and rushed away that he was going to see Grayson and, and somehow get him to stop Mr. Smith, but... What's that? What? Oh, that's the... Oh, that's the insurance company clock, and it's striking 11. Your watch must be slow, Jim. Oh, yeah, the I guess... The it... will be starting now, starting to print Smith's lying editorial. And the papers will be on the street within one hour. Oh, Jim, what are we going to do? I guess we're licked, Miss Lane. There's nothing we can do now. Helplessly, Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen look at each other. Defeat in their faces. One hour left. One hour, 60 minutes which to stop the munitions magnates' lies from influencing people against the World Peace Federation. What will happen? We'll know in a moment when we return for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, Monday's a big-time day on the Superman show because that's when we bring out a brand-new pep dish of the week, a tricky new way to dress up your breakfast dish of Kellogg's Pep. So uh, are you ready for the big announcement? Well, here goes. This week's pep dish of the week is a pep double play. It's a knockout. Listen, pour half your serving of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, in the bottom of your bowl. Then pour on a layer of blackberries, chilled in sugar. Add the rest of your pep, then top with cool milk, and that's a pep double play. Sure makes a hit with your morning appetite. It's that double layer of pep that peps up the berries because pep is crisp and, and crunchy and tender and crammed with its own full sparkling sunshine flavor. Why, pep is such a smooth dish, you're busy spooning it up until you've finished off every last delicate flake. And that's the hep thing to do, especially nowadays when the cereal grains are being sent to fellows and girls overseas. Keep that in mind when Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers. Eat all your pep. Don't waste it. As the giant presses in the Daily Planet building begin turning out the paper with its violent attack against world peace through unity among nations... Superman still battles the hurricane over the raging Atlantic Ocean, searching for a little cabin cruiser bearing John Grayson, the one man in the world who can stop the attack on the Peace Federation and lead Superman to the rescue of Perry White. 
These blasting gales have taken their toll from even the mighty man of steel. He is breathing heavily now, fighting for breath, as he shields his eyes from the wind-driven rain with his cape, fighting the growing weariness in his battered arms and legs. Oh. Will this hurricane never blow out? Even I can't go on much longer. I have to rest. No. What's the use? Grayson can't be alive in this. Oh, no, no. He must be. He's got to be. Only the scale would let up a moment. I can't keep my eyes clear. Wait a minute. What's that down there? Looks like... No. Just a piece of... No, wait. It's a little cabin cruiser. What's left of it? Yes, and a man is lashed to the wheel, holding the boat into the wind. Down to that boat. Down! Now, let's see. Yes, it's Grayson. You can hardly hear his heart. But he's alive. Half alive, anyhow. Let my break these ropes holding him to the wheel. There. Now, up with him. Back through that storm to the mainland. And pray hard he lives. Up! Up! I know it! Leaping from the fast sinking cabin cruiser with the limp half drowned John Grayson in his arms, Superman turns toward the distant mainland, calling on his flagging muscles for their final ounce of speed and strength to get him and his burden through safely. Will Superman get Grayson to the mainland in time to save the publisher's life? And if so, can Grayson, as Superman hopes, lead him to Perry White? And to the mysterious evil men who are selfishly conspiring to wreck the World Peace Federation so that they may grow richer from war. Speed is essential because right now the Daily Planet presses are printing the first lying attack of the breeding of war. What will happen? Much happens in tomorrow's thrilling episode. So be sure to listen. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, when you line up all the famous names you know, you'll find Kellogg mighty near the top. That's Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. And here's some of the good things Kellogg packs into each plump, tender biscuit of Kellogg shredded wheat. Flavor, natural nut sweet flavor, toasted just right. Nutrition, fine whole wheat nutri- nourishment. And for economy, Kellogg packs 15. 15 biscuits in every package, and they're made to fit the bowl. Try them soon. You'll like Kellogg's shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P, E, P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, all attempts to stop the vicious attack on the World Peace Federation from appearing in the Daily Planet seem doomed even as Superman fights desperately to save the life of its publisher, John Grayson. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. You know, this week's pet dish of the week sure is hitting a lot of home runs for a lot of appetites. Makes breakfast a big league affair. It's a pep double play, right in tune with the times and with your taste. Now, uh, here's the idea. You pour half your regular serving of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, in the bottom of your bowl. Then uh, add a juicy layer of fresh blackberries, chilled in sugar. Finish off with more Pep, add cool milk, and pitch into your Pep double play. What a team. That double layer of Pep peps up the berries like anything. Sure, Pep sets the pace with that catchy, so good flavor that gives your appetite the old come on. Because Pep is crisp and tender and light. 
why Kellogg's Pep always tastes so terrific, you don't waste any time finishing off every crisp spoonful in your bowl, which is particularly important these days when the cereal grains are being sent to fellows and girls all over the world. So, gang, when Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers, keep this in mind. Eat all your pep. Don't waste it. And now, the adventures of Superman. Working undercover, a munitions magnate named Rufus Pelly is conspiring to discredit the World Peace Federation because its aim is to prevent wars. Secretly, he arranged for a mysterious individual named Homer Smith to appear at the Metropolis Daily Planet as the personal representative of John Grayson, publisher of the paper, and through him ordered editor Perry White to launch a vicious campaign against the Peace Federation. White refused, and that day he disappeared. Baffled by the sudden alarming turn of events, and convinced that publisher Grayson held the key to the mystery, Clark Kent, after an unsuccessful attempt to see him, learned from Mrs. Grayson that he had set out to sea in a little cabin cruiser as a hurricane was approaching. As Superman, Kent plucked the half-drowned publisher from the fury of a storm-tossed sea and carried him to the nearest village. Then, resuming his guise of Clark Kent, he brought him to Dr. Agnew, the village physician, and helped apply artificial respiration. As we continue now at Grayson's bedside, the publisher has not yet responded to treatment. Listen. Something you can do to bring him around, Doctor. I've done all I can, Mr. Kent. I can't do any more without the patient's cooperation. What do you mean? The physician can only do so much. In order for his efforts to be successful, the patient must have a strong will to recover. But I don't believe that Mr. Grayson wants to get well. Oh, now, look, Doctor. As a matter of fact, I'm certain of it. Do you know any reason why Mr. Grayson shouldn't want to get well? Yes, I think I do, Doctor. He's been living in great fear recently. Really? In fear of what? Of a certain man, and perhaps of others. You see, his fear made him... Well, it made him betray his conscience, his friends, and his country. Oh? Maybe that made him so ashamed that he went out into that hurricane this morning, hoping he wouldn't come back. Very likely. Well, that explains his lack of will. I'm afraid there's nothing more any man can do for him, Mr. Kent. Maybe there is. What do you mean? Maybe I can give John Grayson a will to get well. You? Yes. Look, Doctor, can he hear me? He can if he'll make the effort. But he's got to. There's more than his life at stake here, much more, and time is running out fast. Just one thing. Yes? You must give me your word that whatever you hear me say must be kept in strict confidence, Doctor. Why, of course, Mr. Kent, you can rely on me. Thank you. Here goes, then. Mr. Grayson, listen to me. Perry White has disappeared, and the Daily Planet is beginning a campaign against the World Peace Federation. Do you hear me, Mr. Grayson? Perry White has disappeared, and your own newspaper is sabotaging the World Peace Federation. Do you think he hears me, Doctor? His pulse rate is up slightly, Mr. Kent. It is? I think you're beginning to penetrate. Oh, good. Listen to me, Mr. Grayson. You've got to help us find Perry White, and you must stop... Urgently, Clark Kent keeps talking, trying desperately to rouse the half-conscious newspaper publisher and restore in him the will to live. Meanwhile, in Lois Lane's office at the Daily Planet, the girl reporter and Jimmy Olsen are nervously pacing the floor. What time is it now, Jim? Uh, 11.30. In half an hour, the planet will be on the streets with that vicious attack against the Peace Federation. What do we do? We can't do anything, Miss Lane. Oh, if only Mr. Kent were here. A lot of help he is, always, when he's needed most. He's not even around. I'm sure he's trying to do Wait something. Wait a minute, Jim. Maybe... Gosh, maybe... Maybe what? Oh, I think I've got an idea. You have? Yes, it may not work, but, well, it's worth a try. Come on with me. Where? Down to the press room. I want to see Boris Archenko. <laughs> Because the Daily Planet has a reputation for being honest, thousands of people will believe this dirty, lying, page one editorial against the World Peace Federation. Sure, I know this, Miss Lane. And if the United States doesn't support the Federation, there'll be another war, sure as you're born. Ah, I know this too, Jim. Mr. Ken, tell me, can be peace only if all countries be friends and trust each other? That's yeah. right. But what can Boris do? Well, you, you're the foreman down here, aren't you? Sure, I am foreman. And, uh, you can do anything you want with the, uh, the presses and, and, and everything else, can't you? Ah, you mean? Hey, 
You mean for Boris... Gosh, Miss Lane, you don't... I mean we've got to stop this vicious lying attack on the Peace Federation somehow, anyhow. Hey, look, Boris understand, Miss Lane. Maybe can do. You will, Boris. I will try, but better you go upstairs quick now. Every couple minutes, Mr. Smithy stick his nose in. Okay. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Come on, Jim. Oh, there goes the insurance company clock, Miss Lane. It's 12 o'clock noon. I know, Jim. Oh, dear. Well, what's the matter now? Come here to the window. See? The trucks are leaving with the noon edition. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess that means Boris couldn't stop the presses or whatever he was going to do. In a few minutes, a million copies of that terrible editorial will be on the stand. Oh, Hi, Jim. Oh, go away, Beanie. Whatever it is, we don't want any. I'm not selling nothing. I'm just bringing a copy of the paper. That's what I mean. Take it away. And get fired? Nothing's doing. I got orders to put a copy of every edition on every reporter's desk, and that's what I'm doing. Here's your copy, too, Jim. Okay, okay. Thanks, Beanie. You're welcome, Miss Lane. Gee, Wallachers, is the roof going to blow off around here pretty soon? Wow. What do you mean? Take a look at page one. Boy, ain't I glad I ain't working on a press What's he talking about? Why, oh, he's wacky. He's got a hole in the head. Just the same. Jim, look. Huh? What? Miss Editorial. Oh, I don't want to see the sleeping lizards. It's all inked out. Jim, Boris must have done something to the rollers to ink out the editorial on the whole edition. Hot dog. Good old Boris. We stopped Mr. Smith after all. You mean Boris did? Oh, Jim, this is wonderful. Boris, now. Nice going. Boris, you're wonderful. You're just about the most wonderful man I... You mean I said duck, Miss Lane. Huh? What do you mean? Mr. Smith come to press room just now. He said, Boris, you are rat. You ink out editorial on purpose, no? Uh Uh-oh. And I say, Sure. Boris see two world war. You see family, friends, all killed. Not want to see more wars. Only way not have war is have World Peace Federation. Oh, so, what do he say to that? He say, we finish Peace Federation. No one done can stop us. Then he say, mad like anything. You are fired from here, Boris. I got new foreman. You be out here in five minutes, or new foreman, he shoot you for trespass. Oh, no. you. The, the impress room is now new foreman, five, six other top fellows. All of them got guns. Guns? Da, da, Mr. Smith say, you leave quick, Morris. What? He say to other pressmen, editorials must go in next edition. Anybody who try to do something funny like Boris, these fellows shoot him down like dirty dog. How do you like that, huh? Good heaven. And the next edition goes to press in two hours. And it'll have Smith's editorial on page one. We're licked again, Miss Lane. And this time... For good. Dismayed, Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, and Boris Archenko shake their heads. Seeing no possible way to stop the crafty Homer Smith from sabotaging the World Peace Federation. What will happen now? We'll know in a moment when we return for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, what's the lowdown on breakfast at your house? Do you eat the sort of meal that helps start your day in high? Well, here's the dope about as delish a dish as you could wish. One that'll tease your appetite so that you can hardly wait to dig in. It's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. The light, crisp cereal that's a bright spot at any breakfast table. And when you pour on cool milk and sugar and start to spoon it up, what a come on you get. Your appetite sure wakes up smiling when your spoon comes up rippling with cool, catchy flavor. Yes, sir, you can really latch onto those crisp, tender flakes of Kellogg's Pep. They're solid senders. Make breakfast the kind of meal that you're glad to get up for every morning because Pep's a smacking, whacking good. And as you spoon up all that slick Pep flavor, you get the good out of Pep's hearty whole wheat nourishment plus. So eat it all up, gang. Polish off your morning dish of Kellogg's Pep clean as a whistle. You know, nowadays, we're sending the cereal grains to help give good nourishment to fellows and girls overseas. Think of that when Mom brings Kellogg's Pep home from the grocers. You're on the beam if you eat all your Pep. Don't waste it. In a small coastal village 100 miles from Metropolis, in the home of Dr. Agnew, Clark Kent has been trying desperately to rouse the half-conscious John Grayson, publisher of the Daily Planet. Again and again, Kent has reminded him of his great responsibilities. As we rejoin them now, a shudder runs through the publisher's body. His eyes opened a little then, and he moved. Yes, his pulse is getting much stronger. 
Coming around fine now, thanks to you, Mr. Kent. Good. Keep talking to him. Right. Don't let him lapse back into a coma. Oh, you bet I won't. It's far too much at stake. Listen to me, John Grayson. You've got to help us find Perry White. Do you hear me, Grayson? Do you hear me? Uh, uh, what? He's what? trying to speak. He's conscious now. Good. Answer me, Mr. Grayson. Do you want the responsibility for the lives of millions of men, women, and children who die in the next war? Do you? No. Well, then talk. Where is Perry White? Come on, come on, snap out of this. Quickly, tell me. Where is Perry White? Think, Mr. Grayson, think. Where is Perry White? I'm afraid you're crowding the men too hard, too fast, Mr. Kent. I'm sorry, but there's so little time, Doctor. We've got to find... Nevertheless, it's better getting the information you want a little later than not getting it at all, isn't it? Yes, I suppose you're right. I am, believe me. For best results, I suggest you take it easy. All right, Doctor, let's try it again. Look, Mr. Grayson, please listen carefully and try to understand how important... Worried about what may be happening to his friend and editor, and anxious to solve the mystery of John Grayson's peculiar behavior before irrevocable damage is done to the cause of world peace, Clark Kent represses his impatience and continues his efforts to make the weakened publisher talk. What will happen... Tomorrow's episode is tense and exciting, gang, so don't miss a minute of it. Remember to tune in again tomorrow, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, what makes a famous name famous? Well, Kellogg is famous as the greatest name in cereals. And one reason is Kellogg's shredded wheat. Those are the plump, tender biscuits made to fit your breakfast bowl. Fifteen. Fifty of them in every package, each biscuit toasted just right and full up with natural nut sweet flavor. And Mom knows Kellogg's shredded wheat is good for you, too. Sure, this is whole wheat. So remember Kellogg, gang. Ask Mom for Kellogg's shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. The valiant attempt of Boris Archenko to halt the attack on the World Peace Federation has resulted only in a momentary victory as Clark Kent pleads with the planet's publisher to reveal the whereabouts of editor Perry White. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, if you want to taste a really smooth dish, just breeze up to a bowl of Kellogg's Pep tomorrow morning. Is it light and golden? Is it cool and crisp? Is it terrific? Why, Pep looks good enough to eat. And believe me, gang, there's good eating ahead when Pep, with cool milk and sugar, heads the breakfast menu. Every single flake is crisp and tender as a breeze. You dip your spoon in, and it comes up rippling with the light sunshine flavor Pep is famous for. So strictly delicious, it's really fun to eat. And say, speaking of more fun, you just take a look in your next package of Pep. You're in for a surprise. I mean a surprise prize. Because, listen, you may find an exciting colored cardboard model of a light plane, easy and fun to assemble. There are seven model planes you can collect. Or you may find one of a great new series of 24 full-color bird pictures with a description on the reverse side to help you identify each of these birds when you see it. Or if you don't find a bird picture or a model plane, your pet prize might be a bright-colored comic button with a famous character straight out of the funnies, one of the 18 swell buttons to wear on your beanie cap or jacket, 
Why, all three kinds of prices are super. So get busy collecting them. Ask Mom to get a package of Kellogg's Pet, the sunshine cereal, right quick from the grocers. And now, the adventures of Superman. A gigantic undercover plot against the World Peace Federation by Rufus Pelly, fabulously wealthy munitions magnate, has resulted in the disappearance of Perry White, editor of the Daily Planet. A secret henchman of Pelly's named Homer Smith is now in control of the great newspaper and is about to launch a vicious campaign against the Peace Federation. Certain that John Grayson, publisher of the planet, held the key to the mystery, Superman traced him out to sea during a hurricane, rescued him from his sinking boat, and carried him to the home of a doctor in a small village on the coast. As we continue now, once more in his guise of reporter Clark Kent, he is questioning the newspaper publisher in the offices of Dr. Agnew, who has been called away by a patient. Listen. You've got to tell me, Mr. Grayson. Where is Perry White? I don't know, Kent. I swear it. Does Homer Smith know? I I don't know. Look, you didn't want to make Smith your personal representative on the Daily Planet, did you? Well, I... He forced himself on you, didn't he? Yes. Why? I can't tell you. Why are you terrified of Smith? What's he got on you? Please, Kent, stop it. I can't tell you. I can't tell you anything. You've got to tell me. That's the only way I can find Perry White and stop Smith's campaign to sabotage the World Peace Federation. Now, talk, man. Talk. Oh. Kent, you don't know what you're asking. I'm asking you to save the life of Perry White, a fine man and a useful American. I'd do anything to help Perry. And I'm asking you to save the lives of millions of men, women, and children who die in the next atomic war. Unless the World Peace Federation is on the job to prevent future wars. You don't understand, Kent. You can't understand. I understand. You're thinking of your own selfish interests. You're willing to sacrifice Perry White and the peace of the whole world. Stop it, Kent. I can't stand it anymore. You're repeating the words my own conscience has been saying to me. All right, I'm going to keep on repeating them. Oh, no. Please, I can't stand it anymore. I'll tell you what I know. Good. I'll tell you everything. If only it isn't too late. Well, maybe it isn't, but talk fast. Well, you see, Captain, during the war, my old college roommate came to see me. He'd just come back from Europe, he said, where he'd set up a relief organization for refugees driven out by the Germans. Yes? He'd come back to raise funds, and he counted on me for a substantial contribution. I didn't let him down. I wouldn't expect you to, Mr. Grayson. Thanks. A little later, he wrote me from England. He painted such frightful pictures of the poor refugees that I not only contributed more money, but I voluntarily tackled my friends for funds, which I sent on to my old roommate. We had quite a bit of correspondence. Then the war was over. But a few months ago... Yes? I I read that Bronson, that was my old friend's name, was being tried in England for treason. In England? Yes. Seems that at some time after leaving college, he became a British citizen. And now he was being tried for treason, accused of spying for the Nazis. Oh, I remember the case now. He was convicted, wasn't he? Convicted and hanged. Yes. Then, a week or two afterwards, Homer Smith came to see me. Oh, I think I'm beginning to get the drift of this. Now, wait till you hear. Smith had most of the letters I'd written to Bronson, photostatic copies of the checks I'd sent his relief organization. The organization was phony, I suppose, with money going to the Germans. That's right. But besides the letters and checks I'd sent Bronson, Smith had a lot of other letters written on my letterhead, but for which I was not responsible. Forgeries? Exactly. Excellent forgeries, by the way. I see. But what effect could they Those possibly... Those letters, presumably written by me, implicated me as a confederate of Bronson's. They made me appear a Nazi sympathizer who raised money for the German war machine. Uh-oh, blackmail. Yes. Smith said he would turn all this evidence over to the FBI and to the opposition newspapers unless I appointed him as my personal representative on the Daily Planet with full authority to dictate its editorial policy. Which meant to switch the planet from its strong support of the World Peace Federation and make us knife it in the back. Yes, although I didn't know that until later. Heaven knows I didn't want to play ball with Smith, but that forged evidence together with my legitimate letters and checks made a perfect frame-up that would have convicted me. You can see I didn't have a leg to stand on. But, Mr. Grayson, can't you see how... Oh, I realize now I shouldn't have done it. I was being selfish, but it came so suddenly... Never mind that now. We've got to work fast if we're to find Perry White and stop Smith and his crowd from cutting the Peace Federation's throat. Try to remember. Did Smith ever mention any of the men behind him? No, but he admitted there were people behind him. Powerful men who intend to ruin the Federation. And who stop at nothing. Blackmail, abduction, even murder in order to do it. Yes. Well, we'll see about that. Look, Mr. Grayson, are you willing to cooperate with me from here on in? I'll do anything I can to atone for what I did, Kent. Anything. Good. Here. Here's a fountain pen. I want you to write what I dictate. 
swiftly, Kent dictates a short note which John Grayson writes and signs. Then, leaving the newspaper publisher in the village doctor's house with careful instructions, he steps outside, resumes his true identity of Superman, and streaks back to Metropolis. A few moments later, once more in the guise and garb of Clark Kent, he enters Lois Lane's office in the Daily Planet. Wherever have you been? Did you find out anything about the chief? No, not yet, Lois, but Oh, I'm... dear. Clark, the most terrible thing happened. What? We, or, or rather Boris Archenko, managed to stop the first edition from coming out with Homer Smith's editorial against the World Peace Federation. Good for Boris. Good nothing. It only delayed the inevitable. Mr. Smith fired poor Boris. Uh-oh. And our three o'clock edition, which goes to press in exactly five minutes, will carry the editorial. Oh, no, it won't. I tell you, it will, and so will our late edition. And Smith has a new and even worse editorial for tomorrow, and did over the day after. Take and... it easy now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, boss. Those rotten lying editorials will not appear in the Daily Planet if my plan works. What plan? I'll explain later. Right now, I've got to see Smith. Where is he? Well, how do you like that? He's taken over the chief's office. You knew that before. Now stop acting as if you can see through doors and walls like Superman or somebody. It's going to be a pleasure to boot him out of that office. When and if. When and if what? Clark, I wish you'd tell me. Later, Lois, later. Just sit tight and keep your fingers crossed. The next few hours will tell the story. Right now, I've got to powwow with Mr. Homer Smith. What's this? Can't you read, Mr. Smith? It's a signed order from John Grayson, publisher of the Daily Planet, stopping all further printing of the paper until further notice. Oh, uh, nonsense. Ridiculous. Grayson doesn't dare do that. He doesn't dare? I... I mean, he wouldn't do it. This letter is a forgery. I believe you're pretty familiar with Mr. Grayson's signature. I don't care what Mr. you believe. Mr. Darrow, our cashier, is also familiar with it. Shall I call in Darrow to verify it? No. This is a forgery, I tell you, and that's all there is to it. Oh, no, it isn't. And it's for you, Kent. I hadn't liked your attitude in the beginning. You're fired. Easy, Mr. Smith. You get out of here. Sorry, but Mr. Grayson delegated me to deliver this letter to you and to see that no further edition of the planet is printed today. And that's exactly oh, what yes? I... Oh, yes? Now, look, Kent... You're asking for trouble. Take my advice. Clean out your desk and leave the building as fast as you can. Thanks for the advice. But I'm not having any. I'm warning you. Thanks again. For nothing. I intend to see that no further edition of the planet is published today. All right. You've had your say, now I'll have mine. It's exactly one minute before two o'clock. In one minute, our presses will begin turning out the first evening edition. And not you nor anyone else can stop them. That's what you think. I know. And I know something else which you don't, Mr. Kent. Yes? What's that? I'm going down to the press room now. You care to come along and you'll find out. Good. But I strongly advise you not to come. I'll take my chances. Let's go. Very well. It's your funeral, Kent. With a floating smile playing on his thin lips... Homer Smith leaves Perry White's office, closely followed by Clark Kent. What will happen in the press room? We'll return in a moment to find out. So stand by. Say, you want to go prospecting for gold these summery vacation days? Well then, just breeze up to your breakfast bowl of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, and see how your spoon comes up rippling with golden, catchy flavor. Believe me, Pep's as good as gold when it comes to sharpening the edge of your morning appetite. Makes you want to hitch up your chair and settle down to the soup sort of breakfast that wins by a cool mile. Is this whole wheat flake cereal crisp? Is it tender? Is it delicate and light? Does breakfast get the glad eye when Kellogg's Pep heads the menu? And do you get a swell surprise when you see the nifty prize in each Pep package? A real surprise of a prize. Could be you'll find a model allied fighting plane in colored cardboard. One of seven great Pep planes you can collect. Or could be you'll find one of 24 new full-color bird pictures with a full description on the reverse side so you can identify these birds in the air. Or could be your next pet prize is one of 18 bright-colored comic buttons sporting a famous funnies character like Orphan Annie or, or Moon Mullins or Superman himself. So start collecting all three kinds of these keen pet prizes. Today, ask Mom to bring Kellogg's Pep from the grocer first thing. <laughs> Clark Kent and Homer Smith have just arrived in the Daily Planet press room, where the great printing machines tended by overalled pressmen have begun rolling out the huge first evening edition. As Smith enters a step ahead of Kent, he raises a hand. 
At once, several hard-faced men step away from the walls and surround Kent. Each of them holds a submachine gun in his hands. The snare on his face, Smith says... These men are working for me, Kent. They'll do exactly as I say. Meaning? I have just fired you. Since you are no longer employed by us, you are trespassing on these premises. You take one more step into the press room or even raise your voice to the men at the machines, my men will shoot you. You understand, boys? Yeah, we'll take care of it. Well, Kent, what have we got to say now? Do you still think you can stop me from printing the next edition of the Daily Planet? Trapped, Clark Kent looks at the ring of armed, hard-faced men around him. Then at the faces of the Planet pressmen who have looked up from their machines. If Kent ignores Smith's gunman, he will reveal his true identity of Superman. If he doesn't, Smith's campaign against peace continues. What can Kent do to prevent Homer Smith from printing his vicious attack on the World Peace Federation and still not reveal his double identity? And what is the rest of Kent's plan to find Perry White and the ruthless men behind Homer Smith? Tomorrow's episode tells the story, gang, so don't miss it. Be sure to tune in tomorrow, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. You know, gang, famous names are often family names, like the Kellogg family of cereals. And here's a famous member that makes breakfast mighty swell. It's Kellogg shredded wheat, full ripe whole wheat, made into tender plump biscuits that fit your bowl. Toasted just right, too, for crispness and natural nut sweet flavor. As for nutrition, well, Kellogg shredded wheat is made of finest whole wheat. Mom likes that. And the economy of 15, 15 biscuits in every package. Remind Mom to get Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Homer Smith seems to have the upper hand at the Daily Planet, as Clark Kent finds himself unable to act as Superman without revealing the carefully guarded secret of his double identity. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, if you were going in for collecting, which would you rather collect? Model airplanes, pictures of birds, or comic buttons to pin on your jacket or beanie cap? Well, from now on, you can collect all three kinds of these swell prizes. Sure, right in your next package of Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal, you'll find either a colored cardboard model of a famous fighting plane, one of seven in the Pep Air Fleet, or you'll find one of 24 beautiful color pictures of birds, so you can identify these birds anywhere. Or you'll find one of a grand series of 18 colored comic buttons with characters straight out of the funnies. There's one or the other of these three keen prices in every package of Pep. Just as if Pep's light Christmas and cool come-on flavor weren't a prize all by themselves. Why, Pep's so strictly terrific tasting that a bowl of those crunchy whole wheat flakes makes breakfast a regular fun feast. You get that catchy Pep flavor, and right off, your spoon just naturally dips down on your dish for more. Yes, sir, Pep with cool milk and sugar is just about the keenest breakfast treat ever. So today, ask Mom to get you a package of Pep the very next time she's at the grocer. Now, the adventures of Superman. As you know, Homer Smith, secret agent for a powerful munitions magnate who was conspiring to destroy the World Peace Federation, obtained control of the Daily Planet by blackmailing John Grayson, publisher of the great newspaper. Then, when editor Perry White defied Smith, he mysteriously disappeared. 
Smith was about to launch a vicious campaign against the Peace Federation in the pages of the planet when Clark Kent, who had finally persuaded John Grayson to confide in him, arrived with a letter from the publisher ordering Smith to suspend publication of the paper until further notice. Smith refused and dared Kent to try to enforce the order. As they entered the press room, several hard-faced men armed with submachine guns surrounded Kent. Smith said, I have fired you from the planet, Kent. So now you're trespassing here. Take one more step and my boys will shoot you down. And the law will uphold me. As we continue now, Kent, surrounded by Homer Smith's gunman, and with the eyes of the planet pressmen upon him, realizes that he is trapped. If he defies the guns which will surely blaze at him, he will reveal his identity as Superman. His mind races desperately as the huge planet presses clatter, turning out hundreds of thousands of papers which carry the message of the greedy munitions maker against the cause of world peace. Well, Kent, do you still think you can stop me from publishing the Daily Planet? Looks as if you've got me, Smith. I'm glad you're smart enough to see it. Make yourself comfortable. The press run will be over in an hour. You mean you're going to keep me here, a prisoner? I'm going to keep you here to prevent any monkey shine, such as occurred before. When the press run is over, you can go. But look here. Sit down. Don't try anything funny. If you want to stay healthy. Pretending to be resigned to his fate, Kent sits down on the concrete floor, his back against the massive clattering press. Then, unnoticed by Smith and his gunman, he tenses his powerful muscles, leans back slowly. There is a heavy scraping sound unnoticed in the noisy press room. Kent hunches his back again, feels the great five-ton press machine slide several inches from its anchorage. The moving of the giant press snaps a power line leading from the central generator, short-circuiting it. Instantly, as the power fails, the great room is plunged into darkness, and the presses and line attack machines clatter to a stop. Hello, Kent. Me? Of course not, Mr. Smith. Turn the lights on. Turn them on, I say. Donovan. Where's Donovan? No, oh, for Superman job. Up over their heads. Up. <laughs> Bringing over the heads of Homer Smith and his milling guards, Superman, still in his guise of Clark Kent, lands alongside the number two press. In the darkness, he almost grazes the puzzled workman there as he grasps the giant machine and swings it six inches out of position. Then he turns and drags a huge linotype machine a foot from its anchorage, moves to the next press, and the next, and the next. There we are. These presses won't work until they're moved back into line, and since each one weighs several tons, that'll take all day and all night. Uh oh. Donovan's hooking up emergency lighting from the casting room. Back to my little playmates. What's holding up those lights, Donovan? Ah, for a minute, Mr. Smith. Ah, there you are. Well, Mother of Mercy. I never seen nothing like this in all me born days. What is it? What's the matter, Donovan? Why don't you get the presses going again? Look for yourself, man. Them presses, each one weighing five tons of it weighs an ounce. All of them moved half a foot or more out of line. Tell me now, how could such a thing as that happen? Well, what's the difference? Get them going again. We've got a paper to get out. We won't get out no paper today, Mr. Smith. We must. It can't be done. Except if the same miracle that moved these presses out of line, moves them back again. But the paper must be printed, I tell you. And I tell you, it can't be. Not today. And tomorrow will be too late. How do you mean, Kent? Try to figure it out. Toodaloo, Mr. Smith. Wait. Where are you going? Oh, I'm going bye-bye. As practically anyone will tell you, I'm really much too delicate to help you move those huge machines. I'll be seeing you. So long. Leaving the infuriated Homer Smith, Kent steps from the darkened confusion of the press room into an alley. There, swiftly resuming his true identity of Superman, he streaks 200 miles north to the doctor's house in the little village where he had left John Grayson, publisher of the planet. Hello, Mr. Grayson. Why, why it's Superman. That's right. I'm, uh, well, pinch hitting for Clark Kent at the moment, you might say. I'm glad you're here. I didn't get a chance to thank you for saving my life today. No time for that now. We've got to move fast if we're to find Perry White and the blackmailers and murderers who are trying to wreck the World Peace Federation. I suggest we have Smith arrested. Then the police can find plenty of evidence against him and whoever's behind him. Maybe. But so far, they haven't been able to pin a thing on him. Neither have I. If we arouse Smith's suspicions, they'll all get away. And that, unless I miss my guess, will mean the end of Perry White. You think Perry is still alive? Yes, I do. Only stupid men would do away with an important person like Mr. White unless they had to. And these men, whoever they are, are anything but stupid. I hope you're right. But if we can't arrest Smith, how are we going to find the rascals behind him? I've got a plan. Smith is worried by your letters suspending publication of the Daily Planet. He may be a little suspicious, too. At any rate, he's sure to contact you. Yes? 
I want you to insist on a personal interview with him, preferably at your house. At my house? Yes. Why? Well, I'll tell you later. Right now, well, we've got... if he's suspicious, as you say, he, he may refuse. I don't think he will. Tell Smith you're not well and that you don't want to discuss the matter over the phone. We'll have another story cooked up for him when he gets there. The important thing is to get him to your house. I'll take it from there. What do you mean? Well, I'll have to explain that later, too. All right now, we've got to get back to Metropolis. I uh, arranged for Smith to be busy in the press room for a little while, but he'll be calling you any minute. You've got to be at home when he calls. But we're several hours away from Metropolis. No, no, no Mr. Grayson. Just a few seconds. What? You're going by Superman Express. Oh, you mean... Come on, Mr. Grayson. Everything depends on getting Smith to your house. So up with you like that. <sighs> Out through that window. So, now, up and away! <laughs> Leaping through the window with John Grayson in his arms, Superman streaks away toward Metropolis. What is his plan? And will it work? We'll know more in a moment when we return for the climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, you want to know a breakfast treat that wins by a cool mile these summer days? It's Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. So light and cheerful in your dish, it practically flashes you a grin. One look at a bowl of pep, and you can hardly wait to hitch up your chair and begin. And talk about flavor. Why, right off, pep's keen, catchy flavor starts at solid sending. Not to mention how crisp and tender Kellogg's pep is. Believe me, gang, here's a dish that's strictly on the terrific side. And pep's a prize package in still another way. I mean those keen pep prizes. Because right inside your next package, maybe you'll find a bright-colored comic button picturing one of your favorite comic strip characters. There are 18 of these buttons to collect and to wear on your jacket or beanie cap. Or maybe you'll find a bird picture in brilliant full color with a full description on the reverse side. Collect all 24 of them and surprise the gang by your knowledge of these birds wherever you happen to spot them. Or maybe your pet prize will be one of the seven exciting colored cardboard plane models. Easy and fun to put together. All three kinds of pet prizes are top-notch collector's items. So get busy right away. Ask Mom to get you a package of pep made by Kellogg's. Late that afternoon, as twilight falls over the magnificent island estate of Rufus Pelly, the munitions magnate angrily paces his circular glass-walled turret study atop his great rock mansion overlooking the sea. In a chair, looking like an anxious accountant, Homer Smith watches Pelly pause in his panther-like pacing to replenish his coffee cup from the ever-present silver thermos bottle on a table. He drains the cup at a gulp, then lashes out at his companion... Your oh, now, wait, Mr. Pelly, I... I counted on one million copies of the Daily Planet carrying our attack on the World Peace Federation today. But you let me down. It wasn't my fault. Didn't I tell you a hundred smaller papers all over the country, subscribers to the Planet's news service, would reprint our editorial from the Planet? That means millions of people would read the attack on the Peace Federation. Yes, I know that, sir, but... But then... you failed! You miserable fool! Don't you realize that the Peace Federation must be discredited? Wrecked! If it succeeds in bringing nations together over a conference table in friendship, there won't be any wars. And without wars, my munitions industries are worthless. I understand, Mr. Pelly. If you'd just let me explain, explain I... Explain what? How somebody made a fool of you and moved the planet presses out of position so you couldn't print today's paper. Can't understand how that happened. Those presses weigh several tons apiece. It would take a gang of men several hours to move them out of line. And I had my own guards in the press room with guns. Somebody obviously tricked your stupid guards or bribed them. Probably that reporter, Clark Kent. I don't believe it. It's impossible. Rubbish! You slipped up there, Smith. And you slipped up with John Grayson. Else how would he dare write you a letter to stop publishing the planet until further notice? I don't know, sir. You don't know, you stupid idiot. You mean you haven't talked to him yet? Uh, please, Mr. Pelly, one moment. Of course I talked to well, him, what but... did he say? He said he couldn't explain over the telephone. He wants me to call on him this evening. This evening? Yes, he said he wasn't well, but when I tried to phone him earlier this this morning, I was told he wasn't at home. Sounds a little fishy. Ah. That fellow, Kent, sir, he seems very uh, mild, but uh, I believe he's quite clever. Well, he may suspect you had something to do with Perry White's disappearance and persuaded Grayson to try to trap you. Yes, sir, that, uh, that occurred to me. I'm sure Kent is working with the police, too. They searched my room while I was out. There was nothing there? Of course not. If Kent is really clever, you figure you're acting for someone else. He and the police might even hope that you'll come here after you leave Grayson and they can trail you. 
No. We must not go to Grayson's house tonight, Smith. Then what'll we do? Unless we scare him into line again, we can't print the planet tomorrow. We'll take care of Grayson and print the planet tomorrow and every other day until we succeed in finishing the World Peace Federation. But how? I know how. <laughs> so Kent and the police are laying a little trap for me, eh? Well, I'll teach them something about traps. And I'll teach Grayson, too. <laughs> While his claw-like hands caress his coffee cup, Rufus Pelly, the man who profits from the murders of war, chuckles grimly. His keen mind has seen through Clark Kent's trap. And now he plans a trap of his own. Since Kent has made it clear that everything depends on luring Homer Smith to John Grayson's house. Now, what will happen? What is the munitions magnate's counterplot? Don't miss tomorrow's thrilling episode, gang, as Clark Kent and the unseen Rufus Pelly engage in a desperate duel of wits. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, talk about famous names. Why, Kellogg is the greatest name in cereals. And Kellogg makes Kellogg shredded wheat. Crisp, tender biscuits that are full up with natural nut sweet flavor Toasted the Kellogg way, just right. Mighty good for breakfast, and mighty good for you. They're whole wheat. Mom knows Kellogg shredded wheat is economical, too. You get 15, 15 biscuits in every package. They're made to fit the bowl. Ask Mom to get you some Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. <laughs> Today, Rufus Pelly, the unscrupulous munitions manufacturer who seeks to wreck the World Peace Federation, plans a counterattack against the Daily Planet star reporter, Clark Kent. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, you want to pass on a hint to your mom? Well, if she finds it a tough job to get folks out for breakfast in the morning... Tell her how everybody comes a-running when Kellogg's Pep heads the menu. Yes, sir, Pep with cool milk and sugar sure does give your appetite the old come on. Looks terrific in the first place, all light and cool and crisp. And does it taste terrific? Every tender whole wheat flake is brim full of keen sunshine flavor. A bang-up delicious flavor that teases your taste like anything. And say, here's another big reason why you'll want Pep as your regular breakfast dish. Just think of the knockout prices Pep gives you. For instance, your next pep package may have one of 18 bright-colored comic buttons with pictures of your favorite funnies characters to pin on your jacket or your bean cap. Or you may find a colored cardboard model of a fighting plane, easy as a breeze to assemble. You can collect all seven model planes in Pep's great air fleet. Or your prize may be a full-color bird picture. There are 24 in all with a full description on the reverse side so you can identify these birds wherever you see them. Now, you can't buy any of these thrilling prizes anywhere, but you'll find one or the other in every package of Pep. So today, ask Mom for Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. And now, the adventures of Superman. As you remember, a man named Homer Smith, who was the secret agent for an unscrupulous munitions magnate, obtained control of the Daily Planet by blackmailing John Grayson, the publisher of the paper. When editor Perry White blocked Smith's plan to attack the World Peace Federation in the planet, the gray-haired editor mysteriously disappeared. 
convinced that Smith was only a stooge for greedy men who were attempting to sabotage the Peace Federation and who were responsible for Perry White's disappearance, Clark Kent persuaded Grayson to cooperate with him. That evening, Kent and Inspector Henderson joined Grayson in the library of his home, where Kent explained his plan. Now, when Homer Smith phones in again, you insist that he come here to see you, Mr. Grayson. Tell him the story we arranged... And I'm sure he'll go directly to the people he's working for. And we follow him, eh, Kent? Right, Inspector. We follow him to the man behind this dirty plot. But Kent is unaware that Rufus Pelly, the cruel and cunning man who makes millions by supplying the munitions of war, has anticipated his trap and laid plans of his own with Homer Smith. As we continue now in John Grayson's library, Inspector Henderson is growing impatient as the grandfather clock strikes seven. Ah, this looks like a washout, Kent. I don't think Smith is going to call. I'm sure he will, Inspector. I spoke to him this afternoon and said I wanted to see him. He said he'd call back. Yeah, then why hasn't he? It's 7 o'clock. Well, patience, Inspector. Patience. Oh, patience, my eye. This is what happens when amateurs try to play detective. Now, look. If Smith did have anything to do with Perry White's disappearance... I'm certain The chances are all your shenanigans tipped him off that you suspect him. But this time, he's probably flown the coop. No. No, no, Smith isn't a petty crook who scares easily and runs away. He knows his tracks are well covered, and he's working for people who are playing for big stakes. The wrecking of the World Peace Federation. Do you think men who don't hesitate at at, at blackmail, abduction, and and even murder scare easily? Well, I've seen plenty of big-time criminals who didn't hesitate at anything. Until they felt the hot breath of the law on their necks, and they turned yellow and ran for their lives. Well, that that may be true, but unless I'm very wrong, Inspector, this is a different breed of criminal from any you've ever encountered. We're going after criminals who want mass murder. War. Yeah? Who says so? I do. Look at the lengths they've gone to in order to sabotage the Peace Federation, the only organization that can prevent war. Why, they, they've blackmailed Mr. Grayson here, publisher of one of the greatest papers in the country, abducted its editor, murdered a taxi driver... Okay, go- okay, don't go into all that again. Well, uh, I think Kent's right, Inspector. Well, maybe. But that's all the more reason you two shouldn't have monkeyed with Smith without police help. You, Grayson, should have come to me the moment Smith went to work on you. Yes, Inspector, I suppose so, but... Well, frankly, I was scared. That evidence Smith manufactured would have put me on trial as a traitor. It was so well framed that I'd probably have been convicted. That would kill my wife. I see. And now, don't you worry, Mr. Grayson. I've got a hunch we're going to clear up the whole mess tonight. Uh-oh. Yeah. Maybe that's Smith now. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know what you're to say to him now. Yes, I know. I... I'm to get him out here. Right. And hold the phone a little away from your ear so Kent and I can hear. All right. Hello? Grayson? Yes, is this? Homer Smith. It's him and I can't... Oh, yes, Mr. Smith. As I told you this afternoon, I have something very important to discuss with you. If you could possibly come out here this evening... I know. I called to tell you I'm sorry, but I'm busy this evening. But this is very important. Look, Grayson. You appointed me your personal representative. With full authority to govern the policy of the Daily Planet, and that's that. It's too late to change your mind now. So I'm disregarding that letter you sent to Kent today. Oh, but listen... Mr. Grayson. Oh, look here, Smith. I'm still the publisher of the planet. I can fire you at any time, you know. Don't try to bluff me, Grayson. I don't bluff easily. Goodbye. Wait. Smith, wait. Oh, he hung up. So, he was going to fall into your trap, eh, Kent? Don't get it. He was going to come out here, listen to a cock and bull story, then lead us straight to his gang in Perry White, eh? This looks bad, Kent. I don't understand it. I... Well, it's as plain as the nose on your face. Smith thinks Mr. Grayson is too scared of a trial for treason to stand in his way. But if Grayson was still that scared, he wouldn't have sent Smith that letter today, ordering him to suspend publication of the planet until further notice. Well, he figures that was strictly up luck. Which it was. How could he think that when Grayson deliberately defied him? And when he didn't knuckle under to him on the phone just now? No, no, this, this doesn't add up, Inspector. It just doesn't. Smith should be out here like a shot. Or at least tell Grayson to come to his place and then try to scare him into submission again. No, no, no. Something's very wrong here. Yes, it does seem strange. Then, uh, what do you suggest we do? I've got to think this out. Smith has something up his sleeve. I'm sure of it. I... Uh-oh. I'll answer it this time. No, no, no. I... Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Inspector. It might be Smith again. Let Mr. Grayson answer. Well, all right. Go ahead, Mr. Grayson. Hello? Is Mr. Clark Kent there, please? Uh, Mr. Kent? Why, yes. Just a minute. 
Uh, it's for you, Kent. Me? Must be Jim Olson or Lois. They're the only ones who know where I am. Thanks, Mr. Grayson. Uh, hello? Mr. Kent? Yes? Who this is this? This is Dr. Arnold at the Flower Ridge Hospital. Oh, yes, Dr. Arnold. What is it? We have a Miss Lois Lane here. Miss Lane? What happened? What is it, Kent? What she is? was in an accident. An accident? Great Scott. Miss Lane in an accident? Uh-oh. Yes, we found your name in her wallet and telephoned the Daily Planet. A young man named James Olson told us where to reach you. Well, is she hurt seriously, Doctor? Well, I'd rather not discuss her condition over the telephone, Mr. Kent. I'd suggest that you get down here right away. I'll be there at once. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, what what about Miss Lane? Lois was in an accident. She's at the Flower Ridge Hospital. I've got to go there at once. Oh, that's too bad. I'll drive you over again. No, no, you'd better stay here, Inspector. Smith Mr. Call- Grayson will be here if Smith calls again, which I doubt. And the hospital is on the way back to headquarters. Come on. <laughs> Uh, Miss Lois Lane was brought into your hospital this evening. What room is she in, please? Uh, Miss Lane? Did yes. You say? Hurry, please, Doctor. There's no Miss Lane brought in here today. Huh? What? She was. I just had a phone call from Dr. Arnold. He said Miss Lane had been in an accident. Yes, she must have been taken to another hospital. Then. Oh, no. Dr. Arnold said the Flower Ridge. Well, this is the Flower Ridge Hospital, and I'm Dr. Gibbs, the admitting physician. But I assure you, gentlemen, we have no Miss Lane in this hospital. Are you What's sure? Well, oh, yes, I'm certain. What's more, there's. No Dr. Arnold connected with this hospital. Startled, Clark Kent and Inspector Henderson stare at the admitting physician and then at each other. What does this mean? We'll know more in a moment when we return for the startling climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, gang, in summer especially, it's a good idea to be an eager beaver about breakfast because if you don't eat right in the morning... How can you feel like cramming all the fun you'd like into each vacation day? So, tomorrow morning, just breeze up to a dish of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. See how Pep, with cool milk and sugar, tickles your taste. Put your appetite in the mood to eat. Just get that lively Pep flavor, a golden toasted flavor. Get the cool crispness of each light whole wheat flake. And get those swell Pep prizes. Yes, sir, those swell surprise prizes. Because you can never tell which kind of a prize you'll find in your next package of Pep. For instance, you may find an exciting colored cardboard model of an allied plane, easy and fun to assemble. There are seven model planes you can collect. Or you may find one of a great new series of 24 bird pictures with a description on the reverse side to help you identify each of these birds when you see it. Or your next pet prize may be a bright colored comic button with a famous character out of the funnies, one of 18 keen buttons to wear on your beanie cap or jacket. So hop to it, gang. Get busy collecting all three kinds of these wonderful prizes. Ask Mom to get you a package of Kellogg's Pep next time she goes shopping. At the Flower Ridge Hospital, Clark Kent and Inspector Henderson have just been told that Lois Lane is not a patient there, despite a phone call Kent had received. Moving away from the admitting physician's desk, Henderson says... This is strange, Kent. Yes, it certainly is, Inspector. I can't understand... Great Scott. What's the matter? I just thought of something. Hmm? Look, Inspector, you get back to John Grayson's house as quickly as you can. I'll meet you there. Grayson's house? Yeah. What for? I've got a hunch there's trouble. I'll verify it in a moment. Then I'll meet you at Grayson's. Yes, but what do you want? For heaven's sake, don't stop to ask questions now. Get out there as soon as you can. Rushing from the hospital, Clark Kent steps behind a dark hedge, strips off his business suit, and stands revealed in the blue costume and red cape of Superman. Then, up, up, and away! <laughs> Leaping up from the hospital ground, Superman streaks through the evening skies, suddenly checks his flight above Lois Lane's apartment house, his keen eyes searching below. There's Lois in her apartment, speaking on the telephone. I thought so. Away to John Grayson's house. Away! Yes? Oh, Mr. Kent. Where's Mr. Grayson, Phillips? He was taken away, sir. Taken away? By whom? By two police officers. Police officers? Yes, sir. They showed me the badges when I answered the doorbell. Yes. I, I let them in, and they told Mr. Grayson he was under arrest. Arrest? Mr. Grayson asked why and demanded to see their warrant. Yes. But they produced their revolvers instead and insisted that he accompany them in their car. Was it a police car? Why, I, I suppose so, sir. Good heavens. I just remembered, Mr. Kent. What? Our police cars are painted blue and cream. This car was maroon. I was afraid of this. 
Suddenly frightened, Jorn Grayson's butler puts a shaking hand against the door for support. The clock Kent stands rigidly while thoughts race through his mind. That phony report of Lois's accident. It was to get Henderson and me out of the way. Smith, he's behind this. Now what do I do? Where do I look? Kent knows now that he's stymied by Homer Smith and Rufus Pelly, evil men who had plunged the world into another bloody war to line their own pockets. Now that they've fooled Kent and captured John Grayson, while Kent sought to trap them, the lives of two men are at stake. Can Superman pick up their trail in time? Monday's episode provides the answer to many questions, so don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, think of all the famous names you know and you'll think of Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Then you'll think of Kellogg's shredded wheat. Makes breakfast loads of fun. Crisp, tender biscuits of whole wheat toasted just right and packed with natural nut sweet flavor. Just the right size, too. Made to fit the bowl. As for nutrition, well, Mom knows that whole wheat is mighty good for you. And for economy, she likes the 15. 15 biscuits in every package. Try Kellogg Shredded Wheat. You'll like it. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet... More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P P P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. <laughs> Publisher John Grayson has again fallen victim to the ugly schemes of Rufus Pelly, the warmonger, who would stop at nothing to crush the hope of world peace. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, do you know why opening a package of Kellogg's Pep is like going on a treasure hunt? Why, it's because there's always an exciting prize inside each Pep package, and you never can tell what your next prize will be. For instance, it might be one of Pep's 18 slick comic buttons, bright colored buttons, each picturing one of your favorite comic strip characters. Or your next Pep prize might be a model of a famous fighting plane, one of seven thrilling plane models in the series, all made of colored cardboard, easy and fun to assemble. Or you might find a beautiful full-color bird picture from a series of 24, each with a description on the reverse side so you can name and know any of these birds when you see them. And any one of these three swell kinds of prizes is only a part of the treasure you get in Kellogg's Pep. Think of the good, keen taste of those crisp flakes. Flakes that are light as a breeze and crammed with sunshine flavor. I mean, Pep's delicious. A prize in itself. Every tempting spoonful coaxes you on because it tastes so terrific. Yes, sir, a bowl of Pep with cool milk and sugar is just about the swellest summer dish I know for breakfast. So get going on the treasure hunt that starts with every pet package. Today, ask Mom for Kellogg's Pet, the sunshine cereal. Now, the adventures of Superman. Because the aim of the World Peace Federation is to prevent wars, Rufus Pelly, a greedy munitions manufacturer who profits from war, schemed to wreck the organization by poisoning public opinion against it. To accomplish this, he ordered Homer Smith, his secret agent, to blackmail John Grayson, publisher of the Daily Planet, and so obtained control of the great paper. Then, when editor Perry White tried to block Smith from attacking the Peace Federation in the planet, he mysteriously disappeared. Clark Kent finally persuaded the frightened Grayson to help him lay a trap for Smith, hoping the man would lead him to Perry White. But Smith, suspicious, consulted Pelly, who sent a counter trap. And that evening... Kent and Police Inspector Henderson were lured away from Grayson's house by a false report of an accident to Lois Lane. When Kent rushed back to the publisher's house, the butler told him that Grayson had been taken away by two men 
claiming to be police officers. As we continue now at Grayson's door, Kent demands... Did they take Mr. Grayson away in a police car? Why, yes, they... Good heavens. I just remembered, Mr. Kent. What? Our police cars are painted blue and cream. Yes? This car was maroon. Uh-oh. What make car was it? Did you notice? No, no, sir. I, I, I didn't. I was so upset, you see. Well, I did was... you notice whether it was a sedan or a coupe? Well, it was a sedan. I remember that. Maroon sedan, eh? All right, now think carefully, Phillips. Which way did the car turn when it left the driveway? To the left, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. I stood outside the door here looking after it. When it reached the foot of the lane below our grounds, it turned left into River Drive. Good for you. Now, get this. I want you to phone police headquarters at once. Yes, sir. Tell them what happened. Describe the car and tell them I suggest they put out an alarm for it at once. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay, hurry now. Go into the house and call headquarters at once. Yes, sir. Now to get out of these clothes. Uh Uh-oh, here comes Henderson's car. I better see him as Superman, I guess. Back of these bushes and out of these street clothes. Henderson and I will have to work fast. And if I'm right, we'll break this case tonight or never. There we are, all set. And just in time, here's Henderson. Inspector! Oh, who's that, Kent? Great Jehoshaphat! Superman! That's right. Listen, Inspector. Hey, I... what are you doing here? What happened? Well, Mr. Grayson was taken away in a car by two men. What? While you and I... Uh, while... Uh... I mean, while you and Clark Kent were at the Flower Ridge Hospital. My hunch says they were Homer Smith's men. Why, sure. That phony call about Miss Lane was to get Kent and me away from the house... So they could grab Grayson. Yes, and force him to let them use the Daily Planet to sabotage the World Peace Federation. Now, wait a minute. How did you know about all this? I've been in closer touch with this case than you know, Inspector. And I'm convinced this whole rotten business is a plot against the Peace Federation. So I'm doing everything I can to make the Federation succeed. Oh, well, go on. You say Grayson was taken away? In a maroon sedan. It turned left on River Drive. I'm going after it. You want to come along? You bet I do. Oh, just wait till I radio headquarters and get an alarm out for that car. I've already taken care of that. Come on. Up under my arm. You mean I'm going to fly with you? Right, and without a parachute. You want to back out? Are you kidding? I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, here we go then. Up, up, and away! Boy, talk about your rocket planes. When you travel, you you really go places, Superman. Faster than a patrol car, eh, Inspector? That's a joke, son. Oh, uh, see anything of a maroon sedan? No, not yet. Do you, uh, you see it yet? No. Then why are you slowing? That's the Metropolis Bridge down there. Oh, no, what? Well, the bridge is at least 30 minutes from Mr. Grayson's house by fast car. And there are police officers on it. I don't think our friends would stay with the maroon sedan that long. Why not? Well, they know that as soon as you and Kent got to the hospital and learned you'd been tricked, you'd go back to Grayson's house, find out what happened, and put out an alarm for them. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. They probably had another car waiting for them someplace. They ditched the maroon sedan and go on the other car. Right. But if they've already swapped cars, they didn't do it on River Drive. Well, how do you know? Because I examined every car we passed and didn't see Mr. Grayson. Oh, then where do we go from here? Well, there are only three highways intersecting River Drive between Grayson's house and the bridge. Only three? That's right. Huh. Well, how do you expect you we're going You forget gonna... I can move pretty fast. We'll sweep over those highways for 15 or 20 miles in each direction. If there's a car on any of them with John Grayson in it, take my word that we'll find it. Hang on. Now you're really going to see some speed. Away! <laughs> Carrying Inspector Henderson, Superman streaks back above River Drive, then angles off the first highway to sweep above it for 20 miles, then back in the other direction for another 20 miles. Then he repeats this procedure over the second highway and over the third. When he fails to spot a car carrying Publisher Grayson, it begins to range in great circles, flashing over side lanes and little-used roads. But after two hours, his search is still fruitless. But meanwhile... On the magnificent island estate of Rufus Pelly, the munitions magnate has just pushed John Grayson and Perry White into the circular glass-walled turret study atop the great stone house on the sea. Grayson's face is cut and bruised. His clothing is torn. But his jaw is set as stubbornly as is Perry White's. Seated in a deep chair, Pelly looks up at them coldly. Now, gentlemen... Now, you look here, Pelly. You can't get away with this, holding me a prisoner, abducting John Grayson... Those are capital offenses. And you'll go to the chair for it just as sure as my name is Perry White. Please, Mr. White, you're very tiresome. No, I'm tiresome, am I? Well, let me tell you You that... tell me nothing. You've each had 15 minutes to consider my proposition. What's your answer? You call that a proposition? Why, you money-greedy rat, you cold-blooded murderer. You if you think you can make me knuckle under... Shut up! No! You big gorilla! I cards. I ought to... Easy, Mr. Grayson. Next time, Hugo won't be so gentle. Why, George Pelly, you and your gorilla are both going to... Sit down, White. Oh, stop being a fool. Now, gentlemen, my time is limited. You, Mr. Grayson, 
I told you that I purchased all outstanding shares in the Daily Planet. I now own 49% of the stock. If you sell me two more shares, I'll own the controlling interest. Why, you... In exchange for that, I'll guarantee you and White your freedom. I... Don't I... listen to him, John. He's bluffing. He knows if we get out of here, we'll send him to the chair. Not at all. My tracks are well covered. I'll say you came here of your own free will to arrange the sale of the Daily Planet. You have my word that I'll release you the moment I have those two shares of stock. Your word... You think we're fools enough to take the word of a warmonger, a cold-blooded murderer? You want the planet so that you can sabotage the World Peace Federation, the only hope in the world for peace. Right. You want more wars so you can make more dirty millions out of selling munitions. No, no, let him alone, Hugo. Of course I want wars, Mr. White. There will always be wars, and my business There doesn't is... have to be wars. Not if we'll all get together, all of us in all countries, and talk our differences over in mutual trust and friendship. The World Peace Federation stands for that. And not you nor any other mass murderer is going to sabotage it. Right, Perry. I was a fool to let this man scare me in the first place. I'm with you all the way now. Good for you, John. Have you forgotten, Mr. Grayson, that I still have all the letters and checks and the forged documents, which, if turned over to the FBI, will indict you as a traitor to your country? Go ahead and turn them over. I'll take my chances in the court of justice. Ah, that's telling him, John. Is that your final answer, Grayson? That's my final answer. I won't sell out the Peace Federation to try to save my own skin. Very well, gentlemen. I'm sure Mrs. Grayson will sell me two shares of stock from her widow's estate to keep her dead husband from being branded a traitor in every newspaper in the country. Uh, Why, you? Her, Her dead husband? Exactly, sir. You see, you and Mr. White have both just signed your own death warrants. Take them away, Hugo. Pale but unflinching, Perry White and John Grayson obey the giant Hugo's gesture to precede him through the door. We'll learn what happens in a moment when we return for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, if every home in the country could be wired for sound these summer mornings, you'd hear a big chorus of compliments come breakfast time from the thousands of homes where Kellogg's Pep heads the menu. Things like, gee, Mom, is this super? Or, Brother, Pep wins by a cool mile. Because Kellogg's Pep with cool milk and sugar is that kind of dish, those flakes of Pep are crisp and light, all golden to look at, and full up with keen sunshine flavor, a golden toasted flavor that brings your appetite wide awake in a jiffy. And say, speaking of wide awake, will your eyes open wide when you see the exciting prize in every pet package? A prize that's always a swell surprise. For instance, could be a model fighting plane in colored cardboard. One of seven great pet planes you can collect. Or could be one of 24 new full-color bird pictures with a description on the reverse side so you can identify these birds in the air. Or could be one of 18 bright-colored comic buttons picturing a famous funnies character like Smokey Stover or Smitty or, or even Superman. So, gang, start collecting all three kinds of these wonderful pep prizes. Today, ask Mom to bring home Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. As Rufus Pelly was condemning Perry White and John Grayson to death, Superman carrying Inspector Henderson is still searching for them from the air. Twice they have contacted police headquarters to discover that the maroon sedan in which John Grayson was taken from his house has not yet been found. Now they are hovering above a narrow, dark street which has only a few houses on it and which ends at the river. Uh, We might as well face it, Superman. Those fellows got away with Grayson. Fred, you're right, Inspector. What happened to their maroon sedan? They must have left it someplace nearby. They wouldn't have risked driving more than a few minutes. Well, uh, my men will pick it up eventually. We can't wait. That car is our only clue to Grayson and Perry White. And if we don't find them tonight, I don't think we'll ever find them. Uh, I shouldn't have listened to Kent this afternoon. Why? I should have picked up Homer Smith. He knows where White is. Now Healy says he can't be found either. I don't think you'd have gotten anything out of Smith. He's a smooth article. If only... Wait a minute. Let's have a look at that. What? Hey, where are you going? The guardrail at the end of the street is broken. See? Where? Over there. Oh, yeah. Hey, if any car crashed through that, well, it would just be too bad. The next stop is the river. That's just what I'm thinking. That... Yes, there it is. Huh? There what is? There's a car at the bottom of the river, Inspector. A sedan. And I think it's the one we're looking for. Eagerly, Superman gazes down through the dark waters of the Metropolis River to where a sedan rests on the muddy bottom. Is it the maroon sedan in which Rufus Pelly's men took John Grayson away? 
And if it is, will it furnish Superman the clue he needs to locate White and Grayson in time to save their lives and to catch the warmonger who is conspiring to wreck the World Peace Federation? Tomorrow's episode brings us closer to the stirring climax of our story. So don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, here's a famous name that brightens up your breakfast. It's Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Kellogg, as in Kellogg's shredded wheat. What a treat. Tender, plump biscuits full up with natural nut sweet flavor and toasted just right for extra crispness. But that's not all. Kellogg's shredded wheat biscuits are just the right size, made to fit the bowl. And there are 15, 15 biscuits in every package, each one full of swell whole wheat nourishment. Ask Mom to get you some Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. That's Superman. Kellogg, Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, grave danger threatens Perry White and John Grayson. As Superman and Inspector Henderson seek desperately to find some clue to their whereabouts and the identity of their captors. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. You know, in order to be hep these vacation days, you have to feel hep, wide awake and alive. And you can't feel that way if you don't eat right. So, gang, give a cool, inviting breakfast a chance to show you what it can do to help begin your day. Start with Kellogg's Pep with cool milk and sugar. There's a treat that is a treat. Those golden flakes of pep are so light, so fresh and crisp, they practically say, come on, dig in. That lively golden toasted flavor is strictly super, strictly terrific. And the same goes for the swell bonus you get in every pet package. Meaning, of course, those keen prizes, all three kinds. For instance, you'll get either a colored cardboard model of a famous fighting plane, one of seven in the great pet air fleet, or you'll get one of 24 beautiful color pictures of birds with a full description on the reverse side to help you identify these birds anywhere. Or else you'll find a bright-colored comic button picturing one of 18 characters straight out of the funnies. Sure is great fun to collect the whole series to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. So start collecting yours as a prize with Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Now the adventures of Superman. As you remember, editor Perry White and John Grayson, publisher of the Metropolis Daily Planet, were abducted by Rufus Pelley, a corrupt manufacturer of war materials who wishes to use the planet for propaganda against the World Peace Federation. Then, when Grayson, backed by White, refused to turn over his great newspaper to Pelley, the munitions magnate condemned them to death. Meanwhile, after trying vainly to pick up Grayson's trail, Superman and Inspector Henderson were about to admit defeat when the Man of Steel spied a broken guardrail at the end of a dark, deserted street that ended at the river. There, resting on the muddy bottom of the river, far below the surface, Superman saw a car. And as we continue now, standing at the broken guardrail, Inspector Henderson gasps as Superman bursts up from the dark waters with the dripping car and sets it down on the street. There you are, Inspector. Great Lucifer, Superman. Why, you brought that car up from the bottom of the river as if it were a feather. Never mind that now. Look, it's a maroon sedan. Same kind of a car John Grayson was taken away in. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, let's have a look inside. Look out. You'll get a bath if you open that door. The car's full of water. Yeah, but what if there's... There's some... nobody in it. Don't worry. What's more, nobody was in it when it crashed through the guardrail. Yeah? How do you know? Well, the windows and doors are closed. Even if anyone could have opened the door underwater, he couldn't have closed it again. Oh. Then what do you think happened? 
My guess is that another car was waiting here to which Mr. Grayson was transferred. Then this car was sent to the bottom of the river to throw pursuers off the trail. Mm, could be. But we're not sure this is the car they used. I'm sure enough, Inspector. Well, even if you're right, this doesn't help us much. The water must have washed away any possible clues by now. Not so... all of them. The water didn't wash away two clues. Two clues? What? Where? Right in front of your eyes, Inspector. The license plates and the factory number on the engine block. Let's see. It's H three five. Oh, wait a minute, Superman. I'm surprised at you. Why? You don't think those guys use their own car, do you? If this is the sedan they use, the chances are a thousand to one they stole it. Not necessarily, Inspector. As a matter of fact, I don't think they did. Well, I'll prove it to you. Come on back to headquarters and we'll look up the owner of this maroon job. That's what I was going to suggest. You got the license number? You bet. Good. Get set for a fast trip. I'm all set. Here goes. Next stop, headquarters. Up! Up! And away! Yeah, what did I tell you, Superman? Here's a report on a stolen maroon sedan. Came in about an hour ago. I see. Everything check on it? Yep. License number, motor number, same as the car you pulled out of the river. Here, see for yourself. Uh-huh. It's the same, all right. Sure, I told you it was stolen. We know from experience that crooks usually steal a car for an important job, so if they're spotted, well, they can't be traced to them. Right, but usually they abandon it. They don't go to all the time and trouble of dumping it into the river, do they? Well, no, no, I'll admit I can't figure out why these fellas did that. I can it was their own car. Oh, nonsense. I tell you, Superman, I've dealt with plenty of criminals. And they they all... wouldn't risk using a stolen car, not these criminals. Suppose the theft was discovered and reported at once. Their men might be caught in the car and the brains behind the plot could then be traced. True. But why dump the car in 60 feet of water, where the chances are all against his being found, and then report the theft? Simply because they're clever, Inspector. They're always thinking one step ahead. You see, if by any chance the car were found, their skirts would be clean because they'd already reported to the police that it had been stolen. Yeah, I suppose that does make sense, but I... Tell suppose... me, who's the owner of the car, according to the registration? Uh, let's see. Oh, yes, yeah, here it is. Fellow named Paul Brower. Paul Brower. Yeah, uh, huh? occupation, owner of a gasoline station. Gasoline station? That's right. He apparently runs a gas station in New Beacon. That's about 20 miles up the coast. Yes, I know. So there goes your theory, Superman. Hmm? I can hardly see the operator of a small-town gas station... Behind a big plot to sabotage the World Peace Federation. Can you? No, but... But what? I suggest we go to see Mr. Paul Brower, Inspector. Why? Why? It's a waste of time. Maybe yes, maybe no. Anyhow, since it's the only lead we have, there's nothing to lose. Come on. As Superman and Inspector Henderson start for the gasoline station, Editor Perry White and John Grayson seem to have reached the end of their rope. We're at a concrete dock below Rufus Pelly's huge island home. A long, sleek speedboat lays to in the moonlight, its powerful motors purring. A line trailing from its stern is made fast to a rowboat, in which, tied hand and foot and gagged, lie Perry White and John Grayson. Hugo, a huge, powerfully built man, stands at the wheel of the speedboat and listens carefully as Rufus Pelly, in beautifully cut riding breeches and silk shirt, gives him his orders from the dock. Two of them three or four miles out, Hugo. Well beyond the third harbor buoy. Yes, sir, Mr. Paley. Then cast off. When you put about 100 yards of water between yourself and them, press that white button, which will release the radio beam. Yes, sir. What will happen then? The beam will set off the explosive in that cylinder in the bow of the rowboat. <laughs> will the uh, boat explode? If all goes well, there won't be enough left to the boat, White and Grayson, to put in a thimble. Holy smokes. All right. Get going now, Hugo. I'll be up in my study with the binoculars to personally witness the explosion. So let nothing go wrong. No, sir. Goodbye, you two fools. When you wake up in the next world, tell them to make room for the Peace Federation. I'll send that along after you. His cruel eyes gleaming with savage amusement, Rufus Pelly watches as the speedboat towing Perry White and John Grayson surges out into his private harbor. Then he turns and enters the small elevator which rises through the rock to his great house above. Meanwhile, Superman, a long raincoat of Inspector Henderson's covering his costume, has arrived with the inspector at a small marine gasoline station on the Bay of New Beacon. Henderson is questioning Paul Brower, the stocky, carroty-haired proprietor. You, uh, 
You say your car was stolen this evening, Brower? That's right, Inspector. I had to be in Metropolis on business. When I came out of the house of a fellow who was loaning me some money, my car was gone. I called the police right away. Then this fellow, the one I was getting a loan from, he drove me back here. Uh-huh. Who is this man, the, uh, the one you were with? Harry Johnson. Lives at 314 Locust Street. Well, this sounds straight enough to me. Any questions you want to ask, Super, uh, Mr. Jones? Just one or two, Inspector. Tell me, Mr. Brower, did this Mr. Johnson give you the money you wanted? Oh, sure. He's an old friend of mine. Was it a large loan? Well, no, not very. thousand dollars is all. You see, I wanted to make some repairs to my wharf. I service the fishing and pleasure boats around here. thousand dollars, eh? wonder if you'd mind showing us Mr. Johnson's check or the cash. What for? Hey, what's the idea? Oh, I've got a reason. Do you have any objections to showing us the check or the bills? Well, uh, you, you see, uh, uh, Johnson didn't exactly give me the money yet. You but said I he did. Well, he, he said he would. He, he's going to mail it to me tomorrow. Now, listen, mister. Oh, never mind, you... Inspector. Never mind. We've got to go now. Thanks very much, Mr. Brown. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, well, come on, come on. Wait, I said, let go of my wait, arm. Inspector, don't argue. Hey, what's the idea, Superman? Why'd you pull me out of there? Couldn't you see that fellow was lying? Of course I could, but I didn't want him to know we were wise to him. He would have... Great Scott! Out of my way, Inspector! Amazed, Inspector Henderson watches with mouth agape. A Superman hurtles through the air and flashes down under the waters of the bay. What has happened? We'll return in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by! You know, gang, you're missing out on something the other kids are having a lot of fun with, unless you're collecting the swell prizes from packages of Kellogg's Pep. Three different kinds of prizes, one in each package of Pep you open. Just think, your next Pep prize may be a bright-colored comic button picturing one of your favorite comic strip characters, 18 in all, to collect and to wear on your jacket or beanie cap. Or maybe you'll find a bird picture in brilliant color with a full description on the reverse side. Collect all 24 of them. And will you be a wise bird on birds? Or maybe your pep prize will be one of the seven exciting colored cardboard plane models. Easy and fun to put together. Remember, there's one or the other of these three slick kinds of prizes in every package of pep, the sunshine cereal. And you know, all the while you're collecting them, you can be enjoying breakfast with those crunchy golden whole wheat flakes of pep. Mm -mm. A dish of pep with cool milk and sugar. Is that a delicious treat? What flavor? A catchy, fresh flavor. A top-notch, so good flavor. In short, a pep flavor, meaning strictly terrific. So for an all-round prize dish and an all-round prize package, ask Mom today to get you a package of Kellogg's Pep first thing. As Superman and Inspector Henderson left Paul Brower's marine filling station on the bay, the man of steel suddenly brushed Henderson aside and dove into the dark waters. Now, after only two or three seconds, he has flashed back to Henderson's side. Okay, Inspector. Come on. Come on where? Say, why did you dive in the water? I saw a private telephone in a cabinet in Brower's shop. The wire runs along the bottom of the bay. What? My hunch is it runs to the headquarters of the men who abducted Perry White and Mr. Grayson. And who want to sabotage the World Peace Federation. Now, wait a minute. Brower was obviously lying to us tonight. Right after we left, he went to the cabinet and picked up the private phone. I believe he's working for the gang, Inspector, and wanted to warn them about us. That's why I dove into the bay and snapped the wire. Well, why didn't you tell me all this before? Come on, we'll go back and put the screws to Brower. No, no, no. We'll just lose time trying to make him talk. I can follow that wire. All right, up under my arm, Inspector. I think this is going to be the showdown. Well, here's hoping. Yes, here's hoping we're not too late. Up! Up! And away! <laughs> Leaping up from the edge of the bay with Inspector Henderson, Superman streaks out over the water, his keen eyes following the cable telephone wire along the bottom. Will it lead him to Rufus Pelly's island estate? And if it does, can he possibly save the lives of Perry White and John Grayson? For at this moment, the giant Hugo on Rufus Pelly's speedboat is heading far out to sea, towing the rowboat with his helpless captives. The rowboat which is fitted with one of Pedley's deadly machines of war. What will happen as Pelly himself, the greedy man of mass murder, through war, sits in his glass-walled study atop his house, and leisurely sips coffee while looking out to sea, waiting for the explosion which will signal the end of White and Grayson. Tomorrow brings the smashing climax of our story, fellows and girls, so don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. 
And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, you think of famous names, do you think of Kellogg? You know, that's the greatest name in cereals. And Kellogg makes Kellogg shredded wheat, the tender plump biscuits, just the right size to fit in your breakfast bowl. And are they good? Over the brim with natural nut sweet flavor. Good for you, too. They're made of nutritious whole wheat. What's more, Kellogg gives you 15. 15 delicious biscuits every package of Kellogg shredded wheat. Try them soon. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P, E, P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today we bring our story of Rufus Pelley and his attempt to sabotage the World Peace Federation to a smashing climax as a new and even more startling adventure awaits the Man of Steel. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, have you noticed the way folks step lively to the breakfast table when Kellogg's Pep heads the menu? Right off, they hitch up their chairs and settle down to the business of good eating. Seems like you can hardly resist this catchy golden toasted cereal. And who wants to resist Pep's tender crispness or that light, keen sunshine flavor Pep is famous for? Every crunchy flake is full of cool come on. Every spoonful is a rare treat in itself. Every dish of pep with cool milk and sugar just about doubles the fun of breakfast. And don't forget, every package of pep gives you a surprise prize. It'll be either a bright-colored comic button picturing one of 18 famous comic strip characters, the pin on your jacket or your beanie cap, or it'll be a colored cardboard model of a light fighting plane, easy as a breeze to assemble. Just swap duplicates with the gang and collect all seven model planes in the series. Or your next prize may be a full-color bird picture. There are 24 of these, each with a full description on the reverse side, so that you'll really know a thing or two about birds. So, gang, what are you waiting for? Start collecting all three kinds of these slick pep prizes. Today, ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Now, the adventures of Superman. Scheming to obtain control of the Metropolis Daily Planet, in order to use its pages to poison public opinion against the World Peace Federation, Rufus Pelley, a munitions magnate who profits from war, had editor Perry White and publisher John Grayson abducted. When they refused to turn over the great newspaper to him, Pelley had them tied hand and foot and placed in a rowboat to which a charge of explosives was attached. Then they were towed out to sea by a man who was ordered to destroy them. Meanwhile, on the trail of his friends, Superman carrying Inspector Henderson followed an underwater telephone line from a gasoline station on the mainland... As we continue now, the Man of Steel suddenly checks his flight above a moonlit island on which a magnificent estate is situated. That's where the private pole line goes to inspect you, that island down there. Boy, what a layout. Acres of gardens, stables, private airport. Say, wait a minute. You know whose estate that is? Oh, who? Why, that's Rufus Pelly's place. He's the multimillionaire. He makes his money from war munitions, doesn't he? Oh, yes, that's true. But if the World Peace Federation brings all the nations together in friendship and understanding and so prevents future wars, Kelly will be out of business, right? Maybe so. But you're all wrong about him where this case is concerned, I tell you. And why does he have a private phone to Paul Brower's gas station across the bay, keeping in mind that Brower's car was used in Grayson's abduction? I don't know. If you think Kelly abducted White and Grayson, let's see you find him there. You're not on the island now, but... Certainly not. You never were here. We'll find out. I see Pelly's up in that glass-walled turret on top of his house, so hang on, Inspector. We're going to call on him. 
Carrying Inspector Henderson, Superman streaks to the tip of the island where Rufus Pelly's great stone house sprawls on the rocks above the sea. Meanwhile, three miles out, a sleek, powerful speedboat has throttled down. And at the moment that Hugo, Pelly's giant henchman, is about to cast off the rope attached to the rowboat in which Perry White and John Grayson sit, bound hand and foot, Henderson and Superman, again garbed in the inspector's long raincoat and calling himself Mr. Jones, enter Rufus Pelly's glass-walled study where the multi-millionaire munitions magnate answers Superman's questions coolly. Why, yes, Mr. Jones. I have a private telephone connection with Paul Brower's gas station on the mainland. It's very convenient when guests arrive for the island. He phones us, and we send our launch for them. Well, that sounds reasonable, Super... Uh, Jones? Yes, if it's the truth. Why, what do you mean, sir? We didn't tell Brower we wanted to see you... But the moment we left, he grabbed the phone to warn you that we'd found the car in which John Grayson was abducted. And that we'd caught him in a damaging lie. I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. Look, Mr. Pelly, Homer Smith works for you, doesn't he? Homer Smith? Who's he? The stooge for the murderous warmongers who are out to wreck the World Peace Federation. Smith blackmailed John Grayson and got himself appointed to run the Daily Planet, as you must know. Sorry. I have never heard of it. I think you have. I think he's your stooge. Now, just a moment, Hold young man. Hold it, Jones. It would mean quite a lot to you. Millions, even billions of dollars if the World Peace Federation was kicked out of the window. Wouldn't it, Mr. Pelly? You're very impertinent. As a matter of fact, I have no quarrel at all with the Peace Federation. But you listen to me, young man. Excuse me. Uh, come in. Uh, what is it, Marsh? Excuse me, sir. This telephone message just came for you, sir. The party said it was very important. I'll call him and say I'll phone in a short while, Marsh. Yes, sir. I'll take that paper, Marsh. Uh, now, wait. Say, sir, Don't let him have it, Marsh. Look here, you can't do that. Inspector, I appeal to you as... So, you never heard of Homer Smith, eh, Pelly? Wait a minute, Look, now. Inspector, this message is from Homer Smith, giving him a number for Pelly to call at once. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. So you are mixed up in this mess, huh? Look out, Inspector. He's got a gun. Yes. And I know how to use it. Stand very still, gentlemen. Very still. You'd better put that gun down, Pelly. Not until it is spoken. Twice, Inspector. Your friend, Mr. Jones, was too clever for your good. So, you admit you're behind the plot to sabotage the Peace Federation? Of course. If the Peace Federation succeeds, there will be no more wars. And where would I be with my great arms and munition plants? My mines, my ships. You filthy rat. You'd willingly drag the world into another war in order to land... Wait, Inspector, wait a minute. What did you do with Perry White and John Grayson, (laughs) Pelly? Since you're about to die, I'll tell you that too. At any moment, you'll see an explosion directly out to sea. (laughs) That will mark the end of Mr. White and Mr. Grayson. What? What do you mean? They're in a rowboat equipped with one of my new weapons. A wonderful weapon controlled by a radio beam from a central control station. In this case, a motorboat. I warned you not to move. Look out! I shed lead, brother, but you don't shed this. Ah. Huh. Nice going, Superman. Here, you march, or whatever your name is. Stand where you are. Yes, sir. Keep an eye on Pelly, Inspector. Right. I've got to go places. Through that glass wall. Out and away! <laughs> Diving through the heavy glass wall, Superman rockets out to sea, where at this moment in the speedboat, Hugo is about to press a button which will explode the rowboat and its two occupants into nothing. There they are. That aluminum cylinder on the bow of the rowboat. I've got to grab it before it explodes. Down! Speaking above the moonlit waters with the speed of light, Superman snatches the aluminum cylinder from the bow of the boat in which Perry White and John Grayson sit, helpless and horrified. Without pausing, the man of steel leaps upward, high into the dark heavens, just as the cylinder explodes in his hands with a gigantic roar. Wow. That was a close shave. Now to pick up Mr. White and Grayson and collect that big roughneck in the speedboat and join Henderson and Pelly. Away! Well, Pelly, 
Do you still think you can blackjack the American public into throwing out the World Peace Federation? I'm not talking until I see my lawyer. All the lawyers in Metropolis won't be able to save you from this chair, Mr. Rat. Well, I owe you an apology, Superman. You were right all the time, and I was wrong. Forget it, Inspector. And John Grayson and I owe you our lives, Superman. I don't know how to think. The pleasure was all mine, gentlemen. With Mr. Pelly out of the way, the Peace Federation will have a better chance of succeeding. And for my money, the Federation is the only means of preventing an atomic war that would mean the end of all of us. You bet. Right. No question of it. Say, wait a minute. I almost forgot, Inspector. We've what? got to pick up Homer Smith. I've already called headquarters and told them to trace Smith through the phone number he left for Pelly. Oh, good. And I guess the party's over. Now, Mr. White, I, uh, I imagine you're in a hurry to write up your scoop. Am I? And how? Oh, boy, what a scoop this is. Wait till those puffed-up reporters of mine see this. ha <laughs> Yeah, they'll be impressed, all right. Especially Kent. Well, uh, I'm going back to Metropolis. If you want to live, that would be wonderful. Okay, up with you then. Yeah. Goodbye, all. Goodbye, Goodbye Superman. Goodbye. Thanks again. Out! Up! And away! <laughs> Well, Chief, working pretty late, aren't you? Oh, go away, Ken. Go away. I'm busy. Working on the Rufus Pelly story? Uh, you bet I am. Well, now, what do you think of the old man, Kent? <laughs> I guess this proves I can still show you young pups a thing or two about reporting, eh? Oh, sure, sure. Sit still. I'll get it. Oh, thanks. Hello. Hello. Is Clark Kent there, please? Speaking. And unless I miss my guess, I'm talking to America's own Sherlock Holmes himself, my old pal, Candy Myers. Look, cut the comedy, Kent. I'm huh? in a rush. I just wanted to ask you if you wanted to get in on a terrific new scoop. Do I? What's cooking, Candy? Plenty, but plenty. Wait till you hear. Well, I can hardly wait. Give. Oh, no, not on the phone. And anyhow, the pot won't boil for exactly 30 minutes. Then the lid'll blow off and break this town wide open. Hey, this sounds very interesting. That's putting it mildly. What is it, Candy? It's for me, Chief. In 30 minutes, you say, Candy? Check. Can you be at my place, then? Hey, I'll be there with bells on. Good. And be prepared for the surprise and the story of your life, brother. <laughs> We'll be back in a moment for the dramatic climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, if you could line up all those tender flakes of Kellogg's Pep that are eaten these summer mornings, how far do you think that line would stretch? Way out beyond the horizon and then some. And if you could heap together all the good eating fun you fellows and girls have with Pep, why, you'd practically have a mountain. Because Kellogg's Pep with cool milk and sugar is really hepped when it comes to tickling your taste. Sure, those delicate whole wheat flakes are so crisp and fresh, so cool-tasting and light that, well, you just couldn't ask for a finer treat. What's more, you couldn't ask for anything finer than those swell pep prizes. For instance, right inside your next pep package, you may find one of a great new series of 24 bird pictures with a description on the reverse side to help you identify each of these birds wherever you see it. Or you may find an exciting colored cardboard model of a fighting plane, easy as anything to assemble. There are seven model planes you can collect. Or your next pet prize may be a, a bright-colored comic button with a famous character straight out of the funnies. One of 18 keen buttons to wear on your beanie cap or your jacket. So hop to it, gang. Get busy collecting all three kinds of these wonderful prizes. Ask Mom to get you a package of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Fifteen minutes after phoning Clark Kent to come to his home... Candy Myers, the popular private detective, drives his car into the garage behind his little bungalow on the waterfront where he lives alone. As he steps from the garage into the moonlit darkness of his tiny backyard... Okay, guys, let him have it. Yeah, what the... Oh, please! <laughs> Taken by surprise as several burly figures leap at him out of the darkness, Candy Myers is knocked to his knees. He recovers, starts to fight back. Then, overpowered, he is beaten as his assailants wield blackjacks and gun butts. A moment later, Candy lies battered and still in the quiet moonlight. What is the meaning of this brutal attack on the friendly, much-loved private detective? And is he dead? We're beginning an exciting new Superman adventure, gang. And you won't want to miss a single tense minute of it. So be sure to be with us tomorrow. Same time. Same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman.
Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. You know, gang, famous names make history. And Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals, has made history with good breakfast eating for a long time. For example, Kellogg shredded wheat. So crisp, so toasty, so delicious. Tender, plump biscuits, 15 of them to a package. That's 15 biscuits crammed with their own natural nutsy flavor and made just the right size to fit the bowl. And remember, this is whole wheat, so it's good for you, too. Ask Mom for Kellogg Shredded Wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P E P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. What? Today, as we begin an exciting new adventure, Andy Meyer's big story has led the private detective straight into a mysterious ambush. <laughs> Hello there, gang. This is your pal, Dan McCullough. You know, one of the best things about the prizes in Kellogg's Pep is the swell surprise when you see which one of the three different kinds of Pep prizes you'll find at your next package. For instance, you might find one of 18 different comic buttons to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap, each picturing a favorite comic strip character in bright color. Or you might find a model of a famous allied fighting plane, one of seven exciting plane models in the series made of colored cardboard and a cinch to put together. Or you might find a beautiful full-color bird picture from a series of 24, each with a description on the reverse side so that you'll be a bird who really knows birds. Yes, you'll find one or the other of these three slick kinds of prizes in every package of Kellogg's Pet. And while you're collecting them, just think of the prize eating you can put in when you sit down to breakfast with a dish of those crisp flakes of whole wheat before you. Think of the keen, catchy flavor, that light, fresh, sunshine flavor. That terrific pep flavor you spoon up all cool and refreshing. Yes, sir, a bowl of pep with cool milk and sugar is strictly on the beam. In fact, from every angle, pep's a prize dish. So get wise to the prize in your next pep package. Ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Now the adventures of Superman. After rescuing Editor Perry White and John Grayson and crushing the attempt by Rufus Pelly to wreck the World Peace Federation, Superman returned to the Daily Planet in his guise of reporter Clark Kent. He had hardly arrived when he received a phone call from his friend Candy Myers, the private detective, who told him to come to his house in half an hour and be in on a terrific news story. But a few minutes later in the little yard behind his waterfront bungalow, Candy was ambushed by several men who leaped at him from the darkness. As we continue now, unaware of what has happened, Kent is in a taxi cab with Perry White, en route to keep his appointment with Candy. Listen. Hey, you know, it's almost midnight, Chief. You've had a rough time. You ought to go home to bed. Nothing going, Kent. I got one big scoop tonight, and now, according to Candy Myers, we're going to get another one. Ah, two news beats in one night. That's what happens when the old man rolls up his sleeves and goes to work. Uh huh. Meaning yourself, I presume? Naturally. Didn't I get the Rufus Pelly story? Why, uh. Yeah, yes, I suppose you did. You suppose I did. If I didn't, who did? You? Well, I might have had a little to do with it. Are you kidding? You weren't within 40 miles of the island when Superman and I wrapped up Mr. Pelly and his rats and the story. Oh, it was you and Superman, eh? You bet it was. Well, I'll admit he did most of the work. Nice of you to admit that. But I was on the ball every minute. Uh Uh-huh. Just goes to show that when the chips are down, the old man can give you young pup reporters all the breaks and still come home with the story. (laughs) How wonderful, Chief. Yeah. Well, what'd you say? Nothing. 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 Oh. I wonder what this story is that Candy Myers has got hold of. All I know is he said it would rip this town wide open. Mm, it sounds wonderful. Myers doesn't talk through his head, does he? Oh, sir, not Candy. Well, good. Say, this driver must think we're out for the air. 
Uh, look, driver, we're in a hurry. Relax, Bart. Bart? <laughs> we're practically there. <laughs> Hey, do you mind using all four wheels when you turn a corner? You said you was in a hurry, didn't you? Sure, but I want to get there alive. Easy, Chief. Here we are. Thank goodness. What a driver. Well, this is it, kids. Kids? <laughs> That'll be 165. I got it, Chief. Never mind, never mind. Keep your money. Uh, here you are, driver. Keep the change. Much obliged, Pop. Uh, no, it's Pop. <laughs> now, listen, you. Wait a minute. You... Come on, Chief. Come on. Don't be so sensitive. Oh, all right. Let go of my sleeve. All right. Huh. Well, this is the forsaken neck of the woods. Oh. Damn, too. What does Candy live out here for? Well, he used to be a waterfront detective, and he likes the waterfront. No accounting for taste. <laughs> Watch this, Ted. I see him. I see him. Huh. That's funny. What is? Candy isn't home. How do you know he isn't? Well, I can... Uh, well, well there, there there are no lights. Oh, it's late. I'd have decided to take a little nap until we got here. No, no, he didn't. I mean, that, that, that isn't likely. Now, look, look. I was with Superman tonight. I saw him face to face, and take my word for it, you're not anything like him. So stop trying to see through the door. Ring the bell. Go on. Well, all right. But I tell you... Never uh... mind, never mind. He said to be here in 30 minutes, didn't he? Yes. And it's about 45 minutes since he called. I know, but... I... Great Scott. What? What's the matter? The backyard. Follow me, Chief. What? Candy on the ground, Chief. Candy. Candy. Good Godfrey. Well, what happened to us? Either in an accident or... Oh, no, he was beaten. Terribly beaten. Well, who... Oh, never mind. Listen to his heart, Ken. Is he? All right, all right. Is he? Just a minute, please, Chief. Yes, his heart's beating. Oh, fine. Very fine. weakly. He... Uh-oh, wait a minute. What's this in his hand? Mm, looks like a handkerchief. Yes, it is a handkerchief, but... But what? Are you going to waste time looking at a handkerchief at a time like this? We've got to find a doctor. No, I know. Wait a minute. The Marine Hospital isn't far from here. We'll take Candy there. Well, now, oh, we haven't got a car. You go to the corner and find a cab. Okay, okay. I hope oh, I can find one. There, he's gone. Now, out of these clothes. <clears throat> Quickest way to get poor Candy to the hospital is a Superman. There we are, all set. Now, up with him. Gently. So. Now... Up! Up! And away! Now, oh, there you are, Kent. Now, listen, what's it? Oh, so loud, Chief. You're in a hospital. Well, what happened? When I got back with the cab, you and Candy were both gone. How'd you get here? I, I found some fast transportation. Now, what do you mean? I was only gone a minute. How? Well, what's the difference? Here comes the doctor. A doctor? How's Candy Myers? Uh, pretty weak, but he'll pull through. Oh, that's fine. Oh, that's wonderful. Can we see him? Not until morning, Mr. Kent. The poor chap received a terrible beating. Yes, I know. That's why we want to see him as soon well, as we, we want can. to find out if he knows who the rascals are who did it. It will have to wait until morning. Mr. Myers needs rest, and we've given him a sedative to make sure he gets it. I mm-hmm. see. Oh, come on, Kent. We'll grab a few hours sleep at the newspaper club and be back first thing in the morning. <laughs> Gentlemen, now remember, Mr. Myers is much better, but don't let him talk too much. We won't, Doctor. Come on, Chief. Uh, much obliged, Doctor Ross. Well, that's all right. Good Godfrey. Look at all the bandages on him, Candy. Yes, poor chap. Uh, how are you doing, Candy? Oh, hello, Kent. Hi. Hiya, Mr. White. Well, uh, how are you feeling? Uh, like I was put through a meat grinder. Not bad. How's with you? Oh, we're Who all... gave you the works, Candy? Oh, some bad boys. What bad boys? Oh, uh, their names escape me at the come moment. Come on, come on. I can see you know who they are. Well, I I got a rough idea. Well, then tell us. We want to help you. Ah, thanks, chum, but I don't need any help. Oh, now, look here, Candy. You Candy. heard me, Kent. This is strictly my own party. I suspect a very fancy double cross. Well, some boys got rough, so... Okay... Little Candy will have to prove to some punks he can take care of himself. Yes, but look, Candy, uh, we... How'd the uh, Dodgers come out yesterday? Anybody know? He's stalling. I know it, I know it. Now, listen to me, Candy. You were beaten within an inch of your life. You're telling and me... And now you've got some fool idea of settling things in your own way. You're a detective. You know that isn't the way to play. You all through, Kent? 
Well, for the moment. Then tell me how the Dodgers made out yesterday. Oh, confound it, Myers. Just a moment, Chief. Just a moment. Look, Candy, what happened to you last night was tied up with the big story you said you had for me. Isn't that right? I'm not talking, chum. But you've got to talk. Look, I, I don't know what this is all about, but I do know that you're heading for more trouble. A lot more. Here. Look at this. What's that? A handkerchief. It was carefully placed in your hand when I found you last night. Oh, yes, I remember. But, well, boy, look, there's writing on it. Uh, there is. What does it say? It's printed very roughly in ink. It says, keep your nose clean. What? What? In the vernacular, Chief, that means keep your nose out of other people's business. Oh, oh the dirty rats. They thought they could scare me into laying off my investigation, huh? They thought I'd be scared to even go near that subway now and... Uh, uh, subway? Uh, what about a subway? Uh, All right, come on, Candy, come on, give. What's this about a subway and an investigation? Well, every time I open my big mouth, I put my foot in it. Okay, chums, I... I guess I'll have to give you the lowdown. Good. Well, but it's about time. Uh, right now, I, uh... Oh, my head is spinning like a top. What? Huh? There Polka dots in front of my eyes. Uh -oh. Here, Dr. Ross, kid. No, 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 no. I'm a, I'm okay. Just just weak. Doc said I'd be like this for a few days. Oh. But uh, what about well, uh, let me let me grab forty winks first. Say say about a half hour. Oh, sure, to sure. Back then and you know, I'll give you a story that'll make your eyes pop, and I mean pop. Okay, Candy, sure. Half an hour. Come on, Chief. What is the exciting story which Candy Myers has promised to reveal? Stand by for the startling climax of today's episode, which follows in just a moment. You know, if you made a list of the good things you wanted a breakfast cereal, they'd add up to Kellogg's Pet. Sure. Take the way it looks, for instance. You like a dish that looks cool and crisp and melt in your mouth tender? And that's Kellogg's Pet. And then take flavor... Well, you just wouldn't ask for anything more delicious than Pep's light, keen sunshine flavor. Why, Pep is called the sunshine cereal. Those nippy whole wheat flakes give your appetite the old come on every time. And then take the prizes Pep gives you. Three different kinds of prizes, one in every package of Pep. Makes each prize seem three times as exciting because, well, you never know which one you're going to get next. For instance, you might find a colored cardboard model of an allied fighting plane and you'd be sharp to collect all seven model planes in the series. Or you might find one of Pep's 24 full-color bird pictures with a description on the reverse side to help you identify these birds wherever you spot them. Or you might find a bright-colored comic button with a famous character right out of the funnies. You can collect all 18 of these buttons to pin on your beanie cap or your jacket. So start collecting all three kinds of these snappy prizes. Ask Mom to get you a package of Kellogg's Pep tomorrow. <laughs> After waiting for 30 minutes in the hospital lobby, Clark Kent and Perry White are on their way back to Candy Myers' room to hear the detective's story when Dr. Ross hurries toward them. Oh, Mr. Kent. Mr. White. Yes, what is it, Doctor? Mr. Myers. Candy? He... Oh, what about him? He... Uh, he's gone. Gone? Gone? What do you mean? Well, I... I wanted to see how he was getting along. Yes? So, uh, I went to his room a few moments ago, and he wasn't there. What? Uh, that's right. Once more... He's no place in the hospital. I, I can't understand it. He, he seems to have vanished. Oh, good Godfrey! Their jaws dropping in amazement. Clark Kent and Perry White stare at the pale physician. How could the injured Candy Myers disappear from the hospital in broad daylight? What has happened to Candy? Is this latest development a further sequel to the startling story he had promised to reveal? Tomorrow's episode is tense and exciting, fellows and girls. So don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal.
You know, gang, you never forget a famous name. Like Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Kellogg brightens up breakfast with Kellogg shredded wheat. Fifteen, fifteen crisp tender biscuits in every package. There's loads of natural nut sweet flavor in toasty Kellogg shredded wheat. Loads of fine nutrition, too. It's whole wheat. And these plump, delicious biscuits are just the right size, made to fit the bowl. Try them soon. Ask Mom for Kellogg Shredded Wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Kellogg's Pep! P E P Pep! Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Serial, presents The Adventures of Superman! strange mystery hovers over the news story that Candy Myers promised Clark Kent, as without any reason, Candy disappears. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, uh, how's breakfast at your house? Is it, uh, you know, just breakfast? Or is it a snappy sort of meal that looks cool and crisp, tastes cool and crisp, and helps you feel cool and crisp as you start the day? I mean, gang, does your breakfast start off with a bowl of Kellogg's Pep? Yes, sir, Pep with cool milk and sugar is an appetite tickler from way back. Why, those crisp flakes of whole wheat are packed to the brim with keen, catchy, nippy flavor. Strictly terrific flavor, no kidding. And something else strictly terrific about Pep is the prizes it gives you. Three smooth kinds of prizes, one in every package. And you never know which kind you'll get next. Could be, for instance, you'll find a model of light fighting plane in colored cardboard. One of seven nifty pep planes you can collect. Or could be you'll find one of 24 new full-color bird pictures with a full description on the reverse side so you can identify these birds in the air. Or it could be your next pep prize will be one of 18 bright-colored comic buttons picturing a famous funnies character like Smiling Jack or, or Skeezix or Superman himself. Yes, you'd look mighty slick with all 18 of these buttons pinned on your jacket or your beanie cap. So start collecting all three kinds of these swell pep prizes. Ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, tomorrow. And now, the adventures of Superman. Promising a sensational news scoop, Private Detective Candy Myers asked Clark Kent to come to his waterfront bungalow that night. But when Kent arrived with Editor Perry White, they found Candy unconscious, cruelly beaten. The next morning in the hospital... Candy refused to discuss the affair, saying he had an idea who his attackers were and insisting angrily that he would deal with them alone. Finally, however, he agreed to tell his story if Kent and White would leave him for half an hour because he was tired. But as Kent and White started back to his room, Candy's physician met them with startling news. Listen. What is it, Dr. Ross? Why are you so excited? He, he's gone. What? Who's gone? Mr. Myers is... he's gone. Gone? What do you mean, doctor? I went to his room a few minutes ago. Yes, but he wasn't there. Wasn't there? And he isn't anywhere else in the hospital. What? He, he simply vanished. Good God, oh, let's have a look in his room. Come on. Mr. Myers was right here in this room, in this bed. Yes, I know. But when I came in to see him a few minutes ago, he, he was gone. Oh, I can't understand it. We left him here just half an hour ago. He said he wanted to take a nap. You say you searched the hospital, Dr. Ross? Yes. Yes, he isn't here, Mr. Kent. Oh, nonsense. He must be here. He couldn't just disappear into thin air. Oh, it's obvious that Candy either walked out, Chief. He couldn't walk out. He was hurt too badly. Oh, Candy's a pretty tough customer. And I see his street clothes are gone from the closet. He couldn't walk, I tell you. Could he, Doctor? Well, he was in bad shape. But as Mr. Kent says, he's uh, rugged. He might have walked, but I... Walk? Don't... Walk where? The corridor is full of nurses and doctors. And Candy was bound up in bandages like a mummy. Somebody would have seen him. Now, that's what I was about to say. He could have left through this window. The window? Are you out of your mind, Kent? No, take a look for yourself, Chief. This is a low second floor, and the roof of the veranda runs directly below. It's only a short drop to the veranda roof and another short drop to the ground. Oh, now, wait, It's Mr. a short Kent, I... drop for you, but not for an injured man. Anyhow, why in thunder would Candy want to pull a fool stunt like that? Well, he might not have wanted to. 
He might have been forced. Forced? Mm -hmm. By who? Why? Candy was badly beaten last night because of something he discovered. It's possible that someone overheard him promise to tell us all about it and spirited him away so he couldn't talk. Good heavens. Nobody could have overheard him. The three of us were here alone in this Somebody room. Somebody could have been out there on that veranda roof, right under the window. Oh, well, of Dr. Course. Ross, I suggest you contact the police at once. We'll get in touch with you later. Very well. Come on, Chief. Uh, where? To Candy's house. I just remembered something. Something very important. <laughs> Just what in thunder are you looking for, Kent? I told you, Chief. Candy was investigating something. Apparently, he made an important discovery which somebody didn't want him to make. Well, I can figure that out for myself, Mr. Brilliant Detective. But what was he investigating, and what discovery did he make? Nothing there. I don't know what he discovered. Uh, That's a great help. But I think he was investigating the subway. The subway? Mm Mm-hmm. You remember when the uh, the new tube under Ninth Avenue caved in last month? Uh, I'll say I do. Three people killed and a couple of hundred injured. Well, what about it? Only this. Candy was riding in the subway at the time. And he barely escaped serious injury. And what's more, he was wild mad when he saw all those people hurt. Matter of fact, he came to me. He said he wanted me to help him investigate the accident. I was going to, but that uh, atom bomb story came up then. Mm-hmm. Well... Well, just that I think Candy went on with the investigation himself. He's a stubborn guy, you know. I believe he may have turned up something. Oh, nonsense. The city made its own investigation. They found the cave-in was caused by a fault in the rock, which hadn't been there when the tube was put through. Just one of those unfortunate things, that's all. Uh, maybe. No maybe about it. Mayor Marshall issued the report himself. You don't doubt his honesty, do you? No, uh, but... You'd better not. He worked like a dog to help elect him. No. No, Candy must have been working on something else, Kent. Maybe. Well, there's nothing in this chest but some shirts and stuff. And there was nothing in the desk or in the bedroom. Afraid the fellows who beat him up last night got away with his evidence. If there was any evidence. Oh, say, how about his office? No, it's always closed during August. Jackson, his assistant, takes his vacation then, and Candy goes to the ballgames. Say, look, Chief, I'm going back to the hospital. What for? Well, someone may have turned up by now who saw Candy being taken away. If so, I'll have to move fast. I don't think Candy will get away with just a beating this time. Oh, no. Well, isn't there something we can do? I'm going to do something. Right now. Now, you can get... You're going to do something. Yes, now, please, Chief, no question. But... I suggest you send a good reporter, say, uh, uh, Tony Sloan, out to that subway cave-in right away. I passed it the other day, and it isn't quite cleaned up yet. Tell him to get samples of the concrete used in the tube and the rock. Are you still harping on that? I tell you there's nothing in it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, please, Chief. When I showed Candy the handkerchief we found by him last night, the one that had uh, keep your nose clean printed on it, uh-huh. he blurted out that somebody was trying to frighten him into staying away from the subway. I so don't I... remember his saying anything about a subway. We he did. just said somebody was trying to scare him. No, no, he said the subway, I tell you. Now, please, Chief, we're losing valuable time. Candy's life is at stake. We can't afford to overlook any kind of clue. All right, all right. I'll send somebody out. Fine. Now, I'll get out. But I can't send Tony Sloan. He's on the Connor story. And Harry Goldman is doing the follow-up on the Pelly case. I'll send Jim. Oh, no, no. It might be too dangerous for him. Dangerous? <laughs> dangerous, my foot. But, oh, well, okay. I'll send Lois along with him. Okay, but tell him to be careful. Very careful. I'll see you later, Chief. We got here just in time, Jim. See, the steam shovel is clearing out what's left of the cave in, too. Yeah, the hole will be clean in no time. How are we going to get close enough to get some chunks of the old concrete in the rock? There are guards all around the place. I know how. Come with me. Where, Miss Lane? To that big dump truck. The steam shovel is dropping the old concrete into it. Oh, you mean we'll snitch some out of the truck? Oh, we're not snitching, Jim. That stuff belongs to the city and we're citizens. Besides, it's valueless. They're just going to take it somewhere and dump it maybe into the harbor. It's not valueless if it helps us find Candy Myers. Gosh, poor Candy. She's an awful swell. Not so loud. Do you want everyone to know what we're here for? Oh, I'm sorry. There are just workmen around, though, and guards. Well, we don't know who's around, Jim. Get ready now. When we get behind the truck, fill that shoebox, but do it quickly. I will. Stay on this side of the truck until we get to the rear so that the guards don't see us. Okay. Get ready. All right, Jim. Now. Okay. What? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Got a duty box. Come on, then. Hurry. Right. 
Watch for an empty tank. Okay. Gosh, when that guard hollered at you, my heart jumped right up in my throat. Never mind the guard. Just keep your eyes peeled for a taxi. Oh, I'll feel better when we're away from here. So will I. And these guys... Look make... out! Jim! Behind the car! Jim, look out! <laughs> Shouting, Lois Lane seizes Jimmy Olsen's arm as a large black sedan roars down on them from behind. We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, it's a big moment, isn't it, when Mom opens a package of Kellogg's Pep? Because right away, you're looking to see which one of those three kinds of swell pet prizes you'll get. You're never quite sure whether it'll be one of Pep's seven colored cardboard plane models. And say, are they a keen collection? or whether your next prize will be one of 24 beautiful color pictures of birds, with a description on the reverse side to help you name and to know these birds every time. Or then again, that prize might be one of 18 bright-colored comic buttons, each picturing one of your favorite funnies characters to collect and, and to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. All you do know is that whichever one of these prizes you find inside your package of pep, it's strictly super. And you can say that again for pep itself. Why, the way those crisp whole wheat flakes of pep make with a flavor is something terrific. Yes, sir, you'll say that a bowl of pep, the sunshine cereal, with cool milk and sugar, is just about the slickest, the most refreshing breakfast dish there is. It's a downright catchy tasting that, well, it keeps your spoon coming right back until you've polished off every last bit in your bowl. And that's the right angle, especially nowadays when we're sending the cereal grains to fellows and girls overseas. So remember, gang, eat all your pep. Don't waste it. As Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen were leaving the scene of the recent subway cave-in with a shoebox full of concrete specimens, a large black sedan, throttle open, roared down on the boy reporter from behind. Shouting an alarm, Lois seized Jimmy's arm. Look out! Jim! Look out! Oh, sleeping lizards. Was that close? You, you saved my life, Miss Lane. How? Oh, I'm weak in the knees. Oh. That stupid driver. He must have seen you. Sure he did. He didn't even blow his horn. Look, here he comes now. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. So am I. All right, kid. Yeah, but it's not your fault. Why don't you look where you're going? What were you trying to do? Kill us both? Gee, I'm sorry. Here, let me brush you off, kid. Never mind. Uh, Come here, Harry. Give me a hand, will you? Okay, Joe. I said never mind brushing me off. Take your hands off me. Come on. Walk a little bit, kid. See if you're okay. Are you all right, Jim? Sure, I'm okay. Let go of me, I said. I want to make sure. Take his arm, Harry. Come on, kid. Cut it up. Hey, what's the idea? You let him alone. Enter the car with your kid. Look here. What? Hey, let go. Get in there. Let go. Okay, Harry. Step on it. Help. 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 Struggling frantically, Jimmy Olsen is thrust into the black sedan, which rushes away, leaving Lois Lane so thunderstruck that she cannot even call out. What does this mean? Is the shoebox of old concrete, which Jimmy still clutches instinctively, the reason for this mysterious attack? What will happen to the boy reporter? And what has happened to Candy Myers? Our story has taken a strange and menacing twist. Don't fail to be with us Monday when stranger things occur and a startling surprise. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pet. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, here's a winner in your list of famous names. It's Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Kellogg, as in Kellogg shredded wheat. What a treat for breakfast. Plump, tender biscuits of whole wheat, toasted just right. Full of natural nut-sweet flavor, too. And are they crisp? And here's what else you get in Kellogg's shredded wheat. Grand whole wheat nutrition, biscuits made to fit the bowl, and 15. 15 biscuits in every package. Tell Mom you'd like Kellogg's shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman.
This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P E P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. the Man of Steel is dealt another blow when he finds that not only is Candy Meyer still missing, but Jimmy Olsen has been abducted. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, you know something that'll make you want to put on speed while getting ready for breakfast? Why, it's Kellogg's Pep. Yes, sir. If you know there's a bowl of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal waiting for you you're likely to show up at breakfast on the double quick. Because who can put off sampling the crisp, light tenderness of those good flakes of whole wheat? Who can delay when Kellogg's Pep, with cool milk and sugar, is such a smooth treat? And say, speaking of smooth, did you ever see anything to beat the slick prizes Pep gives you? Three different kinds of prizes, each one a honey, and one or the other in each package of Pep. For instance, your next prize may be a beautiful bird picture in brilliant color with a full description on the reverse side. Collect all 24 of them, and will you be a wise bird on birds? Or maybe your next pet prize will be one of the seven exciting colored cardboard plane models, easy and fun to put together. Or maybe it'll be a bright colored comic button picturing a favorite comic strip character, 18 in all, to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. There's one or the other of these three snappy prizes in every pep package. So make sure Mom keeps you supplied with Kellogg's Pep, won't you? Now, the adventures of Superman. A few minutes after promising Clark Kent a sensational story, private detective Candy Myers was ambushed by several men and severely beaten. In the hospital, Candy was reluctant to discuss the affair, but finally agreed to tell his story to Kent and editor Perry White. Before he could do so, however, he disappeared. Knowing that Candy had been investigating a recent subway disaster, Kent searched for his friend, while Jimmy Olsen and Lois Lane went to a caved-in subway tube. There, Jimmy filled a shoebox with samples of the broken concrete which was being removed. But as he was leaving with Lois, he was seized by some men forced into a car and spirited away. As we continue now, some time has elapsed. And Lois is in Perry White's office at the Daily Planet. Listen. A uh, fine reporter you are, Lois. Didn't you have sense enough to get the license number of the car? If you'll just listen a moment, Chief. I started to tell you I tried to, but it was smeared with mud. I couldn't read the numbers. No. All I'm sure of is that it was a, a metropolis plate. One corner was clean enough for me to see the color. Uh, big help, that is. There are only about a half a million cars in metropolis. Well, what about the men who grabbed Jim? You must have seen them. I got a good look at two of them. One was husky and dark, about, uh, oh, 32 years old. Uh-huh. He wore a tan sport shirt. And the other one was smaller, husky too, yeah. with watery blue eyes. The first one called him Harry. Well, did you give those descriptions to Inspector Henderson? Of course I did. Oh, Chief, I'm so worried. You're worried? Well, what do you think I am? And what are we going to tell Jim's mother? I don't know. And Kent. Ah, he should have studied tattooing. A fine reporter he is. Just when he's needed, where is he? I don't know. Probably looking for footprints in Mrs. O'Leary's vegetable patch. Who's Mrs. O'Leary? How should I know? That can't... I could... Dig. You could watch, Eve. What? Oh, here you are. Now, it's about time. Now, listen. Clark, if you... the most terrible thing has happened. Jim... I know and... all about it, Lois. I just left Inspector Henderson. Oh, he... Well, did he find out anything yet? Apart from what the day of the week it is, I mean? Not yet, but don't sneer at him, Chief. He's a good man, and he's doing everything possible. I know, I know. It's just that... Oh, well, somebody's got to find Jim. If we only had a lead, if we only knew why he was taken away. Well, that's simple. Simple. What do you mean, Clark? Jim was taken away for the same reason Candy Myers was beaten up last night. But why would... Candy had already discovered something about the cave-in of the new Ninth Avenue subway tube. Something somebody didn't want him to discover. Well, when Jim was seen taking concrete specimens from the dump truck, the same somebody decided he knew too much, too, so... So they grabbed him. Exactly. Maybe, maybe. But that's all theory, Kent. Uh, have you any proof? No, I haven't yet, but i got a hunch I'm right. Well, that's not enough. How are you going to... If I could only find Candy, he could tell me where to look for Jim. Candy? Andy could. Well, sure. He knew who was behind all this. Don't you remember, Chief? That's what he was going to tell us before he disappeared. Oh, yes, that's right. 
Now, if I only knew where he was, I oh, could... Oh, that may be Henderson. I'll take it. I've got it. Hello? I want to talk to Clark Kent. Is that you, Candy? Candy. Is it really? Yes, quite... Yeah. Kind of worried when you couldn't find me in the hospital, huh? Well, say, we certainly were. What happened? Who took you out of there? I took myself out. You what? I can't. What? Sure. Please. Told you I had a job to do, didn't I? Nobody can make a sucker in a punching bag out of Candy Myers. No, sir. Oh. Oh, I see. Uh, look, Candy, where are you? Never mind where I am. Oh, but you've got to tell me, Candy, or else you've got to come here. You see, something's happened. I'm not Jim gonna was. I'm tell you, and I'm not gonna come there. But look, I Candy, I. This was my own party. I know, but. I'm gonna handle it all by my lonesome. But, Candy, listen, just Jim. I'm gonna had... tell you about the hospital. You're my pal, Candy. But look. I don't want you to worry. Goodbye now. No, wait, Candy. Jim was taken away by the same people who beat you. Candy! Oh, Candy! What's the matter? Clark. Candy! What is it? Oh, he hung up. Wouldn't tell me where he was. Good God, Frey. Why? I don't know. He gave me the same routine he did this morning about this being his own personal fight and he was going to settle it alone. You know, he sounded a bit strange. I don't understand. How do you mean, strange? I, I, I don't quite know. Well, well never mind he... that now. Uh, did he tell you who took him out of the hospital? Nobody did. He said he just walked out. What? Sure. No, now how am I going to find Jim? I was counting on Candy to tell me. Wait a minute. Henry Marshall. Who? The mayor. Oh, well, what about him? Well, what are you talking I'm about, Ken? Explain now. I've got to talk to Mayor Marshall at once. I'll see you later. So you see, Mr. Mayor, I'm convinced that Jim Olson's disappearance is tied up with that subway cave-in. Somebody has something to hide. I'm sure I can't imagine what, Kent. There was nothing mysterious about that terrible disaster last month. I think there was. I tell you, there wasn't. Just as I told your friend, Candy Myers. I went over the investigation report very carefully. The cave-in was caused by a fault in the rock above the tube. The fault developed after the tube was put through. I see. Uh, tell me, who was in charge of the investigation, Mr. Clint Mayor? Morgan, the building commissioner. Clint Morgan, eh? Well, he's the man I want to see, but I... I don't happen to know him. Uh, would you mind introducing me? No, I'll be glad to, as soon as he gets back to town. Back to town? Why, where is he? On vacation. Just went away today. He'll be gone about two weeks. Oh, I can't wait that long. Uh, do you happen to know where he's vacationing? Mm, no, no, I have no idea, Kent, but... Well, now, look here, Mr. Mayor, this is serious. A boy's life may be at stake. If you're going to start pussy... Now, just a moment, I... Kent. If I didn't think so much of you personally and of your newspaper, I'd resent that. But I know you're worried. I tell you, I don't know where Morgan is. He wouldn't tell anyone where he was going on his vacation. He said he was worn out. He was going to fish and rest where nobody could bother him. Oh, I see. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry I made that crack, Mr. Mayor, but I, I am worried. You see, I can't locate Candy Myers, and I thought the building commissioner might be able to... No, excuse me. Yes, surely. Yes? There's a Mr. Candy Myers on the line, sir. Candy Myers? What? On the phone, you say? Yes. Tell her to put him on, Mr. Mayor, and for heaven's sake, try to make him tell you where he is. All right. Uh, put him on, Miss Johnson. It's strange, Kent, we were just talking about him. I know. Hello, Mayor Marshall? Uh, yes, uh, look, Mr. Myers... Uh, I have someone here at the moment. Uh, tell me where you are, and I'll call you back in a few minutes. Uh, I'm in a drugstore. A drugstore? Find out where. And uh, you can't call me back. No, why not? Because nobody's going to know where I am till I finish my job. You listen to me, Mr. Mayor. I wasn't born yesterday, see? And I wasn't born the day before. I know what the score is, see? I know all about it. I can't hear you. There's some disturbance on the line. I'll call the operator. No, 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 don't. You might break the connection. There, the line's clearing. See if you can't get him to tell you where that drugstore is. I must know. Yeah, I'll do my Nobody best. Don't scare Candy Myers. I said I'd find out about that subway case. I missed what you said, Myers. There was some noise on the line. Now, if you just let me call you back... The I'd... noise is gone now. It was just the L train outside, so you don't have to call me back. The elevator train. That means he's on Market Street. I'll find him. You better listen to what I say, Mr. Mayor. You hear me? Oh, wait, Kent. Market Street is over ten miles long. There must be hundreds of drugstores. You know, but you just try to keep him hey, talking. Uh, yes, but... Uh, yes, yes, I, I hear you, Myers. You can't possibly find him, Kent. I have to find him. So long. Oh, let's see. Where can I change clothes? Ah, oh, there's nobody in this office at the moment. So I'll just borrow it long enough to strip down to my Superman costume. So, Candy's in a drugstore somewhere on Market Street, eh? That's where the L train runs. Now, oh, if I can only find him, 
Before he leaves, he can tell me where Jim is. All right, there we are. All set. Now up with this window. And out. Up and away! Leaping from the city hall, Superman streaks away to Market Street to begin his desperate search for Candy Myers. Will he find him? We'll be back in a moment to find out. So stand by. You know, you fellows and girls are just as active in the summertime, you know, use up just as much energy as any other time of year. So a good breakfast is just as important to help start your day in high. And that's where Kellogg's Pep comes in. Sure, because Pep, with cool milk and sugar, is such a slick dish, so crisp and and refreshing and full-flavored that, well, it tickles your appetite so you want to eat. Yes, sir, breakfast sure gets the glad eye when Kellogg's Pep heads the menu. And will you give those swell Pep prizes the glad eye? Prizes that are always surprises because you never know which one of the three different kinds of prizes you're going to find when you open your Pep package. For instance, you'll get either a colored cardboard model of a famous fighting plane, one of seven in the great Pep air fleet, or you'll get one of 24 beautiful color pictures of birds with a full description on the reverse side. Or else, you'll find a bright-colored comic button picturing one of 18 characters from the funnies. Collect all 18 to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. Just ask Mom to get Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, tomorrow and look for your prize inside the package. Knowing only that Candy Myers was in one of the great number of drugstores along the 10-mile length of Market Street, Superman has been rocketing above the street, his keen eyes searching below. Wait a minute. There's a drugstore. No, Candy is minute. Hurry! I must find him. He can help me find Jim. Up, oh, there's another drugstore. No, he's not there either. Hurry! Faster! Oh, if only the mayor kept him talking so Candy didn't leave the store. Up, oh, hold it. There's another drugstore. No, he's... Wait a minute. That crowd of people outside. Oh, there's a man lying on the sidewalk. Great Scott, it's Candy. Down to him. Down. Somebody call an ambulance. Pardon me, please. I can hear you. Let me through, please. Dead. Is he... Is he really dead? Rooted in his tracks, his senses reeling, Superman looks over the heads of the crowd at the motionless figure of Candy Myers sprawled on the sidewalk. Here's the crowd babble that his friend is dead. What has happened now? And how can Superman trace Jimmy Olsen? He had counted on Candy Myers to direct him to the missing boy reporter. Don't miss tomorrow's thrilling episode, whatever you do, fellows and girls. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, I know you know loads of famous names, so you're sure to know Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. But do you know that swell breakfast treat, Kellogg Shredded Wheat? It's delicious. You see, Kellogg picks out finest whole wheat, toasts it to natural nut sweet goodness. Kellogg packs 15, 15 tender plump biscuits in every package. And Kellogg sees to it that you get the grand nutrition of whole wheat in biscuits made to fit the bowl. Ask Mom to get you some Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P-Pep. 
Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Clark Kent, using his unusual powers as Superman, manages to turn up an important clue which may lead him to Jimmy Olsen. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, have you noticed how you just naturally feel like cutting your family and friends in on the good eating you find in Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal? Sure. Maybe you go into detail and tell how crisp and cool and crunchy Pep is. Or maybe you tell how those light, refreshing flakes of whole wheat tease and please your taste. And say, I'd sure like to be around when you tell about those swell prizes you find in packages of Pep. I've got an idea you'll say, jeepers, are those Pep prizes slick? And, of course, you'll tell about the three different kinds of prizes and how it's always a grand surprise to find out which one of the three you'll get in your next pet package. How it could be a model fighting plane in colored cardboard, one of seven great pet planes you can collect. Or could be one of 24 new full-color bird pictures with a description on the reverse side so you can identify these birds in the air. Or could be one of 18 bright-colored comic buttons Picturing a famous comic strip character. Swell for pinning on your jacket or your beanie cap. And say, while you're telling about those three kinds of pep prizes, don't forget to ask Mom to bring home a supply of Kellogg's Pep for you. Now, the adventures of Superman. Believing that private detective Candy Myers had been beaten up and abducted because of his investigation of a recent subway disaster, Clark Kent searched for his friend while Jimmy Olsen and Lois Lane went to the scene of the disaster. They were leaving with samples of the rubble when Jimmy was seized, thrown into a car, and driven away. Hoping that Candy could furnish a clue to Jimmy's whereabouts, Kent redoubled his efforts to find the detective. Finally, a strange phone call from Candy Myers himself told Kent only that he was in a drugstore somewhere on Market Street. As Superman, Kent streaked above Market Street, and on a sidewalk outside a drugstore, he saw the sprawled, motionless figure of Candy. As we continue now, Superman has resumed his guise of Clark Kent, and having carried Candy into the back room of the drugstore, is standing by as Dr. Jacobs, a neighborhood physician who was hastily summoned, works over him. Listen. Candy's moving his head, Doctor. Yes, he's regaining consciousness. Oh, good. I hope as soon as you've questioned him, you'll persuade him to go home to bed, Mr. Kent. He's quite weak, apparently, from the terrible beating you say he got last night. That's why he fainted. Yes, poor chap. Why he sounded so strange over the telephone... I don't think he knew what he was saying. That's quite likely. Oh, he is coming, too. Candy. Candy. He hasn't fully regained consciousness yet. Uh, where? Well, Will you hold happened? his head up, please, Mr. Candy? Yeah, sure. Of course I will. Wait a minute. Easy, Candy boy. Easy. All right. It's okay. Take it easy. Drink this, young man. No. Drink it, Candy. Well, yeah, that, that'll make where? you feel better. Yeah, let him lie down again now. All right. Where? Where am I? You're in a drugstore, Candy, but you're okay. You just fainted. Fainted? Mm-hmm. So, I can't. It's you, isn't it, Ken? Sure it is. Now, just you uh, take it easy. Get your strength back. Oh, fainted. I, I don't remember. He's doing all right now. Uh, well, I've got to leave. I have a patient waiting. If you need me, ask the druggist to call me. I'll be right over. I will. Thanks a million, Doctor. You're welcome. Uh, who's that? That's Dr. Jacobs. Oh, wait a minute, Doctor. I haven't paid you. Uh, don't worry about it. I'll send you a bill sometime. Goodbye and good luck. Goodbye. I, I don't get it. Say I fainted, Kent? Yes, you left the hospital today like a chump. Oh, yeah. I remember that. I was going to square things with Clint Morgan and his goons, but then I got kind of Clint dizzy Morgan, and... the building commissioner? Yeah, the dirt... Uh, 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 no, 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 it wasn't It wasn't that Morgan. Uh, some other guy. Oh, cut it out, Candy. Cut it out. Now that Jim's missing, you've got to come clean with everything you know. Uh, Jim? Yes. Y- you mean Jim Olson? I think he's in the hands of the same gang who beat you up last night. Jumping Jemima. Oh, please, now, don't give me any more of that this is strictly my own party routine. You've got to help me find Jim. Yeah, sure, of course. Can't allow to do anything for Jim. You know that, but... Well, well what happened? Tell me. Well, when you disappeared from the hospital this morning, I thought you'd been taken away by the gang who beat you up. Uh Uh-huh, go on. Well, from something you let slip, I was pretty sure that you were in trouble because you were investigating the cave-in on the new Ninth Avenue subway tube. I don't know how you figured that out, but you were right. Well, I reasoned that you'd found out something about that cave-in. 
Something somebody didn't want you to. Right again. So while I tried to pick up your trail from the hospital, Jim and Lois went over to the cave-in to pick up some samples of the concrete. I had a hunch that the... You said Lois. Uh Uh-huh. But don't tell me she's missing, too. Oh, no, no, no. She's all right. No, it's just Jim. See, some men grabbed him when he was leaving with the stuff, threw him into a car, and got away with him. Morgan. It must have been Clint Morgan. His guerrillas probably saw Jim sneaking the concrete samples no, no, it, and... it, it wasn't Morgan. Lois described the men, and while I don't know Morgan, I have seen him, and it wasn't he. Well, of course not. I, I don't mean Morgan himself. It was his goons. Oh. I, I'm sure of it. Just like I'm sure they gave me the works last night. Did you recognize them? No, but I know it was. Because Morgan tried to hush me up when he found out I was all set to pin the rap for the subway cave in on him. That was after I got a photostatic copy of the original engineer's report on the subway site, showing the fault in the rock before the tube was built. What? You mean they knew they'd have trouble and yes, still went ahead? Yes, sir, brother. But Morgan went through with the subway anyhow. Oh, probably like because that. he was getting a rake off from the contractors. Sure. And then after the cave-in, when all those people were killed and hurt, uh-huh. he puts out a statement saying the fault had developed in the rock after the tube went through. Wow, that is something. Look, Candy, you say you have a photostat of the original engineer's report? I said I had it. Like a dope, I was carrying it with me last night to show you when Morgan's muscle men jumped me. Well, there goes your evidence and your case. Not quite. Huh? You see, it looks as if Morgan is still jumpy. Figuring if I smelled out the truth, somebody else might too. Why do you say that? Because otherwise, when he saw Jim nosing around the cave-in, or his stooges did, they wouldn't bother getting him out of the way. That could be... Oh, if I only knew where Morgan was. At his office or his house. No, no, come no, on, he's, he's gone. Oh, ooh. What's the matter? Uh, uh, just a little woozy for a second. All right, all right, let's go, well, Jim. just a minute, Candy. Morgan's out of town, and nobody apparently knows where he went. Oh, baloney, he was in town yesterday morning. What? I saw him in his office, and he told me to... I told him to come clean, or I'd bust him high, wide, and handsome. Oh, well, that's the answer. That explains why he promptly left town on vacation for three weeks and didn't even tell the mayor where he was going. No kidding. Sure, he said he wanted complete rest and quiet. Well, how do you like that, cutie? As soon as I left, he turned his dogs on me, then hopped out of town, so if I lived and squawked, he had himself an alibi. Sure. Wait a minute, I think I can find out where he is. Look, Candy, you get a cab and go home. Oh, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Better yet, go to my apartment. You'll be safe there. Go home now? Uh-huh. Are you kidding? Not at all. The doctor says you need rest. The doctor can take the rest for me. Come now on, look, come on. I... Quit arguing and get going. We've but... got to find Jim. Yeah, I know better than to argue with you. All right, come on. Where? First stop, City Hall. Yes, Miss Myers, the commissioner's on vacation. Is there anything I can do for you? As the secretary? only thing you can do for us is tell us where he is. Why, I, I, I don't know, Mr. Myers. Don't give us that. I tell you, I don't know. Mr. Morgan was very tired. Yeah, and... yeah, but I know why he was so easy, tired. Candy, easy, So he decided to take his vacation a little earlier than he'd planned. I know why he did that, too. But where in blazes did he go? No one knows where he is, Mr. Myers. All he told us, any of us, even his sister, with whom he makes his home, is that he was going fishing somewhere where he could have complete rest and no interruption. Ain't that just peach? Candy, please. Now, look, Mr. Tyson, it isn't at all necessary that we see Mr. Morgan now. Hey, are you kidding? All we want to do is leave a message for him. A message? Now, mm-hmm. wait a minute. You can give it to him whenever he comes back. Well, Candy, I, I... Have you gone nuts? Now, will you be quiet, Candy, or must I pick you up by the scruff of the neck and deposit you outside? Okay, okay, I don't get it. This is the message for Commissioner Morgan, Mr. Tyson. Just tell him... Get this now. Tell Mr. Morgan the frost kills the leaves... And the frost is expected early this year. Huh? The frost kills the... Will you please repeat that, Mr. Kent? I said the frost kills the leaves. And the frost is expected early this year. Very early. Have you got that? Why, uh, I guess, but what... what, uh... You tell Mr. Morgan the message is from Clark Kent of the Daily Planet. I'm sure he'll be very much interested. Uh, Yes, sir, but, but... Come on, Candy. Good day, Mr. Tyson. Uh... Good day. Now, wait. Come Can't. along. No, listen, will you? Let go. Will you lie down and come along? No. What? I know what I'm doing. I, I think you're nuts. Oh, Candy, you idiot. Almost gave the show away. I tell you, you're nuts. Loco, off the rail. We come in here to find out where Morgan is so we can find For Jim and... Say, keep your voice down. And you make with the wacky talk. The frost kills the Shh, leaves. Will you hush says. up, please? Now, look. In just about half a minute, if all goes well... I'll have the answers. You'll have what answers? I'll know where Clint Morgan is. And maybe where Jim is, too.
blankly, Candy Myers stares at Clark Kent as they stand in the corridor outside Building Commissioner Clint Morgan's office. What does Kent mean? We'll know more in a moment when we return for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, gang, Kellogg's Pep sure does have plenty on the ball. Pitches a winning game at breakfast every time. Just think of the scores you can chalk up for Pep. First, a bowl of Pep looks good, all cool and, and crisp and inviting. Every crunchy flake as light as a breeze and delicate as can be. Then, you dig into your bowl of Pep with cool milk and sugar, and you get that golden toasted flavor, full whole wheat flavor, a cool, brisk flavor that's terrific. And does Kellogg's Pep score for prizes? Why, you get three different kinds of prizes, one or the other in each package. Either a bright-colored comic button, picturing one of 18 famous comic strip characters to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap, or it'll be a colored cardboard model of a fighting plane, easy and fun to assemble. Just swap duplicates with the gang and, and collect all seven model planes in the series. Or your next prize may be a full-color bird picture. There are 24 in all, each with a full description on the reverse side so that you'll really know a thing or two about birds. So start collecting all three kinds of these slick pet prizes. Today, ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pet, the sunshine cereal. In the corridor of the city hall outside Building Commissioner Clint Morgan's office, Clark Kent has just startled Candy Myers by saying, Just about half a minute, Candy. If all goes well, I'll know where Clint Morgan is. And maybe where Jim is, too. What? How will you know? Never mind. Now be quiet now. Here it comes. Here what comes? What are you staring at the door for? Candy, please. Okay, but if you ask me, you've gone completely... Wait a minute, nice. wait a minute. Shh. Okay, I've got it. Brother, I don't know what you've got, but I know what you need. A straitjacket. Now, will you please tell me Listen, what... Listen, I know where Clint Morgan is. You... You do? Yes. Tyson just called him to give him my message, as I knew he would. So... How did you know he called him? We're out here in the Never hall. Never mind how I know. Now, listen, you get over to the Daily Planet and wait for me or my phone call. Within two minutes, I'll be with Mr. Morgan. And if we guessed right, with Jim, too. So long now. Uh, uh, Kent, wait! Kent! So help me. I think the guy's gone completely off his nut. Shaking his head pityingly, Candy Myers watches Clark Kent hurry away around a bend in the corridor. Unaware that Kent is Superman... And that as Superman, he saw and heard enough through Commissioner Morgan's closed door to galvanize him into action. What did Kent hear? Will whatever it is lead him to Jim Olsen? Tomorrow's tense episode is packed with action and suspense. So don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. They say, gang, when you line up all the famous names you know, you'll find Kellogg mighty near the top. That's Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. And here are some of the good things Kellogg packs into each plump, tender biscuit of Kellogg shredded wheat. Flavor, natural nut sweet flavor, toasted just right. Nutrition, fine whole wheat nourishment. And for economy, Kellogg packs 15. 15 biscuits in every package. They're made to fit the bowl. Try them soon. You'll like Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. Pep, 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 pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, our man of steel, through his usual superpower, having located Clint Morgan's secret whereabouts, rockets to the little town 50 miles away to continue his search.
Before we continue with today's episode in the adventures of Superman, we'd like you to meet Commander Joseph M. Stack, an ex-GI of World War I, who is National Commander-in-Chief of the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States. Commander Stack. Hello, fellows and girls. Ever since the very first time we heard Superman over the air, I guess every American has cheered him on in his daring and dangerous adventures. And even beyond that, we've learned to think of him as a champion of right over wrong, the champion of justice. Today we look to Superman as an enemy of prejudice and intolerance and all other evil forces that threaten democracy. We, the veterans of foreign wars of the United States, an organization of two million men who have fought overseas against the enemies of democracy, believe that Superman, through his daily adventures on this program, serves as an inspiration to all of us to think, act, and live the American way. Because of this, and because we feel this program makes an outstanding contribution to real American democracy, I have the pleasure of awarding, on behalf of the veterans of foreign wars, a citation of merit to Superman and to Mr. Harry Donenfeld, president of Superman DC Publications, who was responsible for putting Superman on the air, and to the Kellogg Company, whose sponsorship makes this program possible. Will you honor us with your acceptance, Mr. Donenfeld? The honor is mine, Commander Stack. Credit, however, should not go to me, but to the men who produce and write the series, to the cast and to the sponsors. And on behalf of all concerned, I accept the citation with much pride and many thanks. And we want you to know that here at home, we will continue to fight for every good American against the forces of intolerance and injustice. I'm sure I can speak for all of us and for the fellows and girls listening in. Again, many thanks from all of us. And now, the adventures of Superman. An investigation begun by private detective Candy Myers of a recent subway disaster has resulted in the abduction of cub reporter Jimmy Olsen. Candy told Clark Kent he was certain that Clint Morgan, Metropolis Building Commissioner, was responsible because he feared Candy's investigation in which Jim was involved would show him to be at fault for the disaster. Morgan, however, had left the city, presumably on a vacation, and his destination was a secret. But Kent tricked Morgan's secretary into phoning his employer after Kent had left the office, and by using his super sense of hearing, overheard the phone number from the corridor. As we continue now, Kent, as Superman, has rocketed to the little village of Westbrook, 50 miles from Metropolis, and once more in his guise of the mild-mannered reporter, is in the local telephone exchange where he is speaking to the manager. Listen. I'd like the name and address of the party whose phone number is Westbrook 162. I'm sorry, sir, but we're not permitted to give that information. But this is terribly important. Look, my name is Clark Kent. I'm a reporter from the Metropolis Daily Planet. I'm sorry, Mr. Kent, but we're not permitted... To give that information. I know, I know. But this is a matter of life or death. A boy's life is at stake. I wish I could help you, Mr. Kent. I really do. But we have strict... All right, all right, all right. Must be some way of... Wait a minute, of course. The local phone book. Won't take me long to go through that skinny little book and get the information. Westbrook, Westbrook, 250, Westbrook, 377, 324. Oh, here we are, Westbrook, 162. Now, let's see, Happy Acres Farm. What a name. Pond Road. Now, that fella says he isn't permitted to tell me where Pond Road is. Oh, uh, uh... Did you find it, Mr. Kent? Yes, it's Happy Acres Farm, Pond Road. Oh, now, no, I'm you very tell... glad. You really had me quite worried when you said a boy's life was at stake. But yes, as well, I said, we have very strict rules. I understand. And... Now, now, tell me, please. Where is Pond Road and Happy Acres Farm? Well, it's several miles away, much too far to well, walk. Well, please, just tell me where Happy Acres Farm is. I'll manage to get there, all right? Well, just as you say. Now, you go four, no, about five miles out on the highway until you come to a crossroads. Uh-huh. There's a small store, though, with two gas pumps. You can't miss it. You take the right way. <laughs> After getting the directions, Clark Kent leaves the telephone exchange hurriedly, steps behind a large tree, and strips to the blue costume and red cape of Superman. Then, up, up, and away! Leaping high over the little village, Superman veers and streaks away through the sunny skies, cape streaming in the wind. He rockets above brooks and woodland, plowed farmlands, swerves right at a crossroads, and then checks his flight above a huge farm surrounded by freshly painted white fences and red barns. There, on the veranda of a house painted a dazzling white with vivid red shutters, he sees a middle-aged, paunchy man in shirt sleeves who stands scowling, his hands sunk in his pockets. 
Well, that's Clint Morgan on the veranda. But I don't see anyone else, except some farmhands in the fields and barns. No sign of Jim. Well, I'll drop down behind that grove of trees, get back into Kent's clothes, and have a showdown with Mr. Morgan. No! You say you're Clark Kent? That's right, Mr. Morgan. But, but you can't be. Oh. I just talked to my secretary in Metropolis. That's 50 miles away. You were there in my office just a few minutes ago. Was I? Of course you were. I don't understand. Now, look here, Kent. You're playing some kind of a trick on me. No, I'm not. You are. You couldn't be here and in Metropolis ten minutes ago. That's impossible. And what did that message of yours mean? What? The frost kills the leaves and and we expect an early frost this year. Or <laughs> some nonsense like that. I figured your secretary would be curious enough to about that message to phone you, which he did. And so he tipped me off to where you are. What? Now, look here. No, no, you look here, Mr. Morgan. We've wasted enough time. Where's Jim Olson? Who? Jim Olson. I know you had him put away somewhere because he took some samples of concrete from the subway cave-in. What? You did that because you were afraid he'd discover the same thing Candy Myers did. That you were responsible for the cave-in on the new Ninth Avenue subway. I was not in what's Save your breath, Morgan. Save your breath. You had Candy beaten up for the same reason and his evidence against you stolen. You figured that would get him off your trail. You're crazy. I never had Candy Myers beaten up. No? And I didn't have Jim Olson, whoever he is, put away either. I never even heard of him. Now look, Morgan. Jim's not only my friend, but he's a Daily Planet reporter. Now, I warn you, if you harm a hair of his head, we'll finish your political career and put you behind bars. Do you understand? Oh, look here. Who do you think you're threatening? I'm not threatening. I'm stating facts. Now, tell me where Jim Olson is or it'll be too bad for you. I tell you for the last time, I don't know. What kind of a punk reporter are you? Accusing me, the building commissioner of Metropolis, of beating up detectives and kidnapping newspaper reporters. Oh, you must be crazy. Oh, no, I'm not. I know where... You don't know anything. Oh, dear, you accuse me of being responsible for that subway cave-in. Because you were. Candy had a copy of the original engineer's report showing the fault in the rock. That report was first submitted to you, but you ordered the subway tube to be put through anyway. I tell you, the fault developed after the tube was built. Oh. And neither you nor anyone else can prove otherwise. We can and we will. But right now, I want to know where Jim Olson is. I tell you, I don't know. Now, now beat it. <laughs> You're not a very good actor, Morgan. You're scared. I can see it written all over you. Now, look, are you going to beat it or am I going to have you thrown out on your ear? You're scared and you're a rotten actor. You gave yourself away when you denied being responsible for the subway cave-in. By George Kent, Your I... eyes give you away every time you lie. Are you going to get out of here? Hey, this is a beautiful layout you have here. Don't tell me you bought this swell farm on your salary as building commissioner. The farm isn't mine. Oh, no? Whose is it? None of your business. The initials on the ashtrays are M.R., M.R. You want to tell me who that is? I can easily find out, you know. Go ahead and find out. Now, all get right, it. All right, all right. I'm going, Mr. Morgan. But you'll see me again quite soon, I think. These ashtrays are very interesting. Very interesting. They tell me a lot. Leaving Flint Morgan scowling worriedly after him, Clark Kent walks to the road, steps out of sight behind some trees, and swiftly resumes his true identity of Superman. Well, the initials on those ashtrays were the tip-off. Now, if I'm right, I'll find Jim in a hurry. There we are, all set. Up, up, and away! Once more, taking to the skyways, Superman streaks back toward Metropolis, where, at this moment, in Perry White's office in the Daily Planet... The gray-haired editor is saying to Lois Lane... Oh, it's after four o'clock and still no word about Jim. I don't know what to think, Lois. Just relax, Chief. Candy Myers said Clark Kent told him he knew where Clint Morgan is. Now, Candy, sure, Morgan had Jim abducted, so that if I he... don't believe it. But Candy said... I don't that... care what he said. I've known Morgan for a long time. He's a holdover from the old Mart Higgins regime. And I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw the insurance building. Look... But he's a pussy-footing politician, not a rough, tough ward boss like his old Chief Higgins... He hasn't the nerve to get mixed up with beating detectives and snatching reporters. But Candy is sure Morgan knows where Jim is. And if Clark does find Morgan, Oh, there's nothing in it, I tell you. Nothing in it. Don't say that, Chief. Please, it's our only chance. It's our last hope. Okay, okay. I know we're not like that, Lois. I'm counting on Inspector Henderson and his force. I make a lot of cracks about Henderson when I'm mad. But he's a fine young man. No, no, what the heck? It, it's terrible. What? What's what? terrible, Come on, quick. Oh, golly, creepers. Come on. What are you Somewhere. talking about? In Mr. Kent's office. Oh, golly, oh, my gosh. Oh, come on, Chief. Let's see what Beanie's talking about. 
His hair standing on end, his eyes popping, copy boy Beanie Martin turns and races toward Clark Kent's office, closely followed by Perry White and Lois Lane. What has happened? We'll know in a moment when we return for the startling climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, gang, did you ever meet up with a fussy Freddy? You know, he's the sort of fellow who kind of nibbles at his food, never really digs in and enjoys his meals. Well, if you've got any fussy Freddies around your breakfast table, just put them next to a dish of Kellogg's Pep. Why, you'd have a hard time finding anybody who'd pass up the good eating in these crisp golden flakes of whole wheat. That cool, catchy Pep flavor gets them time after time. Sure, Pep is an appetite tickler from way back. And say, speaking of tickles, who isn't tickled with those swell Pep prizes? Three different kinds of prizes, one or the other in every package of Pep you open. Remember, you may find one of 24 keen bird pictures with a description to help you identify these birds in the air. Or you may find a colored cardboard model of a fighting plane, easy as anything to assemble, and you can collect all seven of them. Or you may find a bright colored comic button picturing a famous character from the funnies, one of 18 to pin on your jacket. All three kinds of pep prizes are top-notch collector's items. So hop to it and ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal first thing. Beanie Martin has just brought Perry White and Lois Lane to Clark Kent's office. There, rushing to the window, Beanie points upward with a shaking hand to where, 45 stories above the street, a human figure dangles from one of the massive hands of the clock on the insurance company building. Good heavens. Chief, look. Now, look at the guy hanging from the insurance company clock. Good country. How do you ever get up there? I can't imagine. Oh, dear, he'll fall. Now, oh. this these binoculars. I got him. From... Oh, golly, look. Let me have him, Beanie. Oh, Chief, if the clock hands break. Oh, there, I can see him clearly now. Oh, great heavens. Yeah. You see, Miss Lane? See what? See what? what, what what's this? Jim, Chief. Jim. Yes, that figure dangling from the clock is Jim. Jim Olsen. <laughs> Her face like wax. Lois stares through the binoculars to the clock 45 stories above the street, where the tiny figure of Jimmy Olsen swings precariously from one of the clock's great hands. At any moment, the clock hand may break, or Jimmy may lose his grip. How did he get in this amazing and perilous predicament? And what will happen? Tomorrow's exciting episode tells the story, fellows and girls, so don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, what makes a famous name famous? Well, Kellogg is famous as the greatest name in cereals. And one reason is Kellogg shredded wheat. Those are the plump, tender biscuits made to fit your breakfast bowl. Fifteen. Fifteen of them in every package. Each biscuit toasted just right and full up with natural nut sweet flavor. Mom knows Kellogg shredded wheat is good for you, too. This is whole wheat. So remember Kellogg, gang. Ask Mom for Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman returns to his office to find Perry White, Lois Lane, and Beanie Martin helplessly standing by as Jimmy Olsen perilously dangles from a huge clock 45 stories above the street. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. You know, even if you tried, I'll bet you couldn't think of more exciting prizes than you find in packages of Kellogg's Pep. 
Mind you, not just one kind of prize, but three different kinds. One or the other in each package of pep you open. And are all three kinds fun to collect? Why, take, for instance, those bright-colored comic buttons, each picturing a favorite comic strip character. Well, you look slick with all 18 of them pinned on your jacket or your beanie cap. Or take that snappy series of seven pep model planes, made of colored cardboard and a cinch to put together. Or those 24 full-color bird pictures, each with a description, helping make you a mighty wise bird yourself. You'll find one or the other of these three kinds of prizes in every package of Kellogg's Pep. And say, while you're collecting them, you'll be putting in some prize-winning eating, too. Sure, just think of Pep's keen, brisk flavor, the light, fresh, catchy flavor in those crisp flakes of whole wheat. Yes, sir, a bowl of Pep really sends you. In fact, from every angle, Pep's a prize dish. So ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, and look for the prize inside your package. Now, the adventures of Superman. Believing that a recent subway disaster in Metropolis stemmed from corruption in the city government, private detective Candy Myers conducted a one-man investigation. Then, satisfied that his suspicions were well-founded, he offered Clark Kent a scoop. But before he could talk, Candy was ambushed and beaten up. And the next day, cub reporter Jimmy Olsen was abducted. While Kent searched for Jim, Beanie Martin, head copy boy at the Daily Planet, made a startling discovery. Dangling from one of the hands of the huge insurance company clock, 45 stories above the street, was a tiny human figure. Hastily summoning Editor Perry White and Lois Lane to the window in Kent's office, which overlooked the insurance building, Beanie pressed a pair of binoculars into Lois's hands. And as we continue now, Lois gasps as she focuses the binoculars on the clock. Listen. Good heavens, Chief. It's Jim. Jim? Jim where? Hanging from the insurance building clock. It's Jim, I tell you. What? Sure it is, Mr. Oh, you're, you're, you're joking. I am not. Here, here are the binoculars. See for yourself. Uh, give them to me. Uh, let me see. Uh, where? Right there, on the minute hand. Hey, but was it? Good get God, get off God it, it is Jim. Of course it is. What do we do, Chief? Oh, what do we do? I don't know, but do something fast. Uh, call Inspector Henderson. Call the fire department. Now, but, uh, don't just stand there, Beanie. Okay. Creep with... Oh, God. Wait a minute. You the police are already the down there in the street and the fire department, too. Somebody must have called Then why don't they do something? The boy won't be able to hang on much longer. Uh, uh, Jim, look out. What, what is it? What is it? Uh, one of his hands slipped. Oh, Jim. Oh. He's just hanging on with one hand now. Oh, why doesn't somebody do something? What's the matter with the fire department? Well, they've got their ladders up, see, but they don't go more than halfway to the clock. They've got to do something before. No, Jim, Jim. What is it, Chief? Golly, now what? With the clock hand. The one Jim's hanging to it. He slipped down. Oh. What? There. There, it slipped again. Oh, oh I can't look anymore. Oh, the poor kitty. He hasn't a chance. Who oh, hasn't a chance? Can't. Can't. Oh, Clark. Jim, he's, oh, what about he's Jim? up there on the insurance building clock, Mr. Kent. What? Here, take these binoculars. Yes, look for yourself. Oh, he hasn't a chance. Not a chance. Oh, the poor kitty. Great Scott. The clock hand slipping down. It's, it's going to break. Where are you going? There we are. I'll be right back. In a white's office. <laughs> Goodness, nobody's in here. This is a job for Superman. Now, out of these clothes, fast. Yeah. How in the world did Jim ever get up there? He... Uh-oh. That clock hand's breaking. Jim's falling. Out through the window. Hurry! <laughs> Diving through Perry White's closed window, Superman flashes upward and rounds the corner of the Daily Planet building as Jimmy Olsen, his grip broken, plummets down toward the street below, where gasping, awe-stricken crowds scatter in frantic haste. Twisting and whirling, he falls halfway to the street when suddenly, a streak of red and blue cleaves through the air like a meteoric arrow. Grasps the falling boy as lightly as a feather and rockets upward with him again to disappear through Editor White's shattered window in the Daily Planet. <laughs> A moment later, once again in his guise and garb of Clark Kent, Superman is joined by Perry White and Lois Lane, both frantic with worry. Jim. Jimmy, you all right? Uh, Jimmy, speak to me. Sure. Sure, I'm okay, Miss Lane. I guess. Oh, thank heaven. Oh, that's thank fine. Goodness. And now, young man, since you have succeeded in scaring us nearly out of our wits, perhaps you'll tell us what in thunder you were doing up there on that clock. But to tell you the truth, Chief... I don't know. You don't know? What do you mean? What do you mean, Jim? How did you get up there? I I don't know, Mr. Kent. Honest, I don't. You don't... Now, look here. Just a moment, Chief. He's been through a pretty shocking experience, so let's take it easy with him. All right, Jim, suppose you start at the beginning now and tell us what happened. You'll probably remember the rest of it as you go along. Okay, I'll try. 
Let's see. Uh, I remember those guys grabbing me at the subway cave-in when I was with Miss Lane. Oh, do you, did you find out who they were? No. All I know is they threw me into their car and drove a little way. I couldn't see where I was down on the bottom of the car. Yes? Then I heard one of them say, we'll teach the little punk to mind his own business. Right after that, something hit me behind the ear. Good heavens! That's all I really remember. The rest is like... like a hazy dream. Except... Well, I kind of remember picking myself up in the park. In the park? Yeah, that's right. You must have thrown him out of the car in the park. Go on, Jim. Yeah. Well, everything was misty, like in a fog. The only thing I seemed to see clearly was the clock on the insurance building. It, it was kind of shining. From the reflection of the sun, I suppose. Then what, Jim? Well, it kind of registered I had to go that way. Toward the clock, I mean. Uh-huh. I guess I realized that was the way to the office, and... It was the funniest thing. After a while, I I couldn't see anything but the clock. Of course, you poor kid. You were obviously only half conscious. I guess so. I, I didn't really know what I was doing. Something just kept telling me I had to get to the clock. And that's all I remember till I woke up and, and found I was on the clock, hanging on to one of the hands. Good, Good God, great. But how did you get up there? You must remember that. No. No, I don't remember that, Mr. Kent. Oh, that's impossible. You must have... There's only one way you could have got up there. You probably took the elevator to the top floor and climbed out of a window, probably in a stair hall. There's a very narrow ledge there, not more than six inches wide. And you must have made your way along it until you got to the clock. A six-inch ledge, 45 stories above the street. Don't remind me about it, Miss Lane. But why? Why did he do it? I can't see... He told you, Chief. He just told you the only thing that registered on Jim in his half-conscious state was the insurance building clock. It, well, it it became a fixation to him. To his subconscious, it meant home, comfort, help. He just had to keep going until he actually had his hands on that clock. Yeah, and I wouldn't be here now if not for Superman. Golly, I wish he'd stuck around till I could thank him. Never mind that. The important thing is that you're all right. Yes, And another important thing is to get our hands on the hoodlums who were responsible for this outrage. Oh, if only we knew who they were. We have a pretty good idea who they were, Lois. What do you mean? Who can't? The same gang who beat up Candy Myers and who were responsible for the subway disaster last month. Who said so? It's obvious because Jim was grabbed after he took some samples of the concrete and soil from the cave-in. And besides, take a look at this. What is it? What's that? Why, it's a handkerchief. Yes, a cheap handkerchief like the one that was found in Candy's hand after he was beaten up. And uh, look what's printed on it. Let's see. Keep your nose clean. Why, that's what? the... Sa- well, that's just what it said on the other handkerchief. Holy huh? smokes. Where did you find this, Mr. Kent? It was sticking out of your jacket pocket when I... Uh, when Superman rescued you. Well, gee whiz. Well, then... Then you're right. It was the same gang that beat up Candy. And this makes it look as if the subway cave-in wasn't just an unfortunate accident, as Building Commissioner Morgan said. Something must have been wrong. And Morgan is afraid the public will find out about it. And Morgan must be... No, 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 wait, Chief. The real criminal is someone else. Well, what do you mean? Mr. Kent? I don't want to name him unless I'm absolutely sure and until I have the goods on him. But I'll tell you this much. Unless we get him dead to rights and get him fast, that subway disaster last month is only peanuts to what might happen to Metropolis. What do you mean, Clark? What are you talking about, Kent? Come on, come on, come on. Please, don't insist, Chief. I tell you, I'd rather not name him yet. Because if I did, well, I might endanger you and Lois. Me and Boas. What are you talking about, Clark? Later, Boas, later. Right now, Mr. White and I are going places. Get your hat, Chief. No, what for? Where are we going? To get the goods on the man responsible for the subway cave-in, for beating up Candy Myers, and for almost causing Jim to lose his life. But, Ken, come on, will you? I told you, unless we move fast, what's happened so far is nothing compared to what might happen. So grab your hat and let's go. Taking Perry White's arm, Clark Kent fairly propels him from the office. We'll continue with today's exciting episode in a moment. So stand by. You know, the mothers of all the gangs sure are being stampeded for Kellogg's Pep these summer mornings. Of course, that's true any time of the year. But a dish of those crisp, light golden flakes of Pep is so downright inviting, so refreshing and delicious that, well, it's a specially slick treat for vacation breakfasts. Yes, sir, with a bowl of Pep always waiting for you. You can be looking forward to that catchy full wheat pep flavor from the first moment you wake up. So it's no wonder you're rushing mom for Kellogg's Pep. And besides, you fellows and girls are going overboard for those keen pep prizes. Three different kinds of prizes. One or the other in every pep package. 
For instance, those swell-colored cardboard models of fighting planes. You're really sharp when you've collected all seven model planes in the series. Or maybe you're collecting Pep's 24 full-color bird pictures with a description on the reverse side to, to help you identify these birds anywhere. And say, how you coming with your set of 18 comic buttons with comic strip characters to pin on your beanie cap or your jacket? Don't let any of the gang beat you at collecting all three kinds of Pep prizes. Ask Mom to get you a supply of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Clark and Kent, editor Perry White, have just arrived at the scene of the recent subway disaster where they find the cave-in is boarded over, with traffic already running over the heavy planking. Two men are just about to mount to the seat of a huge steam shovel, which has been moved to the curb. Uh-oh. This looks bad, Chief. What is? What are you talking about, Kent? I wish you'd tell me why you dragged me out here. I told you to get the evidence against the man who's responsible for the subway cave-in and who beat up Candy and Jim. What evidence? The evidence that was in the caved-in tube. But it's all gone now. The tube is as clean as a whistle. Well, now what do we do, Chief? How are we going to trap the rat behind all this before something much worse happens? <laughs> Dismayed, Clark Kent stares at the long pit beneath the street. Empty now of all incriminating evidence against the man who Kent says was responsible for the worst subway disaster in the history of Metropolis. And for the vicious attacks upon Candy Myers and Jimmy Olsen. Unless this man is brought to justice swiftly, Kent said, many more serious disasters might occur. Who is this mysterious man? And what can Kent do now? Angered as he has rarely been before, Kent intends to do something about it swiftly. And tomorrow he goes into action. So be sure to be with us then. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. You know, gang, famous names are often family names, like the Kellogg family of cereals. And here's a famous member that makes breakfast mighty swell. It's Kellogg Shredded Wheat. Full ripe whole wheat made into tender plump biscuits that fit your bowl. Toasted just right, too, for crispness and natural nut sweet flavor. And for nutrition, well, Kellogg Shredded Wheat is made of finest whole wheat. Mom likes that. And the economy of 15. 15 biscuits in every package. Remind Mom to get Kellogg Shredded Wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Clark Kent and Editor Perry White are confronted with no evidence to back up their suspicions. The subway wreck had been completely cleaned up, smooth as a whistle. Hello there, gang. This is your pal, Dan McCullough. You know, when you're about to pour cool, cool milk on your dish of Kellogg's Pep, it's kind of fun to think how many others of the gang and thousands and thousands of homes are just about to dig into those cool, crisp flakes of whole wheat, too. Sure. And every morning when they take in that first mouthful of catchy, brisk pep flavor, most likely they think just what you do, that pep is super. Pep's terrific. And chances are they're all excited, too, about those swell pep prizes and guessing which one of pep's three kinds of prizes they'll get in their next package. 
Say, uh, how are you coming with your own prize collecting gang? Have you got all seven of those colored cardboard bottles of fighting planes? Might be one on your next package of pep, you know. Or your next prize could be one of 24 new full-color bird pictures with a full description, so you'll be hep on those birds wherever you see them. Or could be your next pep prize will be one of 18 bright-colored comic buttons picturing a famous comic strip character. Believe me, a whole collection of 18 will make a real show on your beanie cap or your jacket. So step lively, gang. Step right up and ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, and look for the prize inside your package. Now the adventures of Superman. Because of their zeal in investigating a recent subway disaster, private detective Candy Myers was ambushed and beaten up, and cub reporter Jimmy Olsen narrowly escaped with his life. Candy was certain that Clint Morgan, Metropolis Building Commissioner, was responsible for the attacks on him and Jimmy, as well as for the subway disaster. But after interviewing Morgan, Clark Kent decided that the real criminal was someone else. Someone whose name Kent thought he knew. With Editor Perry White, he went to the subway cave-in to pick up conclusive proof, only to find the underground tube cleared of all rubble and wreckage. Dismayed, Kent says... Now, how am I going to get the goods on Mike Ricky, Chief? On who? Mike Ricky, otherwise known as Fat Mike. Fat Mike Ricky? Oh, you mean the contractor? That's right. He built this new subway. And in the last year or two, since Clint Morgan got to be the building commissioner, Ricky's built a lot of other things for the city. A couple of bridges, playgrounds, public swimming pools. He's made a fortune out of his city contracts. Why do you think Ricky's behind this? I thought Clint Morgan... I found Morgan very much worried hiding out on Ricky's million-dollar farm. The tie-up is obvious. Of course. You figure Ricky's been jipping the building specifications with Morgan's cooperation, that sort of thing, huh? I'm sure he has. New subway tubes don't just cave in. Yeah, but now what do we do? Ricky must have suspected we'd come back for more samples to use as evidence. So he had his crew work like beavers and got this hole all cleaned up. Samples? Oh, you mean... The concrete he used in the tube, yes. An analysis would show whether it was up to specifications or not. But heaven only knows where it is now. Wait a minute. Come on, Chief. Where? That steam shovel across the street. It's just starting to pull away. See what it says on the cab? Yeah. Ricky Construction Company. What about it? I've got an idea. Uh, just a minute, mister. Uh, what do you want, Max? A little information. Can you tell That's me where the... That's the on the corner. i got to get this shovel back to the yard before dark. This will only take a minute. I'd like to know where all the stuff you dug out of the cave in, the concrete rubble, was taken. In your father's mustache. Now, scrap. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll be glad to pay to uh, indulge my curiosity. Here. Here's ten dollars. Ten bucks, eh? Uh-huh. Well, I'll tell you, mister, if we had orders not to say where that stuff was going... Give another ten, ten. Wait a minute. But now the stuff is all gone, I can't see any harm in telling where it is. Especially since it ain't worth nothing in the first place. And even if it was, nobody could get at it by now. What do you mean, nobody can get at it? Because by this time, it's at the bottom of the Metropolis Harbor. Uh-oh. Oh, thanks. Forget it. See you again sometime. Well, that's that, Ken. Maybe not. It is. Even if we hired a diver to go down to the harbor for the samples of that concrete, it wouldn't do us any good. We can't prove it came from the subway cave in. Which is exactly what Mike Ricky planned. But... But what? I just thought of something. Wait here, Chief. Where are you going now? I'll see you back at the office, Chief. What do you mean? Where are you going? I'm following a hunch and a prayer. Come back here, Ken. Now, let's see. Where can I change clothes? All these people are on and losing time. You know, there's only one thing to do. Around this corner out of the chief's sight. There we are. Now, up to that skyscraper roof. Up! <laughs> I hate to take a chance like that dressed as Clark Kent. But every second counts. Now, out of these clothes. The last truck might not be at the harbor yet, and if it isn't, there's a chance for Superman to take care of Mr. Ricky. There we are. All set. Up! Up! And away! <laughs> Leaping up from the skyscraper roof, Superman streaks away toward Metropolis Harbor, red cape streaming in the wind. He flashes across the great city, comes within view of the harbor, which is dotted with shipping, and looks down anxiously. For a moment, he sees nothing. Then a large dump truck, backed out on a pier above the harbor, catches his eye. That truck on the pier. It's lettered Ricky Construction Company, and it's getting ready to empty into the harbor. Down to it. Down! Just a minute, friend. What the... Holy smokes. Superman. Right. This rubble in the truck, it's from the subway cave-in, isn't it? Yeah. Jeepers, imagine me talking to Superman. Look, do me a favor, will you? Give me your autograph. Well, I'll be glad to. 
You'll give me yours. Mine? You kid. What do you want my autograph for? I want it under a few words testifying that these pieces of broken concrete I'm borrowing from your truck came from the subway cave-in. I don't get it. Why it's important. It? What do you say? You got a deal. Wait. I got a pencil and some time sheets right here. Good. Me getting Superman's autograph. We like you. <laughs> Eagerly, the truck driver writes the few words Superman dictates, receives his autograph in return, and then watches open-mouthed as the Man of Steel leaps high into the air, waves, then veers and rockets away. Meanwhile, having just returned to his office in the Daily Planet, Editor Perry White is talking to Private Detective Candy Myers. That's what Ken said, Candy. He said he found Clint Morgan, the building commissioner, vacationing secretly on Mike Rickey's farm. Mike Rickey? You mean Fat Mike, the contractor? That's right. Kent is convinced that Ricky gypped on the building specifications on the 9th Avenue subway. Undoubtedly with Morgan's knowledge, and that's why we had that terrible disaster. Kent thinks that, huh? Yes, and I'm inclined to agree with it. Ricky's known as a pretty tough character. I can see him having Jim abducted and you beaten up where I can't see Morgan doing it. Morgan's a soft-spoken, pussyfoot, and political grafter, not a roughneck. Yeah, that adds up. Mike knew if we got the goods on him, he not only would lose his juicy city contracts, but wind up in a pen besides... So he had his goons do a job on me and Jim. Looks that way, Candy, but you can't prove it. I'll prove it. How? I'm going to have a little talk with Mike Ricky. A kind of talk he understands. I'll get the truth out of him. Now, wait a minute. I'll show that dirty rat he can't get away with stuff like that in this town. See you later, Mr. White. Wait, Candy, he's a bad actor. Who am I when I get riled? And I'm plenty riled now. Alarmed, Perry White can do nothing to stop the enraged Candy Myers realizing that the impulsive detective is heading for serious trouble. And Candy is heading for trouble and into danger, as we learn in a moment when we return for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, do you know why opening a package of Kellogg's Pep is like reaching into a grab bag? Why, sure, you've guessed it. It's because you always get such a swell surprise seeing which one of Pep's three kinds of prizes is in the Pep package. You're never sure whether it'll be one of Pep's seven colored cardboard plane models and say, are they a keen collection? Or whether it'll be one of those 24 beautiful color pictures of birds with a description to help you spot these birds every time. Or then again, your prize might be one of 18 bright colored comic buttons, each picturing a favorite comic strip character. All you do know is that whichever one of those three prizes you get, it's strictly super. And that goes double for Pep itself. Why, the way those crisp whole wheat flakes of Pep Make with a flavor is terrific. Yes, sir, you'll say that Pep, the sunshine cereal, is just about the smoothest breakfast dish there is. So crisp and cool that, well, it keeps your spoon coming right back for more of the same until your bowl is clean empty. And that's the right idea, gang, especially nowadays when we're sending the cereal grains to folks overseas. So remember, eat all your Pep. Don't waste it. As Candy Myers sets out vengefully to see Mike Rickey, the fat contractor is in his lavish, vividly decorated penthouse apartment with his henchman, known as Shortcake, and building commissioner, Clint Morgan. Both Ricky and the undersized Shortcake wear bright-colored sports jackets and two-tone sports shoes. Morgan, dressed conservatively, looks deeply worried. But I tell you, Mike, this fellow Clark Kent is clever. He tricked my secretary into letting out where I was. Then when he saw your initials on the ashtrays at your farm... He said he knew whose farm it was. So what, Clint? So what? Sure, so what? Well, I'm afraid he'll find out other things that he shouldn't. Yeah, well, don't you worry about that. He won't find out anything. Yeah, don't you worry. He won't find out nothing. Well, I'm not so sure he... I tell you, he won't find out anything, so stop worrying, will you? The only thing that could put us behind the eight ball is the concrete in the subway cave-in. And every scrap of that is in the bottom of the Metropolis Harbor right now. Right, Shortcake? Absolutely, boys. So you see, Clint, you ain't got a thing to worry about. No, not a thing. Well, all right. If you're sure, Mike. Wait a minute. Hello? Yeah. Who? Oh, yeah, sure, Eddie. What gives? Who has? Kent. You mean Clark Kent, the reporter? What about Kent? Shut up, will you? Yeah, yeah, I hear you, Eddie. Yeah, keep talking. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah? He did, huh? Why, that dirty. Sure, sure, I can figure that out for myself. Okay, Eddie, I'll take care of it, yeah. Yeah, 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 so long. What happened, Mike? 
What about Clark Kent? Well, this ain't so good, Clint. Oh, what, what do you mean? Tell me, what happened? Well, Kent was nosing around the cave in this afternoon, and he found out from a steam shovel man where we were dumping that stuff in the busted tube. Yes? A little later, some guy shows up at the harbor, just when one of my trucks is going to dump the last load. And this guy gets some of the busted concrete. Some of the busted concrete? Yeah. Who was it, Kent? No, no. Kent didn't have time to get to the harbor. He must have called up somebody near there. And I figure the guy he called up is Candy Myers, that private eye I thought I cooled off the other night. You see, he lives right near the harbor. And Eddie says he's a pal of Kent's. Yeah, that's how it must have been, boy. I don't like this, Mike. No, I don't like it either. If they get that concrete analyzed and compared with the building specifications, I'm in the suit. Oh, you and me both. What, what are we going to do? What we got to do. We got to take care of those two Reisenheimers. Kent and Candy Myers, and we got to do it quick. Right, boys, we got to... Be quiet, quick. short cake, but, but that would be murder. So what? Do you rather go to jail? Well, well all right, no, then but shut up, will you? I got to think. Yeah, shut up. The boys got to... Hey, what's that? The buzzer from downstairs. Yeah, see who it is, short cake. Yeah, okay, boy. Yeah? What's cooking, young head? What? No kidding. Wait a minute. Hey, boys, Candy Myers is downstairs. He wants to see you. Myers? Is he alone? Wait a minute. Is he alone, Jughead? Yeah, he's all alone, boys. <laughs> well, say, so ain't that just dandy? This makes it nice and easy. Have him come up, Shortcake. <laughs> Have him come right up. <laughs> Opening a drawer of his elaborately inlaid desk, Fat Mike Ricky closes his hand around a revolver, then waits expectantly for Candy Myers to appear. Candy is walking directly into a death trap while Superman is unaware of this latest development. What will happen? The moment is tense with suspense, gang, so don't miss Monday's exciting episode. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, talk about famous names. Why, Kellogg is the greatest name in cereals. And Kellogg makes Kellogg shredded wheat, crisp tender biscuits that are full up with natural nut sweet flavor. Toasted the Kellogg way just right. Mighty good for breakfast and mighty good for you. They're whole wheat. Mom knows Kellogg shredded wheat is economical, too. You get 15, 15 biscuits in every package. They're made to fit the bowl. Ask Mom to get you some Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P, E, P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. While Superman rushes to the Metropolis Harbor, Candy Myers, vowing vengeance, sets out alone for a showdown with the Racketeers. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, there's no point in letting somebody else in the gang get the jump on you, is there? Especially when it comes to collecting those swell prizes in packages of Kellogg's Pep. You can collect all three kinds of Pep prizes, easy as anything. Forty-nine different prizes in all. For instance, maybe the prize in your next package of pep will be one of those keen, full-color pictures of birds. There are 24 to collect, each with a full description on the reverse side so that you'll be hep on those birds. Or, if your next pep prize happens to be a colored cardboard model of a fighting plane, remember, you can collect seven of those planes in pep's great air fleet. 
And the same goes for those 18 bright-colored comic buttons, each picturing a famous comic strip character. Why, all three kinds of pep prizes are super to go with the super terrific flavor of Kellogg's Pep. And that's saying a lot because the catchy taste of pep is really out of this world. Every spoonful of those cool, crisp flakes of whole wheat tastes downright wonderful. Yes, sir, a bowl of pep is a smooth treat and then some. So, for a prize dish from a prize package, ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Now, the adventures of Superman. Clark Kent is convinced that Mike Rickey, a contractor, practiced fraud in building a subway which caved in, causing great loss of life, and that he was responsible for the near-fatal attacks on Jimmy Olsen and private detective Candy Myers, who were investigating the disaster. Learning that Rickey had ordered all the wreckage of the subway tube to be dumped into Metropolis Harbor, Kent, as Superman, streaks to the waterfront in time to salvage some of the rubble. Meanwhile, Candy Myers, vowing vengeance, set out to have a showdown with Rickey just as the fraudulent contractor had decided that Kent and Candy must be done away with. As we continue now in Mike Rickey's ornate penthouse apartment, Shortcake, the contractor's undersized henchman, has just answered the house telephone. His watery eyes popping, the little thug spins about to face Rickey and Clint Morgan, the dishonest Metropolis Building Commissioner. Listen. Well, what you stand there with your mouth open for, Shortcake, what gives? Candy Myers downstairs, boss. What? Candy Myers? Yeah, the private eye. He's in the lobby. He wants to see you. Oh, is he alone? Wait till I find out. Hey, Jughead, is this Myers' character Malone? Yeah, he's all by his lonesome voice. <laughs> well, now, ain't that just dandy? <laughs> this makes it nice and easy. All right, have him come up, Shortcake. Have him come right up. Okay, boys. Send him up, Jughead. What are you going to do, Mike? <laughs> do? <laughs> well, I'm going to get this Myers jerk out of our hair for good. But... But that would be murder. Would you rather go to jail? No, no, of, of course not, but... But nothing. Clark, Kent, and Myers are wor working together. They got some of that busted concrete from the subway cave in. Ah, no, but... All right, if they have it analyzed, it'll show how I, with your okay, chip the building specifications. That means we go to the pen, but quick. You're right, boys. And me, I don't like no pen. But there must be some other way. Now, just stop worrying, Clint, and leave this to me and shortcake. We'll get rid of this Myers Weisenheimer and then Kent. <laughs> and then we won't have nothing to worry about except spending our dough. Yeah, man. Right again, boys. Well, well, uh, I don't want to be here, though. Why? Uh... Yeah, look, boys. Now, look here, Shorty. What's that? Must be Candy Myers. All right, you go in the bedroom, Clint. Hey, yes, sir. Uh, I, I think I'd better. Let Myers in, Shorty. Okay. Step right in, mister. Mr. Myers. Put that gun away, Squirt. Might go off and scare you. Oh, yeah, listen, wise guy. All right, close the door, Shortcake. Okay. Oh, fat stuff. I don't be a wise guy, Myers. I'm in no mood for kidding. Okay. Neither am I. And you can check the artillery. I didn't come here to do that kind of a job. I'm leaving that for the judge and jury. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm here to tell you what a dirty rat you are and to pin your ears back for the job you did on me the other night. And on Jim Olsen. <laughs> How's that so? Frisk him, Shorty. Okay, boy. Stay far away from me. Your or... hands down, Myers, or you get it. Who are you kidding? I'm warning stuff. you, Myers. I'm just warning you. Try moving your hands and you'll find out. Now, look, Ricky. You can't bluff me. You wouldn't try bumping me off. Not here. Because you know I wouldn't be so dumb as to walk into this rat nest without first telling my friends. So what? The doorman and the elevator man will both swear the jazz for me, but I wasn't home, so you went away. They work for me, you see. I happen to own this building. Now, wait a minute. You'd be found someplace if you ever were found a long way from here. Yeah, a long way from here. Yeah. Now, be smart, Flatfoot, and uh, do like I say. <laughs> Why don't you pick up that phone and call Clark Kent? Call Clark Kent? What for? I want you to tell him that you got to see him right away. Infirm him to come to the warehouse at 442 West Street. And what's more, tell him to come alone. 442 West Street? That's right. Now, do you make that phone call, Myers, or do I let you have it right here and now? Well. Okay. Okay, take it easy. I gotta make up my mind. Give me a minute to think it over. Sure. Sure, I'll give you a minute. 
But just a minute. Then you either make the call or you get it. Look at your watch, Sharky. Okay. It's exactly... Try this on your bazooka. Hey, I'll get him, boy. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Fighting for his life, Candy Myers succeeds in seizing the gun hands of both Mike Ricky and Shortcake, clinging to them as all three men crash to the floor, where they roll and thresh wildly, overturning tables and chairs. But back Mike Ricky, despite his girth as strong as a bear, little Shortcake is wiry and fierce. Each of them slug Candy with their free hands, seeking to make him loose their grip on their guns. And though he hangs on grimly, Candy knows the end is almost at hand. Meanwhile, Clark Kent has returned to the Daily Planet from the famous Dr. Millicent's laboratory. We find him now in Editor Perry White's office, where he is making a report of the chemist's analysis. Dr. Millicent and his staff analyzed those pieces of concrete that came out of the subway cave-in, Chief, and it's just as I thought. The concrete doesn't nearly measure up to city specifications. Mike Rickey gypped on the quantity and quality of the cement. That's why that tube caved in. Uh, Now, listen, I just stopped by to pick up you and Candy Myers. He started this investigation, and he deserves to be in on the finish. But look, Candy, We're going to meet the mayor at police headquarters and swear out warrants for the arrest of Mike Rickey and Building Commissioner Morgan on charges of fraud and homicide. Get your hat, Chief. Now, wait a minute, Candy. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm afraid Candy may be in trouble. Trouble? What do you mean? Well, he went charging out of here about an hour ago, saying he was going to find Rickey and slap his ears down. What? Yes. Said nobody could beat him up and almost kill Jim Molson and get away with it. Oh. I tried to stop him, but I know how he is when he gets sore. Yes, I do, too. And I don't like this. I don't like it at all. Did he tell you where he was going to look for Ricky? He said something about going to his house. Where's that? Do you know? I looked it up. It's 1263 Park Place. 1263 Park? Yes. I called the police, but they said they couldn't uh, go looking for Candy unless I preferred some kind of charge. Now, wait a minute, Ted. Where are you going? Find Candy, of course. I hope I'm not too late. Running across the city room into the deserted storeroom, Clark Kent swiftly strips to the blue costume and red cape of Superman. Then, throwing open the window, the Man of Steel rockets away to search for his friend, Candy Myers. Out! Up! And away! Will he find him in time? We'll know more in a moment when we return for the exciting climax of today's episode. So, stand by. Say, gang, right off when you wake up in the morning, don't you think of all the fun you're going to have during the day? Sure, and of course that fun starts right off at breakfast when you can dig into a bowl of Kellogg's Pep. Yes, sir, a dish of Pep makes breakfast a regular fun feast. Those golden flakes of Pep are so light, so fresh and crisp, why they they practically say, Hi there, eat me up. And so you spoon up that cool, catchy flavor. That's strictly Pep flavor, meaning strictly super. And say, super is also the word for the prize you find in every pet package. Three different kinds of prizes, one or the other in every package you open. For instance, it might be a model fighting plane in colored cardboard, one of seven great pet model planes you can collect. Or maybe it'll be one of 24 new full-color bird pictures with a description on the reverse side so that you'll know these birds in the air. Or it could be one of 18 bright-colored comic buttons Picturing a famous comic strip character to to pin on your beanie cap or your jacket. So start collecting all three kinds of these slick pep prizes. Today, ask Mom for a supply of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. In the once ornate but now wrecked penthouse apartment of Fat Mike Ricky, a mighty battle has come to an end. Defeated at last, a dazed Candy Myers rests on hands and knees on the heaped up carpet. Above him, his clothes torn, his face cut and bruised, stands Mike Rickey, holding a gun pointed at the fallen detective. Shortcake, his puffed lips contorted in a snarl, stands nearby. In the bedroom doorway, his face pale, stands the graying, paunchy Clint Morgan, building commissioner of Metropolis. Rickey is speaking. Okay, Myers, this is it. You're a, you're a dirty swine, Rickey. Put down that gun and I'll... I'll still take your part. <laughs> you hear the big mouth, Shortcake? Yeah, I hear him, boys. Go on, let him have it. You bet I will, right? No, you don't, Ricky. I'll take that gun. What the, who's that? Superman. Pull up here, monkey. Superman. I'll fix him, boys. Freakfish, the bullet bounced right off him. Of course. Yeah, but here's something that won't bounce off you. Oh. Well, nice work, Candy. I gather you're okay. Yeah. 
If you got here just one second later... Uh, right. Just a moment. Where do you think you're going, Ricky? I, well, me? No, no, no place. Sir. Right the first time. Just stand still, my fat friend. And you, Mr. Building Commissioner. It's a grafting rat commissioner to you, Superman. Now, look here, I... I... Were you thinking of leaving without saying goodbye? I, uh... Uh, uh, you he see, just uh, remembered he had an appointment, I guess. Yes, he has an appointment, all right, with Police Inspector Henderson. And then a very long appointment with a warden of the state penitentiary. Oh, no. No, you you made a mistake. I can explain. Oh, no, you can't. I really had nothing to do with Mr. Ricky in the way that you think that is. I... Why, you, it was him that made me jip on all those contracts. I didn't want to have You're a liar. It was you. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. Yeah. Is that nice? Two big crooks like you guys calling each other names? Yes. Get your hats, gentlemen. You're going to be away a long time. Let's go, Candy. I'll take this tough little lad under my arm. And as I believe Mr. Ricky was remarking when I blew in, this is it. Herded by Superman, who carries the limp gunman under his arm, and followed by a battered but happily smiling Candy Myers, Fat Mike Ricky and Building Commissioner Morgan are led from the apartment to police headquarters. Their vicious threat against our friends and the citizens of Metropolis forever over. But unknown to Clark Kent, unknown even to those who will be involved, a much more vicious threat is about to raise its ugly, venomous head. A threat not only against Editor White, Jimmy Olsen, Lois Lane, and our other friends, but a threat against personal freedom. A threat against you, and you, and you. Against every decent, clear-thinking American. So don't miss the opening episode of tomorrow's new Superman adventure for thrills and excitement as the Man of Steel battles against hidden poisons. Tune in, same time, same station, and follow the adventures of Superman. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is the copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, think of all the famous names you know, and you'll think of Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Then you'll think of Kellogg's shredded wheat. Makes breakfast loads of fun, crisp tender biscuits of whole wheat, Toasted just right and packed with natural nut sweet flavor. Just the right size, too. Made to fit the bowl. As for nutrition, well, Mom knows that whole wheat is mighty good for you. And for economy, she likes the 15. 15 biscuits in every package. Try Kellogg Shredded Wheat. You'll like it. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. With the investigation of the subway wreck satisfactorily concluded, and racketeers Ricky, Morgan, and Shortcake under police care, we continue on to another and even more serious problem facing the citizens of Metropolis and of America. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. You know, some presents you get are fun when you get them, but after a while you kind of lose interest, isn't that right? Well, for the kind of presents that keep right on being fun, you have to hand it to the prizes and packages of Kellogg's Pep. You get loads of fun for weeks and weeks, collecting all three kinds of those keen prizes. First off, it's mighty exciting to see which kind of prize you'll get in your next Pep package. Maybe it's a bright-colored comic button picturing a favorite comic strip character. Eighteen and all to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. Or, uh... Maybe it's a bird picture in gleaming color with a full description on the reverse side. You can collect 24 of them. 
Or uh, maybe your next pet prize will be one of seven colored cardboard plane models, a cinch to put together. Yes, sir, you keep right on having fun when you're collecting the prizes and packages of Pep the Sunshine Cereal. And all the while, you can be enjoying breakfast with those crunchy golden whole wheat flakes of Pep. Flakes that are light as a breeze, all crisp and cool and catchy tasting as you spoon them up. Mm Mm-mm, is Pep a treat. So get going, gang. Ask Mom for Kellogg's Pep and look for your prize inside the package. Now the adventures of Superman. Our scene is the broad rolling lawn in the shadow of the marble-pillared state capitol. Almost a thousand G.I.s, most of them battle-scarred veterans of the European and Pacific invasions, have gathered on the lawn in a meeting of protest. As we join them now, they are cheering the remarks of one of their number who is addressing them from the base of a statue of Thomas Jefferson, creator of the Bill of Rights. The speaker is Joe Martin, brother of Beanie, the Daily Planet copy boy, and a hero of the Okinawa invasion. Did they ask us what church we went to when they set us up the beach at Anzio? No. Or at Normandy? No. Or at Iwo Jima? No. Did it make any difference whether we were black, white, green, or purple when a machine gun slug came out of nowhere and ripped us apart? No. But now, evidently, it does make a difference. Now that it's all over and the blood has been soaked into the ground and the dead have been buried, and those of us who are lucky enough to come back here are looking for honest, decent work, it does make a difference. It makes a difference to the man sitting behind those bronze doors. The man who calls himself the governor of this state. The Honorable Frank C. Wheeler. What are we going to do about it? Are we going to stand by and let Wheeler discriminate against us because we happen to be Catholics? Jews or Baptists? There are hundreds of state jobs open. Jobs that are supposed to go to veterans. Jobs that were promised to us. I know that some of us are getting those jobs. But only if we worship God the way Frank Wheeler and his gangsters want us to worship. You see this statue? It's a statue of Thomas Jefferson. The man who wrote the Bill of Rights. And the Bill of Rights says that every American can worship God as he sees fit. And that nobody, not even the Congress of the United States, can tell that man how to worship. But Governor Wheeler evidently thinks he's bigger than the Bill of Rights. He thinks he's bigger than the Congress of these United States. He wants to tell us how to worship, and if we don't do it his way, we suffer for it! I say there's only one way to handle this situation. I say we march on the state capitol, knock those big bronze doors over, and demand the two things that you'll find written on the state flag flying over the capitol. Liberty and equality! And I say, let's do it now! Just a minute, fellas! Just a minute, please! Please! Hey, Joe, do you mind if I say a few words? No, go ahead, Sam. Thanks. Quiet, just a minute, fellas! Now, most of you know me... But in case some of you don't, my name is Sam Robbins. Hey, Sam! Joe Martin and I were in the same outfit. We've been friends in Metropolis for almost 20 years. And while I agree with everything Joe said here today, I don't agree with his suggestion that we storm the state capitol. Oh. Oh, just a minute, give me a chance to explain, will you? I don't like prejudice and discrimination any more than you do. In fact, I like it less because I've had more of it. But we're not going to get anywhere with violence. And if we storm the Capitol, somebody's going to get hurt. What we need is the public on our side. we got to appeal to the citizens who elected Governor Wheeler. That takes so much time. We want jobs. All right, Sam. We can't afford to wait. Okay, but I'm afraid of trouble. Don't worry. We won't start any trouble. All right, fellas. Call in ranks and march to the Capitol staff. Yes, Briggs, what is it? Sorry to interrupt, sir, but the veterans who are meeting on the lawn are marching toward the Capitol. Call the state police barracks. Tell them I want a squad of men over here immediately. Yes, sir. All right, George. You got me into this. Now get me out. Ah, take it easy, Frank. Nothing to get excited about. A thousand raving maniacs is plenty to get excited about. What do I do with them? What do I tell them? You're governor of the state, aren't you? In name only, and you know it. So does everyone else. It's no secret that big George Latimer runs the works. Ah, don't lose your head, Frank. 
That's what they want you to do. I know, but you've got to get me out of this hole. Those G.I.s are sore because we've kept certain people out of state jobs. We've kept foreigners out, Frank. Foreigners. But they're citizens, taxpayers. They fought in the army. In my book and in your book, too, they're still foreigners. They're not like us, are they? Well, I... Are they? No, I guess not. That's all you've got to say, Frank. You've got to keep repeating their foreigners. That they're trying to undermine America. Trying to sell us out. Well, that was the Hitler line. Not a bad line, was it? No, but well, look what happened to Hitler. It won't happen to us. Believe me. Yes? They're on the steps, sir. They want you to come out. Who's on the steps? The G.I.s. Who do you think? All right, Briggs. We'll take care of it. Yes, Mr. Latimer. Uh, Briggs. Yes, sir? When the state police get here, tell them to line up in front of the doors. Yes, Mr. Latimer. Oh, I don't like the smell of this. I don't like it one bit. Don't worry. Relax. I found something to hang our hats on. Oh, I don't understand. Kid named Martin, Joe Martin. The spark plug of the mob. We can't touch him. But his best friend is a Jew. A bird named Robbins. He's the one we'll pin it on. We'll say he's responsible for the whole business. Is he? I just finished telling you, Joe Martin was. But we'll hang it on Robbins. Could even call him a red. That always goes over big. Oh, I'm afraid of this. You can't fool around with those veterans, George. They don't knuckle under. They'll knuckle under to me, or I'll know the reason why. Oh, now what? Yes. Oh, what is it, Briggs? The state police are here, sir. Sergeant Adams would like to see you. Yeah, I'll send him in. This way, Sergeant. Sergeant Adams, state police reporting, sir. Uh, glad to know you, Sergeant. Are your men lined up in front of the Capitol doors? Yes, sir. But that's what I want to talk to you about. They don't like the idea of pointing Tommy guns at ex-GIs. I've got ten men, and six of them were GIs themselves. Well, it uh, seems just a minute, to me Governor. If you don't mind. Oh no, no, not at all. Thanks. My name is George Latimer, Sergeant. You may have heard of me. Uh, yes, of course, sir. Good. Now tell me, members of the state police are by law pledged to protect public property, aren't they? Yes, sir. And uh, public life as well, right? Yes, sir. Well, that's all the governor's asking you to do. Protect the state capitol building and his life. Now, if you'll see that your men are lined up in front of the doors, the governor will go out and talk to the G.I.s. Yes, sir. All right, Frank, let's go. Oh, I don't think I'd better go out there now. Now, you've got to show your face. Yeah, but they're screaming for blood. They'll get blood. But it won't be yours. Come on. <laughs> What does big George Latimer, crooked political boss of the state, mean? We'll know in a moment when we return for the exciting climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Say, gang, did you ever see a person trying Kellogg's Pep for the first time? Well, here's what's likely to happen. He starts looking pleased just as soon as he sees those crisp, light, cheery flakes of whole wheat in his breakfast bowl. But wait till he digs his spoon in and samples Pep's flavor. Now you'll see his smile break out in earnest. He takes another spoonful, and another. Can't quite believe all that catchy, super delicious flavor is real. Well, it's real all right. It's terrific. And you can see the pleasure written all over his happy face. And you know, a swell thing about Pep is that every time you eat it, it teases and pleases your taste just that way. Just as you get a happy surprise every time you open your package of Kellogg's Pep for the prize inside. Three different kinds of prizes you can get, and each one a honey. For instance, you'll get either a colored cardboard model of a fighting plane, one of seven in the great Pep air fleet, or uh, you'll get one of 24 beautiful color pictures of birds with a description so you can identify these birds anywhere. Or else, you'll get a bright colored comic button picturing one of 18 comic strip characters to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. So start collecting all three kinds of prizes in Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Led by young Joe Martin, hero of the Okinawa invasion, more than a thousand veterans of World War II are massed in front of the state capitol, demanding an audience with Frank Wheeler, the governor. An unwilling detail of state policemen armed with Tommy guns is lined up on the capitol steps as the governor, accompanied by Big George Latimer, political boss of the state, steps out to face the veterans and is greeted by a chorus of boos and hisses. Joe Martin, at the head of the veteran group, raises his hands and silences the angry men behind him. Then he speaks. Governor Wheeler, my name is Joe Martin. 
I'm speaking for the Army and Navy veterans you see here before you. We demand to know why racial and religious prejudice is being practiced in awarding state jobs to return GIs. Tell them there is no prejudice. Mr. Martin <coughs> and gentlemen, I assure you there is no prejudice. That's a lie. That's a lie. I'm sorry to have to contradict you, Governor, but applicants for state jobs are being asked their church affiliation. And if it isn't the right church, they don't get those jobs. And that goes for Negroes, too. Give them a bar in the line. Americans first. Uh, it, it may be true, Mr. Martin, that we are being very careful in our selection of state employees. That is, uh, we are trying to avoid hiring uh, foreigners who, whose only aim is to, to undermine the government. Whoa. This is America, and we should think of Americans first. What do you think I am? How about me? I know that. That's how you protect Losing his head in a moment of fear and panic, the governor gives the order to fire into the angry mob of indignant veterans surging up the Capitol steps. What will happen? And how does Superman fit into this tense picture of returned G.I.s fighting for their rights? We'll know tomorrow, so be sure to listen when the Man of Steel joins in the battle for the freedom and equality guaranteed all Americans by the Constitution of the United States. Tune in tomorrow, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, here's a famous name that brightens up your breakfast. It's Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Kellogg, as in Kellogg shredded wheat. What a treat. Tender, plump biscuits full up with natural nut sweet flavor and toasted just right for extra crispness. But that's not all. Kellogg shredded wheat biscuits are just the right size, made to fit the bowl. And there are 15. 15 biscuits in every package, each one full of swell whole wheat nourishment. Ask Mom to get you some Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P, E, P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. Today we continue with our G.I. protest against racial discrimination. A protest ended in alarming sounds of gunfire. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, uh, which is it? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a button? Well, you never can tell for sure until you open your package of Kellogg's Pep and see which of those three kinds of prizes you'll get. So, every prize is always an exciting surprise. Sure, it might be one of Pep's 18 slick comic buttons, picturing one of your favorite comic strip characters to pin on your beanie cap or your jacket. Or a... Uh, it might be a model of a fighting plane, one of seven thrilling plane models in the series, all made of colored cardboard and easy to assemble. Or uh, your next pep prize might be a beautiful full-color bird picture from a series of 24, each with a description on the reverse side so you can name and know any of these birds around. And say, speaking of birds, you'll sure be an early bird to the breakfast table when Kellogg's Pep heads the menu. Because every spoonful of these crisp whole wheat flakes is brimming with cool come on. Every spoonful is a treat in itself. Every dish of Pep just about doubles the fun of breakfast. 
Yes, sir, you'll say that catchy pep flavor is strictly terrific. So get going, gang. Ask Mom for Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, and look for your prize inside the package. Now, the adventures of Superman. Led by young Joe Martin, a hero of the Okinawa invasion and brother of Beanie, the Daily Planet copy boy, a thousand returned veterans staged a mass meeting on the steps of the state capitol. A meeting of protest against racial and religious discrimination and the awarding of state jobs. Demanding an explanation from Governor Wheeler, the ex-GIs were told there was no discrimination. Angry and indignant, the men swarmed up the Capitol steps. In a moment of fear and panic, the governor lost his head and ordered a squad of state troopers armed with Tommy guns to fire into the crowd. Shots rang out. As we continue now, our scene is the editorial office of the Daily Planet. Beanie Martin, in response to the ringing of a bell, has stepped into the teletype room to get the news clip being fed out of one of the machines. He stands by idly as the keys automatically print the news report in bright purple ink. Suddenly he stiffens. The color drains from his cheeks. His eyes race over the glaring lines of type. Mouth agape, he reaches out and rips the long sheet of paper out of the machine just as the clatter of the keys stops. Then, turning, he races through the city room looking for Clark Kent. How many times have I told you not to barge into this office without knocking? Yes, sir, but this is important. Mr. Kent, get out of here. Get out of here. All righty, hold it. What's the matter, Beanie? You're pale as a ghost. Uh, you'll be a ghost unless you get out of here. Please, Mr. White. Come in, I... Beanie. Come in and close the door. Now, what's the trouble? My brother. It's about my brother. Your brother Joe? Yes, sir. Oh, what about him? What, what about him? Please, can't you see the boy's upset? Here, look at this teletype. Uh, nobody see. gives a hoot when I'm upset. Great Scott. What is it, Kent? Listen to this. A returned veteran, hero of Okinawa invasion, was seriously wounded today when, at the order of Governor Wheeler, a detachment of state policemen fired into a group of ex-GI staging a protest meeting on the steps of the state capitol. <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. Even Wheeler, as rotten as he is, wait a minute, wouldn't do wait it. Wait a minute, more. The wounded man is... Joe Martin of 1040 Wilton Drive. My brother. Said to be the leader of the veteran group, organized to protest against racial and religious discrimination in the awarding of state jobs. Immediately following the incident, Martin was removed to the Metropolis Hospital, where he's been placed on the danger list. <laughs> oh, there, there. There, there, Beanie. I, I'm sorry I shouted at you, but don't cry now. We'll take care of everything. Now, Kent, you get on this thing immediately. Get all the facts. Well, now, look. If Wheeler's responsible for this, I'll, I'll have him impeached. Yes, I'll, wait. I'll ruin him for wait life. Wait a I... minute. In the first place, I can't quite believe that the state police would fire into a group of veterans. In the second place, I'm going to the hospital to see about Beanie's brother. Sign someone else to the story. Give it a <laughs> give it a Lois. Oh, where is she? Probably in her office. Beanie, you locate Jimmy Olsen and get him to go home with you. Yes. And don't you worry about your brother. Now, everything possible will be done for him. See you later, Chief. <laughs> Doctor, I've got to see him. I'm sorry, Mr. Kent. We've just done an emergency operation on him to remove the bullet from his chest. He's in a coma. No one can see him. But, Doctor, you see... I it's... think there's a friend of his sitting in the waiting room. Perhaps he can help you. Oh, here he comes now. Oh. Any change, Doctor? No, no change. Well, I'll have to leave you now. Sorry. Thanks, Doctor. Quite well. I understand you're a friend of Joe Martin's. I've known him almost all my life. We were kids together. We went to school together and fought the war together. Now this has to happen. Yeah, I know. Uh, my, my name is Clark Kent. I'm, I'm with the Daily Planet. Joe's brother, Beanie, works for us. Oh, that's right. Joe's mentioned you lots of times. I'm Sam Robbins. Glad to meet you. Glad to meet you, Sam. Tell me, were, uh, were you at the state capitol when this thing happened? I was there all right, but it didn't do much good. No. I tried to tell the boys someone was going to get hurt, but they wouldn't listen. Did the state police actually fire at them? I hate to have to say this, Mr. Kent, but I'm afraid they did. Did they? They had Tommy guns. Our bunch was sore, and they started up the steps to where the governor and some of his stooges were standing. Uh -huh. I heard him yell to the troopers to fire. The next thing I knew, the Tommy guns were blazing away, and Joe was right next to me, crumpled up and dropped. Was anyone else hit? No, just Joe. The one guy who didn't have it coming to him. Huh. The guy who just the same was fighting for the Jews, the Catholics, and all the rest of the people who get pushed around. Doesn't make sense, Sam. You're telling me. Yeah, I, I remember thinking when we were crawling up one of those Jap Island beaches with slugs whistling around us and knocking off one guy out of three that, well, maybe after this war was over, we'd wake up to the fact that when the chips are down, it doesn't matter what prayer book you read out of or what color your face is. Yeah, that's 
what I thought, but I guess I was all cockeyed. No, no, I think a lot of people did wake up, Sam, but that's not what I was thinking of when I said it didn't make sense. I was thinking that if the state police fired into the crowd, how come only Joe was hit? Particularly with Tommy guns. I don't know. Yeah, well, I'm going to find out. Uh, you'll be around here for a while yet, won't you, Sam? I'll be around until they tell me Joe's going to pull through. If it takes a week. Okay. Okay, I'm going over to state police headquarters. I'll be back in a few minutes. A few minutes? Mm -hmm. But it's 20 miles from here. What are you, Superman? <laughs> Sometimes, Sam. See you later. <laughs> Will you please repeat that for me, Sergeant? Uh, sure. After I went in and told the governor my men didn't like the idea of pointing guns at ex-GIs, because most of them were in the army themselves, yeah. and after Latimer... Well, he was in the governor's office. Big George Latimer? Yeah, that's right. You know, I don't understand it. I cross-examined each one of my men. They all swear they fired way over the heads of the crowd. Hey, wait a minute, Sergeant. Wait a minute. Hmm? I just thought of something. You, you've got a ballistics expert here, haven't you? I'm the ballistics man. You? Oh, well, good. You're coming back to the hospital with me as fast as we can get there. Come on. Are you sure, Doctor, that this is the bullet removed from Joe Martin's chest? Hopkins, Mr. Chairman. It's not just beneath the heart. All right, Sergeant. Here it is. Can you tell from what kind of a gun it was fired? Let's see. Yes. 32 automatic. No doubt about that? No doubt at all. It could never have been shot out of a Tommy gun. That, of course, clears my men. Wait a minute. The state police carry sidearms, don't they? Yes, but they're 44 caliber police specials. They're revolvers, not automatics. And this bullet came from an automatic. <laughs> Weighing the twisted lead bullet in his hand, Sergeant Adams of the state police makes a positive statement. A statement that opens a new trail for Superman. But in a moment, even the man of steel will be faced by the shock of his life. So stand by for the startling climax of today's episode. Say, gang, isn't it swell just to see a dish of Kellogg's Pep at your place at the breakfast table? Pep looks so crisp and light and golden that, well, you can hardly wait to... And believe you me, a bowl of pep tastes just as good as it looks. Those cool, crunchy whole wheat flakes are crammed with pep's special kind of teasing, pleasing, catchy flavor. Yes, sir, when it comes to brightening up breakfast, pep's a terrific hit. And say, pep's terrific, too, when it comes to swell prizes. Three different kinds of prizes, one or the other in every pep package. Makes each prize seem three times as exciting because, well, you never know which you'll get next. For instance, you might find a colored cardboard model of a fighting plane. And you'd be smart to collect all seven model planes in the series. Or uh, you might find one of Pep's 24 full-color bird pictures with a description to help you know these birds every time. Or uh, you might find a bright-colored comic button picturing one of 18 different comic strip characters that pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. So get in on the fun, gang. Ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. <laughs> waiting room at the Metropolis Hospital, Sergeant Adams, ballistics expert of the state police, in the presence of Clark Kent and Sam Robbins, has made an amazing statement that the bullet that plowed its way into Joe Martin's chest was fired from a 32 automatic, not from a Tommy gun. For a moment, even Kent is amazed. Then... You're sure about that, Sergeant? I'm positive. You mean someone else fired the shot at Joe? It wasn't one of the cops? But it looks like, Sam. But who did it? Now, from now on, our job is to find out. Well, all I know hold is it, I'm going to... Hold it. Here comes big George Latimer. Excuse me. The uh, nurse at the desk said some friends of Joe Martin were in here. My name's George Latimer. I'm a friend of Joe's. Oh, that's fine, son. Uh, what's your name? Robbins. Sam Robbins. Oh, really? I know you, Sergeant. Adams, right? That's right. And uh, this gentleman? Kent. Daily Planet. Oh, yes. I've heard of you, Kent. Star reporter. Great paper to Planet. Even though it fights me, but that doesn't mean anything, of course. Big George Latimer loves a fight. <laughs> we can't see anything to laugh about, Mr. Latimer. Joe Martin is pretty close to dying in one of these rooms. Yes, that's why I'm here. Governor Wheeler asked me to come down and see what I could do for young Martin. Oh? 
the same time to correct the impression some people seem to have that Martin was wounded by the state police. Wasn't he? No, Kent, he wasn't. Well, what did happen? Who shot Martin? Well, I was standing on the top step of the Capitol with the governor when the crowd of veterans got a little too excited and started up the steps. I saw one of them pull a gun. Then the governor, certainly was about to be attacked, gave the order to fire. Naturally, one couldn't hear a pistol shot with Tommy guns blazing. Are you trying to tell us that one of the veterans shot Joe Martin? Yes, Kent, I am. It's an old trick, and it was pulled this time to make the governor and the state police look bad. You think you could identify the man you saw pull the gun? Yes. And I don't have to go far. There he is, standing right next to you. What? His name is Sam Robbins. Stunned. Stunned beyond even the power of speech. Clark Kent and Sergeant Adams turn to Sam Robbins as Big George Latimer points an accusing finger at the dark-haired ex-GI. What does this mean? A man like Latimer certainly can't afford to make a public accusation of attempted murder without being able to prove it. Fellows and girls, you're in for a thrill a minute in tomorrow's exciting episode of this story. As even Superman, with all his strength and cleverness, finds himself caught in a monstrous web of hatred and intolerance. So don't miss it. Tune in tomorrow, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, when you think of famous names, do you think of Kellogg? You know, that's the greatest name in cereals. And Kellogg makes Kellogg shredded wheat, the tender plump biscuits, made just the right size to fit your breakfast bowl. And are they good? Full to the brim with natural nut sweet flavor. Good for you, too. They're made of nutritious whole wheat. What's more, Kellogg gives you 15. 15 delicious biscuits in every package of Kellogg shredded wheat. Try them soon. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, as our story continues, crooked political boss George Latimer's amazing accusation is greeted with shocked silence by the man of steel and the accused. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. You know, anything that's good to eat is fun to eat. So start your day by having fun right at the breakfast table with a bowl of Kellogg's Pep. Is it good? Why, Kellogg's Pep has a regular talent for tickling your taste. It's a regular fun feast. Those delicate whole wheat flakes are so crisp and fresh, so cool and downright catchy tasting that, well, you get a bang out of every single spoonful. Yes, sir. And who wouldn't get a bang out of those slick pep prizes? Three different kinds of prizes, one or the other in every package of pep you open. For instance, uh, you may find one of 24 keen bird pictures in gleaming bright color, with a description on the reverse side so that you'll be a wise bird on birds, all right. Or uh, you may find an exciting colored cardboard model of a fighting plane, easy and fun to assemble, and you can collect all seven model planes in the series. Or uh, your next pep prize may be a bright colored comic button picturing one of 18 famous characters like funnies to pin on your beanie cap or your jacket. So hop to it, gang. Collect all three kinds of these smooth prizes. Ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Now, the adventures of Superman. The 
protesting that returned G.I.s were being kept out of state jobs because of their race or religion, a thousand veterans of World War II, led by young Joe Martin, brother of Beanie, the Daily Planet copy boy, gathered on the steps of the state capitol and demanded an explanation from Governor Frank Wheeler. Angered by the governor's denial of discrimination, the veterans surged up the capitol steps. Losing his head, Wheeler ordered a squad of state troopers to fire at the crowd. The troopers fired high over the heads of the veterans. Yet, a moment later, Joe Martin collapsed with a bullet in his chest. At the Metropolis Hospital, Clark Kent, Sergeant Adams, ballistics expert of the state police, and Sam Robbins, a close friend of Joe Martin, determined that the bullet fired at Joe had come from a 32 automatic, not a Tommy gun. They were discussing the matter in the hospital waiting room when big George Latham, a political boss of the state, joined them and reported that he had been standing on the top step of the Capitol with the governor and had seen one of the veterans pull a gun. Questioned by Kent as to whether he could identify the veteran, Latimer pointed an accusing finger at Sam Robbins. That's the man who pulled the gun. For a timeless moment, the shock of the accusation left its hearers speechless. Deadly silence hung like a pall over the four men. Then suddenly, Sam Robbins stiffened and flushed. What did you say? I said, you're the man I saw pull a gun. Why, you dirty rat! Get me down! Get him off me! Come on! You pull it! Get him! Bring it! Let me at him! All right, Sam! That's no! He's a lion rat! Let me at him! Take it easy, fella! Sure, take it easy! Take it easy! Hold it! That's what I've been doing all my life, taking it easy! Turning the other cheeks so rats like him can fight it! All right, all right, all right, Sam! Sergeant, take him out to your car. Wait there for me. Let's go, fella. Now, wait a minute! He said I shot Sam! I didn't say anything of the sort. You are you guys! This is the hospital, Sam. Control yourself. All right, take him out to the car, Sergeant. Come on, fellow, on your way. I'm not finished with him yet. Remember that. You all right, Mr. Latimer? Oh, yes. Yes, thanks to you. I certainly never expected anything like that. Of course, it's understandable. So many of those boys are still suffering from battle fatigue. That wasn't battle fatigue. You accused him of shooting his best friend. Oh, no, Kent. I simply said he was the man I saw with a gun. I said nothing about shooting how sure are you he was the man? Well, sure as I could be under the circumstances. There was a great deal of excitement at the time. Well, then you're not positive. I wouldn't want to swear it under oath if a man's life were at stake. However... Yes? I don't want you to misunderstand. But I can see the possibility of a situation wherein Robbins could have fired the shot at Joe Martin. You mean accidentally? Well, no. Not quite. Well, I'm afraid I don't understand. I admit it's a little difficult unless you know the background. Mind you, this is just a supposition on my part. Just a passing thought that I can't possibly prove. And I wouldn't want to if I could. But look at it this way. A mob of war veterans is crowding up the Capitol steps. The governor, in a moment of understandable panic, orders the state troopers to fire. Wisely, they fire over the heads of the crowd. But Robbins, taking advantage of the confusion and the deafening noise of the Tommy gun, fires a shot at Joe Martin, certain that the blame will be leveled at Governor Wheeler and the state police. You realize what you're saying, Mr. Latimer? I pointed out, Kent, that this was all just a guess. However, men like Robin sometimes lose their heads, as you saw just a few minutes ago. They don't think straight. And you believe Robbins would commit murder? Joe Martin may die, remember, in order to discredit the governor and the state police? It's been done before by men like Robbins. You keep repeating the phrase, men like Robbins. What do you mean by that? Well, men who don't quite go along with the American way of life. You know, men with foreign background. Oh. What's your background, Mr. Latimer? My background? Yes. I'm an American. My father was born here. See, what about your grandfather? Well, he was born in England. Oh, uh, then you have a foreign background, too. Oh, well, now, don't twist it around, Kent. You know what I mean. Yes, 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 I'm afraid I do. You mean that because Robbins doesn't belong to your church, he's a potential murderer? I never said that. Look, Kent, I suggest we drop the entire matter. I came here at the governor's request to see what I could do for the boy who was shot. As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to forget the incident that ever took place. Well, unfortunately, I'm not. Because it's obvious there's more to this than appears on the surface. Right now, I've got to go out and have a talk with Robbins, but I'll be seeing you again, Mr. Latimer. Perhaps very soon. Here's the setup, Sam. Latimer says he saw you pull a gun. But he wouldn't swear to it on the stand. That's white of him, Mr. Dirty. Now, look, wait a minute. Sam, don't lose your head. A good my head with a knife in my back. Now, in the first place, there isn't it. Uh-oh, hold everything. This bird coming over to the car is the police reporter for the Daily Clarion. Hi, Sergeant. Hello, Williams. 
Oh, hello, Kent. Fancy meeting you here. Hello, Williams. What's the dope on the G.I. shooting? Oh, there isn't any. Come on, come on. Don't give me that. What's the lowdown? I told you, there isn't any. Who is this guy? Friend of mine. You always entertain your friends in the back seat of a state police car? Uh-huh. When I feel like it, I do. He looks like he's in trouble. Why don't you print that in your paper? Sam. Sam Robbins looks like he's in trouble. That's your name? Look, Williams, this is a private conversation. Beat it, huh? What's he afraid to talk He's for? not a... Who's afraid to talk? Hold it, Sam. He can't scare me. Sam. Let him print it in his lousy paper. Let him say that Latimer accused me of shooting Joe Martin. Big George Latimer? Sam. Yeah, Big George, Big Rat. Put that in your paper. Where do you live, Sam? 210 Carson Avenue, and I'm out of a job because Latimer doesn't think I'm an American. Put that in, too. Okay, pal, thanks. It's a big mistake, Sam. What have I got to lose? What have you... Okay, forget it. Now, look, tell me. You remember who was on either side of you when the crowd started up the Capitol steps? Yeah. Uh, Joe was on my right, and Eddie Kane... Yeah, yeah, Eddie was on my left, and uh, Bob Sloan was behind me. All right, where can I find Kane and Sloan? They're at the Legion Post on 12th Street with the rest of the boys. Oh? They all wanted to come to the hospital, but I told them to wait at the post. Okay, where are you going now? I'm sticking around here until I get some news about Joe. Yeah, well, uh, look, uh, Sam... Latimer may still be in the hospital. Promise me you won't tangle with him. I promise. Good boy. But it won't be easy. I know, I know. I'll be back after I talk to Kane and Sloan. Uh, wh- what about you, Sergeant? I want to take this bullet back to the barracks and make sure I was right about it coming out of an automatic. Good idea. Okay, I'll run along then. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I forgot something. Hmm? In view of what's happened, Sergeant, you may not want to let Robbins out of your custody. There's no reason for holding him. We've got no case yet. That's right, you haven't. But you may have before I'm through. A very important case. We'll return in a moment to join Clark Kent as he follows a trail that may lead to murder. So stand by. Say, gang, do you know that you can collect not just one swell prize, but 49 different top-notch prizes right in packages of Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal? Why, Sure. You'll find a prize in every package. And there are three different kinds of prizes you may find there. For instance, uh, you may find one of 18 different comic strip buttons, each picturing a famous comic strip character. Or uh, you may find a colored cardboard model of a fighting plane, one of seven exciting plane models in the series. Or uh, uh, you may get a beautiful full-color bird picture from a series of 24, each with a description to help you identify these birds in the air. Now, that makes 49 different prizes you can collect. And that's only a part of the fun in Kellogg's Pep. Think of the good eating fun in those crisp whole wheat flakes, all crammed with cool, catchy flavor. I mean, Pep's delicious, a prize in itself. Yes, sir, a dish of Pep is so strictly terrific that in double-quick time, you've polished off every last bit in your bowl. And that's the right angle, gang, especially nowadays when we're sending the cereal grains to fellows and girls overseas. So remember, eat all your Pep. Don't waste it. Hurrying to the American Legion post on 12th Street, Superman in the guise of Clark Kent, reporter, located Eddie Kane and Bob Sloan. But as we join him now, he is alone with the two veterans in a small room where he has been questioning them for almost an hour. All right, fellas, it all boils down to this. You're both ready to swear on a stack of Bibles that Sam Robbins had no gun in his hand, and since he had no gun, could not have fired the shot that wounded Joe Martin. I'll swear it on two stacks. That goes for me, too. Good. I'll even lay money that Sammy never owned a gun. Remember, Bob, when we had a chance to bring a load of them Jap pistols back for souvenirs, and Sam was the guy that talked us out of it on account of he said it was dangerous keeping stuff like that around the house, remember? Sure. Who said he had a gun? Oh, for the tenth time, I can't tell you. What difference does it make? The difference is I'd like to bust the guy one in the beak. I know. You may get that chance, but not now. All I'm trying to do now is clear Sam's skirts. What about Joe Martin? He'll tell you. Joe's in a coma. And he may not pull through. If he don't, there'll be trouble. We got a thousand guys who did a lot of killing in the last four years. If we have to, we'll do a little more. Joe better pull through. Everything possible is being done for him. Is Sam still at the hospital? Yes, he is. He'll call you if anything breaks. Now, look, fellas, in the meantime, keep everything under your hat, huh? Don't discuss this with anyone. Okay, Mr. Kent. Thanks for working on it. Yeah, thanks a lot. Not at all. Glad to do it. Yeah, who is it? Eddie, I got something to show you. What? Here, look at this. I heard a kid yelling extra, and I went out and bought one. It's the clarion. Holy cat. What is it? Look. Gun found in veterans' home. The 32 automatic reportedly responsible for the bullet that may cost the life of Joe Martin, hero of Okinawa, 
was today found in a bureau drawer in the home of Sam Robbins, also an ex-GI and supposedly Martin's close friend. Great Scott! Mr. Kent, what does that mean? How, how... I... I don't know, Eddie. I, I honestly don't know. Dazed at this sudden and unexpected turn of events, Clark Kent stares at the big black headlines splashed across the front page of the Daily Clarion. Unable for the moment to marshal his confused thoughts. What does it mean? Is Sam Robbins guilty? Gang, from this moment on, Superman himself takes a powerful hand in this tense and exciting story of prejudice that leads to murder. So don't miss a single thrilling episode. Tune in tomorrow and every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pet, the sunshine cereal. You know, gang, famous names make history. And Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals, has made history with good breakfast eating for a long time. For example, Kellogg's shredded wheat, so crisp, so toasty. So delicious, tender plump biscuits, 15 of them to a package. That's 15 biscuits crammed with their own natural nut sweet flavor and made just the right size to fit the bowl. And remember, this is whole wheat, so it's good for you, too. Ask Mom for Kellogg Shredded Wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, a peculiar chain of circumstances forces Superman into a situation in which he is required to make a decision that may put him outside the law. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, if you're ever asked to define the word delicious, just give as an example Kellogg's Pep, because Pep sure is that kind of breakfast dish. Fact is, uh, Pep just about doubles everything you say for delicious. It's got a good golden toasted flavor, and it's strictly on the catchy side. In short, a pep flavor, meaning plenty terrific. Yes, sir, when it comes to delicious, those cool, crisp whole wheat flakes of pep really give you the business. And that's only half the story. Why, pep gives you the slickest prizes ever. Three different kinds, one or the other, in every package of pep you open. You get either a bright-colored comic button, picturing one of 18 favorite comic strip characters to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap, or uh, you get a colored cardboard model of a fighting plane. And by swapping duplicates with the gang, you can collect all seven model planes in the series. Or uh, you can get a full-color bird picture. There are 24 of these in all, each with a full description so that you'll really know a thing or two about birds. Honest, gang, all three kinds of prizes will really send you. So ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Now the adventures of Superman. Led by Joe Martin, brother of Beanie Martin, Daily Planet copy boy, a group of a thousand G.I. veterans descended on the state capitol, charging that the governor, Frank Wheeler, was practicing racial and religious discrimination in awarding state jobs. Ordered by the governor to disperse the men, a squad of state troopers fired Tommy guns over the veterans' heads. But when the firing ceased, Joe Martin was down with a bullet in his chest. At the Metropolis Hospital, the bullet was removed and identified as having been fired from a 32 caliber automatic. And big George Latimer, the state political boss, said he had seen Sam Robbins, Joe's lifelong friend and war buddy, brandishing an automatic during the demonstration. A short time later, 
the Daily Planet's opposition paper, The Clarion, broke the startling news that a 32 automatic had been found in Sam Robbins' house. As we continue now, Clark Kent has hurried to the state police barracks, where he is conferring with Sergeant Adams. Listen. This story in the Daily Clarion, Sergeant, is it true? It's true, all right, Kent. We found a 32 automatic in Sam Robbins' house. It was in his bureau drawer. But that I'm going prove... to put the Robbins' gun through a ballistic test. That'll show whether or not his gun fired the slug taken from Joe Martin's body. Oh, I see. Want to come along? Sure, you bet I do. Okay, come down with me to the basement, the shooting range. You see, Kent, every gun barrel puts its own trademark on the bullets it fires. Certain little whorls and markings on the metal, which you can't see with the naked eye, are put there by the rifling of the barrel. Yes, I know about that, Sergeant. I... Okay, then. Now, I'm going to fire this gun we found in Robin's house into this box. It's filled with padding and tightly packed sawdust, so the bullet won't flatten or take on any new markings. Then I'll compare it with the slug they removed from Joe Martin's body. I told you I know about that, Sergeant. Go ahead with the test. Okay, here goes. There. Now I'll get the slug and we'll take it up to the laboratory for comparison. We'll just put this bullet under the microscope, Kent, alongside the one that came out of Joe Martin's body. And I'll tell you in a moment. There. There we are. There we are what? Just a minute. Now the last quartering. There. Well, Sergeant? That's it, Kent. That's what? What's the answer? The slug I fired into the box and the one taken from Joe Martin's body. They match. They do? That's right. The gun we found in Robin's house fired both shots. Let's go. Now, wait a minute. Go where? I'm going to get a warrant for Sam Robin's arrest on a charge of assault with attempt to kill. And if Joe Martin dies, Robin's will be held for murder. <laughs> One hour later, Clark Kent is admitted to a temporary detention cell at State Trooper's headquarters, where Sam Robbins shakes his head dazedly as he says, I can't understand it, Mr. Kent. I never owned a 32 automatic or any other kind of a gun. So how could the State Troopers find that gun in my room? I don't know, but they did find it. Look, Sam, do any other members of your family own guns? No, there's just my mother and my kid brother and sister. What would they want with a gun? Listen, Mr. Kent, I... If the troopers found that automatic in my bureau drawer, like they say, and somebody planted it there to frame me. Now, wait. Somebody Sam. wanted to make me out as the guy who shot Joe Martin. Ha. Me shoot Joe. Can you imagine that? But Joe, Joe's my pal. We grew up together. We fought the war together. Why, we've always been just like brothers. I know, Sam. I know. Now somebody wants the police to think I shot him. Look, Mr. Kent. You don't think that, do you? No, I don't, Sam. Thanks. And my, my buddies, the ones you talk with... They don't think I shot Joe, do they? Of course not. As a matter of fact, when they heard that Big George Latimer said he saw you pull an automatic on the Capitol steps, they wanted to take him apart. Latimer's a liar. I told him so once, and I'll tell him so again. I'll tell it to anybody. Easy, Sam. Wait a minute. He said he might be mistaken. Yeah, he said. He didn't act like he was. Oh, but why would he... Hey, I wonder. What? Oh, just a wild idea I had for a moment. Look, let, let's try this from a different angle, Sam, huh? Have you any idea why anyone would want to shoot Joe? Does he, does he have any enemies? Joe Martin? Yes. No, everybody was always crazy about him. He was one of the most popular guys in the Army. Well, then why? Yeah, why? I've been knocking myself out trying to figure that one. I can't come up with an answer. We've got to find the answer, Sam. When we do, we'll be able to find the person who shot Joe Martin. Now, look, I, uh, I've got to leave now, but don't be discouraged. The police have some fairly strong circumstantial evidence against you... But there are one or two big holes Mr. in it. Kent. And if I... Mr. Kent. Is that you, Jim? Yeah. I called the office in the hospital and they said you were here. I rushed right over. Huh, what's up? Well, you're here. Oh, hello, Sam. Hi, Jim. How's Joe? Oh, he's about the same. Still in a coma. Nobody can see him. Oh, poor Joe. Uh, you fellas didn't see the latest edition of the Clarion yet, did you? Clarion? Uh, no. What are they saying now? Here, I'll pass it through the bar. See for yourself. Let me see. Uh-oh. Sam Robbins condemned by mother. What? Condemned by my mother? What does that mean? Just a minute. Mrs. Louis Robbins, mother of Samuel Robbins, who was arrested today charged with shooting Joe Martin, a G.I. veteran, admitted that her son appeared at their home a short time after the shooting at the state capitol building. What? Oh, wait, Sam. Go on, Mr. Kent. Mrs. Robbins stated that her son seemed to be under great emotional stress. He raced up to his room, and Mrs. Robbins says she heard a bureau drawer being opened. A moment later, Sam rushed down the stairs and out of the house, calling to his mother that he was going to the hospital. As readers of the Clarion know, it was in Sam Robbins' bureau drawer that state troopers later found the 32 automatic with which Joe Martin had been shot. 
And it is to be assumed that Robbins returned to his home to hide the telltale weapon. What? Then raced to the hospital to appear in a sympathetic role. Why, but dirty... Just a moment, Sam. Wait a minute. Is this story true? I mean, about your returning to your home before you went to the hospital? Well, sure. I had a few hundred dollars in my bureau drawer that I'd saved in the army, and I wanted to take it to the hospital to, to make sure that Joe got a private room and the best doctor's money could buy. Well, didn't the clarion ask you about that before they printed the story? No. Cheapers. Clarion's a sensation sheet, Jim. They're more interested in headlines and facts. But gee whiz, they're practically condemning Sam before the case even goes to trial. Well, that's the way the Clarion does business. Oh, dirty business, if you ask me. Yes, but that's beside the point right now. This is bad, very bad. Sam's mother admitting he rushed into the house after the shooting and went up to his room before he left for the hospital. Mom didn't know she was making it tough for me. Of course she didn't, but anyhow, she had to tell the truth. But the Clarion twisted the truth. They make it well, seem... we're like... wasting time. The cards are stacked against Sam now, and unless we get to the bottom of this very quickly... How are we going to do that? Yeah, that's what I want to know. There's one way. There is. What's that, Mr. Kent? There's no time to talk about it now. Keep your chin up, Sam. Jim, get Hogan and let me out of here. We're going places. Followed by Jimmy Olsen, Clark Kent hurries from Sam Robbins' cell. What is Kent's plan? We'll return in a moment to find out and to hear the tense climax of today's episode... So stand by. Say, gang, when you're collecting those swell pep prizes, whether it's the model planes or the bird pictures or the comic buttons, does it sometimes happen that the prize you get in your package of Kellogg's Pep is a duplicate of one that you already have? I mean, for instance, uh, do you have two Curtis Helldiver model planes when you're trying to collect Pep's seven different model planes? Well, you know, it's fun to swap duplicates with a gang. Sure. Maybe you'll trade your duplicate plane for a a full-color bird picture to help complete your collection of bird pictures in Pep's new series. Or uh, maybe you'll trade your duplicate plane for a a bright-colored comic button picturing characters straight out of the funnies like Orphan Annie or or Moon Mullins or Superman himself. Swapping duplicates that way, you can easily collect the 49 different prizes in Pep's three current series. And while you're collecting them, just think of the prize-winning eating you can put in when you sit down to breakfast and spoon up those crisp, cool flakes of good whole wheat. Think of the keen, catchy flavor, that light, fresh, sunshine flavor, that terrific pep flavor. Yes, sir, a bowl of pep is strictly on the beam. So ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, and remember to look for your prize inside the package. Leaving State Police Headquarters, Clark Kent and Jimmy Olsen took a taxi to the Metropolis Hospital. As we join them now, they are walking through the third floor corridor toward Joe Martin's room. You see, Jim, Sam was standing right next to Joe Martin when Joe was shot. So Joe should be able to tell us whether Sam shot him or not. Well, of course Sam didn't shoot him, but how's Joe going to tell us? He's in a coma. I said this was only a chance. I'm hoping Joe comes out of his coma, and I want to be here when he... Do- Uh-oh, here comes Dr. Mitchell now. Dr. Mitchell. Oh, Kent, I was just going to call you. Oh? Do you know where I can get hold of Sam Robbins? He's in jail. In jail? Yeah, the state... Just a moment, Jim. Why do you want Sam, Doctor? Joe Martin is asking for him. Joe's out of his coma? Can we see him? By no means. He's in a very critical condition. But for the last half hour, he's been asking constantly for Sam Robbins. I believe he thinks something happened to Robbins, and at this stage, anxiety is very bad for him. I see. He's approaching a crisis now, and while I can't go so far as to say Robbins' presence will save his life... But it might. Is that it, Doctor? Yes, But you say Robbins is in jail. That makes it very difficult. I wonder, there isn't much time. Do you suppose if I called the police and explained... Well, they wouldn't let Sam out. They think he shot Joe. What? Yes. As you say, this makes it very difficult, Doctor. Very difficult. Unless I... Unless you what, Mr. Kent? Unless I break the law. Puzzle. Jimmy Olsen and Dr. Mitchell stare at Clark Kent whose knitted brow gives evidence of the struggle taking place within him. In his mind, as if two attorneys were arrayed against each other, he hears himself argue as Superman and as Clark Kent. I'm Superman. I can easily bend the bars of Sam Robbins' cell and bring him to the hospital. But that would be breaking the laws of your country. And Superman fights to uphold law and order. But a man's life is at stake. Two men's lives. If Joe dies, Sam Robbins will die, too. In the electric chair. Only Joe may be able to save his life. True. Nevertheless, you have no right to take the law into your own hands. You know that. Yes, yes, I know. 
What'll I do? What will I do? Yes, what will Superman do? What would you do if you were in his place? Don't miss Monday's thrilling episode when the Man of Steel makes his decision and comes to grips with the vicious creators of bigotry and intolerance. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. You know, gang, you never forget a famous name like Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Kellogg brightens up breakfast with Kellogg's shredded wheat. Fifteen, fifteen crisp tender biscuits in every package. There's loads of natural nut sweet flavor in toasty Kellogg shredded wheat. Loads of fine nutrition, too. It's whole wheat. And these plump, delicious biscuits are just the right size, made to fit the bowl. Try them soon. Ask Bomb for Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Come on, pep. P P P pep. Come on, pep. The Sunshine Serial presents the Adventures of Superman. <laughs> Superman is faced with a serious situation involving the possible necessity of breaking the law in order to save the lives of two ex-GI victims of a bigoted political machine. Hello there, gang. This is your pal, Dan McCullough. Say, with school starting, it won't be long before you fellas and girls will be going in for all kinds of school games and activities. And uh, are you going to show up at your best Unless you eat a good breakfast. I mean, now's the time, more than ever, to pack a good bowl of Kellogg's Pep under your belt. Every single dish of Pep gives you solid whole wheat nourishment plus. And these crisp, delicate golden flakes of Pep taste so downright terrific that you'll want to eat hearty. They're so strictly delicious, they're fun to eat. And for an extra bonus of fun, just take a look inside your next package of Pep for your prize. Your surprise prize. Because you may find an exciting colored cardboard model of a fighting plane. Easy and fun to assemble. There are seven model planes you can collect. Or uh, you may find one of 24 full-color bird pictures with a description to help you identify each of these birds when you see it. Or your pet prize might be a bright-colored comic button picturing one of 18 famous characters straight out of the funnies to pin on your beanie cap or your jacket. Yes, all three kinds of pet prizes are super. So ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pet, the sunshine cereal, and look for your prize inside the package. Now, the adventures of Superman. Superman is face to face with the most difficult decision of his career. In the Metropolis Hospital, seriously wounded and near death, lies Joe Martin, war hero. In the state police jail is Sam Robbins, Joe's lifelong friend and war buddy, who was accused of shooting Joe during a GI demonstration at the state capitol. A demonstration against the governor, whom the veterans charged with practicing racial and religious discrimination in awarding state jobs. In his guise of Clark Kent, Superman has just learned that Joe Martin is asking for Sam and that the doctor feels that Sam's presence at the bedside might save Joe's life. And so the Man of Steel has had to make a great decision whether or not to violate the law and free Sam from jail. As we continue now, resolved to make one final effort on the side of law and order, Superman has speak to state police headquarters where we find him pleading with Sergeant Adams. Listen. I never asked a favor before, Sergeant, but I'm asking one now in the name of justice and humanity. Parole Sam Robbins in my custody for one hour. I'll promise to bring him back. I can't do it, Superman. We're holding Robbins on an assault warrant. And if Joe Martin dies, Robbins will be held for murder. You'll be holding an innocent man. 
I don't think you know the details of this case. I know all about it. And you still think he's innocent? I'm sure he is. And if you let me take him to the hospital now, I may be able to prove it. How? Joe Martin is partially out of his coma, and he's been calling for Sam. The doctor thinks Sam's presence might pull him through the crisis. Well, if you put it that way... That's the way it is. Besides, I promised to bring Sam back here within one hour. Have you ever heard of Superman breaking his word? Well, no, no, of course not. You've been a tremendous help to the police. Then what do you say? Okay. Good boy, Sergeant. Come on down to the cell block with me. Right. Come on, Hogan. Get that cell door open. There's something wrong with the lock, Sergeant. You've been meaning to report it, but... <coughs> you dread it. Key broke off in the lock. Oh, great. Now what do we do? It'll be an hour before we can get a locksmith here. Just my luck. Relax, Sam. I'll have you out in a jiffy. Mind if I bend a couple of these bars, Sergeant? I'll bend them back as soon as Sam steps out. Bend the bars? Oh, yes. Quite simple. <laughs> See? Leap and mackerel. Oh, you bent them iron bars like they was pretty. Well, come on, Sam. Don't stand there with your mouth open. Move. Sorry, that trick kind of floored me. Me too. Now, I'll just bend these bars back like this. Say, <laughs> alive, he did it again. Okay, let's go, Sam. <laughs> Leaving state police headquarters, Superman picks Sam Robbins up in his arms. Then, up, up, and away! <laughs> Leaping high into the air, the Man of Steel rockets across the great city to the Metropolis Hospital, where he sets Sam Robbins down and disappears. A few minutes later, once more in his guise and garb of Clark Kent, he noiselessly enters the room where Joe Martin lies. His voice weak and babbling... Joe speaks to Sam Robbins, who sits at the bedside, tears streaming unashamedly down his cheeks. Dr. Mitchell motions for Kent to approach. A nurse stands by alertly. You're, you're here, aren't you, Sam? You're, you're here, beside me. Sure, Joe. Sure, sure, I'm right here. Those, those jabs and those mortars. I, I thought you were going to get it that time. Those nips get me? What's the matter with you, Joe? You know they haven't got our numbers. No, I... I guess not. I guess... He, he yeah. thinks we're back on Iwo Jima. We got cut off there on the beach, just the two of us. And some Jap mortars had us spotted and were heaving them over. Joe got hit in the leg and he couldn't run, so... I... Well... I had to go go in after those chaps. Well, it wasn't anything. Oh, no? No, no. Joe thought, sure, I got it, and that's... Sam! Sam! Yeah. Yeah, Sam. yeah Joe, I'm here. Oh. I... I'm sleepy. I... I think I'll take a nap. He'll... He'll stick around, won't you? Yeah, sure. You oh. go to sleep, kid. I'll be right here. Uh, yeah. Doctor! Doc! Joe's gone! No, he's not. He's lost consciousness again, but as a matter of fact, his pulse is stronger than it was before. Oh, you mean it, Doc? You're not kidding me. Yes, I mean it. Your visit has helped him tremendously. I can't say for certain yet, but I really think he has a good chance to recover. Now. Oh, that's wonderful, Doctor. He better recover. He better. If he doesn't, I swear I'll get the guy who shot him. I swear I will if I have to come back from the grave to do it. Easy, sir. Easy. I'll have to ask you gentlemen to leave now. I'll take you to the door. Okay. Come on, Sam. I know, Mr. Kent. Back to jail. Yes, but just for a little while. Yeah, you hope. <laughs> Clark Kent escorts Sam Robbins back to jail, then leaves to resume his search for the unknown person who shot Joe Martin. A much different scene is taking place in the governor's office at the state capitol building. There, immaculately groomed, a fresh pink carnation in his buttonhole, big George Latimer, the state political boss, removes the cigar from his mouth and smiles at Governor Frank Wheeler. What are you looking so worried about, Frank? <laughs> Everything's going fine. Fine? Are you kidding? No, of course not. Well, you must be. Have you forgotten that veterans' demonstration here yesterday? Have you forgotten that one of the veterans, Joe Martin, was shot on the Capitol steps? Of course I haven't forgotten. 
That's why I say everything's going fine. I don't understand. Look, the veterans are a nuisance because they want jobs. We don't want to give them any. You mean you don't? You handle the patrons. All right, I don't. Because those jobs are for the party boys. Fellows who get the voters to the poll and get them to vote our way. Those are the fellows who got you elected governor, Frank. I know. What are you driving at? Just this. We don't have to worry anymore about the veterans putting up a stink. They fixed themselves yesterday. Fixed themselves? How? When Sam Robbins shot Joe Martin. You see, Robbins is a fireman. No, he isn't. He's an American citizen. He fought in the war. Even got a couple of decorations. So what? He's a Jew, isn't he? Well, yes, but... To us, he's a foreigner. So are a lot of other veterans at that demonstration. Catholics and hunkies and Italians and Negroes. Dirty foreigners, all of them. That's not true, George, and you know it. Of course it's not true. Plenty of suckers believe it, and that's all we care about. So we show them a Jew who shoots his best friend who's a Protestant. That's the kind of guy who wants a state job for himself and for other foreigners like him. But Sam Robbins doesn't want a state job. Plenty of newspapers who think our way, like the Daily Clarion, say Robbins does want a state job. That is the leader of these foreign veteran punks. That makes the job hunting veterans look bad. We don't have to worry about them anymore. You get it? Yes, I think I do. It's kind of dirty, George. Dirty? No, it's just my politics. <laughs> Relax, Frank. All your troubles are over. Yes? What is it, Briggs? Excuse me, sir, but this telephone message just came from Mr. Latimer. Party said it was urgent. Me? Let's have it, Rick. Here you are, sir. Will that be all? Yes, yes, sir. Good Lord. No. What is it, George? Bad news, Frank. Bad news for me and for you. His florid face paling, big George Latimer reads the message again, as if hoping his eyes deceived him. What is in the message? We'll be back in a moment to find out. So stand by. Say, gang, isn't it swell to know that you can collect not just one prize, but 49 different top-notch prizes right in packages of Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal? Sure, you'll find a prize in every package. And there are three different kinds of prizes you may find there. For instance, uh, you may find one of 18 different comic strip buttons, each picturing a favorite comic strip character. Or uh, you may find a colored cardboard model of a fighting plane, one of seven exciting plane models in the series. Or uh, you may get a beautiful full-color bird picture from a series of 24, each with a description so that you can make like you're a bird expert from way back. That makes 49 different prizes you can collect. And that's only a part of the fun in Kellogg's Pet. Think of the good eating fun in those crisp whole wheat flakes, all crammed with keen, catchy flavor. I mean, Pep's delicious, a prize in itself. Yes, sir, a dish of Pep the Sunshine cereal is strictly on the terrific side. So... Speak to Mom about it today. Ask her to get you a supply of Kellogg's Pep from the grocer first thing tomorrow. And remember, look for your prize inside each package of Pep. In Governor Wheeler's office in the state capitol, a message has just been delivered to Big George Latimer, the state political boss. Latimer pales as he reads it. This is bad news, Frank. Bad news for me and for you. Well, what is it, George? In the Metropolis Hospital told them to keep me posted in Joe Martin's condition. They say Martin's passed the crisis and should recover. Well, that's fine. Why do you call it bad news? You fool. Didn't I just tell you the only way we can get those veteran punks off our necks is by making them look bad? Why, why yes, but, well, they still look bad, don't they? Robin shot Martin, and even if Martin recovered... You say Robin didn't shoot him. But, but, I thought you said you saw him pull a gun and it was found in his house. So what? Wait a minute, Ed. Do you mean you didn't see him pull a gun? What's the difference whether I saw him or not? I said so, didn't I? Everybody believed it. It's bad, Frank. We've got to do something. Do it fast. But quiet. Got to think. Yeah. I've got it. Get Briggs in here. Hurry. His pale, malicious eyes gleaming, Big George Latimer paces the governor's office. He formulates a swift and evil plan to strike against decency. What does he intend to do? And how will it affect our friends? Tomorrow's episode is tense with action and excitement, gang. So don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pet. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. <laughs> 
Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Hey, gang, here's a winner in your list of famous names. It's Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Kellogg, as in Kellogg shredded wheat. What a treat for breakfast. Plump tender biscuits of whole wheat toasted just right. Full of natural nut sweet flavor, too. And are they crisp? And here's what else you get in Kellogg's shredded wheat. Grand whole wheat nutrition. Biscuits made to fit the bowl. And 15. 15 biscuits in every package. Tell Mom you'd like Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P E P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents the adventures of Superman. <laughs> Today, while the Man of Steel proceeds toward proving Sam Robbins' innocence, crooked political boss Big George Latimer learns to his unhappy amazement that Joe Martin may recover. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, uh, which would you rather collect? Model airplanes, full-color pictures of birds... Or comic buttons to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. Well, you don't have to choose between them. No, sir. From now on, you can collect all three kinds of those swell prizes. Because right in your next package of Kellogg's Pet, the Sunshine Cereal, you'll find either a colored cardboard model of a famous fighting plane, one of seven in the great Pep air fleet, or you'll find one of 24 beautiful color pictures of birds with a full description so you can identify these birds anywhere. Or uh, you'll find one of a grand series of 18 colored comic buttons with characters straight out of the funnies. There's one or the other of these keen prizes in every package of Pep. Just as if Pep's golden Christmas and, and sunny flavor were to prize all by themselves. Why, Pep's so strictly terrific tasting that a bowl of those crunchy golden whole wheat flakes makes breakfast a regular fun feast. You get that catchy Pep flavor and bingo, your spoon just naturally dips down on your dish for more. So for an all-round prize breakfast dish, ask Mom to get you a supply of Kellogg's Pep first thing tomorrow. Now the adventures of Superman. Sam Robbins, a war veteran, has been accused of shooting Joe Martin, another veteran, and his best friend during a G.I. demonstration against Governor Wheeler, whom the veterans charged with practicing racial and religious discrimination and awarding state jobs. Although strong circumstantial evidence has been produced against Sam... Clark Kent believes he is the victim of a sinister plot by persons as yet unknown. Big George Latimer, the state political boss, who had first directed suspicion against Sam, became concerned when he learned that Joe Martin might recover and deny that Sam Robbins had shot him. And so, as we continue now, Lippy Williams, police reporter for the Metropolis Clarion, a sensational scandal newspaper, has arrived at the governor's office in response to an urgent summons from Latimer. As Governor Wheeler fidgets nervously in his chair... Big George Latimer addresses Williams. Listen. I'll get this, Lippy. Here's the line I want you to take in the clarion. Play it for all it's worth. Sam Robbins, a veteran, shot Joe Martin, another veteran, because he wanted to make trouble for the government. Now, wait a minute, You stay Joe. out of this, please, Frank. I know what I'm doing. You follow me, Lippy? Yeah, you said Robbins shot Martin to make trouble for the governor, but I don't get it. Robbins figured the state troopers, whom the governor ordered to disperse the G.I.s, would be blamed for the shooting. It took place while the troopers were firing over the men's heads. So the rap would be pinned on Frank here, the governor. See? Sure, I see that. But why should Robbins want to make trouble for Governor Wheeler? Because Robbins is a foreigner. And that's what the foreigners want. To stir up a lot of trouble and then start a revolution to change the government. Oh, you know that isn't true, George. Will you stay out of this, Frank? Of course it isn't true. But if we make enough people believe it... Just a minute, Mr. Latimer. You said Sam Robbins was a foreigner, but you're wrong. He was born right here in Metropolis. So what? He's a Jew, isn't he? Sure, but that's only his religion. That doesn't make him a foreigner. Well, that's what I've been trying to tell George. What's the matter with you two? Where are your brains? Now, look, George, I have several Jewish Shut friends. Up. Lippy. 
You're doing all right on the clarion, aren't you? Me? Sure, I'm doing swell. Some of the boys at the newspaper club look the other way when I come in because they don't like the smell of the clarion, but I don't care. I make more dough than most of them. And you want to go on making that dough, don't you? What are you driving at, Mr. Latimer? Just this. I have a great deal of influence at the clarion. Sure, I know you have. And if I wanted to have you fired tomorrow, I could. I guess you could. So what? So I'm just reminding you that you're here to listen to me. Not to put up any arguments. Okay by me, Mr. Latimer. It's no skin off me what you say about the Jews or anybody else. I was just pointing out the facts. Never mind the facts. I say the Jews are foreigners. And so are the Catholics and the Negroes. Everybody else who isn't a native-born white Protestant. That's clear? <laughs> You sound like those guys who run around in sheets and hoods, but like I say, it's no skin off me. Only, uh, what's the reason for all this, Mr. Latimer? He wants to smear the veterans who are applying for state jobs by claiming they're led by what he calls foreigners. That's right. By fellows like Sam Robbins, who shoot their best friend to get what they want. Oh, so that's the gimmick. You want to get these job-hunting veterans off your neck so you can go on passing out all the soft jobs to your boys. That's none of your business, Lippy. Oh. Oh, that's why, uh... That's uh, enough. Hmm? Oh, the governor isn't in on that. Huh? I'm not in on what? Look here. What are you two hiding from me? Nothing, Frank. I don't believe it. You admitted to me that you didn't see Sam Robbins pull a gun during the demonstration last night. But you told the police he did. And now Robbins is in jail. If Martin dies, Robbins will be tried for murder. That's just the trouble. Martin may pull through. Say Robbins didn't shoot him. That's why I want the clarion to go to town on this story. I want Robbins so dirtied up and all the other foreigners with him that even if Joe Martin does recover and says Robbins didn't shoot him, nobody will believe him. Now, wait. I get it. You want Robbins tried on the front page of the clarion and condemned before Joe Martin can get into the witness box and clear him. Now you're using your head. I refuse to be a party to a rotten deal like that. You listen to me, George Latimer. You may have been instrumental in having me elected governor. May have been. All right, your political machine did elect I elected you. And I can break you. Don't forget that. What do you mean? Just try stepping on my toes and you'll find out what I mean. Okay, Lippy. Get going. I want a story on the first page of the claim that'll set this state on its ears. I'll give it to you if it's okay with my boss. Don't worry about your boss. He'll do what I say. I'm on my way. So long, fellas. Come into my office, Ken. I want to talk to you. Okay, Chief. Did you see the latest edition of the Clarion? No, no, I didn't. I've been too busy. What now? Oh, here. Read it. Thanks. Joe Martin shooting a foreign plot. Radical veterans led by Sam Robbins schemed to force resignation of courageous Governor Wheeler. Well, of all the... Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. Say it. Of all the dirty, lying, yellow journalism, this takes the case. Yes, it certainly does. Oh, great Scott, Chief, calling Sam a foreigner, implying he shot Joe Martin as part of a foreign plot against our government, that'll stir up public opinion against Sam. And against all the other veterans who want state jobs. Oh, there's more to it than that, Chief. What do you mean? Well, in the first place, the Clarion is practicing an old and rotten strategy to try an accused man in the press before his trial in court comes up so that the public and prospective jurors are prejudiced. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes, and also, this looks to me like a deliberate attempt to fan the flames of religious and racial hatred. Clarion makes a great point here, the fact that Sam Robbins is a Jew and Joe Martin a Protestant. No, I think that's only incidental. No, I don't. Matter of fact, I think that... Great Scott. Well, what now? I just remembered something. Something that may be very important. Well, what? Look, Chief, I was supposed to meet Ben Thompson, the lawyer we hired to defend Sam Robbins, at State Police Headquarters. Yes? Please call him, will you, and tell him I'll be late. As a matter of fact, I may not be there at all. Well, why not? No, 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 wait a minute. Where are you going? The Clarion just gave me a lead. It may clean up this whole dirty mess before any more harm is done. Uh, but wait. Uh, well, Hold on, Chief. I'll see you later. Leaving it at the Perry White, shouting after him, Clark Kent hurries through the Daily Planet City room to the elevators. What is the important clue he says he has just found? We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. Hey, gang, from me to you, here's a tip. Whatever you do, give yourself plenty of time in the morning for breakfast so you don't have to rush eating your Kellogg's Pep. Why, it's so good that you want to get the full golden toasted flavor in every spoonful. Yes, sir, you don't want to skip one bit of fun of eating those crisp, catchy flakes of whole wheat. So tomorrow morning... Just hitch up your chair and settle down to some mighty smooth eating with Pep, the sunshine cereal. Is it delicate and light? Does it taste terrific? 
And you get a swell surprise when you see the nifty prize in each pet package. A real surprise of a prize. Could be you'll find a model fighting plane in colored cardboard, one of seven great pet planes you can collect. Or it could be you'll find one of 24 new full-color bird pictures with a description on the reverse side so you can identify these birds in the air. Or uh, could be your next pet prize will be one of 18 bright-colored comic buttons sporting a, a famous comic strip character like Orphan Annie or, or Moon Mullins or Superman himself. So start collecting all three kinds of those keen pet prizes. Ask Mom to get you a supply of Kellogg's Pep from the grocer tomorrow. <laughs> An American Legion post not far from the Daily Planet building. A hundred recently returned veterans of World War II are holding an angry meeting. Most of them had participated in the protest demonstration at the state capitol the preceding night. Now two of them, Eddie Kane and Bob Sloan, are on the platform. Kane holds a copy of the Metropolis Clarion aloft as he addresses his fellows. What's cooking now, Eddie? You all saw what the Clarion says about Sam Robbins and about us, didn't you? The Clarion says Sam is a foreigner. And it says most of us who were at the Capitol last night are foreigners. Tell us, Dad! I hope that story was right here at home when Sam and the rest of us were doing his fighting. Are we going to let them say this about us? No! Are we going to let them railroad Sam to the chair when we all know he didn't shoot Joe Martin? All you guys feel that way about it? Yeah! Okay. What are we going to do about it? We're doing plenty. You said it. Same thing the G.I. did in Tennessee with those dirty politicians down there trying to push them around. Yeah, now you're talking. Wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute. I guess we all feel the same way about this. So I move we march down to the state police barracks, all of us, and take Sam out of jail. Leaping from their chairs, the veterans fall into columns of four march out of the Legion post behind Eddie Kane and Bob Sloan and head for the barracks of the state police. Marching proudly, fully a hundred grim-faced veterans march on toward the jail. And as they march, a flash of what is afoot comes over the teletype in the state capitol building and is immediately rushed to the office of Governor Wheeler, who reads it and pales. Quickly, he reaches for his telephone, dials the private number of Big George Latimer. George, the veterans are marching on the state police barracks. What? Yes, I got the flash on the teletype from headquarters. They must be going to release Sam Robbins. What'll I do, George? What'll I do? Do? Why, nothing, of course. Nothing? What do you mean? There'll be a riot. Men will be killed. Sure they will. That's fine. Fine? George, are you crazy? Not at all. This is going to work out even better than I expected. What? <laughs> that clarion story must have done the trick. But, but George... Listen, Frank. Use your head. Veterans have taken the law into their own hands. That proves what we said in the clarion. And they're hotheads. Led by foreigners. Want to make trouble. Oh, you mean... I mean that after tonight, we'll never have to worry about these veteran punks again. Or about Sam Robbins, either. (laughs) This is wonderful, Frank. Wonderful. (laughs) Chuckling, Big George Latimer, state political boss and man of hate assures Governor Wheeler that the veterans who want only justice are cooking their own goose. And cooking it better than Latimer could ever cook it for them. What will happen at the state police barracks while Clark Kent, unaware of this latest and dangerous development, pursues a newly found clue which he hopes will clear Sam Robbins. Tomorrow's episode is swift and exciting, so don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, I know you know loads of famous names. So you're sure to know Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. But do you know that swell breakfast treat, Kellogg Shredded Wheat? It's delicious. You see, Kellogg picks out finest whole wheat, toasts it to natural nut sweet goodness. Kellogg packs 15, 15 tender plump biscuits in every package. And Kellogg sees to it that you get the grand nutrition of whole wheat in biscuits made to fit the bowl. 
Ask Mom to get you some Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P, 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 Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman. in answer to the Clarion's page one blast that attempts to make ex-G.I. Sam Robbins appear to be leader of a communist plot. The violently incited mob of veterans march to police barracks to free their pal from jail. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, um, how many of the 49 different prizes have you collected from packages of Kellogg's Pet? Yes, sir. I said 49 different prizes. There's one in every package of pep you open. And there are three different kinds of prizes you may find there. For instance, uh, how you coming along with your collection of pep comic buttons? There were 18, you know, in the series, each picturing a favorite comic strip character to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. And how about those bright-colored bird pictures? There are 24 to collect, each with a full description, so you can wise up the gang on birds. And uh, have you rounded up all seven of those colored cardboard plane models? Each one's a model of a famous fighting plane. All in all, that makes 49 different prizes you can collect. One in every package of Pep, the sunshine cereal. And meanwhile, you can be enjoying breakfast with those crisp golden whole wheat flakes of Pep. Mm -mm. How Pep does make with a flavor. A catchy, fresh flavor. A sunny, toasted flavor. In short, a Pep flavor. And it really sends you. So for prize eating and your surprise prize, ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep tomorrow. Now, the adventures of Superman. As you remember, Joe Martin, a war hero, was mysteriously shot during a veteran's demonstration against Governor Wheeler, whom the ex-GIs charged with practicing racial and religious discrimination in awarding state jobs. Big George Latimer, the state political boss, said he had seen Joe's best friend, Sam Robbins, draw a gun during the demonstration. This gun, identified as the one with which Joe had been shot, was later found in the Robbins' house. Sam was arrested, and the Metropolis Clarion, a scandal-mongering newspaper and Latimer's mouthpiece, immediately released a story to the effect that Sam had shot Joe as part of a plot to make trouble for the governor. Enraged, hundreds of his buddies marched on the jail to liberate Sam. Meanwhile, unaware of this development, Clark Kent is in the modest Robin's home interviewing Sam's mother. It is twilight. Listen. They've got no right to say my Sam shot Joe Martin. Why, Sam and Joe brought the world of each other, Mr. Kent. I know. Since they were six years old, they've been friends. Sam would do anything for Joe, anything. I believe you, Mr. Robbins. And in that newspaper, it said Sam was a foreigner. That's a lie, Mr. Kent. You know that's a lie. Don't pay any attention to what the clarion said, Mrs. Robbins. We all know Sam is a loyal American. Just the victim of a plot to discredit him and others of his faith, as well as all the veterans who demonstrated against the governor. A plot? Uh Uh-huh. What kind of a plot? Well, at the moment, we're not quite sure, but we have our suspicions. You may be able to help us pin it down. I? Mm -hmm. How can I help? Try to remember. Joe Martin was shot about 5.30 yesterday afternoon. Sam stopped here at the house about 6 on his way to the hospital. Is that right? Yes, that's right. But he didn't stop to hide a gun like the newspaper said. Oh, no. He wanted to get the money he saved in the army to help Joe. Yes, I know that. At any rate, Sam was here about 6. Now, what time did the state troopers come here and find the gun? About half an hour. Maybe three quarters of an hour later. I know it wasn't 7 o'clock yet, because... Well, never mind that. Uh, but between the time Sam was here and the state troopers came, were you alone? Yes, I was alone. Did you have any visitors? No. Oh, wait. What? That friend of Sam's. He was only here a few minutes, so... What friend of Sam's? I don't remember his name. Think, Mrs. Robbins. Think hard. Well, I think he said it was Charlie, but I'm not sure. He said he knew Sam and Joe in the army. Just got out of the army and he wanted to see Sam. Mm-hmm. Did he come into the house? He came in for just a minute. I gave him a cup of tea and some cake. I see. Uh, tell me, did he go into the kitchen with you or, or did he wait here in the living room while you prepared the tea and cake? Now, let me think. Is that important, Mr. Kent? It might be. Can you remember? Yes. He stayed in here, in the living room. Mm-hmm. 
About how long, Mrs. Robbins? Not long. Just while I heated the water and arranged the tray. Well, uh, five or ten minutes, say? Not anymore. Why are you asking all these questions, Mr. Kent? Five or ten minutes, eh? Plenty of time to get upstairs, discover which room was Sam's, and slip the gun into a bureau drawer. What? Oh, no, he couldn't. Why, he said he was a friend of Sam's. They were in the army together. Yes, so he said. What did this fellow look like? He was about medium height, thin. Mm -hmm. He had on a blue suit. He was kind of light-complected and... Yes? And his mouth. I thought maybe it was because he was wounded in the war. It was kind of... Pulled up on one side. Lippy Williams. Who? Lippy Williams, a reporter for the Daily Clarion. You've described him to a T. I wouldn't put a thing like this past him either. And the Clarion has been playing up this story to a fairly well, practically trying and condemning Sam in their paper. But why? He never did anything to them. Well, if I'm right, if it was Williams who planted the gun here, I think I can guess why. But first, I've got to prove it was he. Now, look, Mrs. Robbins, don't mention this to anyone, please. Mom, got... they're going to get Sam out of jail. What? Who is? Federal. Oh, I, I didn't know anybody was... No, here. no, it, it's all right, son. I'm Clark Kent. I... Mr. Kent is trying to help Sam. This is my younger son, Lenny. Oh, yes, how are you, Lenny? Hello. Uh, what's this about Sam getting out of jail? Well, the boys from Sam and Joe's Legion post about a hundred of them. They're marching to the jail. They're going to bust down the doors and get Sam out. Oh, no. They might even have him out already. Is, is it good for them to do that, no, Mr. Kent? No, 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 it's bad. It's about the worst possible thing the veterans could do for Sam or for themselves. Look, I, I'm going to try to stop them. You two stay here. I'll see you later. <laughs> Hurrying from the Robbins' house, Clark Kent steps into a shadowed alleyway, strips off his business suit, and takes to the air as Superman. Up! Up! And away! Red tape streaming in the wind, the Man of Steel flashes across the great city, appears over the gray stone barracks of the state police, just as a mob of angry, shouting G.I. veterans are massing for a rush on the central building housing the jail. Lined across the shallow steps, their backs to the jail doors, Stand a dozen uniformed state troopers, guns in hand. The grim-faced sergeant stands a step above them, ready to give the order to fire, as the mass of veterans, like a great wave, suddenly surges across a few dozen yards, separating them from the jail. Hey, follow me! Just take this place like we took up an hour! Wait! Just a minute, boys! Just a moment! Don't let your troopers fire, sergeant. Hey, look, Wait, fellow! Hey. Wait, I said! Listen to me! Hey, it's Superman! Superman! Yeah. Superman. Right. Now, look, you boys have the wrong idea. We don't settle our quarrels in this country by taking the law into our own hands. You know that. That's what you fought the war for, to preserve respect for law and order. What law? Sam Robbins never shot Joe Biden. Oh, you're right. And we'll prove he didn't. In the court. Governor Wheeler laughs at the court. Listen, listen to me. Two wrongs don't make a right. Besides, you fellas are handling this wrong. You're playing right into the governor's hands. Don't you see that? What do you mean? How? You've already been called foreigners. Yeah, because we have the guts to stand up our right. All right, all right. Listen to me. If you attack the jail, you'll be committing a crime against the government. Public opinion will turn against you. The people will believe you're being led by radicals and foreigners. That's what certain people are trying to do, discredit you. So they can go on discriminating against you. Don't you see that? Well, I've got to sure. As plain as a nose on your face. Go home now, please. Don't resort to violence. What about Sam Robbins? Why not going to let the governor railroad him to the chair? Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Sam won't be railroaded to the chair. Joe Martin has a good chance of recovering. As soon as he's able to talk, he'll clear Sam. Oh, well, Joe dies. Then what? Yeah, what about uh, how Even about... in that case, I can promise you that Sam won't be made to pay for a crime he did not commit if you'll cooperate with me and do this in the American way. But if you don't, you'll only discredit Sam and yourselves and further the cause of intolerance. So break this up. Go home now, please. Go home quietly. <laughs> Soberly, the crowd of G.I. veterans listen to Superman's plea, then turn slowly and begin to disperse. The Man of Steel breathes a sigh of relief as he watches them go. But unknown to him, a new and even greater threat is being prepared against Sam Robinson, the men who fought for a better world. We'll be back in a moment to find out what that threat is. So stand by. You know, gang, with school started and all, it's a, it's a good idea to go in for a real bang-up breakfast. Because if you don't eat right in the morning, how can you have fun at your work and, and take in more fun after school besides? So, tomorrow morning, just get next to a dish of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. See how those crisp, tender flakes of whole wheat tickle your taste. Put you in the mood to eat hearty. Take in that sunny, catchy Pep flavor, all golden toasted. 
why you'll say Pep's one prize of a dish. Or you might say Pep's a 49 prize dish. Because there are 49 different prizes you can get in packages of Pep. One in every single package. For instance, you can collect seven exciting colored cardboard models of fighting planes. Easy and fun to assemble. And uh, you can collect a great new series of 24 bird pictures each with a full description to help you identify these birds in the air. And then there are those 18 bright-colored comic buttons, each with a famous comic strip character to, to pin on your beanie cap or your jacket. So get busy collecting all three kinds of those wonderful prizes. Ask Mom to get you a package of Kellogg's Pep next time she goes shopping. In the library of Big George Latimer's palatial home, the state political boss has just learned that the veterans did not storm the state police barracks. His scowl deepens as Lippy Williams, star reporter for the Metropolis Clarion, says... It's a lucky thing those G.I. stopped in time, Mr. Latimer. Lucky? Are you kidding? I was hoping they'd go through with it. We couldn't have gotten a better break. How come? Public opinion. Those vets would have been marked lousy if they broke into that jail. Maybe, but it might have exploded the powder keg you're sitting on. What powder keg? Look, those stories you had me writing the Clarion smearing Sam Robbins and what you call foreigners, they've stirred up a lot of crackpots. You should see some of the letters and telegrams that came in. What sort of letters? Well, the usual stuff. Down with the Jews, down with the Catholics, down with everything. And wait until the mail comes in from upstate where they hate everybody who didn't come over on the Mayflower. They'll flood the office. They will, eh? Well, sure. Oh, some of those nuts up there need is a couple of juicy stories like we've given them in the clarion, and they're off to the races yelling for blood. Foreigners' blood. That's why I say you're lucky the G.I. stab at the jail was called off. So they want fire in his blood upstate, do they? And how? Oh, they're fanatical nuts. During the war, they organized German bunds. Now they hate anyone whose name isn't Smith. Of course, it's none of my business, but... Just a minute, Levy. Connect me with the governor, please. This is George Latimer. Hello, Frank? Listen, I'm quite worried about that business at the police barracks this evening. Yes, I know the veterans didn't go through with it this time. But they might. The next time. I think you'd better have Robbins moved out of Metropolis. Where? Well, I think an upstate jail would be the safest place. Oh, no, I said upstate. You've got to take care of him, you know. Make sure no harm comes to him. Hey, no, don't do that. Get one of the judges to transfer him, Frank. Don't delay. It might look bad for you if anything happened to one of our war veterans. Fine. Good night, Frank. You can't move Robbins upstate, Mr. Latimer. You know what'll happen? No, what? Those nuts up there will lynch him. Will they? His cold, beady eyes gleaming beneath fat, drooping lids. Big George Latimer smiles knowingly and leans back in his chair. That would be unfortunate, wouldn't it, Lippy? Unfortunate for Sam Robbins. Gang, tomorrow's episode is packed with suspense. So don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is the copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, when you line up all the famous names you know, you'll find Kellogg mighty near the top. That's Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. And here are some of the good things Kellogg packs into each plump, tender biscuit of Kellogg shredded wheat. Flavor, natural nut sweet flavor, toasted just right. Nutrition, fine whole wheat nourishment. And for economy, Kellogg packs 15, 15 biscuits in every package. They're made to fit the bowl. Try them soon. You'll like Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Bloodshed. Hello there, gang. This is your pal, Dan McCullough. 
Say, uh, which is it? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a button? You never can tell for sure until you open your package of Kellogg's Pep and see which one of those three kinds of prizes you'll get. So, every prize is always an exciting surprise. It might be a beautiful full-color bird picture from a series of 24, each with a description on the reverse side so you can name and know any of these birds around. Or uh, it might be a model of a fighting plane, one of seven thrilling plane models in the series, all made of colored cardboard and easy to assemble. Or uh, your next pet prize might be one of Pep's 18 slick comic buttons, picturing one of your favorite comic strip characters to, to pin on your beanie cap or your jacket. And speaking of characters, you will be a mighty happy character yourself when you dig into your bowl of Kellogg's Pep. Because every spoonful of these crisp whole wheat flakes tickles your taste with its keen sunshine flavor. Every bowl full is a treat. Every dish of pep just about doubles the fun of breakfast. So get going, gang. Ask Mom for Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, and see whether the prize inside your package is a bird, a plane, or a button. And now the adventures of Superman. When Joe Martin, a war hero, was mysteriously shot during a veteran's demonstration against Governor Wheeler, whom the G.I.s charged with practicing racial and religious discrimination, Big George Latimer, the state political boss, virtually accused Sam Robbins, Joe's best friend, of firing the shot. When the gun was found in Sam's house, Latimer used the pages of the scandal-mongering Metropolis Clarion to whip up public opinion against Sam and the veterans, implying they were foreigners trying to overthrow the government. Enraged, the G.I.s set out to liberate Sam from the state police jail, but were stopped by Superman. Latimer then phoned Governor Wheeler and asked him to arrange for Sam's transfer to an upstate jail. And as we continue now in Latimer's library, Lippy Williams, star reporter for the Clarion, gasps. Do you know what you've done? You've just signed Sam Robbins' death warrant, Mr. Latimer. On the contrary, Lippy. These veterans might try to storm the police jail again. And if they do, they'll be shooting. Robbins and many others may be hurt. So I think it's best to get him out of Metropolis and upstate where it'll be safe. Safe? I just finished telling you that section is a hotbed of religious prejudice. So what? So you're sending Sam Robbins into a lion's den, that's what. His life won't be worth a nickel up there. Nonsense. He'll be in a good, strong jail. Nothing can happen. To him. Are you kidding? The Clarion is a big sale upstate, and those stories we've been running, calling Robbins a foreign radical and practically saying he shot Joe Martin, those stories will have those fanatical nuts up there howling for his blood. They won't let a little thing like a jail stand in their way. Oh, I think you're exaggerating, Lippy. No, I'm not. I know you're deliberately sending Sam Robbins up there to be lynched. Oh, wait a minute. You don't have to play games with me. You know that if Joe Martin recovers, and it looks like he will, he'll say Robbins didn't shoot him. Look okay. here. Then where will you be with your charges that Robbins shot Martin as part of a plot to make trouble for the governor and take over the state? And where will you be with your charges that all the vets at the mass meeting were radical? They are. They're foreigners. Nuts! Just because a man goes to a different church from yours doesn't make him a foreigner, and you know it. But you figure if you can brand them all foreigners and radicals, you won't have to give them state jobs. You can keep the jobs for your party ward healers. That's quite a speech, Lippy. Are you through? Not quite. You're making a big mistake, and I want to save your hide. Nice of you. No. Oh, just financially profitable. Now, look. You figure if you can get rid of Robbins, there won't be a trial to backfire in your face in the governor's. It won't come out that you framed Robbins so you could smear the G.I. Who framed Robbins? You did. You and me. Remember? You can't prove I had anything to do with it. Oh, yes, I can, if I have to. Just remember that in case you ever get any bright ideas about crossing me up. I don't like your tone, William. You mean you don't like me because I keep my eye on the scoreboard. Well, that's okay. I don't like you either. I'm in your bandwagon because it pays off and I like the feel of the green stuff in my pocket. That's why I want to save you from kicking over the apple cart. What do you mean? I mean, if you send Sam Robbins upstate and something happens to him, you won't only have the Metropolis veterans on your neck, you'll have veterans all over the state after your scout. Nonsense. Nobody cares what happens to a dirty foreigner, except other foreigners. That's where you're wrong. The guys who fought in the war learned that it doesn't make any difference to a bomb what church you went to or what color your skin is. That's sentimental rubbish. Some of the boys may have felt that way during the war, but the war is over. They still feel that way. Take my word for it. You're going to make a big mistake if you go through with this scheme. Just a minute. Hello? Who? Oh, oh, yes, yes, Briggs. The governor said what? Oh, he did arrange to send Robbins upstate, huh? To the jail at Grand City. I see. Uh-oh. Uh, tell me, Briggs, uh, how was Robbins being transferred? By... Oh, by car, huh? I think that's a very good idea. In fact, that's attention. 
Well, thank you for calling me, Briggs, and uh, give the governor my regards. Right. Goodbye. So you've got it all set, huh? Robbins is going to Grand City, and you found out they're taking him by car. Now, listen, Williams. Let me see. They might go out of Metropolis two or three ways, but they'll have to hit Highway 120 just below Lordville. Well, I can see there's no use my trying to argue you out of this, so I'll be toddling along. Now, wait a minute. Where are you going? To Lordville, of course. What for? I smell a story, and I'm a newspaper reporter. Remember? I don't want you to go to Lordville. Mm-hmm. You can't talk me out of it, pal. Oh, I guess not. Really doesn't make any difference anyhow. I was just going to say that I, uh... I happen to have some business at Grant City. You're telling me. And I'll take you along in my car, if you like. I can drop you off at Lordville. Oh, swell. Let's go. In a moment, I'll have to make a phone call first. You just wait for me in the living room. Okay, but hurry it up. Long distance, please. Uh, long distance. I want to call Lordville. Yes, who's this? George Latimer. Oh, Mr. Latimer. Say, some of the boys and I were just talking about you. What kind of a city do you live in, anyhow? Metropolis, what do you mean? Well, it's some city where a dirty foreigner can shoot an American boy, a veteran at that, and get away with it. Oh, you mean the Robbins case? That's what I mean. I'd like to see the dirty foreigner try anything like that around this part of the state, or even show his big nose up here. We know how to take care of scum like that. <laughs> You're sure if I really, Dan. Good thing the governor asked the police to put Robinson cold storage in the jail at Grant City instead of Lordville. Grant City? What do you mean? Some of Robinson's GI friends started to storm the state police jail early this evening. The governor decided Robinson would be safer in the Grant City jail. So a couple of troopers are driving him up here tonight. Mm, they are, huh? Tonight? Yeah. They just left, as a matter of fact. But the uh, reason I called you, Dean, is the elections are getting pretty close, you know, and your district is important. I've got to know that you've got it sewed up. Well, you don't have to worry about my district, Mr. Latimer. It'll vote the way you want it to. Oh, that's fine. I expect to be up your way in a week or two, and I'll call you. You do that, Mr. Latimer. Well, good night, Dean. Good night. Driving him up tonight, are they? That's fine. That's just dandy. Couldn't have planned it any better myself. Hello? Mark, this is Dean Carter. Listen, you know about that Sam Robbins in Metropolis? The guy who shot the war veteran yesterday? I'll say I do. I was just reading the clarion. That Robbins is a lousy foreigner and a radical, too. That's right. Now listen. A couple of state troopers are driving Robbins up to the jail at Grant City tonight. They are? Yeah. They just left Metropolis, so they ought to come through Lordville in about an hour. Uh-huh. Now listen. I'll call Eddie and Bill, and you call Mac and Red and maybe Harry Thomas. Tell them we'll meet behind Max Barn, where the highway detour is, in uh, half an hour. Okay? I'll say it's okay. We'll fix that rat. You bet we'll fix him. Now get busy, Mart. I'll see you in half an hour. Behind Max Barn. <laughs> half an hour, Lord Bill's men of hate will gather in the dark to await Sam Robinson. What will happen? We'll know in a moment when we return for the startling climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, when a fellow or girl feels like tearing into a good day of work or play, it's almost a sure bet there's a good hearty breakfast somewhere in the picture. And did I mention Kellogg's Pep? Why, Pep is such an appetite tickler that it makes you want to eat hearty. Are those crunchy whole wheat flakes terrific? Mm-mm. That sunshine flavor, that strictly pep flavor, is sure lure for your taste. You know, Kellogg's Pep is called the sunshine cereal. It's famous for crisp, golden, sunny goodness. And Pep is famous, too, for swell prizes. Yes, sir, there's a prize in every package of Pep you open. For instance, uh, your next prize may be one of 18 bright-colored comic buttons with pictures of your favorite comic strip characters to, to pin on your beanie cap or your jacket. Or, uh... You may find a colored cardboard model of a fighting plane, one of seven model planes in the series. Or uh, your next pep prize may be one of 24 full-color bird pictures with a description on the reverse side so that you'll be hep on birds. You'll be mighty keen about all three kinds of pep prizes. So ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep tomorrow, sure thing. As a state police car bearing two troopers and Sam Robbins roars away from the Metropolis City Jail under cover of darkness starts toward Grant City. Clark Kent is shown into the offices of Abner Brown, 
managing editor of the scandal-mongering Metropolis Clarion. Well, well, well. Clark Kent of the holier-than-thou Daily Planet. <laughs> Don't tell me you've been fired and came here for a job. Hardly, Mr. Brown. I'm looking for Lippy Williams. Well, I didn't know you and Lippy were pals. We're not. I just want to introduce him to a lady outside your office. What lady? Sam Robbins' mother. I think she can identify him as the man who came to her house yesterday. Why? Lippy didn't cover the story at the Robbins' house? Well, maybe not. But unless I miss my guess, he came there posing as a G.I. buddy of Sam's. And when Mrs. Robbins was fixing some tea for him, he slipped upstairs and sneaked a gun into Sam's bureau. What are you talking about? What gun? The gun with which Joe Martin was shot. That means Lippy knows who shot Martin and... Sam Robbins shot him. Oh, no, he didn't. Despite the rotten stories you've been printing in the Clarion. Somebody else shot him. To discredit the veterans who want jobs and to stir up racial and religious hatred. I think Lippy is working with that person. You're out of your mind, Kent. We don't do things like that at the Clarion. Oh? No. Lippy had nothing to do with planting a gun or any other evidence. Do you mind if I ask him? Of course not. He ought to be back here soon, and you can tell him what you just told me, and then duck. Because he's sure to take a poke at you. I'll take my chances on that. All right, better answer your phone. Thanks. Yes? Oh, yes, Inspector. What can I do for you? What? What's that? Holy cat. When? Where? All right. Sure, okay. Be right down. So long. What's the matter? You look upset. Yeah. They thought I'd set you, too. Lippy Williams was just found on River Road with his head caved in. What? He's dead. Startled, Clark Kent stiffens in his chair. Lippy Williams, the one man he had counted on to lead him to the unknown person who shot Joe Martin, is dead. And at this moment, behind a dark barn in Lordville, almost a dozen men, guns in their hands, and ugly hate in their hearts... Wait for the state police car to bring Sam Robbins within their grasp. What will happen? Don't miss tomorrow's tense episode. Be sure to tune in same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, what makes a famous name famous? Well, Kellogg is famous, greatest name in cereals. And one reason is Kellogg's shredded wheat. Those are the plump, tender biscuits made to fit your breakfast bowl. Fifteen. Fifteen of them in every package. Each biscuit toasted just right and full up with natural nut-sweet flavor. Mom knows Kellogg shredded wheat is good for you, too. This is whole wheat. So remember Kellogg, gang. Ask Mom for Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg, Pep. P, E, P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. <laughs> Temporarily stymied by the mysterious murder of Lippy Williams, Clark Kent is unaware that Sam Robbins is being led into a death trap. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, Ed, you know what's even more fun than getting the swell prize in each package of Kellogg's Pet? Why, it's collecting all three different kinds of pet prizes and seeing how many of each kind you can collect. You get loads of fun for weeks and weeks. First off, it's mighty exciting to see which kind of prize you'll get in your next pet package. Maybe it's a bright-colored comic button picturing a favorite comic strip character. 18 and all to, to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. Or uh, maybe it's a bird picture, each with a full description on the reverse side. 
Yes, sir. Or maybe your next step prize will be one of seven colored cardboard plane models. A cinch to put together. Yes, sir, you keep right on having fun when you're collecting the prizes in packages of Pep, the sunshine cereal. And all the while, you can be enjoying breakfast with those crunchy golden whole wheat flakes of Pep. Flakes all crisp and fresh and, and catchy tasting as you spoon them up. I mean Pep makes with a flavor in a strictly terrific way. So get going, gang. Ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep tomorrow and look for your prize inside the package. <laughs> Now, the adventures of Superman. Although a web of circumstantial evidence has been so cleverly planted that Sam Robbins appears to be the only suspect for the shooting of Joe Martin, his best friend and war buddy, Clark Kent insists that Robbins is innocent. Lippy Williams, reporter for the scandal-mongering Metropolis Clarion, knew that Robbins was not guilty, since he had been an instrument of Big George Latimer, unscrupulous state political boss, in planting the frame-up. But when Latimer arranged for Robbins' transfer to a jail in a section of the state known to be a hotbed of racial and religious bigotry, Williams called it murder and refused to be a party to it. Meanwhile, unaware of the danger to Robbins due to Latimer's latest move, but suspecting that Williams knew enough to help clear the accused ex-GI, Kent took Sam's mother to the clarion office in the hope of making Lippy talk. Kent and Mrs. Robbins were talking with Abner Brown, the clarion editor, when a call came in from the police. Turning white, the editor hung up and gasped. That was the police, Kent. Lippy Williams was just found on River Road. Dead. <laughs> Taking Mrs. Robbins with him, Kent rushes out of the clarion office and into a cab. A few minutes later, we find him talking with Inspector Henderson in front of the city morgue. What's the story on this killing, Inspector? Well, we don't know much yet, Kent. Except that Williams was found on the side of the road just inside city limits. The uh, medical examiner said he'd been dead about, oh, half an hour when a patrol car spotted him. Any idea who did it? Nothing to hang a hat on. But, uh, and this isn't for publication, Ken. Okay. But my hunch is that Williams was done in by someone he libeled in a clarion story. Huh? Yeah, there are plenty of guys in this town with a motive like that, you know. Could be. My guess is he was put away for knowing too much. Knowing too much? About what? About the shooting of Joe Martin. Huh? Hey, Ken, if you know something you've been holding... I don't know anything except that Sam Robbins is innocent. Well, I have got some ideas, and that's one of them. And if Mrs. Robbins, Sam's mother, can identify Williams as the man who came to see her, I'll explain what's in my mind. Okay. Let her view the body. Where is she? She's waiting for me in that cab. Come on, we'll take her into the morgue. Was this the man who came to your house yesterday, Mrs. Robbins? Well, well, was it? Please, Inspector, please. I know this is trying, Mrs. Robbins, but it must be done to help Sam. Now, don't try to talk. Just nod your head. Was this the man? You're positive? All right, that's all I want to know. Come on, Mrs. Robbins, I'll put you in a cab. Wait for me in your car, Inspector. All right, get my gift. What was Lippy Williams doing at the Robbins' house yesterday, and what's that got to do with what happened tonight? Here it is, Inspector. I'm practically certain that Lippy planted the gun in Sam's room. What gun? The one with which Joe Martin was shot. Oh? What makes you so sure of that? Because I happen to know that Lippy came to the Robbins' house a half hour or so before the state troopers showed up and found the gun. He posed as one of Sam's buddies. Mrs. Robbins went into the kitchen to get him something to eat, leaving him alone in the living room. He was gone several minutes. And you think Lippy, a reporter... Slipped into Robin's room and planted the gun, huh? That's right. Why? Because I think he was working with the people who have deliberately framed Sam. What people? And who says he was framed? I do. So do Sam's G.I. friends who were standing next to him at the Capitol when Joe Martin was shot. They all swear he did not have a gun. And I'm sure Joe Martin will say the same thing when he's able to talk. But Big George Latimer said he saw Robin pull a gun. I know, I know. But I believe Big George Latimer is the... Well, mistaken. You won't find many takers for that idea in this state. But go on. You say Williams was working for someone who wanted to frame Robin. Like who? Like whoever wants to discourage the veterans from complaining that they're being discriminated against in state job appointments on the basis of race and religion. I'll be hanged if I can see a connection between the G.I. beef against the state administration and Williams' murder. Well, maybe I'm fake. I don't like to agree with you on that, Inspector, but... Watch your manners, Kent. All right, but you asked for it. Never mind. Just tell me how these two separate headaches tie in. I've already told you. 
I think Lippy either found out about the plot to frame Sam Robbins or was in on it for his scandal sheet. So? So he was bumped off because he knew too much, huh? Right. No. No, I don't buy that, Kent. Well? I still think Williams was knocked off by somebody he slandered in the clarion. Okay, how do we find out? Well, the first thing to do is to trace his movements tonight. Just what I was about to suggest. All right, let's go see Williams' editor, Abner Brown. Okay. Take us to the Metropolis Clarion, Rally. <laughs> Williams was this evening? Why, no, I don't, Inspector. When was the last time you saw him? Alive, I mean. Well, this afternoon. Stopped in here to file a story and then left. Did you say where he was going? No. Nope. Did you hear from him after he left? Well, yes, I did. He phoned in. Where from? I don't know. What did he call about, Brownie? None of your business, Kent. Well, it's my business, so tell me. What did he phone in about? He said he expected to have an important story for us soon and to stand by it. That was all. What kind of a story? I don't have to divulge that. Now, look here, Brownie. Don't pull that tone on me, Inspector. I know my rights. Oh, come on, Brownie. It's no secret that Lippy was working exclusively on the Sam Robbins story, is it? Well, no. I suppose there's no harm in admitting that. And that's what he called about? Uh Uh-huh. What did he say? Well, nothing much. Only that he expected to have an important story in a couple of hours and to stand by. Maybe that's enough. Come on, Inspector. Now I think it's time I had a talk with Governor Wheeler. Leaving Inspector Henderson, Clark Kent proceeds alone to the state capitol building for a talk with Governor Wheeler. Meanwhile, on the edge of a dirt road detour near a small upstate town, two men armed with rifles crouch in the moonless darkness beside an old barn. Six other men, similarly armed, spot behind bushes across the narrow country lane. How long has it been since Latimer calls you, Dean? Well, about two hours. You shouldn't take them troopers that long to get this far with that Robbins fella. Now, don't you worry. They'll be along soon now. Maybe it was, was held up in traffic or something. Maybe. Can't help being impatient, though. Just itching to get my hands on that rotten foreigner. And so am I. We'll teach you what it means to shoot a real American and a war veteran at that. You bet we will. But hang on to your patience. You wouldn't have had this chance if Latimer hadn't tipped me they was transferring Robbins to the county seat tonight. That's right. You know, I'm surprised. Hold it. What's the matter? I thought I saw Harry's flashlight up the highway. Must have been a car's light, though. I hope there's only the two troopers with Robbins. Well, that's all they usually send with one prisoner. Anyhow, there are eight of us, not counting Harry. They won't be expecting anything. It won't be so good if another car happens to turn into the detour behind them. Well, if one does, Harry will head it off. Not much traffic out this way at night, though. Oh. And did you see what this Daily Planet said today, Dean, about Sam Robbins being a good American and not a foreigner? That stinking paper. All those veterans are hollering for state jobs are foreigners and radicals. Just because they were in the Army, they think they got everything coming to them. Yep. We worked to get Governor Wheeler and the party elected, and these guys want state jobs, same as us, because they're ex-GIs. They're all radicals, that's why, like Robbins. We gotta teach those guys a lesson. Maybe when we get through with Robbins, whose other foreigners will see that we hunt cent Americans mean business. You said it. They better hold it. Huh? There's Harry's signal. Yeah, yeah, I see it. That means the trooper's car turned into the detour. Look, Dean, you can see the headlights. Uh-huh. Hey, you guys, get ready. We're ready, right, Dean. Come on, Mart. Get this block across the road before they come around the bend. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Chasing two long sawhorses, Dean Evans and Mark Wells drag them into the road, into the path of the approaching car bearing Sam Robbins and the unsuspecting state troopers. We'll be back in a moment with the dramatic climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, you know what keeps the many fellows and girls all hepped up about dashing into breakfast on the double quick? Why, a sunny golden toasted bowl of Kellogg's Pep. Yes, sir. When Pep leads off the menu, it's mighty hard to wait for breakfast. You keep thinking how tender and how crisp those whole wheat flakes are. And you keep looking forward to your first taste of Pep's keen sunshine flavor. And then, when you do dig into your bowl of Pep, was there ever such a smooth treat? And say, while we're speaking of smooth, did you ever see anything to beat the slick prizes Pep gives you? Three different kinds of prizes, one or the other in each package of Pep. For instance, your next prize may be a bird picture in brilliant color with a full description on the reverse side. Collect all 24 of them, and will you be wise on birds? 
Or uh, maybe your next pet prize will be one of seven colored cardboard plane models, easy to put together. Or maybe it'll be a bright colored comic button, picturing a favorite comic strip character, 18 and all to, to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. There's one or the other of these three knockout prizes in every pet package. So ask Mom to be sure and get you Kellogg's Pet, the sunshine cereal. State police car bearing two uniformed troopers and Sam Robbins has just swung off Highway 120 into a narrow dirt road detour. Now, turning a bend, the troopers see two long sawhorses hung with a red lantern blocking the dark road. The man at the wheel applies his brakes and speaks to his companion who is in the rear seat with Sam. What's the matter with these road workers? They turn us off into a detour and then block it. Yeah, that's a funny one. Better get out and have a look, Bill. Okay. Put your hands up, troopers. Put, why? Put them up, I said. Hi. Reach for your guns and you're both dead men. Holy smoke. Four? Six. Eight masked guys, all with rifles. Yeah. What's the idea? What do you want? We want your prisoner, Sam Robbins. What? You want him for what? That ain't none of your business. We want that dirty foreign radical, see? And we mean to take him if we have to shoot you to do it. So don't try to stop us. Okay, men. Go get him. Helplessly, the two troopers stand with hands upraised as three armed and masked men move forward to where Sam Robbins sits in the rear seat of the police car. What will happen to the ex-G.I.? whose big crime in the minds of these men of hate and bigotry is that he attends a church different from their own. Don't miss Monday's exciting episode to hear what happens when Superman learns what took place on the narrow, dark deep door. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is the copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. You know, gang's famous names are often family names, like the Kellogg's family of cereals. And here's a famous member that makes breakfast mighty swell. It's Kellogg's shredded wheat, full ripe full wheat, made into tender, plump biscuits that fit your bowl. Toasted just right, too, for crispness and natural nut sweet flavor. As for nutrition, well, Kellogg's shredded wheat is made of finest whole wheat. Mom likes that. And the economy of 15. 15 biscuits in every package. Remind Mom to get Kellogg's shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman. <laughs> Today, while Clark Kent rushes to the governor's mansion for a showdown talk, he is unaware that a group of cowardly bigots, taking the law into their own hands, have ambushed the state police escort and threatened the life of ex-GI Sam Robbins. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, isn't it something the way that keen, catchy taste of Kellogg's Pep puts the clutch on you? You get that strictly super pep flavor, and right off, it gets you. And from then on, it's you for pep and pep for you. And you wouldn't think of doing without those crisp golden flakes of whole wheat for a single breakfast. Sure, pep's that delicious. Why, every crunchy flake practically melts in your mouth, all tender and toasty. Yes, sir, if you're hep to Kellogg's Pep, you're hep to a mighty smooth dish, all right. And you're also hep to those slick pep prizes. Prizes that are always surprises because you never know which one of the three different kinds of prizes you'll find when you open your next pet package. For instance, you'll get either a colored cardboard model of a famous fighting plane, one of seven in the great pet air fleet, 
Or uh, you'll get one of 24 pictures of birds in brilliant color with a full description on the reverse side. Or else you'll find a bright colored comic button picturing one of 18 characters from the funnies. Collect all 18 and, and pin them on your jacket or your beanie cap. Just ask Mom to get Kellogg's Pet, the sunshine cereal, tomorrow and look for your prize inside the package. Now the adventures of Superman. Believing in the innocence of Sam Robbins, a war vet accused of shooting another ex-GI, Clark Kent has set out to prove that Robbins was framed as part of a plot to further the practice of racial and religious discrimination and state jobs. Then the mysterious murder of an opposition paper reporter deepened Kent's suspicions of the state political leaders to a point where he decided on a showdown with Governor Wheeler. Meanwhile, unknown to Kent, the governor, yielding to pressure from Big George Latimer, state political boss, had arranged for Sam Robbins' removal to a jail in upstate Grant City, hotbed of fanatical intolerance. As our story continues today, Kent is still unaware that as he is entering the state capitol, a police car bearing Sam in the custody of two state troopers is stopped at a roadblock on a dark, narrow country dirt road used as a detour. Eight masked men, armed with rifles, surround the car as their leader, a tall man named Dean Carter, approaches. Hey, what is this, a hold-up? Not exactly, trooper. Just do as we say and nothing will happen to you. What do you want? We want your prisoner. That there Sam Robin fella. What? What do you want him for? That ain't none of your business. We want him for personal reasons and we aim to get him. We have to shoot your boat to do it. Are you crazy? You know what you're doing. Sure we know what we're doing. Now keep your hands up and don't try nothing fancy. Okay, Mark. Drag him out of that car. Now wait a minute. Shut up, trooper. Come on, Robin. Get out. Can't, oh, no, then I'll come get you. Don't oh, you. You fool. Can't you see the man's hand come that steel rod? <sighs> what do you know? And I skinned my knuckles on him for nothing. You filthy coward. If I had my hands free, I'd... <laughs> oh, Shut up. Don't you know, Well, where's the keys to them handcuffs? I don't know. Neither do I. I ain't going to get you no place. Search him, Mark. Now, look, you're asking for trouble. When I really... want advice from you, I'll ask for it. Find them keys, Mark? Yep. Here's some. Okay, unlock them cuffs. Keys to keep them up, troopers. If I hurry, I'll fire a bullet through your middle. I hope you know the penalty for interfering in the law if there's an execution of duty. Duty? If you was to do your duty as good Americans, there wouldn't be no necessity for good citizens to be doing it for you. What do you mean? I mean you'd have done to this foreign radical what we're fixing to do to them. We're daring to shoot a 100% American veteran, that's what. You can't take the law into your own hands. Ain't nobody going to stop us. Least why you. Don't you realize you're condemning Robbins without a fair trial? Yeah, don't you fret none about that. We'll give him a fair trial, all right. Won't we, boy? Okay, the handcuffs are off. Now get out of this car, you rat. We got a surprise for you. And I got one for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you it, Bring him out here. We'll take care of him. Come on. Come on, get out. Get out, you no good. Okay, okay, brave boy. I'm getting out. Come, Doc. Tie up the troopers. When you get through, we'll come back and turn them loose. Okay, Dean. Come on, Tom. I'm one on your track. Watch. You better listen to us. Oh, 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 you drive that car off the road where nobody will see it. Okay, Robin, start walking. Where? Into those woods. We got a nice spot picked out for your grave. <laughs> Steps steady. Sam Robbins walks into the woods, the rifles of the men of hate pointed at his back. At the same moment, miles away in Metropolis, Clark Kent is talking with Governor Wheeler in the library of the executive mansion. This is the moment, Mr. Kent. Are you implying that I know who killed that clarion reporter, Williams? Don't you, Governor? Of course I don't. I suppose you'll also deny that you knew Lippy Williams planted the gun with which Joe Martin had been shot in Sam Robbins' house. He what? You heard me. You said Williams planted the gun with which Joe Martin had been shot? In Sam Robbins' room, yes. I was about to prove it tonight. But someone who apparently guessed I might do just that put Lippy out of the way. Good heavens, I, I can't believe it. Oh. Why do you think I would have put Williams to framing Robbins? You know why. So you can make the public believe the veterans are led by hot-headed radicals as you charge in the clarion. Well, there there, there may have been certain uh, unfortunate statements credited to me, but uh, oh. well, I assure you, I didn't make them. You didn't, eh? You mean somebody else made them for you? I, uh, I didn't say that. Look, Governor, quit stalling. One man has already died in this dirty business. Joe Martin, a war hero, may die too. And if he does, Sam Robbins, another war hero, will be executed for a crime he did not commit. 
Oh, is that what you want? No, 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 no. Of course not. All right, then why did you permit Sam Robbins to be framed? I tell you, I'm not responsible for that. Well, who is? I... I don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Come, Governor, admit it. It's obvious that you're encouraging the clarion to try Sam and his dirty pages and to condemn him before his case can even come to trial. You hope to get the G.I.s off your neck that way. That isn't true, Kent. Why, and I'll tell you what else you're doing. By constantly calling Sam a foreigner and saying he shot an American, you're deliberately and maliciously stirring up racial and religious intolerance. Stop talking like that, Kent. If I wanted to crucify Robbins, would I have sent him out of Metropolis? What? You... You sent him out of Metropolis? Yes, yeah, yes, so he'd be safe. I was afraid the veterans might try to storm the city jail again to free him. Oh, as they no. started to do today when Superman stopped him. If I was against Robbins and the veterans, as you say, I, I would have welcomed trouble that would make them look bad. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where did you send Sam? To a jail upstate in Grant City. Grant City? No. Yes, I... Why, you... Oh, you know Grant City is a hotbed of nationalistic crackpots and religious fanatics. You didn't send Sam Robbins there to be safe. You sent him there to be late. Now, now, just a moment, Mr. Kent. Why did you send him there? Well, 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 this evening, George Latimer suggested it should be done at once. Big George Latimer, eh? You mean he told you to send Sam to Grant City? He didn't tell me. He, uh, he merely suggested that Robbins ought to be removed from the top. And set up state where he'd be removed from this world, eh? Now, 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 wait. You mustn't misunderstand Don't me. Don't worry, Governor. I understand everything now. But I want you to understand this. I'm going to Grant City at once. When I get there, I want to find an order to have Sam Robbins brought back to Metropolis. Or else... Now, I... look here. How dare you talk to me? Oh, way. you haven't heard anything yet, Governor. Get that order and pray as you've never prayed before that nothing happens to Sam Robbins before I get to Grant City. Hurrying from the governor's mansion, Clark Kent steps behind a hedge and, resuming his true identity of Superman, takes to the air. Up, up, and away! <laughs> We'll return in a moment for the startling climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, gang, you could hunt far and wide before you find more exciting prizes than you find in packages of Kellogg's Pet. Mind you, not just one kind of prize, but three different kinds, one or the other in each package of Pet you open. And are all three kinds fun to collect. Take, for instance, those bright-colored comic buttons, each picturing a favorite comic strip character. Will you look slick with all 18 of them pinned on your jacket or your beanie cap? Or uh, take that snappy series of seven pet model planes made of colored cardboard and a cinch to put together. Or uh, those 24 full-color bird pictures, each with a full description on the reverse side, helping make you a mighty wise bird yourself. You'll find one or the other of these three kinds of prizes in every package of pets. Forty-nine different prizes in all that you can get. And say, while you're collecting them, you'll be enjoying just about the slickest, keenest tasting dish ever. Yes, sir, those crisp golden flakes of Pep sure do loose, let loose with the flavor. I mean, Pep makes breakfast a terrific affair. In fact, from every angle, Pep's a prize dish. So ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, and look for your prize inside the package. <laughs> Eighteen miles from Grant City, where Superman has just arrived. A group of ten men, nine of them masked, stand in a dark, moonless forest glade. The unmasked man is Sam Robbins. His hands are bound tightly behind him. Scornfully, he looks at the grim armed pack surrounding him and says, All right, you stinking cowards. My hands are tied behind me, and there are nine of you with guns. So go on, get the dirty work over with. Uh, shut your mouth, Don't you rotten foreigner. Why, you... Oh, you didn't have to do that, Mark. Huh? What's the matter with you, Doc? Nothing. Except I don't like to see a man slugged when he can't fight back, that's all. This ain't no man. He's just a... Yeah? So just untie me for a minute and I'll show you all. One at a time or all together. You better be quiet, lad. Don't bother with him, Doc. We're going to shut his mouth for good. Well, maybe you can shut my mouth. But you can't shut the mouths of all the guys who fought the war against mugs who fought like oh, you. Oh, 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 oh. And what's more, my buddies will take care of you guys. The same way they took care of Hitler's and Hera Hato's too. <laughs> oh, it makes me sick to think we went through Guadalcanal and Okinawa and Iwo and all those other places for guys like you. Where do you get the nerve to call yourselves Americans? Hey, wait a minute. What are we waiting for? Wait a minute, man. Hold it. Well, what's on your mind now, Doc? Still feeling sorry for this radical scum? Ah, uh, look, man. Maybe he did shoot that other veteran. What do you mean? Hey, you me? Well, even if he did, he... Well, he keeps fighting the wall for us, like he says, and... What's the matter with that? He's dead, everybody! Well, what, Doc? Any what you started to say? 
So what? Well, all I got to say is, well, I think Robbins deserves a fair trial in the court. Quiet! Quiet! You think anyone who happened to be drafted into the army can get away with any crime against Americans, Doc? Oh, no, certainly not, but... But nothing! Robbins was a fine radical. He shot 100% American veterans. And if the state police think they can pamper him and waste taxpayers' money with trials and such like, we aim to show them they're wrong. Am I right, boy? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. You better keep your oar out of this, buddy, or this lynch mad mob will give it to you, too. Thanks for trying. Lynch man, huh? Look, guys, shooting is too good for Robbins. We got a few hoses here. I move we finish him with them or with our feet. What do you say? Ah, you bastard! Come on! Here I am! pack of wolves, the cowardly, murder-bent mob rushes toward Sam Robbins, planning to beat him with rubber hoses and rifle butts, despite the fact that his hands are bound. Is this the end for the heroic young American G.I., who committed the unpardonable sin in the eyes of these bigots and fanatics, being born into a different church from theirs? What will happen with Superman only 18 miles away, growing anxious as the state trooper's car fails to appear in Grant City? Can he find the dark blade in the forest? And in time, we'll know tomorrow. So don't miss the next thrilling episode. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, talk about famous names. Why, Kellogg is the greatest name in cereals. And Kellogg makes Kellogg shredded wheat, crisp tender biscuits that are full up with natural nut sweet flavor, toasted the Kellogg way just right. Mighty good for breakfast and mighty good for you. They're whole wheat. Mom knows Kellogg shredded wheat is economical, too. You get 15, 15 biscuits in every package. They're made to fit the bowl. Ask Mom to get you some Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Musical Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P-Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. <laughs> Today, while Superman zooms off to protect veteran Sam Robbins against the fury of racial hatred, the ex-GI stands bound and defenseless as a gang of fanatical hoodlums threatens to pummel him to death. Before we continue with today's episode in the adventures of Superman, we'd like you to meet Mr. Charles Bolte, chairman of the American Veterans Committee, a new organization of World War II veterans which yesterday opened its Ring the Bell recruiting campaign. Mr. Bolte. Many of us who belong to the American Veterans Committee are the big brothers in your families. When we were in uniform, we looked forward to the day when we would have finished our fighting job. We thought the war would be over when the last shot was fired, but we were wrong. There's another kind of war going on, a war in which you can help us this time. It's the war against the fellow next door or down the block. And it generally shapes up so that there's a gang against one boy or girl. The reasons for that ganging up are reasons no American boy or girl should have. A difference in color or religion. That's why the American Veterans Committee feels Superman has rung the bell in fighting on the air against this kind of un-American war. That's why, as chairman of my organization, your older brothers who went to fight for you... I'd like to present the official commendation of the American Veterans Committee to Superman. Thank you, Mr. Boldy. 
I'd like to accept the commendation on behalf of the Kellogg Company who sponsors this program, Superman DC Publications, and the millions of American boys and girls in our audience who put into their daily lives the principles we stress here on our broadcast. We're mighty proud that this honor has come to us, and again, our thanks. And now, the adventures of Superman. In a plot to spread racial and religious intolerance, Big George Latimer, unscrupulous boss of the state political machine, falsely accused an ex-GI named Sam Robbins of shooting another veteran. Latimer persuaded the governor to send Sam to a jail upstate in a district known for intolerance. He notified a henchman named Dean Carter that a police car carrying Sam would pass through his town that night. Dean arranged an ambush. And a superman learning that Sam had been sent upstate streaked through the jail at Grant City in an effort to protect him... Sam was taken from the state police car by a band of masked men and marched to a small starlit clearing in the dark woods. There, the men began to beat him with rubber hoses, but as Sam fell to the ground, one of the men, called Doc, who had attempted to halt the cowardly attack, suddenly fires his rifle through the heads of the mob and shouts a command. Listen. Cut it out, men! Let him alone! Who fired that guy? It's dark! Stand where you are, all of you! I said stand where you are, Green. Don't reach for your gun. Any of you? What's the idea, Doc? Yeah, what's this the has idea? gone far enough, Dean. Too far. Can you get up, Robin? Yeah. I guess so. Get up, Danny. Come over here. Oh, no, you don't. Let him alone. Oh, no. The first man who touches him, don't reach for that gun, Mark. I don't get this. I thought you were one of them. I was, but... I'm watching you, Dean. Stand still unless you want to get it. Now listen, Doc. No, you listen to me, Dean. And all you others listen. I've got a belly full of this. Nine of us ganging up on one man. A man who put in the war for us. Here, fight for me! For me, Nina! You let Robbins and a lot of other boys like him do your fighting for you. You wave flags and call them heroes while the shooting's going on. But when they get smacked, you call them foreigners. Well, I fell for that intolerant stuff for a while, too. But not anymore. This whole rotten business makes me sick to my stomach. Now, look, Doc, you know as well as we do that Robbins shot an American boy, a veteran. How can I or anybody be sure of that? He says he didn't, so he's entitled to a fair trial. Now, listen, Doc. Stand back, Gene. Take one more step, and by heaven, I'll drill you. Ah, uh, you traitor. What do you think you're going to do now? I'll show you. Sam. Yes, sir. Can you get the rope off your hands? I've just about got it off now. <sighs> Good. Pick up their rifles from the ground bring them here. Then stack them and hey, set them afire. Okay. You better not try that, Doc. Just try and stop us and see what happens. Go on, Sam. I'm warning you. You'll get the same thing this partner's going hey, to get. Hey, I'm, you you are, I'm afraid we'll have to run for it, Robin. Take a rifle. I've got one. All right. Keep them covered and back up into the woods. Then follow me. I'm right with you, Skipper. Hey, Dean, they're going to try to get away. Don't hey, anybody hey, move, hey, I warn you. From now on, I shoot the kill. Well, that goes for me, too. Hey. How are we doing, Doc? Okay, so far. Another step or two, we'll be in among the trees. Then we run like 60. I hate to run for these jerks without getting in a lick or two. I guess we'll have to. Get ready now. Okay, run for your life. Disregarding the prickly brambles and heavy underbrush, Sam Robbins and Doc rushed through the dark woods, literally fleeing for their lives as rifle shots fired by their bigoted pursuers whistled past their ears and ricochet from the trees. Meanwhile, again in his guise of Clark Kent, Superman is growing anxious as he waits for Sam's arrival in the office of Warden Jones at the Grant City Jail. I can't understand why the police car hasn't arrived with Sam Robbins yet, Warden. I'm worried. Nothing to be worried about, Kent. The troopers may have been delayed by traffic. Or maybe they stopped someplace for coffee. But they left Metropolis over three hours ago, and it isn't more than a two-hour trip from there. Yes, that's right. Maybe they had motor trouble. They would have reported that by radio, wouldn't they? If they did, they would have reported to the nearest trooper of Eric. Look, Warden, I-, I wonder if you'd contact the barracks between here and Metropolis and find out if they had a report. Huh? No reason for that, Kent. I tell you, there's nothing to worry about. Well, my hunch is there's plenty to worry about. Sam Robbins wasn't really sent up here for his safety, you know. What do you mean? Please, Warden, do as I say, will you? Maybe the Daily Planet and I can do you a favor sometime. Well, all right. Yes, Warden. Well, David, all the state troopers barracks at Lordville, Bensontown, and Olivia. Find out if they've had any report on the car bringing Sam Robbins up here. Yes, sir. And now relax, Kent. We'll have a report in a few minutes. Oh, this must be the report, Kent. I hope it's good. Yes, Davis. I spoke to 
Barracks and Lord Bill Benson down in Olivia Ward. No report on that car. Uh oh. Okay, thanks. Oh, wait, Kent, where are you going? Out to look for that car. I'm afraid Sam Robbins is in trouble. <laughs> Hurrying from the city jail into the dark street, Clark Kent swiftly strips off his business suit and takes to the air as Superman. Up, up, and away! <laughs> Heading south, the man of steel streaks above the main highway between Grant City and Metropolis, his keen eyes searching for the missing police car and Sam Robbins. Unknowingly, he rockets within a few miles of the dark woods in which Sam and his benefactor, the man called Doc, are running from their pursuers. Falling headlong over hidden stumps, picking themselves up and panting on. And then... It's no use, Doc. You go ahead. Don't bother about me. What do you mean, Robin? What's the matter? Well, I didn't want to tell you before, but I, I got a slug in my knee in the war. When those pals of yours knocked me around, the old knee crotched out. Oh, go ahead, Doc. Get away. I can leave you here. Nothing doing. I got you into Forget this. Forget that. You did your best to make up for it. Come on, boys! Here they come. Go on, Doc. Take your own skin. Don't worry about me. I'm not leaving you. Look, I'd hoped we could get to the river, but there's an old barn just ahead where the woods end. If we can get to that, we might be able to hide out or hold them off. You think you can make it? I'll try. I still wish you'd go ahead. I'm not leaving you, so stop wasting your breath. Here, put your arm around my shoulder. There. I do see him. Come on. Oh, they spotted us. Come on, Sam. We've got to make that barn. <laughs> Grimly, Doc and the crippled Sam Robbins half walk, half run toward the old deserted barn in the fields beyond the woods, closely pursued by Dean Carter and his bloodthirsty followers. We'll return in a moment for the startling climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, gang, there aren't many prizes or such swell prizes that you can get as easy as the prizes that come in packages of Kellogg's Pep. Three different kinds of prizes, one or the other in each package of Pep you open. Just think, your next pet prize may be a bright-colored comic button picturing one of your favorite comic strip characters, 18 and all, to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. Or uh, maybe you'll find a bird picture in brilliant color with a full description on the reverse side. Collect all 24 of these, and will you be hep on birds? Or uh, maybe you'll find one of the seven slick-colored cardboard plane models, easy and fun to put together. And all the while you're collecting these three kinds of prizes, You'll be in on another kind of swell fun. Sure, I mean you'll be enjoying just about the best breakfast dish you ever hustled across your tongue. Crunchy golden whole wheat flakes of Kellogg's Pep. Mmm, Pep really sends you. What flavor? A fresh, brisk flavor. All crisp and catchy. A wonderful flavor for breakfast. So, for a prize breakfast and prizes that are super, ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep the Sunshine Cereal. <laughs> Aided by Doc, Sam Robbins managed to limp across the open field to the shelter of an ancient barn, just as Dean Cotter and his cowardly followers burst from the woods. Crouching in the open doorway, Doc and Sam fire several rifle shots toward the approaching figures, only dimly seen in the faint dark. Hold it, Doc. They're ducking back into the woods. Good. Give us a chance to get our breath back. Oh, that was close. I didn't think we'd make the barn. Oh, this is great. I put in three years fighting Japs, and then I come home and have to fight fellow Americans. That's a dirty shame, Sam. I don't know what got into me to hook up with those fellas. Oh, forget it, Doc. You snapped out of it. No, I won't ever be able to forget it. I think I went haywire a couple of years ago when my wife and son were killed in an automobile accident. Oh, gee, Doc, that's too bad. And then Dean Carter began bending my ear with that phony down to the foreigner stuff. I knew it was poison medicine, but it had the peculiarly soothing effect and... I drank it. it. Well, hating seemed to help me forget. Ah, uh, but tonight when I saw what it brought me to, hating people is bad, Sam. Very bad. Yeah, uh, you're telling me. Hate is what causes wars to make... Get away from that door, Doc. Little playmates are getting rough again. Well, let's give them some of the same. I'll save your ammunition. Danny. Oh, good God, Bill. I forgot. How many bullets have you got left? I picked up a clip before we left our chums. It's in the magazine now. And that's all, brother. I'm down to my last clip, too. But Joe Martin and I held off a gang of Japs for 24 hours once with only one clip between us. Now, the trick is to make each shot count. You're a cool customer, Sam. No, not cool. You're tired, Doc. Plain tired. 
Benny's the night I lay out there in a foxhole, thinking how good it was going to be to get home. And then I get home. To this. It doesn't... Hey, what's that? All right. I smell smoke. Yeah, so do I. Where's it coming? I don't know. Oh, Jeep. Look, Doc, up there. Good Lord. The hay mow's on fire. Well, it's fired into the barn. Must have ignited the hay. But this old barn is going to go up like a matchbox. And how? Oh, come on. we got to get out of here. Yeah, we'll head toward the river. Oh, oh, what now? What are you stopping for? Look out there. Holy smoke. they got us surrounded. Yeah. What do we do now? You've got me, Doc. From where I stand, this looks like curtains. <laughs> Their hearts hammering Sam Robbins and his newfound friend stand in the furiously burning barn, surrounded by the armed men of hate, trapped, their fate apparently sealed. What will happen? Superman is miles away, scouring the highway, and seconds count. Don't miss tomorrow's exciting episode, whatever you do. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement... The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comic Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal. Say, gang, think of all the famous names you know, and you'll think of Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Then you'll think of Kellogg Shredded Wheat. Makes breakfast loads of fun. Crisp tender biscuits of whole wheat, toasted just right and packed with natural nut sweet flavor. Just the right size, too, made to fit the bowl. As for nutrition, well, Mom knows that whole wheat is mighty good for you. And for economy, she likes the 15. 15 biscuits in every package. Try Kellogg Shredded Wheat. You'll like it. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Serial, presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, as the Man of Steel rockets through the air in search of Sam Robbins, the XGI and Doc, his newfound friend and benefactor, are treacherously trapped in an old barn between roaring flames and a gang of murder-bent hate mongers. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, uh, which is it? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a button? Well, you might get any one of those three kinds of prizes in your next package of Kellogg's Pep. And are all three kinds smooth. For instance, those bird pictures... Each one's in brilliant color with a description on the reverse side, so you get the real lowdown on these high flyers. There are 24 pictures of birds in all. And then you can collect seven different models of famous fighting planes, all made of colored cardboard and easy to assemble. And the comic buttons, 18 different bright colored buttons to collect, each picturing a favorite comic strip character to, to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. That makes 49 different prizes in all you can collect, one in each package of pep you open. And all of them are super to go with Pep's super terrific flavor, which is saying a lot because that sunny full wheat flavor of Pep is really out of this world. Each spoonful of these crisp golden flakes tastes so downright wonderful that you have to keep yourself from gobbling them down. So ask Mom for Kellogg's Pep the Sunshine cereal. And remember, look for the prize inside your package. Now the adventures of Superman. Falsely accused of shooting his best friend and war buddy, Sam Robbins was being driven to an upstate jail when the police car was ambushed by a gang of intolerant bigots who vented their poisonous hate on Sam, whom they called a foreigner, because he attended a church different from their own. The young ex-GI was about to be lynched when one of the men, known as Doc, suddenly realizing what a cowardly and un-American act he was participating in, helped Sam to escape. 
The two took refuge in an old barn, but the shots of their pursuers set afire the dry hay in the loft, and the ancient wooden structure began to go up in flames. Sam and Doc started to leave, only to discover that they were trapped by the lynching party, which had surrounded the burning barn. Listen. Look out. They're shooting through the door. The dirty cards. Sam, look. The roof is on fire. Yeah. This place is going up like a matchbox. Oh, I must have been crazy to listen to those fanatics. I deserve to die for getting you into this. Oh, forget it, Doc. We all make mistakes. It just leaves a kind of sour taste, that's all. But Jeff's tried for three years and couldn't nail me. And then I come home and get it from my own countrymen because they don't like the way I part my hair. Well, that's life, I guess. The question is, what do we do now? I don't know. If we go out, we'll be a clear target for that bloodthirsty gang. If we stay here, we'll be roasted to death. Looks to me like we're between the devil and the deep blue sea, Doc. A meeting is open to suggestions. Look out, Sam! The beam's gonna fall! Yeah, and then comes the roof! I'm afraid this is it, Doc! As Sam Robinson and Doc await the end, Superman, searching the highway between Metropolis and Grant City, has finally discovered the missing state police car in the bushes beside the dark detour. Swiftly, he rips the ropes and gags from the two troopers in the bottom of the car and learns what happened. Oh, now, wait, wait, wait. Don't both of you talk at once. Just tell me, did these fellows who ambushed you take Sam Robbins away in a car? No, they walked him into the woods. These woods right here? Yes, the dirty rats said they had a grave all ready for him. Have they? Now, look, you men wait here. I'm going after them. Up and away! <laughs> Don't see anyone in these woods. Just hope I'm not too late. Wait a minute. What's that fire up ahead? Better look into that. Away! Uh-oh. Barn's burning. It'll collapse in a moment. Great Scott, Sam Robbins is trapped there, and another man. And there goes the roof. Down to them. Down! <laughs> Flashing down into the blazing inferno, Superman seizes Sam Robbins and Doc, whips them under his cape just as the flaming roof crashes down upon him. Shaking the debris from his shoulders, the man of steel rockets up through the flames with Sam and Doc sheltered beneath his cape and plummets down on a nearby hill overlooking the sea. There we are. What were you fellas trying to do, get a suntan? We, we've given up the ghost. You saved our lives, Superman. Glad I got here in time, Sam. Hey, now, how did you know my name? Well, I've been following your case. Uh, I don't believe I know this man with you, though. Uh, my name is Waters. The people around here call me Doc because I'm a veterinarian. I see. I'm one of the cowards who started out to lynch Sam. Oh? And I didn't deserve to be rescued. You should oh, have Oh, don't let listen me... to him, Superman. I'd have been a dead duck longer, though, if not for him holding those mud holes for the gun. I get hoping... the general idea. You can give me the details later. What about those fellows hiding in the woods down there near the burning barn? Are they the lovely characters who tried to put on the lynch party? Yes, sir. They're they probably scattering into the woods trying to get away. Well, don't worry. They won't get far. I'll collect them and turn them over to a couple of state troopers who are going to be very glad to see them. You two wait here for me. I'll be back in a few minutes and the three of us will hop back to Metropolis. This dirty business must be cleaned up before something much worse happens. Up! Up! And away! White, I, uh, I mean, Superman picked up Dean Carter and his hate gang and turned them over to the state troopers. Good. You should have heard Carter and his crackpots yell about how their rights as American citizens were being abused. I wish I had heard them. I'd tell them a thing or two. Murderers and bigots, that's what they are, than which there's nothing lower on this earth. Well, go on, Kent. Uh, what about Sam Robbins and that fellow, Doc? Well, Sam refused to prefer charges against Doc, so he was released. He'll testify against Dean Carter and company at their trial. Swell. And Sam? The state police agreed with Superman that Sam would be safer in the city jail in Metropolis, despite Governor Wheeler's idea to send him upstate. Oh, that's fine. You know, Kent, I still can't understand the governor having sent him to Grand City. Everybody knows that's a hotbed of hate and intolerance. Well, that's exactly why Sam was sent up there, Chief. Well, what do you mean? The powers that be wanted him to be lynched. What powers that be? Governor Wheeler? Or George Latimer? Or maybe both. You mean big George Latimer, the uh-huh. state political boss? None other. The governor told me that he and Latimer talked over sending Sam upstate. Uh, for Sam's safety, they said. Uh, and I've since found out that Dean Carter is one of their political lieutenants up there. Well, Wheeler or Latimer could have tipped him off that a state police car was bringing Sam to Grant City. Now, now wait a minute. Wait a minute, Kent. You are making a serious accusation. Just because the returned GIs accuse the governor of practicing racial and religious discrimination and awarding jobs, that's no well, reason... He is be- practicing discrimination, and so is Latimer, who's in charge of patronage. 
They'll do anything to get the veterans off their necks. That's why they shot Joe Martin, or had him shot, and framed Sam Robbins for the shooting. They had Martin shot. Are you out of your mind? Not at all. The obvious purpose was to discredit the non-Protestant GIs who want jobs by charging that the vet organizations are led by hotheads and radicals who won't stop at anything to make trouble. But would they go so far as Look, to... Chief, look. Latimer said he saw Sam pull a gun during the veterans' demonstration at the Capitol, didn't he? Yes. All right. Several GIs who were standing right next to Sam swear he didn't pull a gun. And besides, the location of the bullet indicates that Joe was shot from a position straight ahead and a little above. Hmm. That could only mean the Capitol steps, where Wheeler and Latimer were standing with their police guard. All right, all right. But how can you explain away the fact that the very gun used in the shooting was found in Robin's house, in his room? Easy. It was put there by Lippy Williams. Lippy Williams? Sure. The clarion reporter who was murdered? Right. The man who wrote those rotten stories about Sam and the veterans. But Why? Oh, now, Chief, in case you've forgotten, the clarion is the mouthpiece for the governor's party. Oh, I know that. I know that. But for the newspaper to stoop so low... Well, anyhow, that doesn't prove your fantastic statements that the governor or Latimer shot Martin, framed Sam Robbins for it, and then deliberately sent Robbins upstate to be lynched. No, you're right there, Chief. But I expect to have the proof very soon. Oh, oh you do. Mm-hmm. You do, eh? And how, may I ask, do you expect to get it? From Governor Wheeler? Governor Wheeler? I had a little conversation with him before I went to Grant City. I think I put the fear of the Lord into him. By this time, he should have heard that Sam's lynching did not come off. So, at any time now... At any time what? I expect a break, naturally. Now, look. The only break is in your brain, Kent. It's cracked wide open. Oh? Uh, Now, stop playing detective. Knock out the story about the lynching. I want a two-column spread for page one tomorrow. Just a minute. Yes? Is Mr. Clark Kent there, please? Kent? Yes, hold on. Uh, you can. Oh, thanks. Clark Kent speaking. This is John Briggs, Mr. Kent, Governor Wheeler's secretary. Oh, yes, Mr. Briggs. This may be it, Chief. What? The governor wants to know if he can see you on a very important matter. Well, he certainly can. Where and when? Could you come to the Capitol at once? I realize it's rather late, but this is quite urgent. What is it, Kent? Just a minute, Chief. Oh, uh, yes, yes, I can make it. That's fine. Oh, by the way, the governor suggests that you come to the side door of his mansion. Side door, if you don't mind. The side door? Yes, I gather that this matter is extremely confidential. Yes, it certainly I'll is. I'll be at the door myself to let you in. Okay, I'll be there in a few minutes. Excellent. Oh, Mr. Kent. Yes? If you will respect the governor's confidence and not mention that you're coming here, he'll be very grateful. I won't mention it. And I'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, what is it, Kent? This is either the break I was expecting, Chief. Yes? Or it's a trap. A trap? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, what do you mean? I don't know. I'll know more in a few minutes. The trailer's getting warm, Chief. Very warm indeed. See you later. We'll return in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know what, gang? Well, right now, instead of even mentioning that swell cereal, Kellogg's Pep, I want to talk about something else. Your sports equipment. Uh, For instance, your bicycle and your baseball bat and glove and your, uh, you know, your hockey stick and your skates, things like that. Uh, Do you have a special place to keep them? A place to stir them when they're not in use so that they're not in the way of the other people in your family? You see, I've just heard about a mighty serious accident that happened to the father of a fellow I know because of carelessness along that line. And I know that you wouldn't want anybody at your house to suffer because you left your things about in the hallway or on the stairs where they can trip people up. So speak to Mom about it today. Ask her to help you find a safe place to store everything of yours that could possibly cause an accident. Oh, and uh, one one thing more, gang. Be kind of careful yourself. I mean about rushing around so and running through the house and up and down the stairs. Take it easy. That's the idea. Play safe. Clark Kent has arrived at the governor's mansion on the state capitol grounds. Going to the unlighted side door as directed, he is admitted by Briggs, the governor's secretary, and escorted to a library on the second floor. As we join him now, Governor Wheeler has just entered the room. He nods to Kent as he signals Briggs to leave, and carefully closes and bolts the door behind him. Taking a position near the fireplace, the state chief executive addresses himself to Kent. Forgive me for keeping you waiting, Mr. Kent, and and for bolting the door. I, I must be very careful. Careful, Governor? Yes, because I... I, Well, you see, I... 
Well, I have something very important and uh, extremely personal to, to reveal to you before... Before what? Well, you see, Kent, I... I'm about to commit suicide. Stunned, Clark Kent is for a moment unable to move. As Governor Wheeler's startling words echo in his ears. Well, you, you see, Kent, I... I'm about to commit suicide. What is the meaning of the governor's startling statement? Can he be serious? Tomorrow's episode tells the story in swift and exciting fashion. So don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, here's a famous name that brightens up your breakfast. It's Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Kellogg, as in Kellogg shredded wheat. What a treat. Tender plump biscuits full up with natural nut sweet flavor and toasted just right for extra crispness. But that's not all. Kellogg shredded wheat biscuits are just the right size, made to fit the bowl. And there are 15, 15 biscuits in every package, each one full of swell whole wheat nourishment. Ask Mom to get you some Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Governor Wheeler makes an amazing confession to Clark Kent, and Big George Latimer proves a formidable opponent even for Superman. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, uh, do you feel like galloping into the breakfast table in the morning, or uh, do you just kind of amble in at a slow trot? Well, believe you me, if you know there's a bowl of Kellogg's Pat the Sunshine cereal waiting for you, you'll get there in record time. Because speed's the word when you're heading for those crisp golden whole wheat flakes of pet. They're that delicious, that full of smooth, catchy flavor, that fun to eat. And say, while we're in the fun department, just take a look inside your next package of pet for your prize. See which one of the three different kinds of prizes you get. Maybe it'll be a model fighting plane in colored cardboard, one of seven great pet planes you can collect. Or uh, maybe it'll be a bird picture in brilliant color with a full description on the reverse side. You can collect 24 of them. Or uh, maybe it'll be a bright-colored comic button picturing a favorite comic strip character, 18 and all, to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. And whether it's a plane or a, or a bird or a button, you keep right on having fun when you're collecting the three different kinds of prizes in packages of pet. So get going, gang. Ask Mom to get you a supply of Kellogg's Pep tomorrow. And now, the adventures of Superman. Returning to the Daily Planet after rescuing Sam Robbins, a young war veteran from a gang of intolerant hate mongers, Clark Kent told Editor Perry White, I'm going to prove that Governor Wheeler or Big George Latimer, the state political boss, was responsible for the shooting of Joe Martin, and that Sam Robbins was framed for the crime. I'm also going to prove that Sam was sent upstate deliberately to be lynched. Just then, Kent received a phone call from the governor's secretary, who said that the governor wished to see him at once on a matter of great importance. In the library of his mansion on the Capitol grounds, Governor Wheeler bolted the door of his library, then startled Kent by saying, Kent, I... I'm about to commit suicide. Stunned, Kent was for a moment unable to move. But as we continue now, he leaps forward and grasps the governor by the arm. Listen. Don't talk like that, Governor. Taking your own life isn't the way out. It's never Taking the way out. Taking my life? Oh. oh, no, I didn't mean that. I... What? 
I meant I intend to commit political suicide. Political suicide? Oh, you had me scared there for a moment. I'll admit I thought of the other, but as you say, that isn't the way out. No. And now I want to make a clean breast of things, even though it'll ruin my career. And I want you to make it public through you and the Daily Planet. I respect you for that, Governor. Go ahead. All right. First of all, the war veterans were right when they accused me of practicing racial and religious discrimination in awarding state jobs. I thought so. I didn't want to do it, Kent. Believe me, I've always held that there's nothing more foul or more unfair than discriminating against a man because of his race or his church. You're right, there isn't. Why did you do it? George Latimer forced me to. Big George? Why, how could he? You're the chief I know what you're going to say. I could have defied him. Oh, yes. Well, perhaps I could have for a short while, but... Well, I was weak and ambitious. I knew that if I defied Big George, he, he would break me politically. So you sold out your conscience and the Bill of Rights you swore to defend. Don't rub that... it in, Kent. I've suffered enough already for what I've done, particularly tonight when I learned what almost happened to Sam Robbins. If, if he'd been lynched, I would have been one of his murderers, just as surely as if I had personally struck him down. And why did you send him to Grant City when you knew that that area is a hotbed of intolerant fanatics, ex-German Bundists, and all-around bigoted crackpots? You must have known Sam's life wouldn't be worth a nickel in that lunatic's paradise. Well, I should have been aware of that, but I honestly didn't think of it that way until you called it to my attention. You see, I, I'm so accustomed to accepting George Latimer's suggestion. You mean Latimer told you to send Sam upstate? Yes, he did. Ah, oh, now we're getting down to cases. Tell me this, Governor. Did you also, at Latimer's suggestion, shoot Joe Martin and then frame Sam Robbins for it? I shoot Joe Martin? Oh, of course not. Latimer did it himself? What? Why, wherever did you get such a preposterous note? There's nothing preposterous about it. One of you or someone with you on the Capitol steps shot Joe Martin, making it easy to frame Sam Robbins for the shooting. No, I... Latimer said he saw Sam pull a gun during the veterans' demonstration. He was lying, wasn't he? Yes, George practically admitted to me that he didn't see Robbins pull a gun. All right. Did he admit that he had Lippy Williams, the late clarion reporter, plant the gun in Sam's house? No, but... Good heavens, Mr. Kent, that must have been what they were keeping from me. William started to say something that fitted in just with what you've said, and George stopped him. That was just the other day when George was telling him what to write in the clarion. I see. That... You must be right, then. George must have... No, 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 that's impossible. He wouldn't. He couldn't go that far. Oh, no. He went so far as to send Sam to Grant City, knowing he'd be lynched, didn't he? Well, yes. But... And I think he shot Joe Martin, or had him shot. Wait a minute. Was there anyone else on the Capitol steps with you and Latimer during the G.I. demonstration? Besides the state troopers, I mean. Let me think. No, I believe not. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, Briggs was there. Briggs? Yes, my secretary, but oh, I'm sure he didn't do it. Uh, George treats him like a servant, and Briggs loathes him. Besides, he's a very nice, quiet little fellow. All right, then it must have been Latimer himself. But how are we going to prove it? If he hadn't killed Lippy Williams, we might get the truth there, but you, I... You think George murdered Williams? Yes. Sure, Williams was a smart aleck, and I don't think Latimer would let him live knowing how much he knew. Oh, that must be some way... Wait a minute. Governor Wheeler, you said you wanted to make restitution for what you've done. Yes, of course. All right. Will you help me get the goods on Big George Latimer? Well, how can I do that? I've got an idea. Now, you said he admitted to you that he didn't see Sam Robbins pull a gun. Well, he practically admitted it. Okay, get him to admit it again. Try to make him admit other things. Tell him... Oh, tell him you're worried. You, you, you've got to know where you stand. Threaten to go to the police unless he tells you everything. But that's ridiculous, Kent. Even if he admitted anything to me, it would only be my word against his. You certainly don't think I could get him to confess such things in public, do you? No. No, but if your private conversation were recorded, that would be all the proof we'd need. Recorded? Mm-hmm. What do you mean? I'll install a listening device right here in your library. Say, well, right behind that American flag on the wall. Now, you tell Latimer you've got to see him and bring him here. Get him to talk. And I'll do the rest. Wait... Wait, look, Governor, George Latimer showed us that he won't stop at murder in order to spread racial and religious intolerance. This is the only way we can possibly prove what he is and, and, and stop him before, well, before much worse things happen in this state. Don't you see, Governor? I, uh, um, all right, Kent, I, I'll cooperate. Good, good. Okay, now, when can you get Latimer here? Well, it's pretty late. Uh, probably not before tomorrow. Tomorrow? Excuse me, I'll see where that yes, is. Uh, yes, who is it? It's... Briggs, Mr. Governor. Uh, one minute. What is it, Briggs? Mr. Latimer is here, sir. What? Mr. Latimer? Yes, sir. He says he's leaving town for a week or two and wishes to see you before he goes. He's downstairs at the moment. Uh-oh. Does he know I'm here? No, Mr. Kent. 
The governor explained to me that your visit is highly confidential. Good. Well, what'll we do, Kent, if he's leaving town? Well, we've got to get this job done before he leaves town. But how? I know how. Briggs, will you please tell Mr. Latimer that the governor will be down at once? Shall I, sir? Wait, wait. Yes, I suppose so, but I don't trust me, Governor. Please. Oh, very well. Uh, go on, Briggs. Yes, sir. Uh, but Kent. Just a moment. All right. Now listen, Governor. You go downstairs and meet Latimer. Stall him along for, well, for five minutes. Then bring him up here and get him to talk. But, but why? I don't understand. We plan. Give me five minutes. When you come back here with Latimer, the listening device will be installed. Well, all right, but still, I don't see... Please, Governor, go ahead. Oh, very well, Kent. Good, he's gone. Now, out of these clothes. Yeah, if only Candy Myers is home, and if only he still has that listening device. This is the only way I know to trap Latimer. The only way. Here we are. All set. Now, for a quick trip as Superman. Up of this window. Out and away! <laughs> Leaping out into the night sky, Superman streaks away with but five minutes to arrange his trap for Big George Latimer. We'll return in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, gang, it sure steps up the fun of collecting prizes when you know that you can get not just one prize, but 49 different top-notch prizes right in packages of Kellogg's Pep. Yes, sir, you'll find a prize in every package. And there are three different kinds of prizes you may find there. For instance, you may find one of 18 different comic buttons, each picturing a favorite comic strip character. Or uh, you may find a colored cardboard model of a fighting plane, one of seven exciting plane models in the series. Or uh, you may get a gay-colored bird picture from a series of 24, each with a full description on the reverse side so that you can make like you're a regular bird expert. Now, that makes 49 different prizes you can collect, all of them strictly super. And that goes double for Pep itself. Why, the way Pep lets loose with the sunshine flavor is something terrific. Every single one of those crisp flakes of whole wheat gives you the business. Every spoonful stacks up the flavor. Every bowlful tickles you plenty in the taste department. No fooling, Pep's a solid sender. So, well, what's keeping you, gang? Ask Mom for Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, and look for your prize inside the package. <laughs> Traveling with the speed of light, Superman has rocketed to the home of Clark Kent's friend, Candy Myers, the private detective, secured the listening device, and streaked back to Governor Wheeler's mansion on the Capitol grounds. Now, working swiftly, he's just completing the installation of the device beneath the American flag on the wall of the governor's library when he hears the doorknob turn. Uh-oh. Here come the governor and Latimer. Just drop the flag over the device. Like that. There we are. Out through the window. Away! What was that? Huh? What, what was that, Frank? Didn't you hear us? No, oh, no, I sounded like a terrific wind. Not suddenly. I'll close the window. Ah. Well, as I was saying, Frank, I'm going out of town for a week or two. Elections are coming up, you know, and I've got to stir up the boys. Make sure you get the votes in and you get them in the right way. You know what I mean. I know, George. Look, look, I'm glad you dropped in. I want to talk to you. Really? About what? Oh, about Sam Robbins and other things. What about Robbins? Well, I want to ask you some questions about him, George, and I want you to answer truthfully. Why, certainly, Frank. I'll be happy to tell you anything as long as we're alone. What do you want to know? Well, Robbins didn't shoot Joe Martin, did he? Of course he did. Oh, come now, George. He didn't, and you know it. I don't know any such thing. Well, that's a mighty nice flag on the wall, Frank. Never really noticed it before. Oh, never mind the flag. Answer my question. Who shot Joe Martin? Why, I don't... What are you doing to that flag? Stripping it down. I can get this listening device underneath it. No! Wait! Stop! There. That takes care of that. Oh, you rotten double-crosser. You thought you could trap me, eh? No, George. Now listen. You want to know who shot Joe Martin? Well, now I'll tell you. I shot him. You... You did? Yes. I did. Now, Frank, I'm going No, to... no. Put that gun down, George. I'll put it down. When I'm finished with it. First, I'm going to use it on you, Mr. Governor. 
hailing, Governor Wheeler steps back with his big George Latimer, political boss and man of hate, advances upon him. A revolver gripped in his big hand, cold fury in his eyes. How did Latimer know about the listening device hidden by Superman behind the flag? And what will happen to Governor Wheeler now? And to Clark Kent's plan to trap the murderous bigot. Tomorrow's episode is a thriller, so don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, when you think of famous names, do you think of Kellogg? You know, that's the greatest name in cereals. And Kellogg makes Kellogg shredded wheat, the tender, plump biscuits, made just the right size to fit your breakfast bowl. And are they good? Full to the brim with natural nut sweet flavor. Good for you, too. They're made of nutritious whole wheat. What's more, Kellogg gives you 15, 15 delicious biscuits in every package of Kellogg shredded wheat. Try them soon. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P E P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Serial presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, the lax policies of weak kneed Governor Wheeler backfire in his own face as he stands trapped. Facing the menace of a loaded revolver held by George Latimer, political boss and man of hate. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, uh, did you ever meet up with a fellow who kind of nibbles at his food? You know, like a slow motion picture of a man eating? Well, if you've got any character like that around your breakfast table, just put him next to a bowl of Kellogg's Pep. Sure, you'd have a hard time finding anybody who wouldn't step up his pace while eating Pep, the sunshine cereal. That keen, catchy Pep flavor gets them time after time. Those crisp golden flakes of whole wheat taste so terrific that you get a bang out of every single spoonful. And say, who wouldn't get a bang out of those swell Pep prizes? Three different kinds of prizes, one or the other in every package of Pep you open. For instance, uh, you may find one of 24 keen bird pictures in gleaming bright colors with a full description on the reverse side to help you spot these birds in the air. Or uh, you may find a colored cardboard model of a fighting plane. And all seven model planes in the series are collector's items. Or uh, your next pet prize uh, may be one of 18 bright colored comic buttons picturing characters straight out of the funnies. So ask Mom to get you a supply of Kellogg's Pet and look for your prize inside the package. And now, the adventures of Superman. Admitting that he had practiced racial and religious discrimination in awarding state jobs to war veterans, Governor Wheeler confessed to Clark Kent that he had done so at the command of Big George Latimer, the state political boss. Convinced by Kent that Latimer is not only interested in spreading hate and intolerance, but that he is a murderer as well, Wheeler agreed to help trap Latimer into a confession. Kent installed a microphone behind an American flag in Wheeler's library, attached it to a recording machine, and left before Latimer entered the room. But to Wheeler's amazement, Latimer strode to the flag and ripped it from the wall, revealing the microphone. Smashing it on the floor, the political boss produced a revolver and advanced on the governor, his cold eyes blazing with anger. Listen. Frank? Now, 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 wait a minute, George. You want me to tell you how Joe Martin was shot and how Sam Robbins was George, trained? wait. Maybe you're even going to ask me how Libby Williams got his. It was all going through that microphone to be recorded by that machine, Clark Kentry. No, wait, you. George. Put that gun down. I'll put it down. After I've used it on you, you rotten double cross. George, please, listen. Listen to what? Are you trying to lie out of it? No, I'm not going to lie. I'll admit everything. I did try to trap you. You're telling me... 
I knew something was cooking the minute Briggs phoned me that you'd call Kent. And told him to come over here tonight. Briggs? He phoned you? Of course. You didn't think he was working for you, did you? You ought to know you can't put anything over on me. I guess I should have. But I feel better for having tried. The only thing I regret is that it didn't work. Listen to the hero. The modern Nathan Hale. Who's so sorry he has but one life to give for his country. Maybe Kent will put that under your picture in the Daily Planet tomorrow. The picture with the wide black border around it. I'd rather have that as my last picture than the one you'll get in convict stripes and a number. <laughs> They'll never put a number on me. I wouldn't be so cocky if I were in your place, George. You see, Kent knows you shot Joe Martin and framed Sam Robbins for it. And he knows you murdered Lippy Williams, the clarion reporter, too. Kent only thinks he knows. They can't prove a thing. Neither can anyone else. That's where you're wrong. You think you're above the law, but you're making a mistake. I never make mistakes. You should know that by now. You should have known better than to talk to Kent in the room where there's a fireplace, too. Fireplace? What do you mean? What, sucker? Rick? Yes, Mr. Lambert. What? Come down here. Yes, sir. You see, Frank, the flue goes up the wall through the room above. All Briggs had to do was sit up there and listen to your conversation with Kent. Oh. You were a fool to turn on me, Frank. You were doing all right. I'd already made you governor. I was even thinking of running you for the Senate. That doesn't matter to me. But I was a fool. Yes, I was a fool to hook up with you in the first place. Is that so? Certainly you only wanted to rub a stamp in the governor's chair. A stuffed shirt that would do anything you ordered. Even violate the Constitution to practice racial and religious discrimination. So what? The Constitution doesn't give us the right to get rid of the foreigners. We'll take care of them our own foreigners. way. And believe me... You've changed the very meaning of the word. Why, to you, everyone who isn't a native-born white Protestant is a foreigner. That's right, they are. They are not, and you know it. This country was settled and built by people of many races and religions, all of whom came from foreign land. The Constitution and Bill of Rights guarantees equality to all, regardless of what church they choose to attend. Rubbish. I told you before to forget that stuff, but you wouldn't listen to me. No. You have to listen to punks like Clark Kent and the sentimentally stupid war veterans. Okay. So now you're going to pay for it. I don't care. Shut up. You want me, Mr. Latimer? Yes, sir. Is everyone out of the house? Yes, sir. I sent all the servants home for the night. I told them it was the governor's orders. Good. My car is parked out front. Bring it around to the side door and wait for me. Make sure nobody's there. Yes, Mr. Latimer. Just a minute, please. You're wasting your breath, Frank. I told you he was working for me. I'll start walking. Where? Downstairs to the side door. What for? You wanted to know what happened to Lippy Williams, didn't you? Well, here's where you find out. By practical demonstration. Start walking. And remember, I'm right behind you with a loaded gun. <laughs> Give me a hand with the governor. Where is he? Right here in the hall. Oh. Where? I... Uh-oh. He, uh... He fell down the stairs. <laughs> oh, yeah? Did you see what happened, Briggs? No. Oh, no. All right. I said he fell down the stairs. Do I have to make myself any clearer? Uh, no, no, no. Of course not, Mr. Latimer. Good. Take a seat. I'll take him under the shoulder. Okay. Quick. In the car with Quick. Yes, sir. Who are those men outside the gate? Charles Street. Oh, those. War veterans. Picketing. This time of night? Yes, sir. They showed up earlier this evening with big signs reading, Governor Wheeler discriminates against veterans. We were good enough to fight for our country, but not good enough to get jobs. Stuff like that. Oh. More of those foreign radicals, huh? Well, they're not all foreigners. Just as bad if they stand up for them. Wait a minute. Gives me an idea. Put the governor down, please. You mean right here on the ground? Yes, right here. Somebody might show up. <laughs> you bet somebody will show up. But, Mr. Latimer... Listen, get into my car and drive it back in front of the house. Back in then, front of the house? Yes, then... But I thought you were going to I take... changed my mind. I'll stop interrupting and listen. Park my car in front of the house. Then walk back to the grounds to Charles Street and tell the veterans Governor Wheeler wants to see them. Here, the side door. Yeah, but... Don't I... ask questions! Just do as I say. Then come upstairs to the library and I'll explain. Hurry up now. Well, okay, you're the boss.
State Police Barracks, Corporal Wilkes speaking. This is George Latimer, Corporal. Big George Latimer. Oh, yes, Mr. Latimer. I'm afraid Governor Wheeler's in trouble. Can you bring a detail of your men to the executive mansion at once? Why, right, certainly, sir, but what's no wrong? No time to explain now, Corporal. Hurry. Come to the side door. Okay, Mr. Latimer. We'll be right there. Hey, Ross, Hanley, Keynes, on the double. Something's wrong at the governor's mansion. <laughs> Turn in a moment with the startling climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, gang, you want to remember the number 49. Because 49 is the number of prizes you can collect from packages of Kellogg's Pet. There's one in every single package. For instance, you can get seven different colored cardboard models of fighting planes. Easy and fun to assemble. And then there's a great new series of 24 bird pictures each with a full description to help you identify these birds anywhere you see them. And there are 18 bright-colored comic buttons, each with a famous comic strip character to pin on your beanie cap or your jacket. Now, that makes 49 different prizes you can collect. And that's only a part of the fun in Kellogg's Pet. Think of the good eating fun in those crisp whole wheat flakes, all crammed with keen, catchy flavor. I mean, Pep's sunny, golden-toasted flavor is famous. Why, Pep is called the Sunshine Cereal. Yes, sir, when it comes to brightening up breakfast, Pep's a terrific hit. So get in on the fun, gang. Ask Mom to bring Kellogg's Pep from the grocer tomorrow. And be sure to look for your prize inside the package. Except for a light over the night telegrapher's desk, and another lighting the relaxed features of a dozing rewrite man. The large city room of the Metropolis Daily Planet is dark and deserted. But Perry White's office is brightly lit as the gray-haired editor and Clark Kent sit tensely, as if waiting for something momentous to happen. Well, maybe you ought to call the Governor Kent. No, oh, Chief Latimer might still be there. Yeah, but it's after midnight. Patient Chief Governor Wheeler said he'd call a moment Latimer left. Okay. Oh, if only this works. You're sure the recording device was okay? Well, Candy Myers said it was the last time he used it. Didn't you test it? I didn't have time. I only had five minutes to get from the governor's mansion to Candy's house and back to the Capitol. What? Five minutes? Oh, but how... The governor should have called by now. Well, what did you say, Chief? You said you only had five minutes to get from the governor's mansion to Candy Myers' house and back. That's at least six miles each way. Oh, uh, I... Did, did I say five minutes? You certainly did. You couldn't have made the trip both ways in less than an hour. Oh, uh... Couldn't I? Of course you couldn't. Now look here, Kent, I... Oh, what am I wasting time on nonsense for? Oh, what a story this will be. If you know what you're talking about, I mean. Don't you worry about that. Oh, big George Latimer, publicly branded an intolerant hate monger and a murderer. It's almost too good to be true. Oh, why doesn't the governor call? Yes, come in. Oh, hello, Eddie. Hi, Mr. Kent. Uh, look, this flash just came in on the teletype, Mr. White. The telegrapher said you and Mr. Kent were still here, so I thought I'd better bring it in to you. Yeah, let's see it. Here you go. Good Godfrey. What? What is it, Chief? Here, see for yourself, Kent. Look. Metropolis Police Headquarters reports Governor Frank C. Wheeler is near death. What? Read the rest of it. Near death following an attack by several war veterans, all of whom have been captured by state troopers who were called to the scene by Mr. George Latimer. Great Scott, what does this mean? His eyes bulging, Clark Kent stares at the teletype flash and repeats the startling words. Governor Frank C. Wheeler near death following attack by war veterans. What can this mean? For one thing, Clark, it means that big George Latimer outwitted you. And at the same time, dropped another bombshell in his war against the ex-GI's attempt to break his political stranglehold on the state government. Now, how can you prove that Latimer shot Joe Martin, sent Sam Robbins upstate to be lynched, and murdered Lippy Williams, the clarion reporter in his vicious campaign to heap fuel on the ever-smoldering fires of bigotry and intolerance. Knowing that Kent is Superman, we can be sure he won't admit defeat to the forces of hate. And Monday, he does do something. Something truly amazing that you won't want to miss. So be sure to tune in. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement... The Adventures of Superman. 
Superman is the copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. You know, gang, famous names make history. And Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals, has made history with good breakfast eating for a long time. For example, Kellogg shredded wheat. So crisp, so toasty, so delicious. Tender plump biscuits, 15 of them to a package. That's 15 biscuits crammed with their own natural nut sweet flavor and made just the right size to fit the bowl. And remember, this is whole wheat, so it's good for you, too. Ask Mom for Kellogg Shredded Wheat. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P-Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Governor Wheeler, Clark Kent's only proof against the deliberate plot of racial discrimination, lies near death. Vicious hate monger George Latimer's planted victim of a supposed attack by several ex-GIs. Hello there, gang. This is your pal, Dan McCullough. Say, uh, you like it fine when you get a present, don't you? In fact, uh, you probably agree that the more presents, the merrier, right? Well then, gang, you'll really go for the 49 different prices you can get in packages of Kellogg's Pet. You'll get a bang out of all three kinds of these swell prizes. First off, it's it's mighty exciting to see which one you'll get in your next pet package. Maybe it's a bright-colored comic button picturing a favorite comic strip character, 18 and all to collect and, and to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. Or a, a, maybe it's a bird picture in gleaming color with a full description on the reverse side. You can collect 24 of them. Or uh, maybe your next pet prize will be one of seven colored cardboard plane models, a cinch to put together. Yes, sir, and that makes 49 different prizes you can collect from packages of Pep, the sunshine cereal. While all the time, you can be enjoying breakfast with those crunchy golden whole wheat flakes of Pep. Flakes that are golden toasted, all crisp and, and catchy tasting as you spoon them up. Mmm, mmm, is Pep a treat. So ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep tomorrow and look for your prize inside the package. <laughs> And now, the adventures of Superman. Convinced by Clark Kent that Big George Latimer, the state political boss, was not only waging a vicious campaign to spread racial and religious intolerance, but that he is a murderer as well, Governor Wheeler agreed to cooperate with Kent in an attempt to trap Latimer into a confession. But Kent and Wheeler were unaware that John Briggs, the governor's secretary, was a spy for Latimer, and that he had reported their plan to him. Alone with the governor, Latimer attacked him and placed his unconscious body in the driveway. A short time later, as Kent waited at the Daily Planet for a phone call from Wheeler, news wires were burned up with a flash announcement. Capital Square. Governor Frank C. Wheeler is near death in the gubernatorial mansion following an attack by a group of war veterans, all of whom were captured. As we continue now, Clark Kent has arrived at the governor's mansion and is admitted to the state executive's spacious study. Several uniformed patrolmen stand guard over a dozen angry war veterans as Inspector Henderson of the Metropolis Police, who has arrived to take over the case, questions Big George Latimer. Kent stands quietly by and listens. You, uh, you say you were with the governor before he went downstairs to speak to the veterans, Mr. Latimer? That's right, Inspector. I was in his library with him on the second floor. Uh-huh. In which we could see the veterans outside the gates on Charles Street. They were carrying signs accusing Frank, I mean the governor, of discrimination in awarding state jobs. Their accusations were entirely false, I might add. Now, you men will have to stop interrupting or I'll order you jailed at once. Is that clear? You'll get a chance to speak your piece later. Go ahead, Mr. Latimer. Well, the governor was deeply disturbed as he has been ever since these accusations began. I shouldn't wonder. He called in Briggs' his secretary and told him to ask the veterans to come into the grounds, to the side door. He wanted to talk to them. Briggs came back in a few minutes and said the men were coming. The 
governor excused himself and went downstairs. You, uh, you didn't go with him? No. I stayed in the library with Briggs. I see. A moment later, we heard loud voices outside. I heard the governor's voice over them. He was saying, please, boys, give me a chance. Listen to me. What do you mean he was saying that to us? I don't know to whom he was speaking. But suddenly I heard him cry out. He sounded in pain. I said, good heavens, Briggs. I'm afraid the governor's in trouble. That's when I phoned the state troopers. Then as Briggs and I ran downstairs to the side door, the trooper's car was already coming through the gates. What did you see when you got downstairs? Frank, the governor, was lying unconscious just outside the door on the side drive. A group of men were standing over him. Sure, we found him lying there when we arrived. Quiet, please, please. Mr. Latimer, would you recognize any of the men if you saw them again? Yes, of course, Inspector. There they are. Over there, across the room. Are you going to swallow that phony story, Inspector? It's a pack of lies. Why? Sure. Why? Sure. Why? But he's lies. trying to say we attacked the governor. We didn't. We found him lying there. Quiet, 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 please. Quiet. Now, you'll have to be quiet. I'm warning you for the last time. Briggs. Yes, Inspector. Mr. Latimer says you were with him when he phoned the state troopers and then discovered Governor Wheeler in the drive. Is that right? Yes, sir. You're prepared to swear to that in court? Why, why, yes, sir. Uh-huh. Do you have anything to add to his story? No, sir. He, uh, he told it just the way it happened. Hmm. Can you identify these men as the ones who were standing over the governor's body? Why, yes, sir. And they're the same ones I told to come to the side door to see the governor. Okay, quiet, please. That's all. Corporal Wilk. Right here, Inspector. Colonel Reed has given me permission to question you. Very good, sir. Now, I understand you received a phone call at the state police barracks from Mr. Latimer around midnight. Is that right? That's right, sir. Mr. Latimer said he thought the governor was in trouble. I organized a detail of three troopers and came here with them at once. How long did it take you to get here from your barracks? Not more than a few minutes, sir. We were just down the street, you know. Uh Uh-huh. What did you find? We found Governor Wheeler lying in the side drive. He was unconscious, apparently from a blow on the back of the head. A group of men were gathered around him, and I discovered later they were the war veterans who had been picketing the Capitol. Can you identify them as the group of men in this room? Yes, sir. We detained them as the men who had attacked the governor. Mr. Frame! That's a lie! We're being framed! Just the way you say, Robert! Just a moment! Robert. Robert. Just just a moment. Robert. 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 Will you please be quiet? May I ask Corporal Wilkes a question, Inspector? Sure, go ahead, Kent. Thanks. Uh, did you go through this house after you arrived, Corporal? Uh, no, sir. Briggs had already called the doctor, so we carried Governor Wheeler up to his bedroom. Then we came back downstairs to this room here. I see. Thank you. Would you mind stepping outside with me a moment, Inspector? Oh, uh, what for? Well, it's quite important. Please. Well, okay. Oh, everybody stay here till I get back. Riley, keep an eye on these men. Are you, sir? Come on, Inspector. Okay, okay. Now, what is it, Kent? This looks like a cut-and-dried case to me. Sure, sure. That's the way Big George Latimer wants it to look. But these veterans have been red-hot at Governor Wheeler. He probably said something to them tonight that made them blow their tops and one of them socked him. Well, if you'll come upstairs to the library with me, Inspector, I'll tell you a quick story and show you something. Here's where I planted the microphone, Inspector. I clamped it to the wall behind this American flag and led a wire to a recording machine in the next room. Yeah, well, I don't see any microphone. Of course you don't. It's gone now. And the only persons who could have removed it are either Latimer or Briggs. Latimer or Briggs? Sure. Except for the governor, they were the only two persons in the house when I left. Now, my theory is that Latimer found out about the recorder and our scheme to trap him into a confession, slugged the governor, and framed the G.I.s for it. Just the way he framed Sam Robbins for the Joe Martin shooting. Now, wait a minute, Kent. How could Latimer have found out? One way could have been through Briggs. You mean the governor's secretary? Right. If Briggs is working for Latimer, he could have told him the governor had asked me to come here, and he could have even overheard our conversation. Wait a minute. Hold everything. Why would Latimer want to put Governor Wheeler out of the way? That's just what I was starting to tell you, Inspector. You see, I happen to know the governor finally rebelled that Latimer's ordered to practice racial and religious discrimination in awarding state jobs. And from something Latimer let drop, he agreed with me that Big George had framed Sam Robbins and had murdered Lippy Williams, the clarion reporter. Holy smokes. The governor believe that? Yes. That's why he agreed to cooperate with me in trying to trap Latimer into a confession. Of course, you you couldn't take me into your confidence. Well, I... You've always got to do these things on your own, don't you? Sorry, but believe me, there wasn't time to work any other way, Inspector. Well, even if you're right, you'll never prove it now. The governor is dying. And from where I sit, it looks as if his murder will be pinned on the G.I. We can't let that happen, Inspector. We can't let Latimer crucify the war veterans on his... 
His cross of bigotry and intolerance. That's a pretty speech, but it's too late now. Maybe next time you'll come to me when you get a lead. Yes, what is it, Riley? The governor's doctor just sent down for you and Mr. Kent, Inspector. He said for you to get to the governor's bedside as quick as you can. Uh Uh-oh, that sounds bad. Come on, Kent. Is he gone? On the contrary, Inspector. He's suddenly taken a turn for the better. He has? That's wonderful. It's practically a miracle. We can't be certain that he'll recover, but he has a good chance. Fine. However, before I issue a bulletin, I wanted to speak to you gentlemen. Because when the governor was conscious for a moment, he asked for you two. Said it was very important. Uh He did, eh? Yes. I'm certain he'll regain consciousness again in a few moments. I uh, suggest you wait right here. You bet we'll wait. If he does come to, he'll be able to tell us who tried to murder him. Tensely, Clark Kent and Inspector Henderson wait just outside Governor Wheeler's bedroom, where the state's chief executive lies unconscious, surrounded by three physicians and a nurse. We'll return in a moment for the climax of today's episode. So stand by. Hey, gang, just suppose you were trying Kellogg's Pep for the first time. Here's what would probably happen. You'd see those crisp, golden, cheery flakes of whole wheat in your breakfast bowl, and right off, you'd dig your spoon in to sample Pep's flavor. Then a little smile would sprout on your face, because Pep has a way of tickling your taste. You take another spoonful and another to make sure all that catchy, super delicious flavor was real. Well, it's real all right. It's terrific. And you know, every time you eat pep, it pleases your taste just that way. Sure, just as you get a happy surprise every time you open your package of Kellogg's Pep for the prize inside. Three different kinds of prizes you can get, and each one a honey. For instance, you'll get either a colored cardboard model of a fighting plane, one of seven in the great Pep Air Fleet, or uh, you'll get one of 24 beautiful color pictures of birds with a full description on the reverse side so you can identify these birds anywhere. Or else, you'll get a bright colored comic button picturing one of 18 comic strip characters to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. So start collecting all three kinds of swell prizes in Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. As our story continues, Dr. Ross, the governor's personal physician, has just summoned Clark Kent and Inspector Henderson to the bedside. The governor is regaining consciousness, gentlemen. Clark, Clark Kent. Send for him. And, and for Inspector Henderson. I'm right here, Governor. Oh, good. Good. Glad to. Glad to see you. You too, Inspector. Who, uh, who did this to you, Governor? Big. Big. George Latimer. Why, I knew it. Come over here, Inspector. I want to tell you something, an idea that just occurred to me. Well, that'll wait. You come on downstairs with me, Kent. I'm going to arrest Latimer so fast. Wait, wait, Inspector. You can't arrest him. I can't. No. You just watch me. I'll... Listen, will you? If you arrest him, we may never be able to prove anything against him. Are you out of your mind? No. You just heard Wheeler say Latimer tried to murder him, didn't you? Yes, but it's only the governor's word against two others. Latimer and Briggs. Isn't that right? Well, yes, but of course it is. There's only one way to get the goods on Latimer, Inspector. Only one. And what's that? For Latimer to think Governor Wheeler is dead. Scowling puzzledly, Inspector Henderson stares at Clark Kent. What does Kent mean? Apparently, Kent, who as we know as Superman, has a plan to prove Big George Latimer the cunning man of hate, guilty of his many crimes. What is Kent's plan? We'll find out tomorrow in one of the most fascinating and exciting episodes you've ever heard. So be sure to be with us. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. You know, gang, you never forget a famous name like Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Kellogg brightens up breakfast with Kellogg shredded wheat. Fifteen. 
15 crisp, tender biscuits in every package. There's loads of natural nut wheat flavor in toasty Kellogg shredded wheat. Loads of fine nutrition, too. It's whole wheat. And these plump, delicious biscuits are just the right size, made to fit the bowl. Try them soon. Ask Mom for Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Clark Kent reveals a daring and amazing plan, which he hopes will result in trapping Big George Latimer, the man of hate. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, uh, I hope you're not going to let anybody outsmart you when it comes to the number of different prizes you collect from packages of Kellogg's Pet. No, sir, because you can collect all three kinds of pet prizes as easy as anything. And there are 49 different prizes in all. For instance, uh, maybe the prize in your next package of pet will be one of those keen, full-color pictures of birds. There are 24 to collect from, each with a full description on the reverse side. And by swapping duplicates with a gang, you can help complete your collection. Or uh, if your next pet prize happens to be a colored cardboard model of a fighting plane, remember, you can collect from seven planes in Pep's great air fleet. Or you may get one of 18 different bright colored comic buttons, each picturing a famous comic strip character. All three kinds of pet prizes are top-notch to go with the terrific flavor of Kellogg's Pep. I mean, strictly terrific. Why, that catchy taste, that pet flavor is really out of this world. Every spoonful of those crisp golden flakes of whole wheat tastes downright wonderful. So for prize eating and surprise prizes, ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Now the adventures of Superman. Learning that Clark Kent and Governor Wheeler suspected him of committing murder in his secret campaign to spread racial and religious intolerance, and that they planned to trap him into a confession... Big George Latimer, the state political boss, attempted to kill the governor and frame a group of war veterans for his crime. But unknown to Latimer, the governor regained consciousness and told Kent and Inspector Henderson what had occurred. Henderson wished to arrest Latimer at once, but Kent stopped him, saying... If you arrest Latimer now, Inspector, you'll put him on his guard. Then we'll never be able to prove anything against him. Are you out of your mind, Kent? No! You just heard Governor Wheeler say that Big George Latimer tried to murder him, didn't you? All right, but it's only the governor's word against the word of two others, Latimer and Briggs. We have no proof. But I know one way to get the goods on Big George. Yeah? And what's that? For him to think Governor Wheeler is dead. As we continue now outside Governor Wheeler's sick room in the gubernatorial mansion, Inspector Henderson stares blankly at Kent. Then demands... Say that again, Kent? I said the only way we can get the goods on Latimer is by making him believe Governor Wheeler is dead. What in thunder are you talking about? Look, Inspector. I'm certain Latimer shot Joe Martin and framed Sam Robbins for the shooting. But I have no proof. And I'm certain he did away with Lippy Williams, the clarion reporter who helped him frame Sam. Yeah, but you have no proof of that either. Right. And now we know Latimer tried to murder Governor Wheeler. But it's only Wheeler's word against Latimer and Latimer's man, Briggs. Now, you know a jury won't bring in a conviction on that. Oh, I guess they won't. And against Latimer, particularly in this state. Of course they won't. Now, what we've got to do is to get a confession from Latimer. Oh, sure, fine. That's all we have to do, huh? I suppose we just bring him pen and paper and say, if you don't mind, Mr. Latimer, just sign here so we can strap you into the electric chair. Oh, no, be serious, Inspector. I think I know how to get a confession from him. Well, I think you're nuts, but go ahead. I'm listening. All right. This is what I have in mind. First, we get the cooperation of Governor Wheeler. Mr. Latimer, it's my sad duty to inform you that Governor Wheeler is dead. What? Yes, he he died just a few minutes ago. The, the governor dead? Oh, no, Inspector. I'm sorry, Mr. Latimer. 
Oh, Frank. Cut off in his prime. With a brilliant career ahead of him. Yes, it's tough, all right, Mr. Latimer. I know how you must feel. Thank you, Kent. Frank God, I can't quite believe it. We were so very close for many years. Well, I must go up to pay my respects. Oh, by the way, Inspector, those yes. GIs, uh, what are you going to do about them? Knock them over, of course. They'll have to stand trial for murder. I wish that wasn't necessary. What do you mean? Well, those men fought for their country. They may even be suffering from battle fatigue. I'm sure that what they did tonight was unpremeditated. Brought on by... That's no excuse, Mr. Latimer. No, I suppose not. But I still can't help wishing it could be avoided. Well, I must go up and pay my last respects to my old friend, Frank Wheeler. Good night, gentlemen. Thank you for your expressions of sympathy. Good night. See you again, Mr. Latimer. Yeah, he's sorry. That dirty hypocrite. I hope you told the doctor not to let Latimer get too close to the governor. Don't worry. The doctor understands. Okay. Besides, Wheeler's under an opiate. Oh, good. You couldn't tell from a quick glance that he's alive. What did the doctor say about tomorrow? He said tomorrow afternoon ought to be okay. The later, the better. All right. I'll need some time to make arrangements. Uh, suppose you meet me here at five in the afternoon. I'll be here. But I still don't think you can put it over, Kent. We've got to put it over. Unless we get Latimer by the heels, we'll see more bloodshed and, and riots and lynchings in this state. Meet me here to talk with the governor at five o'clock, Inspector. And keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> You understand what you're to do, don't you? You you want me to read this stuff you've written into this microphone? That's right. It'll be transcribed on a record. I see, but well, my my voice is pretty weak today. That'll be all the better. You'll sound more like a ghost. You ready, Inspector Henderson? Ready. I tell you again, it'll never work, Kent. Latimer is too smart to fall for hopeless focus like this. That's where you're wrong. Every criminal has fear in his heart, and the cleverer he is, the more fear he has of what he can't see, of the unknown. Never mind the psychology lesson. Getting late, and we've got a lot to do before midnight. Let's get started. Right. Ready, Governor Wheeler? Ready. Good. I give you the signal. Start talking. Turn it on, Inspector. Check. Okay, Governor. Give it all you've got. George Latimer. Listen to me, George Latimer. You're surprised to hear my voice, aren't you? You thought you'd never hear me. Who's this? Briggs, I hope you weren't asleep. I was. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's all right. What's the matter? Why, why, nothing. I guess... Yes, I know. I... You're nervous, huh? Well... Sure you are. Nothing to be nervous about. Everything's fine, just fine. I, I guess... Oh, so stop I... worrying. Everything's fine, I tell you. Wheeler's dead, so he can't talk. The G.I.s are in pretty bad with the law. Sure, I, I know, but it just... Well, the papers are so full of the story, and you can't turn on the radio without hearing about it. Naturally. Frank was governor. It'll be a lot of fuss for a day or two, then it'll die down. Forget it. I tell you, we haven't a thing to worry about. I sure hope so, but every time I feel a little secure, I get to thinking about that reporter, Clark Kent. What about him? He's smart, Mr. Lantham. He figured out everything that happened up to, well, you know, this evening. So what? He couldn't prove it, could he? He almost did. They don't pay off an almost. Now that Frank's gone, Kent will never prove anything. So relax, Briggs. There isn't a thing to worry about. Well, if you're sure... I'm telling you, go to bed. Everything's wonderful. Good night, Briggs. Good night, Mr. Latimer. Good evening, Inspector. Superman. Hey, where did you come from? Clark Kent told you I'd meet you here, didn't he? Yeah, yeah that's right, but... <laughs> Gave me a bit of a turn seeing you drop out of nowhere like that. Sorry if I startled you. Ah, I see you've got the little record player with you. Yes, and the record. Now, uh, how do you propose to work this shindig? You see that tall apartment building facing the park? Yeah. Big George Latimer occupies the two upper floors on the park side. A duplex apartment. His bedroom is on the top floor. There's a small terrace on the lower floor with a lot of shrubs and potted trees. You'll be able to watch the fun from there and hear everything. 
Are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be for a crazy stunt like this. Okay. Up with you. You all set? All set. Up to that terrace. Up and away! <laughs> Leaping from the Metropolis Park with Inspector Henderson, Superman soars up to the swank apartment home. Then alights on the dark terrace below Big George Latimer's bedroom. We'll return in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. You know, gang, your day's fun starts even before breakfast if you can look forward to a bowl of Kellogg's Pep. Because Pep is a doggone terrific tasting, it's fun just to think about eating it. And then when you do dig into those crisp golden flakes of pep, you enjoy the real thing. A regular fun feast. Yes, sir, I don't know anything even half as good as that catchy full wheat flavor. That strictly pep flavor, meaning strictly super. And super is also the word for the prize you find in every pep package. Three different kinds of prizes. One or the other in every package you open. For instance, uh, it might be a model fighting plane in colored cardboard. One of seven great pep model planes you can collect. Or a Maybe it'll be one of 24 new full-color bird pictures with a description on the reverse side so that you'll know these birds in the air. Or it could be one of 18 bright-colored comic buttons picturing a famous comic strip character to pin on your beanie cap or your jacket. So start collecting all three kinds of these slick pep prizes. Today, ask Mom for a supply of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. On the small, dark terrace beneath Big George Latimer's apartment, Inspector Henderson watches as Superman prepares to slip quietly into Latimer's bedroom, carrying a small record player. Wish me luck, Inspector. You need plenty of it, Superman. I can't see Latimer falling for this. You're going to be surprised, I hope. Up here goes. Keep your ears open. I will. Up to his window. Up. There's Latimer in his bed, sleeping as if he didn't have a care in the world. Well, maybe this record will put the fear of the Lord into him. Better get set on his window sill first. There. Now to set the record going. There. George Latimer. Listen to me, George Latimer. You're surprised to hear my voice, aren't you? Who's there? You thought you'd never hear it again, didn't you? Who's there? You thought you got rid of me forever, didn't you, George? Frank! You thought when you killed me that you were safe, that no one would ever discover what you'd Frank. done. Frank Wheeler! You didn't no, believe can't dead be. man could come back to haunt you, did you, George? But how? If you oh. believed that, perhaps you wouldn't have killed me. But I just... And Lippy Williams, the clarion reporter. I'm dreaming. I must be dreaming. <laughs> Sitting rigidly upright in his bed, his gray hair tousled and his breath whistling between his lips, big George Latimer stares wide-eyed into the frightening darkness of his bedroom, in which rings the voice of Frank Wheeler, whom he thinks is dead. Fighting his fear, the despotic, hate-mongering politician shouts that he is being tricked. Will he maintain his belief, as Inspector Henderson believes, and once again foil Superman and the powers of right and justice? Or will he crack open and confess? We'll find out in tomorrow's thrilling episode, so don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, here's a winner in your list of famous names. It's Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Kellogg, as in Kellogg shredded wheat. What a treat for breakfast. Plump tender biscuits of whole wheat, toasted just right. Full of natural nut sweet flavor, too. And are they crisp? And here's what else you get in Kellogg's shredded wheat. Grand whole wheat nutrition. Biscuits made to fit the bowl. And 15. 15 biscuits in every package. Tell Mom you'd like Kellogg's shredded wheat.
And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P E P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman proceeds with his weird plot to scare bigoted and vicious political racketeer Big George Latimer into a confession of his guilt. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, you know how it is. The more fun you have, the merrier. So start your day by having fun right at the breakfast table with a bowl of Kellogg's Pep. Is it good? Why, Kellogg's Pep has a regular talent for tickling your taste. It's a regular fun feast. Those delicate whole wheat flakes are so crisp and fresh, so downright catchy tasting that, well, you get a bang out of every single spoonful. Yes, sir, and who wouldn't get a bang out of those slick pep prizes? Three different kinds of prizes, one or the other in every package of pep you open. For instance, uh, you may find one of 24 keen bird pictures in gleaming bright color with a description on the reverse side so that you'll have the lowdown on these high flyers. Or you may find an exciting colored cardboard model of a fighting plane, easy and fun to assemble, and you can collect all seven model planes in the series. Or uh, your next pep prize may be a bright colored comic button, picturing one of 18 famous characters right out of the funnies to pin on your beanie cap or your jacket. So hop to it, gang. Collect all three kinds of these smooth prizes. Ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. And now, the adventures of Superman. In a spectacular attempt to secure a confession from Big George Latimer, the vicious boss of the state political machine, Clark Kent had Governor Wheeler make a phonograph record. Then, as Superman, Kent placed a small record player outside Latimer's 20th floor bedroom window at midnight. While Inspector Henderson listened on the dark terrace just below, Superman played the record. Awakened by the voice of the man he thought he had murdered, Latimer told himself first that he was dreaming, then that he was being tricked. And finally, as we continue now, he has lost nearly all reason. Crazed with fear, he seizes a revolver from his bed table and fires blindly at the figure of Superman silhouetted in the window. But of course, Superman is unhearsed, and the eerie, flooded voice of Governor Wheeler continues, striking terror into the heart of the vicious political boss. You wanted to discredit the war veterans who wanted jobs. No, no. So you shot Joe Martin and said that Sam Robbins, a Jewish war hero, did it. But I... Is I... that so, George? Yes, 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 yes. You I did. Go away, Frank. Please. Williams, the Clarion please go away. reporter, plant your gun in Sam Robbins' home. But I didn't mean... And then because Lippy knew too much, you murdered him, but too. I... Uh... Didn't you, Please, George? Frank, please. Your black heart cried out for blood, so you persuaded me to send Sam Robbins upstairs. That isn't true. Where you had arranged for other warp-minded bigots like no, yourself no. to lynch him. That isn't true. Didn't you, George? Didn't you? Yes. Yes, yes. I told you I did. What more can I say? Now, let me alone now. Go away, please. Frank, go away. Please. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Well, Inspector Henderson, did you hear everything? Yes, everything, sir. Superman. You yes, sure put sir. the fear of the Lord into this scoundrel? And how? I'm about to switch the light on, Latimer, so get ready for a little surprise. Superman! Inspector Henderson! Right. Now keep your hands up, Latimer. You're under arrest. Oh. I get it now. You tricked me. Right the first time. And we did it with nothing but a little record player. You can't get away with it. Keep your hands up, I said. There are two witnesses to your confession. Superman and myself. That's enough to send you to the chair, Latimer. Now, climb into your street clothes. We're going bye-bye. This is your Daily Planet newscaster bringing you a special bulletin following the amazing confession of Big George Latimer today, which resulted in the freeing of Sam Robbins, hero of Iwo Jima. Frank C. Wheeler announced his resignation as governor. The newly organized movement... Uh. Uh. 
Hello. Uh, <clears throat> I mean... Hello? Make up your mind. Are you Superman or Clark Kent? What? <laughs> Hiya, Clark. Oh. Oh, Batman. Hey, you gave me a start. I'm sorry. Oh, congratulations on measuring Big George Latimer for the electric chair. It's fine work. Thanks very much. Now, with that off your mind, perhaps you can help me. Help you? Well, what do you mean, Batman? I'm in trouble, Clark. Serious trouble. You are? What? I don't want to talk about it over the phone. Look, I know it's pretty late, and I feel badly about waking you like this, but, well, I'm really worried. Could you manage to come over to my house right away? Well, sure, no trouble at all, Batman. I'll be there in two seconds. Thanks, I'll be waiting for you. Where's Robin, Bruce? Spending the evening with Jimmy Olsen. Oh. No. I arranged it that way so I could talk to you alone. Why, what's up? You sound mysterious. Clark, I want to warn you. Some of the things I'm going to tell you may sound a little peculiar. Well, I've heard peculiar things before. Go ahead. Well, all this concerns Robin, whose real name, as you know, is Dick Grayson. Mm -hmm. His father and mother were known as the Flying Graysons, most famous team of high-wire aerialists in the business until they were killed. Robin's parents were killed? Yes, before an audience of almost 15,000 people. How did it happen? Well, I'll tell you the whole story. It won't take long. It was five years ago at a time when the circus had just rolled into town. I'd known the Graysons for quite some time, and being something of an amateur aerialist myself, I spent hours at the arena watching them work out. Robin, or Dick, was about eight or nine then. Yes, he's 14 now, that's right. Well, to get to the point, the circus opened on a Saturday night. I was in a box with Dick when his father and mother came on for their high wire performance. <laughs> Two brilliant spotlights followed them. As they reached the high platforms with spotlights shimmering on their white satin suits, the applause died out. And the band started playing softly as they started toward one another across the steel wire. Step by step with nothing but empty space beneath them. Not a man, woman, or child in the audience moved. Then, bending on his knees, John Grayson swung his young wife behind and above him where she landed gracefully on his shoulders. For a split second, he was unbalanced, and then he steadied himself. With his wife standing on his shoulders, he started walking along the wire. And that was when it happened. Suddenly, without warning, the wire snapped and broke in the middle. I heard a scream. I think it was Mrs. Grayson. The two ends of the wire were dangling in midair like long, thin snakes, and the white figures were plummeting down to the ground. Five minutes later, Dick and I elbowed our way into the circus infirmary. His mother had died instantly, but his father was still alive. Grayson looked up at me and motioned me to kneel beside him. He reached out and took my hand. Bruce. Yes, John? Two things, Bruce. Take care of Dick. Of course, John. Of course. And... And something else. Yes, John. This... This... Yes. This was murder. We'll return in a moment for more of Batman's tense, exciting story, so stand by. Say, are you a 49er? I mean, uh, have you started collecting the 49 different top-notch prizes from packages of Kellogg's Pep? Well, if not, hop to it, gang. You'll find a prize in every package of Pep, the sunshine cereal. And there are three different kinds of prizes you may find there. For instance, uh, you may find one of 18 different comic strip buttons, each picturing a favorite comic strip character. Or uh, you may find a colored cardboard model of a fighting plane, one of seven exciting plane models in the series. Or uh, you may get a beautiful full-color bird picture from a series of 24, each with a description to help you identify these birds in the air. Now, that makes 49 different prizes you can collect. And that's without counting Pep itself as the best prize of all. Think of the good eating fun of those crisp whole wheat flakes, all crammed with keen, catchy flavor. I mean, Pep's delicious, a prize dish if ever there was one. Yes, sir, a dish of Pep is so strictly terrific that in double quick time, you've polished off every last bit in your bowl. So speak to Mom about it today. Ask her to get you a supply of Kellogg's Pep and make sure you look for the prize inside the package. 
recalling the horrible experience of being an eyewitness to the tragic deaths of Dick Grayson's father and mother, Batman, telling the story to Clark Kent, reaches the point where John Grayson, with his last breath, whispered that it was murder. It was all he said, Clark. This was murder. A moment or two later, his eyes closed. I felt his hand relax in mine, and it was all over. Was Robin or Dick present during all this? Yes, but don't get me started on that. There's still a lot to tell you. I'm listening. The first thing I investigated was the steel wire, and as I suspected, it had been partly sawed through. Oh, then it was murder. Cold, calm, deliberate murder. Someone weakened that steel wire in a premeditated attempt to kill those two people and succeeded. I take it you know who it was. Yes, but I couldn't prove it, and I can't to this day. It was a man named Larson, George Larson. Mm -hmm. He was the circus ringmaster. Now, somehow he had found out that Mrs. Grayson was French, that she had relatives living in Paris, a sister and brother who were members of the French underground. I see. This was at the beginning of the war, and Larson threatened to see to it that the Nazi authorities made it unpleasant for her relatives unless he was paid off. Uh Uh-oh. So for five months, he blackmailed the Graysons until they had no more money. Then, in desperation, they decided to threaten him. They told him they were going to the district attorney and have him arrested for extortion and blackmail. The following night, the wire broke. They were dead. Well, uh, where did you get all this information? The the business about the blackmail? From a diary I found in John Grayson's dressing room and from conversations that Robin or Dick had overheard. Oh, I see. But that was all I could dig up. No other evidence, no other clues, no possible chance to pin the actual murders on Larson. However, with Robin's help and testimony, Larson was convicted of extortion and got a ten-year sentence. Oh. Well, when they led him out of the courtroom, he turned to Robin, pointed a finger at him and said, I'll get you for this. Uh Uh-huh. I think I can finish the story, Bruce. Larson served five years of his term, was paroled, and is now threatening Robin. No, not quite. About a week ago, Robin began to receive threatening letters. They were unsigned, but I happened to have some correspondence between George Larson and Robin's father, which wasn't used at the trial, so I compared the handwriting. And? Oh, I'm not an expert, but it was pretty evident that Larson had written the threatening letters. Uh Then we began to get anonymous phone calls at all hours of the night. Same voice each time. I was certain it was Larson, but just to make sure, I recorded one of the calls on my dictograph and played it back for a number of circus people who had known Larson for years. They confirmed my opinion. It was Larson's voice. Well, it all looks open and shut to me, Bruce. thing to do is grab Larson, haul him up before the parole board, and get him slapped back into jail. That's just the trouble, Clark. We can't grab Larson. Why not? Well, get a good grip on yourself. Okay, shoot. When all this started, the threatening letters, the anonymous phone calls, the first thing I did was contact Warden Hobbs at state prison to find out when Larson had been released. Uh Well, do you know what he told me? Oh, what? That George Larson had died in jail two weeks ago. What? Great Scott! That's what frightens me, Clark. According to all the evidence, Robin is receiving letters and phone calls from a dead man. What is the answer to this mystery? Frankly, at the moment, we don't know. But you can be sure it's going to take all the combined ability of Superman and Batman to solve it. And before they do, there's plenty of spine-tingling excitement in store for all of us. So be sure to keep listening as Superman and Batman, the two stalwart defenders of law and order, join forces to solve the mystery of the dead voice. Tune in tomorrow, same time, same station, for episode two in this new and exciting adventure story. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, I know you know loads of famous names. So you're sure to know Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. But do you know that swell breakfast treat, Kellogg shredded wheat? It's delicious. You see, Kellogg picks out finest whole wheat, toasts it to natural nut sweet goodness. Kellogg packs 15, 15 tender plump biscuits in every package. And Kellogg sees to it that you get the grand nutrition of whole wheat in biscuits made to fit the bowl. Ask mom to get you some Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.